via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. Exclusive ball-by-ball -ball commentary of the fifth and final test match. Live from Dharmshala. Test match cricket is alive. Only on TalkSport 2. We love test match cricket. A very good morning to you. Welcome along. It is live international cricket once again here on TalkSport 2. Well, we've been uh, heading around India for the last few weeks, but we have reached the denouement, the final part, the top of the mountain, if you like. And we have reached Dharamshila at the foothills of the Himalayas to do so. Of course, the series uh, went west as far as England were concerned in Ranchi. The uh, defeat by 195, uh, sorry, by uh, when they were bowled out for 192 for five was a five wicket win for India to take the series 3-1. So this is all about pride. This is about personal um, movement, if you like. And so it's still an important game. Uh, welcome along to our coverage of the Test Match. Very good morning to you. I'm Andrew McKenna with you in the seat once again. And we are a few moments away from the uh, toss of the uh, coin. It's a very different Indian scene to what we've uh, had for the last few weeks because the players warming up this morning in coats and beanie hats. Uh, that is because, as I mentioned, and I'm not joking, we are in the foot of the Himalayas and there is still a covering of snow on the top of those mountains. So um, uh, the players are well rugged up during, during their uh, warm-ups this morning. So uh, uh, they are trying to uh, keep themselves nice and warm and ready. Uh, they're uh, just starting to uh, mill around the centre uh, as uh, the toss will be happening very, very shortly indeed. Of course, England have already named uh, their team with one change uh, from uh, Ranchi. Mark Wood coming in for uh, Ollie Robinson. Uh, the other significant news for this test match, of course, uh, is that we have uh, Centurions on duty. In fact, we have two Centurions because Johnny Bairstow and Ravi Chandran Ashwin uh, will be making their 100th appearances for their uh, countries. We'll be talking about that uh, plenty of time between uh, now and the first ball in uh, half an hour. And uh, it looks just like we, uh, we have an Indian team coming in. And Devdutt Padikal will be making his debut, batting at number four in this game is the word uh, that we are uh, getting. So uh, I'll confirm all of that once we've uh, got the details uh, from the, uh, the toss. But uh, it looks just like we're getting very close uh, for that. So yeah, plenty, uh, plenty to fight on, plenty to build up to uh, for uh, England in this game. There's no such thing as a dead game ever. Uh, let's get across to uh, Ravi Shastri because the toss proceedings are starting. Between India and England, Rohit Sharma, Ben Stokes, Jeff Rowe all in readiness. Rohit will give it a rip. Tails, Tails call. Tails England. Mm. Well Ben you've won the toss, what have you decided? Yeah we're going to have a bat. Looks a pretty good surface. Yeah it does. Um, you know, just, I mean, overheads and all that kind of stuff, conditions here, I think, you know, just looking at the wicket, we sort of looked, if you turn up in England on a morning like this and you look at this wicket, you probably have a bat. So, um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see what, what goes on this morning. Now, when you look back at this series, there's so many positives. You know, the score line really doesn't define at times how well you played. Yeah, I think, you know, if you, if you just look at the results and what we've done over the last two months, you know, you can sort of, um, you know, not come away with what you want. And I think the, the experiences that some of our players have, have experienced as individuals throughout this trip and, and the progression that they've shown as individuals, I think is a real positive, you know, taking the scoreboard away from it. Obviously, we'd, we'd like to be in a better position than we are in terms of the results. But, um, yeah, no, I think it's been a, a great deal for a lot of people. And what would you like to take out of this Test match? Now, last Test match series over, but you'll be obviously playing for pride. Yeah, I think, again, it's, it's another opportunity to, to go out and represent your country. Um, and, you know, everyone who, who manages to wear the shirt wears it with extreme pride. And, and every game is an event in itself. Um, and, you know, coming away from India, 3-2 sounds better than, um, you know, the other ways that it could be. And Johnny playing his 100 tests, it's uh, been a long time. Yeah, amazing. Um, you know, Johnny, I think, is you know, one of our you know, best ever all-format players. Um, but 100 test matches, you know, shows the commitment, the desire that, that he's shown to the shirt. Um, it was great to share the moment uh, on the outfield there when he got his cap, you know, to share it with his family. Um, he's a very, very proud man, very emotional man, um, and hopefully he has a great week. And your combination for today's game? Yeah, one change from last week. Uh, Matt Wood comes in for Ollie Robinson. Um, you know, obviously, 
you know, we all know what Woody um, possesses um, in terms of skill. So, um, and obviously keeping our two spinners in as well, I think it gives us a good look at you know as the as the wicket progresses. Have a good one. Thanks, Ravi. Cheers. Well, Rohit, you would have batted as well? Yeah, we would have batted as well. Now, when you look at uh, the series, you've had an outstanding series. What are you looking to take out from this test match? No, look, I mean, uh, every test match you play for the country, uh, is, it's quite important. Uh, and a lot of things at stake, to be honest, uh, you know. And, uh, you know, we come into the series winning every game, uh, you know, and we've done really well so far. Another opportunity for us to, you know, finish the series off uh, really well and on a high as well. What do you make of this uh, pitch? Yeah, it looks a good pitch. Uh, I mean, look, uh, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a bit hard, obviously. Uh, so there will be some good bounce as we've, uh, as we've not seen uh, uh, in this series. Uh, but this will, will, will be a good batting pitch. Uh, I don't think it will deteriorate too much. Uh, um, not too sure, but obviously as the game goes on, it, get, it might get a little slower and slower. You've been around the world, played on many grounds. Nothing comes better than this. Yeah, it? absolutely. It's one of the best uh, in the world, uh, and we all enjoy coming here. Uh, you know, the weather is beautiful, uh, and yeah, beautiful ground as well. Super wicket, uh, nice outfield as well. So, Ash playing his uh, hundred tests. I think you two must have played at a similar time. Both made your debuts. It's, it's a long time. Yeah, of course. I mean, look, Ash has been a real stalwart of Indian cricket uh, for so many years now. Uh, reaching this landmark, obviously, it's, it's such a pride moment for him and his family and for the entire nation as well. Uh, for us as a team, for him, uh, you know, we will be obviously rooting for him, uh, you know, to come out and do his uh, magic that he's been do doing for the last so many years. And yeah, uh, you know, uh, he's, he's come a long way and I hope he continues to do that. And your team for today's game? <clears throat> yeah, we made two changes. Uh, Obviously, Bumrah is back from the last game, so Akash Deep misses out. Uh, Patidar uh, misses out, uh, got injured last uh, evening uh, while training. So, uh, Padikal will make his debut. Have a good one, Rohit. Thank you. Well, there you go. The news from the centre is that England have won the toss and they have decided to bat first. Thank you very much, Ravi Shastri. Was that me or is that one of the lowest key tosses we've had in this series so far? Maybe it's because... Uh, it is the final match of the series. Maybe it's because the series has already gone. But, um, yeah, there's still plenty to play for. There's, I've always believed this for a long time. Adrian Durham said this to me many, many years ago. In any sport, there is never a dead rubber for an England team. No matter what sport it is, because there's always something on everything and that has got to be how England are viewing this um, as we uh, as we mentioned earlier uh, it is Mark Wood in for uh, Ollie Robinson we knew that from the uh, team that was announced uh, yesterday the Indian team we didn't know we do now though uh, two changes for them Jasprit Bumrah is back Akash Deep is the uh, man missing out there. And Devdutt Padikal is going to uh, make his debut as uh, Rajat Padidar has picked up an injury yesterday. So that is the, uh, the word from the, uh, the Indian uh, camp. So let me uh, take you through uh, their team first and foremost. So it's uh, Rohit Sharma and Yashasvi Jaiswal, Shubman Gill, Devdutt Padikal, Safraz Khan, Ravindra Jadeja, Dhruv Jurel, Ravichandran Ashwin on his 100th, Kuldeep Yadav, Jasprit Brumra and Mohamed Shami. Uh, sorry, Siraj. Not, that would have been news if Mohamed Shami was playing. Um, he, he's actually recently had an ankle in, uh, operation just to try and tidy up the problem that he's got with his heel. So he is not involved at the moment. And the England side, as we say, as announced yesterday, Zach Crawley, Ben uh, Duckett, Ollie Pope, Joe Root, Johnny Bairstow, Ben Stokes, Ben Folks, Tom Hartley, Mark Wood, Joe Bashir. And James Anderson. James Anderson today is playing on his 50th different international cricket ground, which is some remarkable achievement when you think about it. I'm Andrew McKenna. I'm delighted to say alongside me are a pair of England fast bowlers, Steve Harmison and uh, Alex Tudor. Good morning, gentlemen. How are we? Good morning, Maka. Good morning, Tudor. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, very, very well. I'll say that again. Good morning, Mackie. Good morning, Jude. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, very well. What a picture that looks like on our screen. Fantastic looking outfield with the mountain and the, the background. England team met the Dalai, Dalai Lama yesterday. Um, what a place to go and play cricket. 
Yeah, the good news is, um, well, the good news for everyone listening and reading on the newspapers and websites later on is uh, the mountains are actually behind the commentary boxes, so we're not going to be sitting and staring at them all day. You're not like Cape Town when you've got the mountain in front of you and it's just sort of looming over. Unfortunately, the, they didn't design the, uh, the cricket ground with the press in mind, so the mountains are actually behind uh, the uh, the stand uh, where the media facilities are, so you can at least keep your mind on the game. And on the game, Alex Tudor, I've just said, there's no such thing as a dead game for England ever. There's always something to play on with, with the pressure that we put on our sporting teams. This is no free hit, is it? Yeah, morning, Macca. Morning, Harmy. Morning, everyone. Yeah, no, there's no dead robber. And, I, and that's what was in my train of thought yesterday when I was on my way down. I was just, there is no dead robber. There's always something to play on for any individual in the side. There's places up for grabs. You've got people behind you who, who want to try and take your spot. So you can't just go through the motions. You've got to go out there. If your job is to bat, go out there, score your runs. If your job is to bowl, go and get some wickets and make sure that you give the best of yourself because there's a lot of competitions in between, a loss of form, anything like that can creep in. And if someone starts the season extremely well, you know what we like in the media. We'll talk them up, we'll hype them up, and then they may get their opportunity. And we know in sport, Someone's misfortune, a loss of form, it's someone else's gain. They come in, they do the work, and there's no, you have no right just to walk into a side. You have to make sure that everything is prepared and you're out there and you perform well, and that takes care of itself. Harmy, uh, when we were in Vizag, you sat down with Johnny Bairstow and did a pretty long interview with him. Today, he, he gets to the 100 mark, the 17th England player to play 100 Test matches. Your thoughts on Johnny? Yeah, it's been a it's been a wonderful career. Ben said, yeah, and I, he's obviously he's always right, but he's spot on again. He's he has been our best all multi-format player. You know, opening the batting in in one day cricket, opening the batting or batting number four in T20 cricket and how that's evolved World Cup winner um, and then being a, a sort of jack of all trades in a, in, a, in a job that nobody ever wanted that was his, his title for a while he don't think he realised that it was not only was he doing a job for the team but it was actually when they took the gloves off him uh, you're our best batter and we need you to bat we need, we need to pre protect the rest of our group because you know, we're going through some indifferent times and I think that's been his job throughout his career, he's batted from two, uh, sorry, from three down to number eight, um, in you know different averages that he's had. So, yeah, he's he's somebody who, for me, has been asked to do a lot of things unselfishly for for the team. And I think this is one day where, or one time, I think he needs to be selfish. He needs to go out and have a score. There's a lot of people, you know, a few former captains, writing him off after this 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 game, saying it could be hundred and out. Um, I don't believe that. I think he's uh, he's still got many, many miles left in him, and it wouldn't surprise me if he goes on and gets a big score in this game. He's a you know he's a he's a great lad. He's somebody of I've, I've known for for such a long time, and I remember you know the short stint I had it at Yorkshire, a very very young Yorkshire side with the likes of Root and Balance, Rashid, Bresnan, Lithe, and Rafiq, and um, and and also Johnny as very very young men starting out in their campaign as a, as a Yorkshire player trying to go on to play further on as a lot of them did and to see Johnny come through and get his, his 100th cap today I was immensely proud and watching him to get it and you know with his mum you know Janice alongside and you know his sister his partner and the little one uh, makes it all more special so you know it, it is a and that exactly what Jude was saying before it, it, there's no dead robbers played in many a games where series is gone in, in Australia especially and you play and you, you are representing your country, but you're also representing milestones in games. And this is a milestone that 10 England players would want to go out there to perform alongside Johnny Besto to make sure that his 100th test is a, mem a memorable test, a winning test, one in, in, in brilliant surroundings. So for me, that's why this game has so much riding on it. Um, not only because it's Johnny Bairstow's you know, 100th test match, it's R. Rashwin's 100th test match. And I think because of that, both sides will want to do well for their respective um, stalwarts, you know, the, 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 you know, the figures who have done their, their country so well, and want to make sure that they come, on, come off on the winning side. Johnny Bairstow, 26 runs short of 6,000 in test match cricket. So we're talking about little milestones. Maybe there's one for him there. Um, 
Tudes on the team. England announced it yesterday. It is proved to be uh, the case. There is a little bit of illness running through the camp, so there are a couple of rogue names on the team sheet today. Collingwood and Truscothic, who <laughs> might have to do some 12th as <laughs> fielding duties, but that, let's ignore that for the time being. Um, the one change, though. Mark Wood is back. Ollie Robinson misses out again, so it now means Ollie Robinson has played one game of first-class cricket since July. Um... There was a little bit of concern around Ollie Robinson in the last Test match. Do you think justified? Yeah, I think justified. Um, I think while he was batting, when he got at 59 in the first innings, he, he went for a run and he sort of, sort of not diving in, but stretching for um, to get into his crease. And he called for the medic to come out and he got a tablet. And you're thinking, oh dear, oh, you know, uh, he just seems to be riddled at the moment with injury. We all know when he's on top form that he's a very good bowler for England. But at the moment, uh, it's just not quite happened for him. He didn't bowl a lot of overs. 13, was it, or something? So it's not a, a lot of overs that he bowled. Um, right decision. A little bit of more firepower um, with Mark Wood, obviously, coming to the side. Just gives Ben Stokes that little bit of express pace. If it is a dull soul pitch, that he can come in and sort of hurry up the batsman. Sometimes take the wicket out the equation if the ball's reversing at all at any time. He can come in and try and get those Yorkers in. So justified. Everyone else picks himself. And I would just like to say as well, you know, congrats to Johnny. He, he's a good man he, he's one when you're on the field or anything and as a next player he never walks past you um, very respectful comes up gives you time talks to you uh, so I like to wish him the best I think sometimes it's a little bit disrespectful for someone who's approaching 100 and we're having the chats that we have and Harmy makes a great point you know he's done sometimes the dirty work when no one else has wanted to do it he's kept he's opened the bat and he's batted in the middle order and it's always like oh his place is up for grabs He's been a fantastic player. You're saying he's only 26, did you say, Maka? Away from 6,000 runs. I mean, that's a serious player um, for England. So, look, he's been fantastic. Well done, Johnny. Nice that his family's out there to uh, enjoy it for him. And listen, don't be surprised if he don't come out here and get 180 balls. <laughs> Ravi Chandran Ashwin is currently getting a presentation from the in uh, Indian side. Uh, they're all out there along with his family. His, uh, his children are wrapped up in coats, hats, and gloves so they'll always remember they'll tell they'll see the photograph and know exactly where that was taken because there ain't many places in India you need coats hats and gloves uh, yes Dharamshala will be on the memory of an awful lot of people for a, an awful long time India have uh, lost the toss Johnny uh, Johnny Bairstow I've got it on the brain Ben Stokes has won the toss he is elected to uh, bat so we are just under 15 minutes away from the final test of this series getting underway with England batting first here exclusively live on TalkSport 2 exclusive ball by ball commentary of the fifth and final test match live from Dharmshala past the umpire now he's straight see you later only on TalkSport 2 TalkSport 2 is your dynamic destination for all the latest sporting action. Featuring live commentary of all the biggest events, including football, PGA golf, horse racing, premiership rugby, cricket, boxing, and all the big hitting drama of the NFL. Touchdown! Plus, TalkSport 2's official betting partner, William Hill, is always on hand with the insight and in-depth analysis you need. TalkSport 2 with official betting partner, William Hill. Get epic value all season with William Hill. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. Business owners, during this 30-second ad, you could be earning as much as 4.33% AER variable on your business savings. Yep, that's right. 4.33% interest. It's time to let your business work for you. Apply online or in your Tide app at tide.co forward slash savings. Variable rate correct as of 20th of February 2024. Only available to UK registered limited companies or sole traders joining Tide after the 19th of December 2023. Tide Instant Saver Accounts TNCs apply. It was Mother's Day and an army of moon pigs were trotting forth. This little moon pig just wanted a cuddle. And this caring little moon pig made mum go wah, wah, wah all day long. For this Mother's Day, it must be a moonpig.com. Download the app now. Don't break your stride. Hurry to Screwfix for unmissable deals on trade essentials. Time for a drill upgrade. Save £30 on the DeWalt cordless combi. Now only £169.99. And why get caught short of power when you can get a great deal on a master plug 20 metre cable reel. Now just £40.99. Shop now on the app at screwfix.com or in store. Delivery fees may apply. Prices valid until at least April 1st. Subject to availability. See screwfix.com for full T's and C's. 
OK, that's six of the ragu and the linguine. Make a move, everyone, please. The customers are rolling in at Stefano's new restaurant, so he needs another chef. Someone with a cool head and an appetite for success. More flour in the bechamel, let's go. Indeed can help him find great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Because Indeed's hiring platform can help you match with quality candidates immediately. To start hiring, visit indeed.com slash try today. At Continental Tyres, we've been championing women's football for over 13 years. For us, it's more than a game, it's a passion. Join us on the 31st of March at Molyneux Stadium, Wolverhampton for the FA Women's Continental Tyres League Cup Final for a celebration of women's football. Continental Tyres, driving safety and performance. For tickets, head to wolves.co.uk forward slash tickets. People are tuning into radio more than ever. Advertise here and get your message heard by up to six and a half million switched on listeners every week. Email radio at news.co.uk. Get ready for Lidl's massive garden event. Get cared out with our Parkside range, like our pressure washer at just $199.99. Extendable head shears for $9.99. Or a range of garden hand tools for only $2.99. With new products in Lidl stores every week. Please stop jet washing. Sorry. Now that's big on quality and always Lidl on price. Limited offers subject to availability. Selected stores GB only. On DAB+, Plus, online, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. Exclusive ball-by-ball -ball commentary of the fifth and final test match. Live from Dharmshala. Fielded all the Tibia run out. On the on, Talk Sport 2. That really is a hard, hard hit of a cricket ball by Johnny Besto. It's gone miles back. You can't write him off. He's such a destructive player. Here he comes again and bowls the beer. So hits it straight down the ground. Bang! Six more! In my opinion, he's he's one of England's you know best all-format players uh, to play the game. And I tell you what, what a catch! Behind the stumps from Johnny Bairstow. You know, we know how emotional individual Johnny is, um, and I think we'll see that this week. Did I hear that Johnny Bairstow virtually manhandled him off? Johnny Bairstow has just helped the security here at Lords. Essentially, rugby tackled one of the protesters to the floor. And Bairstow goes to smack him over mid-wicket, which he does clean as a whistle. What a sound that made off the bat. He goes to 100 with a stroke to remember. It's probably the dream stuff. Yeah, something that when you're a young kid, uh, you want to try and do it, but never do you actually think you're going to achieve it. Yeah, Johnny Bairstow's 100th Test match, becoming the 17th England player to reach that milestone. He's been chatting with our man Cameron Ponsonby. Johnny, first of all, congratulations, 100 tests. It's an incredible achievement. How are you feeling? Um, yeah, amazing. Thanks ever so much. Um, yeah, it's obviously... Uh, uh, something that I'm very proud of, um, but look, we've, uh, we've got a job to do out there today and um, really excited for it. Is it a bit more difficult now we're on the morning of the match, you've had the build-up to kind of really take it all in and appreciate the achievement, you've got your family out here, a lot of friends, is it now kind of time for business as it were? Yeah, it's probably easier in some ways, um, obviously the, the build-up is the build-up, but then you, you get to the day and you, you switch into match mode, so um, look, it's been amazing, I'm very grateful for the messages that I've received from uh, friends, families, and uh, family and supporters. Um, it really does mean a lot. Uh, so yeah, something that'll be impossible to ignore throughout this week of well, your special 100th Test match is the location. I mean, what's it like to play here? Yeah, absolutely incredible. Um, I mean, we're looking at it now, and uh, you see something new each each and every single day. The, the sun shines on a different part of the mountain. Um, thankfully, the rain stayed away, um, and uh, and yeah, hopefully we we'll get all five days in bit of kind of housekeeping for this week have you had a chance to look at the pitch it seems like uh, it's got a bit more in it for the seamers um, I know it was a used wicket last month in the Ranji Trophy to be honest with you I saw it two days out and I've, I've not bothered looking since so we'll have a little stroll out this morning but I don't think it'll have changed too much um, I, I genuinely think that there won't be a huge amount of grass on it um, so a pretty standard Indian wicket I think uh, but I must say that the ground staff here have done an amazing job with the weather that they've had but also the change in the outfield from the World Cup when we came here has been magnificent, so credit to them. 4-1 sounds a lot different to 3-2. Just how motivated are the group to leave here with the win? I don't think you need to ask about the motivation of this group. It's <laughs> it's extremely high. Um, we're very proud to play in the way that we uh, are looking to play uh, and the style of cricket um, that we're looking to play. So nothing changes this week. Uh, we're really excited for, for the challenge that's put in front of us. Um, it's all set 
um, for a fantastic week in an amazing venue uh, and an even more special setting. And just finally, uh, Sherbyshire is fit to play, which is obviously great news. Uh, even better news for a lot of fans of the sport, Collingwood and Trescothic officially added as subfielders. What would it be like to take the field with, with them again? It'll be absolutely brilliant. I'm just disappointed uh, Trez hasn't rocked out a pair of his old ASICs. Um, gel TR100s like he did uh, back in the day. Um, everyone wanted a, a set of them, but unfortunately he's, uh, he'll have some spikes on. And yeah, it's, uh, it'll be great to take the field with him and that'll be very special. Perfect. Johnny, thanks very much and best yes. of luck. Thanks. Johnny Best, uh, speaking with uh, Cam Ponsonby uh, a few moments ago. Steve Harmison and Alex Tudor have moved out. The former England spinner and Surrey uh, head coach Gareth Batty has uh, moved in along with Jared Kimber. Um, let's keep going on the on the Jenny, Johnny Bairstow theme, uh, gentlemen. Good morning, by the way. Thank you very much for, uh, for joining us at this time. Gareth, uh, with your head coach's hat on, Johnny Bairstow, have England got enough out of him? Uh, and by that I mean... We've constantly messed him around, haven't we? He's batted at here, there and everywhere. Some days he's keeping, some days he's not keeping. I mentioned earlier, he's 26 short of 6,000 runs at an average of just over 36 with 1,200s, a best of 167 not out. It's a heck of a player, but could, could England have got even more out of him by, by giving him a, a settled role in the side? Morning, Maka. Uh, morning to the listeners, if you're up at this hour. Um, oh, look, it... It's difficult because throughout his career you don't play 100 test matches and the management stay constant. So there's been a change in management, there's been a change in captains. Um, because he's an emotional player, uh, because of the style he's up front um, as, a, as a player, um, as a human at times, when he's on the field he plays in, a, in an aggressive manner, he can be quite confrontational at times. It's not going to be everybody's style. I would go with your last bit that you said. I, I think England... Um, possibly have missed a trick we had a guy batting at seven averaging plus 40 for a good three or four years and then it all changed maybe six six years ago i think from from memory when we were in sri lanka um, i think up until that point and it was only a bit of injury and if you play long enough you're going to get injured it's part of the game um you know possibly a future planning um from an england point of view can go missed when uh, management changes captains change but you've also got to go with a new style, a new thought process. So players do get caught up in that and everybody, and it's for, for all to see that, that Johnny Bairstow would be one of those players. Um, having and got the best out of him, absolutely. You don't play 100 test matches and, and not have a wonderful career. Could there have been a little bit more? And I, and I would suggest that there ain't many people that finish the game going, OK, completed, I've done it. Most people finish going, I could have done this, I could have done that, given this, given that. Because that's just part of being a professional sports person. You have that drive and you have that want to be the absolute best all the time. Jared is a bloke who, who likes to get into a fight with the world, Johnny, <laughs> at, at times. It seems he needs to get his beans ticking. I mean, I, I'll, I'll never forget the interview that he did after that incredible 100 in Colombo. Um, and we were all sort of looking at each other going... Wow. I mean, he'd gone out and made a brilliant, brilliant hundred and then came over and still had the adrenaline pumping through his veins. And he basically went, well, you lot said that I couldn't do this. And he was using you lot in terms of the media. But we were all looking at each other, sort of the old side are going, where's this coming from? I remember the conversations of like, has this been said? Like no one had really said. I mean, if you look at his treatment, you talk about the Joss Butler one, I think is the most interesting one. When Ed Smith was fascinated with Joss Butler and brought him in as a specialist number seven. It just feels like they've gone out of their way to, you know, not get the best out of him. And, you know, I know there was a lot of conversation this week about, you know, uh, players who played 100 test matches and, you know, uh, where he fits into those sorts of uh, things. But he, he's a match winner who probably has been poorly treated because maybe he's not, above average in some of the core skills that he needs to but when you need him to actually explode he's exploded like few players we've ever seen before right and he does that on and off the field with the microphone you know uh, and everything else i think the list of players that have played 100 test matches for england will be batter dominated so I think the fact that Johnny can keep wicket and bat is an all-rounder would go against him at times. Absolutely right. Well, the players are making their way out to the middle. England have won the toss. They are batting first. And uh, the Indian team is out there along with 
uh, Ravi Chandra and Ashwin, the man who is playing his 100th cap for India. Umpires for this one, by the way, Joel Wilson and Rod Tucker. Kuma Dharmasena is uh, going on to uh, TV duties. So we're about to get underway. Zach Crawley and Ben Duckett are uh, there. The uh, bowling will be opened not from the Himalayas end. It will be from the, uh, the other end. And we wait and see just uh, how this is going to play. Johnny Bear so saying in that interview with Cam that it is a used pitch, used for the Ranji Trophy uh, just a few weeks, weeks ago. Very good morning to everyone who's joining us on TalkSport at the moment for the first session. Uh, I'll tell you what, some final quick thoughts from Gareth Batty and Steve Harmison. And Neil Manthorpe is going to be uh, coming in to talk you through the uh, first over as uh, Jasprit Bumra gets loose. Morning, gents. Yeah, I think just uh, just going back to the surface, we saw the pitch report and you can see the scarring from the game that we've been told was sort of uh, five weeks ago, four weeks ago now. Uh, the ground staff have recovered the surface, so there have been a sprinkling of grass cuttings been thrown down on it and rolled in. But uh, from that five metre line, um, sorry, eight foot line that you see just at the side uh, as the ball was followed through, there's little marks on the side of the surface. You can just see the scarring on, on the pitch from the previous game uh, in the Ranji Trophy. So don't expect it to be the green seamer that we might see for an hour this morning, Big Steve. Welcome, sir. Yeah, well, yeah, good morning, Bat. Yeah, we uh, expected it more seamer friendly, but I think it was more bounce than than anything else, than any sideways movement. Just with Bumra then for the first uh, delivery, and it's outside the off stump, left alone by Zach Crawley. England winning the toss, batting first. Well underway as uh, Barmy Army sings for the final time. Well, it won't be for the final time, will it? There'll be a second innings, change of innings. Good to see Jasper Bumra back. Fascinating that uh, India should decide to rest him for what turned out to be the series decider. Yeah, maybe he's not the bounce that we expect him because that just lollipop to uh, to Jarrell that was you know, standing a decent way back. Three slips in a gully. Interesting to see how long they last. Here's Bumrah in once again. And oh, that one carried a bit more. The first one really did bounce like a punctured tennis ball. And the second one uh, has carried through and it's left alone again by Zach Crawley. I've noticed in the last uh, three test matches has uh, been working hard on his leave, hasn't he? Morning, Bats. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, he's definitely a player that wants bat on ball. If you put in the jargon side of... Uh, of the professional game into it, he, he wants to wants to hit the ball, he wants to keep moving and he doesn't always move at his best when he's leaving the ball. So when you say he's worked on his leaving, it's his movement pattern to leave the ball. Here's uh, Bumra in once again, that one very much a leave ball, third uh, delivery in a row, well outside the off stump. You have to say that uh, the pitch is not something that would earn great points for its aesthetic beauty. It's very patchy, isn't it? Uh, it does it. Matters. It looks like obviously we're not on the ground, but it looks like what Hyderabad looked like very first Test match. Barrett, the you know, eye the wrens looks cracked in. You know the majority of the surface. It looked as always quite, you know, quite strong in the middle. You know, decent surface in the middle. So very much similar to Hyderabad, which played really well. <laughs> Here's Bumrah in again. Angles one in, three away to Crawley, and then that nip backer. I think there might have been some inside edge onto the pad, just popped up on the onside harmlessly. But uh, Bumra beginning with three slips in a gully. Good shape on that. Yeah, you just see the reaction of the ball off the surface. I think it was Bumra's second ball that went without any danger through to the keeper. But you just saw that bit of sort of what we see in England, that English seam skip off the pitch, a bit of sort of lateral for the seamers, which you don't always see in India. The pitch takes the energy out of the ball. It's not doing it the minute. Here, it's just that bit of skip, bit of moisture in the air. Here's uh, Bumra in once again, outside the off stump. Again, and Crawley having nothing to do with that. It wasn't the right length uh, to be driving. It, line might have uh, tempted him had it been fuller, but it was uh, back of a length. So a uh, sparse crowd in, and uh, they seen this has uh, been a common theme. Hyderabad and Vishkapatnam, the first two test matches, were very, very well attended, but uh, the next two in uh, Rajkot and Ranchi the crowds have been uh, considerably thinner but at all the venues it's um, 
been a challenge just getting into uh, the stadium. Crawley off the mark as Boomer is into him again, angling this one in and turned nicely off his pads down towards Kuldeep Yadav on uh, the long leg boundary and they come scurrying back for three. That's very good running. They ran it hard, it's been, uh, it's been cool, they're not uh, running some warmth into their bones uh, so far this morning though because it's a uh, nice temperate 18 degrees sort of uh, early spring day which is what it is in this part of the world England three without loss after one over and uh, perhaps uh, when we heard um, Ben Stokes talking about the lack of departures departure lounge syndrome in his team I've heard many captains say that over many years and haven't always believed it but seems to be very very much the case today yeah they've certainly um, looked after the scheduling um, to the disgruntlement of a few to say they should have been getting prepared for conditions more staying in the country more but flying in and out has certainly kept the mind fresher but um, unfortunately for England having the series gone in the previous game that's not changed a result but uh, it's open for speculation as to whether performances are better or whether does it matter it's the same end result um, so I don't know that's for, that's for everybody to talk about I think the mindset's better um, you know, I think there's a one or two who probably lacked in it from a performance point of view Mohamed Siraj and for the second over outside the off stump and left alone I think there's one or two who you know, we said you know, I was one of the ones that was, was ranting beforehand and I think it's the, my position was not one size fits all when it comes to preparation. You know that more than anything, Bats, when it comes to the coaching point of view. Some will get there earlier than others. Some will take a little bit longer. Um, I think Ollie Robinson's the biggest case in point. Um, but I think the mindset that England have gone into this series has been what's a point of difference of why England's been able to stay in the series and been a, con been a contest as opposed to the last few times they've been out there. Siraj and again just uh, wide enough to be left again by Crawley who's now left five of his uh, eight deliveries faced. There's been a conscious effort to bowl wider early to Zach Crawley. You look at the Bummer's last over. I didn't think it was a great last over but there has been a plan you know, throughout this series. First 10, 15, 20 balls. You know, Zach Crawley's had to leave because England have, uh, I mean India have bowled it out there. They've left it outside off stump where they've tried to swing it away from him with the odd one brought back in but they are making an effort to leave it outside off stump. Oh that's full and it's attempted drive from Zach Crawley that was a millionaire's cover drive that he specializes in so so well and it was uh, it was a little too wide to be fair and he's missed it for, the, for that exact reason for that exact reason you know they, they basically said right we're gonna pull our lens back bowl it around the sort of four and a half five meter length try and get it to go over the top of off stump from a wide area see if we can get Zach Crawley coming across his crease they've gone for the in swinger he's played really well through sort of straight mid wicket which is you know the, from a balance point of view is perfect technically here is Sirajin once again and uh, this time it is a glorious cover drive off drive and it's the first boundary of the innings. Siraz going slightly too full and close enough for Crawley to have all the room that he needed to play a beautiful drive. Seven without loss. A oh, risk reward from Siraj. This ball is the risk and it goes for four through extra cover. Lovely extra cover drive. The previous ball in the over, he didn't quite get that left foot down Crawley. So he's playing on the move, does him on the outside edge. But as we know, from this explosive England partnership. If you keep doing it and you miss by an inch, whack, it's gone for four. Nice to see Jasper Boomer carrying the ball to Siraj with a word of encouragement or advice or opinion. Beats him outside the off stump with the next one. That's a beauty. Zach Crawley, he's getting this. There's plenty of shape around. This, and this has been this has been Mohamed Siraj's series, hasn't it? He's bowled with good shape early on with a brand new ball. He's either been you know, bowl an absolute jaffer. He's been belted for four. He's been very expensive in the early part of each of the first and in the second innings with the new ball to, to a point where I think there's been an element of trust from Robert Sharma and how long he's utilised Mohamed Siraj for. Crawley and Duckett really have getting on top of him. Here is uh, Siraj in once again outside the off stump and uh, left alone. Last ball of the over. Two overs gone. One from Bumra, one from Siraj. It is a, a, a magnificent uh, part of the world, 
Himachal Pradesh Cricket Stadium in Dharamshala. And if uh, you hear, as you will do, different uh, pronunciations and you see different spellings of Dharamshala over the course of the Test match, then um, for once uh, we're all right. Because uh, the uh, translation from the original transcript of the word, the name of the town, has never been finalised, and so uh, the authorities just said, all right, well, we've got four spellings, just let's make them all official. And there's been no uh, clear guidance on pronunciation as well. So, Harmi, you've come up with a couple of uh, variations, and guess what? They're all right. They're all right, yeah. Well, you, you've got the right people on here. You've got a Geordie on, you've got a Yorkshireman <laughs> on. So, from an English language point of view, we'll get it right, won't we, Bats? <laughs> this is our kind of teaching. <laughs> How would you like to spell it, Gareth? <laughs> As it says on screen. <laughs> I, I'm not even sure I could uh, say the letters that are in it. Well, um, we're going with Dharamshala um, for the most part. Here's Bumrah again. Beauty to duck it. What a late away swinger. It kept very, very low as well. And duck it looks like slightly quizzical. Like if someone's told him a joke he doesn't understand. He's had a little push at that one. He's missed it by quite a lot. Yeah, I think both of these England openers, because of the, the services in, the, in this series of keeping their feet very much within the, uh, the sort of um, what you would see from the tram lines on the TV screen when it goes to DRS. They're keeping within the, the width of the stumps and they're trying not to get dragged outside. But the bat face, because of the swing, is just getting pulled away from them at the minute. Three slips in, Bumrah balls another beauty to duck it and he'll be happy to feel bat on ball there as he guides it into the gully. The other point about Dharamshala is that, like uh, many places of extreme beauty, it's uh, quite a challenge to get to. Uh, the airport is uh, a hair-raising uh, prospect, even in good weather. And um, very often, uh, the weather is not good in the foothills of the Himalayas, and aircraft uh, flights are frequently postponed or even cancelled. And uh, we made some friends when we were over there in Hyderabad and Vishakhapatnam, who stayed in touch with me, uh, their flight uh, two days ago was cancelled, not delayed or postponed, cancelled. Um, so uh, they faced an interesting journey. Here is uh, Boomerang, that's a snorter. That is a magnificent ball. Back of a length, bounce and movement away from Duckett, who again has that quizzical look on his face. Get a bat on that. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Oh, wow, we thought we might see some early movement. Uh, with the atmospheric conditions and a little tinge of green in places on the surface, but not to this degree. This is pitched about middle stump, square duck it up, so he ends up just standing with his hips and <laughs> shoulders square down to the bowler, Bumrah, and it's beat him on the outside edge. I reckon that's deviated about whoa, a foot. It's gone nicely off the seam. <laughs> no wonder he missed it by so much. That's uh, pushed away out towards backward point, and... Uh, Fielded by Devdutt Padikal, who comes into the side for Rajat Padatai and two Indian changes. So, uh, yeah, this uh, small group, uh, not one of the major tour groups, but uh, six of them um, were given the bad news that they had no flight to Dharamshala. Um, uh, but the consolation was that uh, there was a taxi laid on for them and they were expecting it to be a 15-hour drive. Oh, I tell you what, I've got <coughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't say I don't envy them, but... Trying to get to London last night was, was a challenge as well. So it's not just India that countries are in a shocker when it comes to uh, this country's in it. Unbelievable. I think 10 hours it took me yesterday to get from Newcastle to London. Here's uh, Jasper Bumra, and uh, that's back of length and steered away by Duckett into the gully. And <laughs> there's no run. Take the positive, Steve. You were on a train for 10 hours. I was throwing for 10 hours yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, there are every cloud and all that. Uh, at least I had Wi-Fi at some points of my journey. But, yeah, I started off on one train, ended up going on a different train. I think if I looked at the map on the country, I think I went in four different directions at some point yesterday, trying to get here last night. I was, I was expecting, fully expecting, to come in straight from King's Cross at some point early hours this morning, straight here. But I managed to get some sleep. Here's uh, Bumray in once again, and uh, Duckett struck on the pads. He tries to work it away through the leg side, and uh, a leg by is confirmed by umpire Rod Tucker. Three overs gone, England eight without loss. It is a dramatic uh, place to get to, and I'm talking about Dharamshala rather than London Bridge.
<laughs> yeah, depends where you're coming from. Um, the, the one thing I'll say after watching these three overs, I think what we could see if you get in charge of this game, when it comes to, from a batting point of view, you can get runs on the board, you might see some tactical declarations because what it looks like, that's a swing. That's not seeing bats, that's massive swing. And I would imagine Jimmy Anderson would be licking his lips thinking if you can get in control when the runs you know, declare an overnight or coming up first thing in the morning with a brand new ball. You know, Jimmy Anderson would be in the game. Yeah, I think the morning and the evening of, of the, the start and finish of, of the game throughout the days, you're going to see some swing movement. I think the moisture in the air, the mountains are going to play their part. The atmospheric conditions. It's an interesting one because we've seen spin all series. And if it's turning a lot, you would basically just say ball lots of balls in that area in that line. Is it the same when the ball's swinging? Yeah, I think so. I think... You know, the risk and wood we're talking about a little bit earlier, but it's also having the person to swing it. Bummer has swung it big time there. Siraj, you see him. Siraj into Duckett. It's uh, pushed it out towards short leg, and uh, just momentarily the fielder at short mid on thought that uh, he was uh, in the business of uh, a potential catch. Rohit Sharma, the skipper, has actually just come out from first slip into short mid on, and it was in the air for a while. And hadn't actually picked that uh, fielding change up, but Rohit uh, is obviously onto something. Yeah, Rohit's just, he's took himself out of slip, I think. He's took one slip out, and then, you know, the Sirajas. Duckett now plays forcefully from the crease, punching it up to mid off. Yeah, Sirajas changed the angle. He had a couple of balls around the wicket, and now he's gone back over the wicket, and he's probably more swing bowler than, than, uh, than Bumra. When you look in the England side, there's, it's Anderson. You know, Mark Wood swings it a, a touch, but not as, not probably as much as what Jasper Bummer does. But obviously, you've got Jimmy Anderson. Wouldn't surprise me if you see Ben Stokes bowling in this Test match as well. And Ben is somebody who can get the ball off the straight when it comes laterally through the air. Full and very wide, and a very very flat-footed swish at this one from uh, Ben Duckett. He. he I know that he doesn't use his feet a great deal, and he's a very handsy player, but that was, that was an ordinary waft at that, very wide. Yeah, I think often people talk about uh, batters getting scrambled with high pace. We're not seeing high pace here, but we're seeing high movement, and I think it's the same principle. Duckett's just not quite as composed. His foot movement isn't quite as precise as it has been throughout the four test matches, and it's because of the lateral movement. Here is... Uh Siraj once again into Duckett, plays it away out towards mid-wicket, and uh, there's no run. Dharamshala also, uh, of course, I'm sure that uh, our learned listeners will be aware of this, is uh, the home of the Tibetan government in exile, and has been since 1960, the uh, Dalai Lama resident in uh, the small suburb of McLeod Gange. That's where he hangs out, the Dalai Lama. And uh, some of the uh, England squad went to visit him yesterday. This is uh, always uh, an inspiring no, no, no. occasion. And that one is uh, clipped out towards mid-wicket, half-fielded by Shubman Gill, who parries it, knocks it on. Not all of the players went, all of the management did. Um, Marcus Truscothic and Cheetan Patel and uh, Paul Collingwood and uh, all of the, the coaching staff and management uh, went to meet uh, His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Um, there were half a dozen players. Yeah, I must say that the, when you, I, I have actually met the Dalai Lama, uh, but the, his people around him, his entourage, are intimidating to say the least. I mean, they, they treat him as a deity. They, they, he is their lord and master and a godlike figure and, and the security is quite intimidating and when you finally actually meet the chap he's so down to earth <laughs> welcoming and and uh, um, you know when I said earlier that it was 18 degrees I don't think it's reached 18 degrees yet I think that's a forecast high for the day beautiful delivery from Siraz beats Crawley outside the off stump absolute ripper once again late movement through the air and uh, Crawley's just phlegmatic about it just shakes his head and um, and says, well, you know, he can't do anything about those. So who, who would, would the players be asked to, would, would, you, would you be asking for volunteers who'd like to meet the Dalai Lama, or are they picked out of a hat? Because I, yeah, I don't think the whole squad could have gone. They wouldn't have been able to fit in. No, I think it's just the ones that want to go will, will want to go. There's probably some that have met him before. I remember 
my first trip to India, we got asked to go to Taj Mahal. And I went, and then the second and third trip I've been there, they asked again, and I was like, I'm not spending four hours in a bus to go and, you know, as much as it's a great sight, it's a great view. You, once you've seen it once, you've seen it all, you've seen it, that's it. I, I would agree about the Taj Mahal. Uh, you get, like, commit to it, and give it the whole thing. Um, you know, and it's a it's a full day, it's, and, and I mean a full day. Duck it, beaten, absolute beauty again from Bumra, who's quite amused by how much movement there is for him at the moment. Yeah, so one times Taj Mahal would do me, but um, I think the Dalai Lama is just such an extraordinary man. I'd I'd, I'd I'd tick that box if I had another chance. Yeah, it was pretty evident. I would suggest that players would never be forced to, but uh, the guys who knew they weren't playing, I'd exchange a couple of messages with Gus, Gus Atkinson last night. He was there. Make no mistake. You're taking the drinks tomorrow, pal. You're going to be there. Don't worry about it. Whether, whether he wanted to or not, he was there. I'm sure he wanted to. Who wouldn't want to meet the Dalai Lama? That's uh, nudged away out on the onside. But you prefer me the day before a test match. I, look, it, it, re it requires... I mean, I know that he he lives in Dharamshala or sort of on the outskirts of Dharamshala, but but it's it's still a full day, isn't it? Once you've ticked all the security boxes and you know got on the bus and done all, everything you need to do, and and as I said, there are various sort of uh, layers of um, security and protocol that you have to go through in order to actually get to the Dalai Lama, which in increases the experience uh, dramatically when you actually meet him. Because I say he's just <laughs> so down to earth. Here is uh, Bumra once again and uh, pushed away by Ben Duckett up towards Midon and Ashwin Fields. Nine without loss. I, put it this way, I can imagine more onerous chores like going to visit a local leather making factory which would have been less inspiring <laughs> than meeting His Holiness. Only one photographer allowed in. So, yeah, there's, as I said, a lot of um, security and um, cultural protocol required. So uh, that's tucked away. Lo lovely shot from Duckett. Beautiful piece of timing. Didn't, unusually, try to hit that too hard. It really was just a gentle push through mid-wicket. Ashwin does the chasing. Once again, looks like a man who's just run half a marathon, Ashwin, but uh, pulls up just in front. His 100th test. Congratulations to him on that. He was... And deeply underwhelmed when uh, he spoke about the achievement of uh, reaching 100 test matches. Really, uh, very, very much like it's just a number. He sort of wanted to say, Ashwin, it, celebrate it for your supporters if you're not motivated by it. <laughs> 12 overs gone, England winning the toss, batting first, Crawley 7, Duckett 4. Fifth and final test match coming to you from the Himachal Pradesh Cricket Association Stadium in the beautiful city of Dharamshala as uh, Bumrah is in again outside the off stump and uh, that's left alone by Crawley. I have to say England have done very well to get through the first five overs. There's been a lot of movement, maybe too much actually. Yeah, possibly. Uh, it all comes back to the, the length and, and the line that you're bowling without sounding boring. Um, but you've got to just be patient in that area over and over again and don't expect every ball to have the movement and then when it does have that extravagant movement hopefully it's full enough that it finds the edge if it's just that bit shorter looks pretty great to talk about great to throw your hands up in the air isn't going to find the edge here is uh, Bumra outside the off stump again and uh, Crawley wisely leaves alone it's been a very interesting first five overs England winning the toss batting first 12 without loss Crawley 7 Duckett 4 more from uh, Gareth Batty on line length and the Dalai Lama and um, then it'll be John Norman for the next 20 minutes. Yeah, the interesting piece there with Ashwin, we saw him uh, presentating, uh, presentating with the cap and his family there, etc. Um, and saying he was underwhelmed by the 100 test matches. I mean, obviously that isn't the case. And having a look at the surface when we saw it on the, on the pitch report, I think we can suggest that five weeks ago he knew he was getting his 100th cap today because if there weren't 15 left arm over the wicket bowlers playing in that Rajasthan Trophy game, I don't know what I'm looking at with the foot marks because it's beautifully placed for him outside off stump it to is, the right hand. It is beautifully placed, and again, it's like the, the first Test match in Hyderabad, there was there was foot marks there, and he made the most of that. And again, I think he will come into it as the game goes on. 
Here is Siraj as Ben Duckett just drills this straight to Ravishandran Ashwin, stationed at mid -on. Good morning to uh, to you all on TalkSport, TalkSport 2 and the TalkSport Cricket YouTube channel. Uh, I'm John Norman, alongside not the Dalai Lama, but uh, Steve Harmison, who brings a zen-like quality <laughs> wherever he goes, and, uh, and Gareth Batty, uh, the head coach of Surrey. And England have won the toss, if you're just joining us here this morning. They've won the toss, and absolutely no surprise whatsoever, they decided to bat. And Duckett is uh, climbing into a full wide delivery from Mohamed Siraj. And uh, that has been smashed to the boundary for four. 16 without loss, England, at the start of the sixth over. Yeah, first time there's been real big width that... You know, it hasn't been swing, that's just fallen off the action of, of Mohamed Siraj. He's tried to go that little bit fuller, he's trying to swing it back in by looking at the seam position, but he's just lost his wrist a little bit, give Duckett first chance to get his hands free, and you know, it, India have bowled a lot of balls coming back into Duckett, ball away from Zach Crawley, but trying to cramp you know, Ben Duckett for room, trying to swing it back in. The two or three balls that have nipped away from Duckett have probably gone off the seam more than you know, through the, laterally through the air but it is swinging there's a short mid wicket in place as on the pads drifts to Siraj and the ball doesn't go to short mid wicket it goes to square leg where Shubman Gill is stationed I'd like to see how far short of the field of this ball has dropped I don't think it's too far from him nope one bouncing in those two mitts yeah you can see the tactic from India Roit Sharma at a straight mid wicket catching there's a mid on and he's not that deep at mid on and your, your square leg just in front is just creeping in front of the umpire just for that ball like we saw there just staying in the surface I don't think it is staying in the surface it's just a different surface to the previous four test matches here is Duckett and he's forward again and plays this back to Siraj who fields from his own bowling yeah India are giving Duckett the the extra cover freedom to hit the ball through extra cover not something that Ben Duckett is you know, really comfortable doing unless it's really, really full. And you know, India trying to swing that back into him, trying to cram him for rule. He has that that way of closing the face, and if it does go nip off it, look, try and sort of catch the the sort of leading edge, and have got two slips and a gully in play. Got that backward point because of the one that just doesn't swing. He opens a face on, so it, it's a good feel. But you've got to you know be nailed on when it comes to lines and length. And India, to be fair to duck it this morning, they have been. They've changed their tactics to Duckett, haven't they, as the, as the series has progressed. It's just whether he's got the answers to it straight again. And uh, straight to Rohit Sharma. Close to uh, the batter on the leg side. So Duckett is eight not out. Crawley is seven. Uh, these two have had a, a pretty successful partnership at the top of the order. Six of the top eight opening stands between the two sides um, have taken place between Crawley and Duckett. The problem with England of course is that the runs have started to dry up there's been problems in the middle order rather than the top we've kind of like it's a complete flip on where England were for so many years but a lot of that has been against the spin not the seam absolutely it's part of where you're playing I suppose is this is clipped into the leg side and fielded athletically by Shubman Gill trying to get uh, the blood pumping around the body it's, uh, it's a little bit nippy out there you'd relish these conditions wouldn't you Harmy yeah, you, you, you'd, you'd feel as though I could bowl more than four overs. I think that's, as a, as a fast bowler, when you're out there, you think, you know, I can get the, the, you know, the oxygen back in the lungs and get a fifth over, a sixth over in, especially when you see lavish movement that that has done. It probably just keeps energising the bowler. So, you know, you'll see, I would imagine you'll see Bumra and Siraj bowl that little bit longer throughout that, probably that first hour. But watching this morning, Bats, I think Jimmy Anderson will be licking his lips thinking, I need two for 700. I might fancy them this week. Crawley then, Jasper Boomer, who's uh, got a couple to beat the outside edge of Zach Crawley's bat so far this morning. Seven from 15, Zach Crawley. Boomer back in the side after being rested for the fourth test match in Ranchi with three slips and a gully. And this is too wide and left alone by Crawley. Yeah, I think I can kind of understand the psyche here because if you're a fast bowler and you're in India and you see this swing 
you're thinking, give me the ball, and I ain't, let, I ain't giving you it back until I've got a few wickets in my pocket. It's the same principle as a, a spinner in England. As soon as you see it go off the straight as a spinner, you go, give me that ball, because I don't get this opportunity very often. I'm going to take it with both hands. Just seen. Oh, go on. No, I was going to say, we would possibly say it would be critical that Bumrah's bowl wide at Crawley, but I think this is a plan that India have got to Zach Crawley. I think it has looked as though Zach Crawley's left balls comfortably. I think this is a big plan of India, trying to get him across the crease, trying to get him to leave, and then go at one that he shouldn't. Boomer again, and uh, Crawley is beaten. This is straighter. Good bounce, good carry. And it uh, whistles past the outside edge of the bat. Yeah, I would say over the four games, it's pretty obvious that um, the plans have changed fractionally. They're looking to ball over middle stump to duck it and challenges outside edge from that natural variation going across him. But to Crawley, they're wanting to bowl that fourth off stump and just drag him towards the slips with the odd one running back to either deviate back a long way and hit him on the pad or stumps and try and catch him on the crease or get him to chop the ball onto the stumps. How much do you think they've missed Mohamed Siraj? Oh, not Siraj, uh, Mohamed Shami uh, beaten again this time, Crawley playing inside the line. Yeah, I think they've missed him because I don't think Mohamed Siraj has bowled that well in this series. I think he's, he's, he's wasted the new ball on numerous occasions. I think during that time, it hasn't been, uh, I don't think it's been punished because it's been more spin friendly, some of these surfaces, but I think Mohamed Sa uh, Shami would have caused England a few more problems with that new ball, especially the opening partnership. Like you just mentioned, six out of the top eight have been you know, from England in, the, in this series, and I think Shami would have challenged that. I haven't seen that the Lightning start this time, though. This is beaten all ends up by Jasper Brumra with uh, a quite wonderful delivery, which has turned Zach Crawley inside out. There is quizzical looks all around on the field and in the commentary box Steve Harmison how on earth has Crawley not been dismissed by that ball yeah I think I might have been how how was that missed from Jam Jasper Brummer that is an absolute beauty Zach Crawley's trying to clip this not off his legs because what Bats was describing before Zach Crawley the reason why he's played so well because his balance has been good and he's, he's played the ball through straight mid wicket brilliantly that there he's trying to clip through square leg He's gone all round. That's not old-fashioned Zach Crawley. That's just he's seeing the ball come down angle-wise. And he's thinking, right, that's a clip off the hip to square leg. And that's then deviated, whether it's gone through the air or nipped off the surface as well and got over the top of middle and off stump. Absolute beaut. Looks like an 88-mile-an-hour leg break from uh, Boomerow, who is in again. And this just uh, evades a diving gully fielder. Crawley will take four. But there's no doubt about it. Bumra is all over the England opener. England uh, have yet to lose a wicket, but many more deliveries like this, and surely India will strike. Yeah, Bumra persevering with that sort of corridor of uncertainty, about fourth, four and a half stumps with a little bit of movement out. A fraction four on this occasion from Bumra. Crawley groping outside that off stump, doesn't quite get his feet in place, so he's a little bit on the move, finds a fat outside edge. But fortune favours the brave for for Crawley and it flies off down to third man for four. Last ball of uh, Jasper Boomer is over. It's been an eventful couple of deliveries. Crawley readying himself as Boomer is in and again extravagant seam movement away from the bat of Crawley who's on the drive. A little rueful smile up the track. Uh, you don't get that at the Spitfire ground. Uh, England though are unbeaten at the early stages of their innings after winning the toss and deciding to bat first. 20 without loss as uh, there is a change in the commentary box as well. Jarrah Kimber and Alex Tudor joining me. Um, welcome to listeners on TalkSport and TalkSport 2 via the TalkSport Cricket YouTube channel. You're just joining us, England won the toss. They've decided to bat first. One change with Mark Wood coming in for Ollie Robinson. Uh, that was announced yesterday. India left uh, their 11 late. And they had to make a late change with uh, Rajat Padada, who was hit on the uh, ankle during training yesterday, pulled up sore this morning. So, uh, a debut for uh, Dev Dutt Padakal. And as you've just been hearing, Jasprit Bumra back in the side as well. And it's uh, Mohamed Siraj as he pitches this delivery up to Ben Duckett. And it uh, comes forward and plays this up to mid on. Chudes, morning to you, mate. Are you well? Morning, Johnny. Morning, everybody. Yeah, I'm good. 
What a delivery in that last over. Mate, eh? we see some seeds this morning, haven't we? Oof. Wow. I never had a risk to be able to do that type of delivery we saw from Jasper Brummer of all four. Maybe a Martin Picknell. Oh, what a ledge. What a ledge he was. Jared, you well? Siraj is in, and this is cut away by uh, Ben Duckett. There's a chase for Jadeja. He'll pull the ball back at the second attempt inside the boundary. That's a deep backward point, and uh, Crawley comes back for a second. Yeah, all well, good. I, I mean, looking at this pitch, it's quite interesting. Of the 66 first-class grounds in uh, India, according to Craig Viz, this has the highest percentage of seam deliveries bowled. 76% in first class cricket um, obviously this wicket is it's got a little bit of grass on it in some places but it's not quite some of the uh, wickets we've seen up north in this ground before usually it has a slightly bit of carry and pace I would say than what we've seen so far but certainly still helping the pace bowlers but I'll tell you the difference in average in a minute which is incredible as well Siraj again and defended by Duckett no run spin average is 54 um, per wicket here and seam average is 28 per wicket. Now, clearly, they're trying to make this wicket a little bit more friendly for spin. Otherwise, India wouldn't have picked three of them. <laughs> but that does tell you what kind of a wicket this generally is up here. So um, it's uh, certainly uh, when I saw the, what was it, Australia play here in the deciding test match in uh, 2017, Australia was shocked at the pace and carry. And actually, India completely outbowled them because they, they, they weren't quite sure what to do. Yeah, that was an interesting game. Siraj again, and uh, on the pads, clip to, to square leg, no run. Also, the Australian batters, I remember talking to them afterwards, and they were like, we'd be playing on wickets that hadn't bounced above the knee all year. And, you know, for three months or whatever to prepare, and then in the series themselves. And then they got out, and uh, they kept nicking off. It was, um, it was one all going into that test match, wasn't it? Yeah. It was the fourth test. And we'll probably talk about it a little bit later on, actually, when Koldip Yadav comes on. But it was his debut. And he made the difference. Can you remember? Yeah, um, he got Maxwell uh, with, with one that Maxwell just didn't understand at all. Suraj again. And this is Ariel again. He clips us to the leg side as uh, Ben Duckett. That's not a million miles away from Shubman Gill. We've seen one drop short already. This one, uh, not quite as close to the fielder, but Duckett not in control of this shot. 22 without loss. Yeah, it's a plan, isn't it? Just try and tuck him up, keep it at close. Just not carried. It's kind of the opposite of what most teams do, is which is bang it short of a length outside or stump to him. So <laughs> clearly they've, they've seen something within his technique. I think they just got bored of waiting for him to edge it to slips, didn't they? So they thought, oh, he's a little surprise, a little uh, tempter, really. And Ben Duckett tries to pull this delivery. The length isn't there. It's well wide. Again, no connection on the bat. And zips through to the keeper, Jarrell. 22 without loss. That's the normal uh, length that you would bowl to Duckett. But he decided to smack this over the leg side. Um, he was about as close to it as we are to the ground. <laughs> I mean, I... I can't really explain that shot. It's a t it's test match, but I know the game's moved on and these young men uh, play the positive intent. But generally what you'll see in a series, don't you, buddy, back end of the series, the fielding side will think of plans and, you know, the batter's got runs in the, during the series and then it's like, right, okay, actually, he's, he's not that great when you bowl and try and tuck him up or, he, you know, when he plays off his hip, the ball's in the air for a while. Let's get someone there. Brummer is back and Crawley is facing and Crawley an expansive on the up drive which goes square of the wicket. Not a million miles away from Shubman Gill who's now at points and he'll pick up four runs and I think Crawley who was beaten comprehensively on a couple of occasions in the last over is just thinking if it's anywhere near me now it's pitched up I'm going for it. Yes yeah, when that height comes in. Six foot six or so is Zach Crawley. Stands tall. Fr it's a fraction of whip, and he just throws his hands at it. Goes airily, but hit powerfully. Is that Shubman Gill at point still? He's just taken a couple of steps to his left. So following the ball, a touch. As uh, Boomer is in, right arm over the wicket. Pass the umpire now. And, uh, well, 
Crawley gets away out of this. This is well short, well wide, and also moves. And Crawley just comes down. I don't know if that hit a divot, if it, if it came off the seam. But again, there was movement extracted from the surface by Jasper Bumra. I'm not a massive rip leader. That hit a crack. That, and he goes, uh, yeah, he said he goes, uh, it's hit a crack. You can see a I'm crack there, that. can't you? Quite mm. a sizable one. It's probably not a dangerous one for this game. Unless you're a left-hander and it goes the other way. But <laughs> It's very wide. Yeah, so it's, it's wide it's, and short. Yeah, so it's when they're straight is the one you have to worry. Boomer again, beaten again, Crawley. That was a leg spinner. <laughs> it's like he's bowling on a slope, the old Lord slope, <laughs> isn't it? It's just going at right angles. Uh, I mean, you can tell uh, it's tricky out there because England uh, 26 runs after almost nine overs. <laughs> I mean, that, that last ball, that hit a crack again, by the way. And that was a little bit closer. That one is a straight to crack, <laughs> yeah. And Ollie mm. Pope got a pair last. <laughs> He's like, oh, no, really, I don't really want to be seeing this. What is, what's the false shot percentage this morning? I wonder if Crickviz can let us know 15 at Crawley from 24 deliveries three slips and a gully and this is straighter and Crawley is through the shot too soon and the ball just lobs up over the bowler no timing whatsoever it's a leading edge Boomer is all over Crawley this morning but Crawley is still there comes back for a second he moves to 17 and England are 28 without loss yeah it's great bowling seaming away Crawley getting through his shot way too early it's not coming on as he thinks and he's lucky that it's gone gun barrel straight straight off mid on aerial for a while Crawley again this is pitched up again and once again Crawley who is through the shot too early trying to clip the ball to mid wicket is a leading edge and it pops up over Rohit Sharma an extra cover and Crawley comes back for another second you called the first one a leading edge and it looked like it, but the first one was kind of off the middle. It was just that he sliced it. That one had to be a leading edge. I was shocked if that was off any, anywhere else other than the outside edge. It's full at leg stump. Oh, and he's, yeah, he's just tried to flick that on the leg side. He had no idea what he was doing then, uh, Crawley. His feet and his head were in the wrong position. His head was at off stump, the ball's on leg stump, and his hands were outside his body, Jude. Yeah, his hands way into in front of him, but what's happening, he's getting sucked into the line but Boomer with that wrist is getting movement and he's trying to play it on the leg side and it's staying straight and moving away and he's getting a fat edge of that one, he's lucky. Somehow England has scored eight runs from this over, one ball left of it and that's how you play Jasper Boomer straight. Back to the bowler, no run, another eventful over, 30 without loss uh, England and after a word from Jarrah Kimber. It will be Andrew McKenna to take us through the next 20 minutes. John was talking about the false shot percentage. And I've been looking up England batters since baseball, and their false shot percentages have gone up. And of course, that makes sense because they're taking more risks in the way that they're playing. But not that all the false shots today were from those risks, of course. Some of those were some, were some very good balls. But you, you do have a look at it. And you, um, so in the last uh, couple of years, Crawley's been had a false shot percentage of around 25%, and yet it's been the best time of his career. And uh, what he's basically doing is he's, he's scoring. Even then, when he's made some mistakes in that over, because of the looking to put, you know, have some intent, put the pressure back on India, he's still scoring even when he's playing false shots. Whereas I think if you look at the period where he was struggling, Jude, he was just kind of sitting there waiting for an edge to go to slip. Hello, Maka. Morning, everyone. TalkSport, TalkSport 2, and of course the TalkSport Cricket YouTube channel. Uh, thank you very much for joining us at this time of the morning. There's plenty going on. Nine overs in, England 30 without loss. Once again, one of those stories that the scoreboard doesn't always tell the tale. A couple of those deliveries from Bumrah have been off the charts brilliant. But they're wicketless so far. Siraj to start a new over. He's bowling to the left-handed Duckett over the wicket. Duckett clips to short mid-wicket. And there is no run. Duckett 10 from 28. Crawley 19 from 27. That ball, though, that looked like it was going a foot down leg side and went straight over the top of middle. Wow, what a delivery. And I was just thinking out the back of the box. James Anderson sitting on 698 test match wickets. There's a reason he wanted to play in this one, folks. Yeah, definitely. There's been prodigious seam movement. Great wrist on display. 
No shade of batters getting duped into the line, but obviously there's great seam movement. A few cracks on the pitch. Siraj is on the way once again past the umpire. Duckett just playing defensively to mid on, and there's no run. Well, the Ranji Trophy games played this year, Spin hasn't taken a single wicket. I can see why. Um, they, they don't get many overs, I would have thought. Also, this is one without any grass on it. A lot of the first class wickets would have a bit of grass as well, so you can imagine what it must be like playing seam bowling up here. Well, it's a chilly old day. There's a lot of beanies. There are a lot of beanies, gloves, scarves. A bit of mist coming off of the uh, the Himalayas. A Siraj comes in and bowls once again. It's a roundabout leg stump and Duckett flicks it away. Backward of square. Coldeep will do the fielding down on the uh, deep square leg boundary. Flicked away nicely by uh, Duckett for only a single. 31 without loss, England. Yeah, a lot of risk for a single there. Again, not completely in control of it. But one thing I would say is, Jude, I think these two have... If this, if this was the first test, we just see Duckett coming down the wicket. We don't see him do that very often, by the way. Um, if this had been the first test in the series and they didn't have the confidence that these two have, I think they probably would have already lost a wicket by now. But they've played so well that they're kind of riding the storm just that little bit better than, you know, it, confidence just plays a big part, doesn't it? Yeah, massively. You know, being backed by your captain and your coach gives an individual player that confidence just to go out there and... Siraj in, Crawley solidly off the middle of the bat to uh, mid off, no run. To go out there and perform and do, and, and go out and show people why they've been picked, why they've been selected. As you say, Zach Crawley's most probably having the best time in an England shirt. Ben Duckett's doing extremely well. And sometimes you do need that luck. I think it's one of those ones, Gerald, you have to see off the new ball. New ball looks like it's doing loads. See it off. It's like old school test cricket mm. and then go and score your runs. I think day two is going to be most probably best time to bat. Siraj for the fifth ball of the over. Makes his way in. Right arm over. Crawley, big stride into that. And he beats mid-off. Ashwin can't get across. And it's away for four. Zach Crawley goes to 23. England go to 35 without loss. With a uh, lovely off drive that beats mid-off. Yeah, beautiful shot. Siraj just getting full in length. Zach Crawley jumping all over that textbook. Extra cover drive there. Full extension of the arms. Good stride. And once he hit it, yeah, Ashwin just waving that on, really. When you got 100 test matches yeah, you, in the you, bank, you can do that. Yeah, you can do. Lovely shot. Final ball of the over then. Five from the over. And Siraj is in. Oh, my goodness. That is three quarters of a metre, maybe even more wide of off stump. Crawley threw his hand to that one, and it goes under the under edge and bounces for a second time before it gets to uh, Jurel behind the stumps to end the over here on TalkSport, TalkSport 2, and the TalkSport Cricket YouTube channel. England, 35 without loss. Yeah, I mean, the ball was out there to be hit. It was more the fact that it rolled along the ground. That's the sort of one that you drag back onto your stumps, which would be a weird way to go out today, uh, considering everything we've seen. Uh, they just flashed up on the TV, macro. I don't know if you saw it, the average swing for the first 10 overs in the test matches so far. So it was less than one degree, uh, 0.4 degrees, 0.5 degrees, and 0.8 degrees. That's first test, second test, third test, fourth test. It, so far, 2.4 degrees it's uh, swung. So a lot more. I think is the answer. Well, come to the Himalayas and see its wing. <laughs> is this the advertising strap line they've never used for this part of the world? So far, they, that's because they didn't employ you. Well, maybe they should. Maybe they've, maybe they've now thought of it. It's going to be Bumro around the wicket to the left-handed Duckett. Just brings him forward, pushes quietly to uh, cover and takes a single. England 36 without loss. And without um, surprise, uh, Crick is also saying of the seven innings so played so far in this series, today's been the highest percentage of plays and misses in the first 10 overs, 25%. Yeah, I could, I, that kind of backs up what we've seen with our own eyes, hasn't it? So Also, the most leaves, which is shocking because Duckett's out there. <laughs> Absolutely. How many, how many leaves does it say? It's 18% of, of the leaves. I'd be interested to see how many... Duckett has done because I think he only has 30 odd in his entire test career. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I don't know how many he's added this morning. 
We're in the 11th over. Bummer is going to come in for the second ball of it over the wicket and bowls to Crawley, bringing him forward. And he pushes to uh, Rohit at mid off, and there's no run. Yeah, the more I'm, more I'm watching, I'm thinking a little bit like the last test match, you know, when the, the new ball did all the work, and then as it got older, it became a little bit easier to bat. I feel it's the same possibly on this wicket. So, so they're playing sensibly. You know, see off the dangerous bowlers. And as you said, spin doesn't really get many wickets here. So maybe you might be able to, to tuck into them and then make the bowlers, the seamers, bowl more spells. They're not going to be too hot. <laughs> They're certainly not going to be that problem today. Jasper Bummer goes in with the inducker to Crawley. He, uh, the bat turns in his hand. He's closing the face anyway. And it's clipped away to uh, mid-wicket. And they'll take a single. And the pair to my left both start giggling like children. What have you spotted? So I don't know if you could hear it. Um, but just uh, Boomer walked down the wicket going, you've got to be joking to Crawley. <laughs> Basically saying, I cannot believe you're still here. But just, Siraj just has hurt his knee here, by the way. I think it's probably, it might be an overextension. I don't think it's anything massive. Um, uh, just having a look. So he went to field the ball. I'm going to guess his foot slides. Oh. Yes, his right foot. I think that was just an overextension, wasn't it? So it's gone the other direction, if that makes sense. Um, and uh, just hurt him for a moment. He should be fine. Uh, well, he's got the old long spikes in to, uh, to bowl. Um, he, he just... Didn't get any purchase on the uh, the surface. That's nothing to do with... You remember from the World Cup there were concerns about the outfield. Nothing to do with that in that situation. Bummer around the wicket to uh, Duckett, who's playing back down the pitch to the bowler, and there is no run. But, yeah, Crawley... Uh, sorry, um, Bummer usually doesn't spend all that much time talking to the batters, but I think he, at this stage he is genuinely shocked that he doesn't have a wicket and that Crawley is still out there. Yeah, he's a little frustrated. He's bowled some absolute beauties this morning. Show him why he's number one in the world. He really, truly is great. But sometimes you need a little bit of luck. You need to ride it, but you need to go big. You need to go on. Burren, of course, had a week off. Didn't play in Ranchi. Back fresh and fit. He's got three slips in the gully waiting as he goes in and bowls. Now he's bowling a right arm around the wicket to the left-handed Duckett with that ball that starts in towards off stump and then starts to shape away. Takes the outside half of Duckett's bat and goes down into the gully. And there is no run. There's still, there's still plenty enough happening here if you're at the opening scene bowlers. But you think, as, as exactly what the boys have just said, Bummer up particularly, but Siraj also will be thinking, how have we not taken wickets? Bummer is one ball short of completing six overs. He's got naught for 20 so far. Siraj has got naught for 16 from his five overs that have been completed and in goes Bumra around the wicket and beats Duckett he's groping at that one he's coming forward he's playing at it it beats the outside edge it's through to the keeper Jarrell that ends 11 overs here on TalkSport TalkSport 2 and the TalkSport Cricket YouTube channel England 37 without loss yeah that's good bowling that natural angles coming in at Duckett he doesn't get a big stride in basically playing from the crease and the ball just leaving him and he sort of follows it, the curtain rail, as we call it. So sort of follows it, brings his back back. Really is good bowling, showing his repertoire. As Jasper Bummer, he's mostly thinking, as Macca says, how have I not got a wicket? He's bowled five overs. Six overs, sorry. And he's looked, he's looked extremely good. But they're riding it. And this is the debate I was having with people on social media. They were a little bit frustrated with the way that England were batting, you know, ultra positive. They're saying pit play the situation. Well, they're playing at the moment. They're playing well. 37 for none off 11. And when you win the toss, you don't want to be too many down at lunch. One at least. England have scored around three, three and a half runs and over for the last two test matches. And people are still saying that Basball was the reason they're losing. Like, they just haven't... I, I, Sometimes I wonder if people actually watch. Yeah. Like they're so like, ah, oh, everyone's throwing their wickets away. We had the Joe Root, we had the Joe Root uh, reverse scoop and a bad shot. I would say he played a worse shot earlier in the series than that. Eventually, Siraj is going to bowl the ball here. You <laughs> so he's, now, he's now come in twice. You, you'll have heard through the stump mic there is his pitter patter as he ran through the crease. 
I just wonder if that knee... Well, he's laughing, isn't he? So I don't think it's pain, but it might have just... It might not be feeling right as he's it coming just, in. It would have jarred it a little bit. You know, I've been in those situations. You run after runs, your legs go underneath you. Bambi or nice, they used to call me. And uh, so a little, it'd be a little bit jarring. But once he gets the blood flowing through that again, he'll be fine. It's the stride pattern, isn't it? That's the effect. Right, Siraj is going to deliver on this occasion. Right arm over the wicket. Outside half of Crawley's bat. It can't be stopped by... Uh, Devdutt Padikal who's in at uh, Gully at the moment and uh, they will take a single 38 without loss yes Devdutt Padikal in on his test match debut that's because Rajat Patidar was hit on the ankle during practice yesterday um, he uh, reported the soreness this morning so isn't involved so that's one of two changes for India uh, Jasprit Bumrah in for uh, Akash Deep the other one obviously we've seen plenty of Bumrah already this morning but Padikal will be making his uh, Test match debut with the bats. Well, later on, or well, fairly soon, he'll be hoping from an Indian point of view. From an England point of view, hopefully not till, well, oh, I don't know, after tea tomorrow. That'd be quite handy. Average is almost 45 in first class cricket, does Paddock out. He's watching as Siraj is in from the crease, is Duckett, and there is no run. Yeah, he's an elegant player. If you would have seen him, IPL, you know, tall. Left hand, another one. Elegant. Times it. Can hit it far as well. Yeah, in first class cricket, 2,227 runs at just under 45. Highest of 193 with 600s and 1250s. And he played uh, the second game against the England Lions, what feels like about a million years ago now. Uh, he made. Uh, he's watching there as uh, Siraj is clipped by Duckett down to long leg. And they'll take a single to take the score to 39 without loss. Uh, sorry, he played two games against the Lions. In the first, he made 105. And in the second, it was 65 and 21. So, uh, again, all those fringe players for India getting picked to play against the England Lions to, uh, well, get some red ball cricket, but also get them some exposure against the English style of play. You just look at how many of them have been used in this series. It's worked out for them. They just don't play a lot of Ranji Trophy cricket anymore. Um, so, you know, it makes sense to play them in those games also. Siraj is in and bowled, and that's a nice shot by Crawley. Stride into the ball, plays the off drive, and it's wide of mid-off. And again, it's away for four. 43 without loss. Crawley goes to 29. He's played two or three of those so far. And that is, without question, his best shot of the morning so far, that off-drive. Yeah, Mac, it's a repeat of the shot he played in last innings against Siraj. I think it was his second ball, just got long in length, jumped all over it, used his height, full extension on the arm, wide of cover, in between mid-off. Fantastic execution of that shot. And once it hit the bat, you knew it was four. He marches on 29 or 34, England 43 for none. England winning the toss and batting at 3.30 in the UK this morning. Coming up, what's what, four minutes to five? And England are yet to lose a wicket as Siraj goes in, takes Crawley on the pad. India are appealing hard for that. Joel Wilson's having nothing to do with it. Two noises, wasn't there? I think that, that big thing might have been slanting down leg side, but they're going to be chatting about the bat. There is a DRS conversation. <laughs> There is a DRS review by India. They're going to send it upstairs to Kumar Dharmasena. Yeah, I think this CBM is optimistic. Director, we have a player review for court. Original edition is not out. I have checked the foot. It's fair oh, delivery. Well, you can now, go Kumar Dharmasena said a review please. for court. Well, I did think he hit it, but there were two noises. It might have been his bat hitting his pad as well. The first uh, can you go to Ultra H, please? I can see a small gap between. I can see quite a big gap. <laughs> Would like to see the Ultra H. Pass through there. I don't know what the second noise though was. Line, Unless it's hit his front and back gap. pad. You can go to the. Yeah, yeah there is no batting wall, but uh, I would recommend you to go to the ball tracking. Uh, original edition goes as not out. Right, so the review was for court. So we now go to a review for Impacting LBW. Line and wickets umpire uh, score. You can go to the on-field umpire, Joel, you can make a signal, you can stay with your original decision, not out. You are on the screen, make your signal, please. Well, that was all very bizarre. It's out, it's not out, 
43 without loss it remains but well there we go I'd like to actually see the replay of where the ball went off of Crawley's pad because yeah. I, 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 don't, I didn't think anyone had actually caught it but anyway that's completely by the by I'm still confused where the second noise came from when we, when we first heard it come through so and India obviously heard it as well because they thought it was a catch um, in the end top of leg stump but not enough to overturn the not out Oh, Kumar Dharmasen is into the game as third umpire. Almost an hour played. Here comes Siraj to finish the over. A little bit straight and Crawley will clip to Jasprit Bumrah at mid-on to end the 12th over. 43 without loss. England here on TalkSport. TalkSport 2 and the TalkSport Cricket YouTube channel. Crawley's got 29 from 36. Duckett's faced the same amount of deliveries and made 13. Alex Tudor. Yes, Raj, well, I think that jolt in his knee earlier when he was fielding is fine he ran in really nicely there they bowl well Bummer and Siraj they've uh, sort of operated on England a bit England have rode their luck they've moved to 43 Bummer is still on because there's still plenty going on with this new ball it's hard it's seeming they're in good rhythm so right Sharma still bowling them a good long spell as you said they're not Gonna die from heat. Don't think there are gonna be anyone being thrown in an ice bath today, let me tell you. There's a bloke from up north in shorts and a t-shirt I just saw. Yeah, I He'd have to be from up north. Yeah. <laughs> Bummer to start the uh, new over. He's still around the wicket to the left-handed duck it, pushes out on the onside, and there's no run. Has anyone seen Goffey? No? Just saying. No. <laughs> well, are you saying he looks similar there, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying there's a random bloke from up north, you know. There's a lot of guys with uh, fancy floral shirts. It's not really a fancy floral shirt area. It's more of a fleece area, maybe cashmere. It's very colourful ground, this. A lot of the stadium is, is red, and the, diff the roofs around are different colours as well. Jasper is in, outside edge of Duckett's bat, goes through third for four. I mentioned there's three slips in a gully, but there's a bit of a gap to the gully. And that one's a genuine outside edge that flies away for four. Duck it to 17, England 47 without loss. They started over the wicket. They were trying to get him caught at short mid-wicket and, and short square leg. And he popped the ball up a couple of times. And then Boomer is just like, I'm just going to come around the wicket and bowl big hooping balls away from him. He's beaten him a couple of times. This one straightens another edge. Again, England could have lost both their openers many times this morning. Uh, but uh, it just hasn't gone India's way so far. It was interesting just watching Jarrell there. He made a little jump to the left side first. It sort of tells you how much the ball's moved. He's got the old Michael ha Michael Atherton scissors hands on it as old Ben Duckett. Gone between third and fifth. Well, they've closed up the gap a little bit, but is that the, the stable and the horse? It's a uh, bummer in once again. Duckett is beaten on the outside edge again. That one, though, bounces for a second time before it gets to Jarrell. And now Duckett and Crawley start their inquest as to what happened there. Yeah, that was. Uh, we've seen some that have seemed and hit, hit crack a little bit. This one, I think, was just a general swing ball and it's beaten him by a long way. It kept swinging as well. Jarrell was trying to catch up to that a little bit. But again, a beautiful delivery, but wouldn't have been out if he got an edge on that one. So they're not all carrying. And, and Crickfist did send through. Duckett hasn't left the ball yet. Um, so all the leaves have still been from Crawley's end. But we have seen Duckett do some things we don't normally see, like him coming down the wicket. He's not marching down, it's just a little step into the ball. Bumbra around the wicket to him, bringing him forward, and it's pushed out to Rohit at mid-off. No but again, the bat there is, is coming at an angle that he's sort of playing it to mid-wicket, and it's going in the V. He's a little bit across the ball at the moment, Duckett. Yeah, he's testing the technique. There's Jasper Bumbra. He's having to work extremely hard, Ben Duckett. Keep everything nice and tight. Don't want your hands getting away from you outside your eye line. And just play the line. It's all you can do. If it beats you, so be it. <laughs> Is Ben... Was Ben Stokes sleeping? I, I think because after a meeting with the Dalai Lama the other day, he was meditating. At least that's what I'm hoping. As Bumra comes in once again. Now, Duckett, I don't think, played at that one. Um, he played inside it. It bounces again in front of Jurel as it goes through to him. No run. And... Bummer's now told one ball short of seven overs, naught for 24. 
that happens. That can really happen. You know when you bowl really well and you don't get a wicket and then you come and you bowl the odd bad ball, you get a drag down or whatever and you tend to get wickets. That happens. This has been a really good spell, opening spell for Bumrah and Siraj, but no luck. I imagine this will be the final ball before drinks. And in goes Bumrah and solidly forward is Duckett on this drink. occasion. Pushes it out to uh, Rohit at mid-off and there is no run. And you uh, hear uh, the umpire say that is over and that is drinks. So 13 overs in the uh, first hour. 47 without loss England. Crawley's got 29 from 36. Duckett 17 from 42. England, if the alarm has just gone off, let me try and recap things for you. England have won the toss in Dharamshala and have uh, elected to bat first. As you've just heard, they've got through that first hour unscathed, 47 with that loss, or at least unscathed on the scoreboard. There have been quite a few alarms here and there for them. A few absolutely unplayable deliveries. One from uh, Bumra to uh, Crawley. Looked like it was going a foot down leg side and ended up going straight over the top of middle stump but England are unscathed 47 <coughs> without loss uh, some thoughts from Gareth Batty and Steve Harmison who've moved in alongside and while they're doing that Neil Manthorpe will come in for the ball by ball yeah good start from England 47 for none off the 13 but I think India have, have put some yeah they've bowled some good individual balls I think without being you know a huge amount of pressure I think there's been a, the odd four ball in with some you know some good passages of play from from uh, from India's bowlers. I think they've they've had a plan. They've worked out how they want to bowl to Duckett and to Crawley. Um, but sometimes the ball, you know, has it done a bit too much? And when it does a bit too much, I think like Gareth Batty said very very early on this morning, it can look pretty bats, but it doesn't always become effective. Yeah, and I think it's it, it's the whole point of. Siraj and Bumra are a partnership because they're bowing together, but they're not bowing as a partnership. And the partnership piece is actually bowing for each other, stacking up um, some pressure. Now, we, we can change our language, and you know, the old school way, we stack up some dots on him and build some pressure that way. Sometimes in the modern world, that sounds a negative thing. It sounds like you're bowing negatively, but you're not because you, you know, there's more to the, the game than just the skill of the ball deviating. It's also building up on the mental pressure. Uh, of a batter who has to face lots of balls you're just prodding away you're testing um, how their movement pattern is are they going to leave it are they going to play at it we've seen moments um, of a, a, a glimpse from India but it hasn't been sustained and I think that is what we're talking about with the partnership that Bumra balls a good six balls then Siraj follows it up with a good six balls and you don't release the pressure easily if somebody plays well absolutely fine but I think it's just been a little bit too easy is that something that just clicks or is it something that you need to discuss with your bowling partner? I mean, that was I asked because uh, they have actually been chatting to each other and a couple of times Bomber has taken the ball to Siraj and they obviously have been chatting, but sometimes it, I guess it just doesn't click the partnership in a session, does it? Yeah, I think it's more a Steve conversation when it comes to a skill set that you require to be bowling with the new ball, but actually bowling in combinations and, and combinations complementing each other is something you can set up off the field but it's still difficult and you need to um, have some time together so Bummer being the world class bowler that he is he's talking to his, his, his younger understudy to sort of talk him through how this is going to work uh, the skill set of bowling with a new bowler is a totally different thing and for me Siraj is more of a, uh, a first change bowler as opposed to an up front with a, a brand new ball and, and making things happen when there's not a lot happening when the ball's uh, doing plenty, you almost need to do less if that makes sense. Yeah, you want the ball to do less sometimes, and this is it's done a bit, it's done a bit more than what you'd, you'd probably expect it. You know, from a an Indian conditions point of view, I think it comes down to captain as well. Captain sitting in the right fields and having the right positions, and putting pressure on like that, as well as the bowler putting the ball in the right area for long enough. Drinks have uh, been taken consumed and enjoyed and the first delivery after drinks break from Siraj I think Crawley left alone just played inside the line a bit back of a length bounced a bit has been some uneven bounce a couple have kept very low yeah but this is perfect for what we've just been talking about it's a very nice pretty looking ball from Siraj 
going down just outside off stump but it's back of length it's bouncing just over the stumps so it carries through to the keeper as we see it's a lovely visual goes through slip cord and all jump up we see the shape so on and so forth but it's never luring Crowley into that fuller length where it finds the edge because you have to get closer to the ball you can just stay from the crease a little bit and let it go through and watch the ball go through to the keeper which is giving you more cues again for the next ball because you're tracking it this is the bit I'm kind of saying can you can you get your length and hold to it and know it's it's a really aggressive length and then set a field accordingly or go the other way and bowl a bit more defensively um, with, a, with an attacking field. Here is uh, Siraj once again up to the crease and uh, this time Crawley leaves alone. I think that was another pretty ball. It's uh, just just slightly too short and uh, Crawley recognised the length immediately would be harmless and so just left it alone even though it was uh, pretty close to the off stump. I'll never forget uh, there, there are a couple of uh, young players who used to play many years ago, over 20 years ago, uh, for Boerland in uh, South Africa. A young, well, not so young, I suppose, sort of mid-20s, late 20s. Philip de Freitas came out and, uh, and played on a, his first game. It was a, a very green wicket. It looked like a bowler's dream. And forward comes Crawley to the next one, plays it away defensively out on the offside. He bowled an opening spell of seven overs, five of which were maidens. He took uh, none for eight from uh, from seven overs, and the batsman played a missed and played a missed and played a missed, and the young players were all complete awe. And uh, so Jim, that's got to be I, one of them. Um, I think who it was in a moment said, "It's got to be the most unlucky spell I've ever seen in my whole life." And uh, and De Freitas uh, at lunchtime said to them, "It was absolute rubbish. It was absolute rubbish. I got the length wrong." for seven straight overs um, and it was it was uh, it was a lesson that uh, many of those players had never forgot because they thought he'd be bowled magnificently forward comes uh, Crawley to the next one from Siraj driving it up towards mid off and it was exactly what you were talking about it was the length it was he was well, two foot too short yeah and, and Siraj is somebody who you'd expect to bowl that little bit fuller the way his natural you know trajectory is and the way he he uses utilizes a new ball I think Siraj has been scarred by Crawley and Duckett and doesn't want to bowl too full because in this series he's been belted but you'd expect Siraj to be one that bowls that little bit fuller and we've just seen that we've seen three 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 out of the four balls in this over two of them have been short of a length which have looked quite pretty that one was a little bit fuller which Crawley's hit the full face of the bat here is Siraj again outside the off stump and uh, it's Left alone once more, just a little bit too wide. England 47 without loss. Having having said all that, we're just criticising Siraj for not making the best of uh, the new ball. Uh, I must uh, I must still say that that many occasion we would see a first hours play like that and the team lose three wickets. Uh, yeah, absolutely, you'd expect you know Jimmy Anderson to have been sitting in that, in that dressing room thinking, well, I'd, I'd be disappointed if I didn't come off at drinks with at least one or possibly two. But that comes back to the fact that you know the you know, the bowling in partnerships you know Bummer's length would be further back and Siraj would be further up I think it's been you know it's been the opposite short pull shot from Crawley threw it too early hits him on the ribs I think so uh, he's not showing any obvious signs of discomfort but that's hit him somewhere on the body maybe bottom elbow onto the rib cage shake of the head now it, uh, it, was, it, was, it was certainly there for the... Oh, dear me, it's hit, it's hit him just below the left nipple, isn't it? <laughs> Ow! Looks sore from here. Definitely sort of almost died in the surface a little bit. But it didn't die as in it sort of dropped off a cliff, that sort of uh, U-shape that you get where it's dying to the keeper. It just took a bit of pace out of the surface, so it's that's through the shot. That's what Hyderabad was like. It yeah. died in the surface. Mark yeah. Woodball and balls of like one... 42 kilometers an hour into the surface and I think it was 110 off the surface coming off the surface and that worries me a little bit about you know this the, the, the other five days of what we're potentially seeing on this surface but you know the lavish movement bats you know you you just from a coaching point of view trying to ask a bowler to bowl that little bit fuller when his confidence isn't high I think it's it, it's the brain telling you one thing but there's a natural reaction in you going well, every time I've tried to bowl that little bit fuller in this series in the past, and, you know, these two have had my number. 
Yeah, I think it's a difficult one because uh, you, you select a team uh, for a surface that you think is in front of you. And I think the modern day, you would look at it and go, well, you, you might have a six foot four bowler, you might have a six foot bowler, you might have a five foot seven. And they've all got different skill sets. But just because of their natural height, they're going to bowl different lengths. It's very difficult for a very tall bowler to get very full. But a shorter bowler can get it fuller because of the trajectory. So actually, you're trying to pick, pardon the phrase, horses for courses for the skill set you might require at certain points in the game. And I would just suggest that, that, that Siraj is kind of like an overall package over five days rather than a specific, well, the specific bit for him might be when the ball's a bit rubbish and he just goes in and makes something happen. The ball's doing plenty now. You need that skill set. Seven over spells from uh, Bumra and from Siraj, but now Ashwin into the attack for the first time. This one uh, pushed away by Duckett up towards mid on. It'll be really interesting to see whether there is some spin early on for uh, Ashwin. I mean, they, they do say if it's seeming, it's spinning, but it's been mostly swing rather than seam movement uh, for the two seamers, and that's why they've both bowled seven over spells because. Rohit Sharma knows that uh, the conditions were favouring them. Little lap sweep now from Duckett. Ashwin in at the pads and he's uh, basically just guided it through where leg slip would have been. A little gentle little lax lap sweep. Didn't hit it. Used the pace of the ball. He's got four runs. Brings up the 50. Yeah, disruptive from Duckett. He's a very good sweeper. So he gets low, gets underneath the flight of the ball and just helps it where a leg slip would be. Just a little dab off the face. All he, kn he knows because of the pace of the ball, all he's got to do is just get it in that gap this is part of why Duckett has been so successful in this series. He's trying to change the field. He's trying to second guess Ashwood. He's trying to make him something he make him do something he doesn't want to do, which destabilizes him. Fifth 50 partnership for Duckett and Crawley as Duckett punches it uh, back up the ground to mid on. Is he also about trying to get Ashwin to bowl a bit slower by using the pace? And, you know, Ashwin, it's obviously first morning, so it's not going to turn as much. Ashwin in, it's half volley outside the off stump, Duckett lashes it into the covers where Shubman Gill fields. Yeah, I think basically he's giving Ashwin something to think about. So all of a sudden you put pace on the ball, I'm going to find sweep and use that pace against you. You're naturally going to bowl it slower like you said, Steve. So straight away he's doing something he's not naturally wanting to do. 51 without loss, England. Duckett now watches very carefully. It's just like... Slight tangle as he uh, plays it defensively off the back foot outside leg stump majority of, of spin bowlers would say they're a, they're a fielder short the whole time for their perfect field setting so that's that's one piece in an armory for a batter Ashwin in a little bit too short duck it forces it off the back foot and it's Shubman Gill again diving to his left this time in fields and what we see at the end of the over there Ashwin's gone back to type of confidence from a, a bowling point of view and he's gone his last two balls he's almost gone top of the stumps hard so if you go top of the stumps hard and on a first day pitch you're not going to get as much sideways movement the spin is going to be far less which is why you went to slower initially make him have to put pace on the sweep but also that then means that the seam is going to spend more time on the surface and give a better chance of spinning as soon as you go drive it in it's more than you're looking at pads and bold which is kind of what Duckett's trying to do he's happy with the ball at the top of the stumps he might not score off it but there's less danger for him. There's less things for him to think about front pad, shin and outside edge. And Duckett is somebody who uses his hands quite well, opens a face. So if it is you know, on the top of the stumps, he can, because he's short in stature, can get back and wait, let the ball come to him and then utilise how good his hands are, especially through that sort of cover point region. Well, I said it's a seven over spell for uh, Siraj. It's actually an... An eighth over for him now as this uh, delivery is clipped off the pads nicely by Zach Crawley out to Kuldeep Yadav at deep backward square leg and they go through for another single. Crawley up to 30, Duckett 21, England winning the toss and batting first 52 without loss. Yeah, mild temperature or not, that's a tough spell coming into your eighth um, at the end of a series when he's played uh, and bowled a lot of uh, overs and played a lot of cricket recently. This is the bit where you've got to be a bit careful. Do you take enough do you take too much out of the tank that you never really fill it back up? Yeah, but you look at Mam, somebody like Mamad Siraj, he might be somebody like he, somebody that we played with quite a bit, Liam Plunkett. Liam Plunkett was in his best when he was seven overs to 11 overs. You know, sometimes you'd say to Liam, go and run around for half an hour before you start bowling, <laughs> just to, you know, to get some energy out. <laughs> Full and driven by Duckett, not timed up to Jadeja at uh, mid-on. 
Uh, yeah, as I said earlier, um, projected high temperature for the day is 18 degrees. But um, if you look at uh, Ben Stokes in particular, he looks like he's dressed for Everest Base Camp. He's got uh, the thick puffer jacket on, zipped right up to the top. And uh, it, it is still, it, it, is, it is cool. Um, it's definitely a, a two-layer day, if not a three-layer day. And uh, certainly the England supporters are well wrapped up in the crowd. Um, not too many locals, this time pushed away defensively by Duckett. That's about a length from Siraj. And Siraj is probably somebody who... It's not natural in, in India that you do bowl long, long spells. But he, he might be somebody who gains confidence. The more he bowls, you know, the less he's... Because he's, he's taking more energy out of his body, the less he's trying and then going back to basics. And how many times, Bats, you say to a, to a seam bowler that the basics of line, length, you make him, let, let him make the mistake. And that's just putting four, five, six balls in the same area. Two slips in the gully, Siraj in, swings it into Duckett. I think there's an inside edge onto the pad. Clips it uh, away behind square on the leg side and they do go through for a single. Duckett moving to 22, Crawley 30, 53 without loss. So some, you know, sometimes in a, you watch, uh, especially young seamers, you see them and they've got an away swinger, they've got an in swinger, they've, they've got a bouncer, they, will bowl, they want to bowl them all in, in one over, then they do it all the same again in the second over, then when the lungs are going and they're blowing a little bit, it's like, well, just can I just manage to get from enemy mark, hold me action, bowl at the top of the stumps? And when they do that, there's less going on in their sort of their mind. They're trying to reserve some energy and actually put the ball in the area for more consistent basis. Sirajin, another pretty ball back of a length outside the off stump, bouncing over off stump. Crawley, well, I don't know. I, I, he's missed it by so much. I thought he must have played inside the line deliberately, but uh, there's a rueful look on his face. and Maybe it did actually just move that much. Yeah, I think the ball, again, he's just outside off stump. So straight away, the batter thinks, right, if it's not coming back at me, I can leave it. So as he's tracking it coming down, then he's looking at the length and he's going trajectory of the ball out the hand. Oh, it's, it's going to bounce over the stumps. All of a sudden, he's got two things that all of a sudden he's, he's calmer about his movement. And then he can obviously leave the ball. If that's fuller and it travels further, there's a chance that it does come closer to stumps and pads. And you might think about playing clipped away or he tries to clip it away on the leg side uh, Crawley hits him on the thigh pad above stump height again and uh, there's no run it over comes to an end 16 overs gone England 53 without loss one thing about uh, well there's many things about Durham Shala but all the England supporters have uh, have had to make use of all of the accommodation options available because there's only one five-star hotel in the England team are in there and a couple of uh, tour groups managed to get the remaining rooms but um, I'll show you some photographs maybe we can put them on the on the YouTube channel as well but some England supporters are in a, in a tented hotel it's it's a, basically it's glamping it's a, it's a very glamorous tent but they're basically tents and uh, they were intimidated by the prospect but apparently are absolutely loving it there's nothing intimidating about this. The backdrop of the mountains, a bit of starship in the background. It's amazing. And you're in a tent at night with a fire. I mean, it, what gets better? Manners bit of creek be, through the day. Manners would be right at home in one of them tented villages, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> Running around the tented village, up and down the mountain every now and again. It's just home from home for you, Manners. <laughs> I'll show you the photographs. It looks absolutely amazing. I mean, it's not like, you know, a tent that you would have got gone boy scouting in i mean it's <laughs> it's, a, it's a big square job it looks like a sort of more of an army camp uh, army tent and it's um it, then they've done it really really nicely beautiful fabrics inside is the right word a, is it a yurt out that part of the world do they call them yurts i don't know you've got him i can't believe you've i've stumbled him. you you've stumbled him a yurt what's that a, well look, what is that like a sort of Travelling nomadic tent, is it? I this is punched off the back foot by Duckett, no run. I believe it's a tent. Now, this is where, hopefully, somebody doesn't correct me who's, who's got to put this time in the morning and <laughs> what is this bloke on about? But I'm, I'm sure it's a year. Yeah, no, I think you're, you're absolutely right. Um, forward comes Duckett playing defensively, no run. So named because it was uh, packed up and put on the back of a yak. 
for transporting over the Himalayas. Has it got a bar on it? <laughs> Um, that's more importantly for the Barmy Army, the which I did see some of the pictures that had a great function last night was Wani. Here's uh, Ashwin, oh, and that's driven. It was just a bit of a uppish slice from Duckett. We've seen a number of left-handers, particular caught at backward point during this series, with the ball turning away from them, and that was such a moment. But uh, Duckett picks up a single to the man sweeping it uh, on the cover boundary. Yeah, Ashwin, exactly what Steve said a second ago. Just a bit more pace off the ball, just got it above the island, got him driving, and it just held in, in what the footholes, footholes would have been a month ago. It just nicely flat at the minute, but they're going to open up, and that's going to go a little bit more. Nice piece of bowling. Duckett, nice execution in the end. Fascinating contest, Ashwin and Duckett. Crawley 30, Duckett 23 from 55 balls. Unusually subdued from him, but it's been Five difficult. Five. Here comes Ashwin again around the wicket, Five. and Crawley Five. comes forward and plays defensively. Uh, there's no run. It's certainly the five days, and it'll be longer for some of the England fans because they will stay for all five days of the Test match, and they've already been there for two, so it's like a week. Crawley uses his feet, comes down Five. the pitch to Ashwin, tickles it away behind square on the leg side and scurries through for a single but it wasn't a shot of great conviction at least it was positive 17 overs gone England 55 without loss and as I was about to say it is a week that uh, those who've made the trip to Durhamshire will never forget uh, more from Gareth Batty on uh, the housing um, <laughs> practices of the local people of Durhamshire and Himal Pradesh and then it'll be John Norman for the next 20 minutes I would say I'll stick to what I know, but I haven't a clue about spin bowling <laughs> either. But uh, Ravi Ashwin, we just saw in that over, he's just changing his pace up a little bit, uh, what Steve Armisen was talking about. And as he takes just a fraction of energy out of the ball, it's just spending a bit more time on the surface, and we're just starting to see that spin first day um, in Dharam Shalama. And it's just offering a fraction. It's nothing extravagant. It's not what we've seen in, in previous games in the series, but there's just a little bit on offer. And the skill... And the nous of Ashwin is going to be the thing that is going to be the point of difference for him today. And if he can just use it, we just saw it there, Crawley running down the wicket. And he just stayed, kept him leg side of the ball. Would it just stay in enough to pop it up to short leg? Crawley was good enough to wait for it and get it behind square to get off strike. But these are, these are all the little games within a game that's going on. 55 without loss in England. We've had 17 overs and Cody Yadav. Uh, is uh, on to bowl his first delivery uh, of the match and uh, this is uh, cut square of the wicket and uh, beats the field I think it's Ravi Chandran Ashwin who struggles to get down in time and it means he's got to get that back up onto his feet and chase the ball it's a lone chase though four runs at two Crawley he moves to 35 Duckett 23 we've got another 50 run partnership for Crawley and Duckett yeah 50 run partnership interesting move this from Robert Sharma to bring Kuldeep Yadav on. You know, Ashwin fielded there looked as though he's a man of 100 Test matches. Um, <laughs> so we'll give him, you know, we'll give him some dispensation on that one. But I'm interested by this move from Kuldeep Yadav and not um, Ravi Jadeja. This is uh, just outside uh, off stump and Crawley plays yeah. back and defensively into the offside. No run. Bats, do you think this is this is the sort of duck at Crawley? thing get that it, it, the pierce of Jadeja on a wicket which is not turning okay, duck get. it's you know a sweep and reverse sweep that maybe Robert Sharma has gone to cool deep first a little bit slower and again he's back at his Crawley pushes this ball to mid off and uh, scampers through for a quick single it could be the speed of, of delivery trajectory or whatever and I think it's the angle and I think he's on for, for Crawley nobody else he's bowling over the wicket Crawley gets his left leg out of the way and leaves you a gap. So you get, he's giving up both edges to Kuldeep Yadav. So if he can get his line right, if he can get his length right, I don't think Crowley's looked comfortable. I don't think he lines him up properly. Because if you're playing good spin, you give one edge, you have to, but you, you don't give both edges. And he's giving both to Kuldeep Yadav. So I would say tactical for Crowley. Wouldn't surprise me if he got him out, then he dragged him out of the attack and went for the big, uh, big number one left-hand spinner. It's uh, Duckett, though, the left-handed Ben Duckett, who's 23 not out who will face this uh, delivery from Kuldeep Yadav, who made his debut at this ground back in uh, 2017, March 2017, against Australia. And again, Duckett is uh, playing back and drills this down the ground. And this is uh, a good-looking shot from Duckett, and quite a Ben Duckett wristy straight drive 
It goes all along the ground for four. 64 without loss. My goodness, what a shot this is. Kuldeep Yadav, he's not somebody that puts lots of extra pace on the ball. It's the wrong one. It goes out the back of the hand. It's spinning in to duck it. Gets deep in the crease and it's just a back foot punch to mid on. To create the power, to generate the power from ground force through your legs, up through the blade of the bat, through mid on. He's wonderful batting. He's such a wonderful player of spin when he gets it right like this, Ben Duckett. Makes it so tough, gives the bowler no length. Here's Kodik Yadav again. This keeps a fraction low as Duckett again. Playing back, exposing the stumps, but playing straight. Not timing all power though, and no run. Keeping the bowler interested, and I'm sure you can hear the fielders as well. Welcome to Talk Sport, by the way, and Talk Sport 2. Myself, John Norman, Steve Harmison, the former England fast bowler, and uh, the uh, Surrey head coach and former spinner. As uh, Ben Duckett could be in trouble here. He's tried to go down the ground. It's taken a leading edge, and Shubman Gill running across from mid-off has taken a fine two-handed catch over his shoulder and Duckett has got to go for 27. England lose their first. Cody Yadav has struck in his first over. England 64 for one. Yeah, good catch from Shubman Gill. It looked as though Ben Duckett's gone away from it. Was a, it was a ball a little bit thrown above the eye line, but it looked as though Ben Duckett's body weight is going backwards or going towards the leg side. He's trying to hit the ball towards the leg side and all of a sudden, you know, the ball's just looped up on the offside. It's an excellent catch from Shubman Gill, but it looked as though all the energy was going one way, and he's just, I don't think he's quite got to the pitch of the ball. And because of that, he's just gone for brute force, and unfortunately for Duckett, it's gone straight up in the air. Yeah, Duckett coming across the ball, and it goes up and out, so you're extra cover. You've got to turn, you've got to get your head down as Shubman Gill, and you've got to start running out towards the fielder that's on the boundary so you've got somebody coming towards you then you start looking up in the sky it's got a bit of snow on it because of where you're playing wonderful catch from Shubman Gill holds his composure holds his balance takes it over his left shoulder diving away to an oncoming fielder it's a pretty special catch and a very fine piece of bowling just well, bowled it a bit he did, sorry John he just bowled it a bit slower didn't he? he just gone for nine in the over and he just bowled it a bit slower as to say well go on then if you fancy a big shot, let's see what you got. It was brave, wasn't it? Yep, they kept the field up, didn't they? And it's uh, paid off. Duckett might feel a little unfortunate. Maybe another uh, three or four metres on the shot. It probably would have just bounced clear of Shub McGill, who picked up uh, a couple of big catches earlier on in the series. And now, well, we're going to see Ollie Pope. Who uh, picked up that uh, unfortunate pair in the fourth test match. He's not going to face the first delivery of Ravishandran Ashwin's third over though. Uh, Zach Crawley will see that with a short leg and a slip in place. Playing with bat around the front of the pad. And it just clips the ball to the left of short leg. There's a short mid wicket as well though. And no run. So first success of the morning. India will feel probably long overdue both Crawley and Duckett beaten on several occasions by the pace notably by the uh, returning Jasper Bumra as uh, Crawley deep in his crease ball bounces just a fraction more from our Ashwin and defended away I think when he sees it again Ben Duckett he'd be really disappointed I think he'd be really disappointed at the execution it's a really I think it's a poor shot Ashwin again leg stump line Clips straight to Safraz Khan, who does a kind of no-look shy at the stumps. He's walking away from the batter, but then flicking the ball back towards the stumps, hoping that Crawley has just stepped out of his crease, but that didn't occur. Down on the sweep is Crawley, there's glove. It doesn't uh, go too far from the left of Jurel behind the stumps, just loops up and down, and that means that uh, Ollie Pope will face a delivery from R. Ashwin. Yeah, very similar to a dismissal in the third test like match, I think it was. Uh, Crawley getting almost back of the bat, sort of glovey area, caught 45. This occasion, it, Ashwin is it's a similar sort of line, but he doesn't have the fielder at 45. So that one skips off, uh, sort of back of the bat glove, and he gets a single, he gets down the other end. Pope's first delivery, he will get off the mark. There's a bit of a yelp from the fielders close to the batter. We'll have to have a little look again, how close this went to Safraz Khan. 
It was a, a healthy clip to pass the field. It, it did go aerial, but I mean, it would have been. Uh, he could have found himself a pretty unfortunate if that one had stuck. It was past the fielder before he'd realised it was in the air. So Pope's off the mark and Crawley one foot down the track and playing across the line. Picks out Shubman Gill. Picked out that uh, great catch in the last over to help dismiss Ben Duckett. And it's uh, no run. 66 for one then and the uh, intensity of the game just rising a notch with that wicket of Ben Duckett. Yeah, Revish and Aswin, he's got a he's got a very good plan to to Crawley. He's bowling around the wicket. He's predominantly bowling square spin. So lots of the balls are pitching just outside leg stump, but going across to sort of middle stump and off stump just with the angle of release. He's changing it up one ball and over possibly, which I think we saw there with the back of the bat ball, um, where he's trying to get the more over spin where the ball does bite into the surface and holds its line. But because Crowley gets a little bit offside of the ball, it means his hands are separated from his body and he, he gets them sort of exposed. And we, it feels like he's challenging a, a weakness that nobody would really do normally because you feel like you're bowling a ball outside leg stump and it's not a wicket ball. But we've seen the wicket already once in the series and it look, you know, it's not a million miles away uh, from a second time there. Here is Oli Pope to face his second delivery. He comes forward and defends into the offside. There's a lot been said about Oli Pope, the way he uh, starts his innings bats. Of course, picked up that generational knock earlier in the series. It helped England overturn a 190-run deficit on first innings as Pope again comes forward. I mean, do you see, when you're watching him play for England, do you see any difference in the manner in which he gets about his innings playing for England uh, than you do when he's playing for Surrey? Good spot, Kede, good spot. Particularly say so now. There was possibly a period by his own admission. He, he maybe got caught up in the wanting to reverse the pressure on the bowlers type situation. Here is uh, Kodik Yadav again, and he beats uh, Oli Pope for the third ball in a row. Comes forward, tries to cover the line, but this time the ball just beats the outside edge. There's a bit of excitement behind the stumps there by Jarrell. Yeah, it's the leg spinner from Kuldeep. And it's because of his angle, he's bringing it back in towards the stumps. You're always, just until you find the pace of the ball, how much it's spinning, you just feel like you're going to cover your inside edge a little bit. That's absolutely fine from Oli Pope. Get done on the outside edge. He's missing it by a decent way there. It's good batting. It's clever. It's getting yourself into your innings. How does Oli Pope approach this? Down the track again. And this is wristily played. Straight to extra cover where it's spilt, but no damage done. 66 for one England. Pressure on Ollie Pope, who picked up the pair in the fourth test match. He's off the mark in the fifth. One from five. Two balls left of Koldip Yadav. Second over. He struck in the first, dismissing Ben Duckett for 27. And he's in again now. This is... He's got this one wrong, has uh, Koldip Yadav. This is... Pitching on leg stump and turning. And Oli Pope will feel like he's missed out here. Can't get off strike. A little bit of chat in the outfield. And uh, Rohit Sharma, Kodik Yadav, just slowing things down for the final delivery again. And this keeps a little low. It's on leg stump. And uh, Ollie Pope clips this away to square leg for a single. He moves to two. The score 67 for one. And uh, Batsy was just saying. Yeah, I just think with Pope, he used the word generational. And the innings was. But I, I actually think we're talking about a player that is a generational player. I think there are, are lots of um, comparisons to the great Joe Root in, in Ollie Pope career-wise and how he's come into the, the England team at such a young age. Um, this series will be the, the sort of coming of him with the massive score he got early on in the series. And uh, we talk about the business world within sport now. If you want to return investment, you back and you stick with Ollie Pope because there ain't too many blokes who have the skill set, but also the, the human being characteristics to back that up over a long period of time. Oh, Ashwin then, start the fourth over, and uh, Pope again that comes forward. We're not seeing him advancing out the crease in the manner that we have done 
at times, but then of course, you know, that does bring uh, other problems. First innings of this series, actually, he was caught at first slip, playing a shot that's similar to that one. This is uh, plenty more loop from Ashwin, and he gets the line wrong. On the pads of Pope, who pushes the ball to mid-wicket and comes through for a single, 68 for one. Uh, Jared Kimber, Alex Tudor alongside me now, in the comms box. A wicket of Ben Duckett. Uh, the only success for India this morning. We've got 22 minutes though until the lunch break. England winning the toss, deciding to bat first. No real surprise there. Uh, the only surprise was that uh, they didn't get a wicket in the first five or six overs, Jared, as R. Ashwin is in again. And uh, Crawley clips this to mid-wicket for a single, and that brings Pope back on strike. Yeah, and then I suppose the second surprise is that we've had a wicket to spin before seen, considering everything we know about this pitch. But Duckett, obviously... Try to hit the ball to leg side that should have been on the offside. And Shubh McGill, who's a beautiful catcher of the ball, the only reason he's not in the slips is because we've just seen footage of he's got a single mattress wrapped around his finger at the moment. So he's got beautiful hands. Here is uh, Ashwin again. Rolling round the wicket to, to Ollie Pope. And once again, 10 deliveries into his innings, stretches forward and just defends. Ollie Pope. The Pope met the Dalai Lama during the week. I think that was a headline in the, in the Times oh, yeah, as uh, Pope plays straight, no run. Of course, the Australians met the Dalai Lama, didn't they, back in 2017? Yeah, I, th I think the Dalai Lama might have been at some of the World Cup games at one stage mm. as well. Steve Smith, do you know what Steve Smith asked him? <laughs> How do you sleep during test matches? Yes. Down the track, he uses his feet for the first time, does Ollie Pope, and pops this ball past uh, Ashwin, bisects the, the bowler, and uh, the fielder, Shubman Gill, is stationed at mid-on. Pope moves to four, Crawley 38. 70 for one then, England. Yeah, I thought that might interest you, because you've, lo you've long had a suspicion, not suspicion, you've written pieces about it as well. The use of sleeping tablets in sport, in cricket, and also you've been of the opinion that possibly the reason that Steve Smith... His fourth innings doesn't stack up in the way that it does when he's batting first, second or third. It's because he cannot sleep in a test match. Well, it's more that his average gets less in every innings. And it's mass it goes from 80 to 30-odd in the fourth innings. So it's like superhuman yeah. to innings one. Well, no, it's like Don Bradman-esque yeah, one. He, he it's pretty superhuman innings two. He's re yeah. great innings three and pretty average innings four. Yeah, even innings three is probably yeah, low end great, I suppose. And then and average innings four is, is the best way of putting it. And it it's a huge uh, curve. He's not the only player in history to have it. Back again is Pope and this is nicely played. There is a, a short mid wicket and Pope clips this delivery from Yadav to the right of Shubman Gill and comes through for a single 71. For uh, one England. I think Brian Lara's got a similar one. There's a couple of West Indian players that have had it before, but it's not it's not all that common to have a record like um, Smith has had. And you know, and and we think maybe the ball keeps a little bit lower in the third and fourth innings. But then you look it up, and he doesn't go out LBW or bowled all that much more. So that doesn't make any sense. Is that Crawley? 38 not out. It's forward, and he's trapped on the pad. And this is a ball that's turned into the right hand. And Joel Wilson shakes his head. Rohit Sharma looks to Koldi Yadav. India have still got three reviews left. Now, this has absolutely smashed that Crawley on the pad. He's beaten the inside edge. And uh, Rohit Sharma oh, he's definitely has do gone it. upstairs. I mean, he always waits, doesn't he? But what? he's gone upstairs. He's had the chat. No, there's nothing come back to him, but he's going to go upstairs. And that's what's happened. You can the umpire <laughs> director. We have player A for LBW. Original on-field decision is not out. I check the feet, it's a fair delivery. You can go to front on, spin mission, please. He's so obvious that he's going to do that review. I don't know why he made the team walk in and try and convince him, because he was always going to do it. Look, this has spun a long way, and I wonder if it's spun too much. Nice it's it's pitched on off stump, and it's straightened, and it's kept low. That is close to the it's a big front ball. step. Can oh, you go to the it is a good step. Please? It's going to be hit and leg. It's, I reckon it's hit and leg. Or it's, it's going to be umpire's call. I, I mean, it, that's where I'm going. It with. looks umpire's yeah. call nice at the moment. I, I'm, I I'm with you there. But I, I reckon it's slightly closer than I thought it was. Because we can no see, we can see can middle, can't tracking. we? And it's turning. So it's going to be clipping leg stump, I would say. Well, 
We've had one review for leg before wicket, which showed the ball to be hitting leg stump, but not enough to overturn the on-field decision. Let's see what happens here. Pitching outside off, impact in line, and wickets missing. Wow. Wickets missing. Jo you can go to the on-field umpire. Joel, you can stay with the original decision. You're on the screen. Make your signal now. I don't know if that was missing leg stump by a foot, based on the <laughs> footage that we just saw. But okay. I think they took us all by surprise. And also, Yadav as well. I thought that kept a little bit low, mm. and that's got that's it going rude. above leg stump yeah. and missing leg stump. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Didn't have much going for it. Didn't it? <laughs> really? Did I, it? I think if I was Rohit, I'd be like. I'm a bit unlucky to miss out on uh, on the umpire's call there. And he's missed out on the umpire's call by a yard. 71 for one then. It remains. Zach Crawley, 38 not out as Yadav is in again. This is uh, very close to the wicket. It's a straight line. And Crawley defends back down the track. One thing I would say is if that ball did actually what the Hawkeye said, good luck playing spin later on this match because that turned viciously and had bounce. So there's a lot going on on it. One slip and short leg in place. This is Fuller. It's pitched up and Crawley, no timing in the shot, picks out extra cover. Steve Smith averaged by match innings. Innings 1, 82.32. Innings 2, 52.85. Innings 3, 42.08. And innings 4, 34.36. Yeah, and he's tried sleeping tablets. He's tried meditation. Um, I, I he's think tried asking the Dalai Lama. He's uh, asked the Dalai Lama. I think they got um, a sleep specialist in for him. I know Gareth Batty's used um, sleep specialist with... Uh, On uh, the sweep is uh, Zach Crawley. And a, a bit of a yelp from Cody Yadav. The ball's smashing the pad, but this is way too leg side. And Rohit Sharma kind of looks around. He's, he's like, <laughs> is anybody going to try to convince me that that should be... No? Okay, we'll just move on. Yadav back to the top of his mark. And last ball of his third over. 71 for one then here on Talk Sport 2 and Talk Sport. It's Crawley is uh, on the front foot and uh, this is placed nicely to the left of Jadeja who's got a right old chase on at mid off. And Jadeja thinks he's uh, going to chase this ball down but the ball keeps going. And at the last minute Jadeja puts in a dive but can't stop body nor ball from hitting the rope and going over it and that's a good end to the over 75 for one then England we've got 15 minutes left until the lunch break Ben Duck at the only wicket to fall and after a word from Jarrah Kimber it will be Andrew McKenna to uh, see you through to the break yeah just over pitching a little bit wide there it was good batting by uh, Crawley just to put that away but it was it was a loose delivery um yeah it, I, I, uh, Bats uses, uh, has used sleep specialists with the players um, from Surrey a couple of times. Uh, when I talked to England, they hadn't used sleep specialists before, but it's a huge thing, it, you know, Tudes, and when you play limited overs cricket especially, you finish playing at 10, 11 o'clock at night. Some of these games are even later, and uh, the players just aren't prepared for it. Ashwin around the wickets. Poker's a long way forward, pushing back to the bowl and no run. You, if you get back to the hotel at 12.31... Your, your beans are still going from the game, so you're not going to get to bed before three, um, and, it, and it does cause big issues, and then you've got travel schedules and everything else. Ashwin, short of a length on this occasion, Pope's hitting hard into the covers. There's a yes-no, and what saves the uh, batters any potential trouble is that Jaiswal was having to dive away to his right-hand side and was rolling around on the turf and couldn't get back to his feet to actually throw the ball. So there'll be a single into the uh, book. Pope goes to six. England 76 for one, but there was a real yes-no moment there. Ollie Pope had gone, Crawley eventually responded, by which point Pope had thought, well, he's not coming. And, um, yeah, they get there in the end. Crawley gets the next one as Ashwin's around the wicket to him, turns it to uh, square leg, deep square leg, and takes a single 77 for one. The ball went into the middle of Jaiswal's hands. The only reason that they got away with that, really, is because he then rolled over. Um, and he completely lost his balance and he couldn't get back up. If, if he'd kept his balance originally, that's probably just a run out. One wicket down for England as we approach lunch. On another day, it would have been five or six. Ashwin in. It's again short of a, shorter of a length and it grips in the surface, stands up and Pope is playing it with no timing whatsoever back to the bowler. 
77 for one. Remember, there were no wickets to spin in the last first class game here. That, it, this is not that wicket. Ashwin is outside of leg stump, enabling Pope to uh, clip through mid wicket, and they'll take a couple. Well fielded out on the boundary twice. It's um, Padakal and Siraj out there. Padakal got the first dive out to keep it on the playing surface. Siraj dived to keep it from rolling into the advertising sponge. And then uh, Padakal gets back to his feet and gets the ball back in. And that really was the uh, definition of teamwork. I was just about to say that, Matthew. You stick the words <laughs> They took three from it, so it's Crawley on strike, who's gone inside out over uh, cover on this occasion, and it's out for four more. The over goes for nine. 84 for one are England after 23 overs here on TalkSport and TalkSport 2. Crawley goes to 47 from 63 balls. Pope's got nine from 17. And England have clearly decided seam is far more dangerous than spin at the moment because they're going to try and cash in boys yeah execution of that shot was uh, tremendous there from Zach Crawley just opening up the blade it's vacant in the air over cover so a safe shot wasn't much spin on that one just sort of slided across with the angle of him coming around the wicket so a safe shot even though it was aerial there are no fielders out there Zach Crawley marches on to 47 from 63 balls. England 84 for one. Been a lot of unplayable balls from Seam so far today. 84 for one. It's a good, re good, re good effort from England so far. Kuldeep to start the new over. It's down the leg side. Pope just glances it down to short fine leg and they'll take a single. Pope goes to double figures to 10. England 85 for one. Yeah, they're rotating a strike well, these two. Pope and Crawley within the boundaries, you know, just rotating the strike so the bowlers are not getting tied down with one batter and trying to work him out. Short leg in place for Zach Crawley as well as the slip. Coldy left arm over the wicket goes in and bowls and Crawley hits it back past the bowler mid off not going to get there there's a long on who is pretty wide but couldn't get around and it's 50 for Zach Crawley he's got his third fifth sorry fourth 50 of this series it's his 14th in test match cricket he's got 51 from 64 England 89 for one yes good from Zach Crawley Bang straight down the wicket. As you say, always looking to take that positive op option, not allowing the bowler to settle. And he said he's had a good series. Kuldi in Morning once again. Yeah. Crawley playing defensively back to the bowler, no run. But the importance yeah. now, he's got England that start and he's done that extremely well in this series so far. He would like to turn that into a hundred. That's been the one thing in this series so far. 76 has been his best in Vizag. Like he got 73 in the second innings there as well. Kuldeep Go! is in. It's uh, Crawley off the back foot, Go just waiting, in. pushing out on the offside, and will take a single out to the deep cover sweeper. So one more to Crawley. And, uh, yeah, that series so far, 20 and 31 in Hyderabad, 76 and 73 in uh, Vizag, and then 15 and 11, 42 and 60. So had starts, but that old thing of, of going on and making it, 100, 150, etc., etc., is maybe the one that he really wants to try and find. Pope is deep in his crease as Kuldeep bowls left arm over, hits the short leg fielder Safraz, and there is no run. Yeah, if you want to be a great, you want to be a good player, you really need to turn those 50s into 100s. As you say, you set base, especially in that first inning, you want to set that base for your team and your bowlers. Ollie Pope waits, uses his feet to come down to Kuldeep, clips to uh, Shubman Gill at straightish short mid wicket and ends the over and there is no run. 24 gone here on TalkSport 2, England 90 for one. While we're talking to Ollie Pope, obviously he had that 196 in Hyderabad, but he hasn't made 40 in any of his other innings yet. And uh, as a result, <laughs> his world ranking has gone from 
15 after the 196. He's now ranked 30 in the Test match batters. He went from 15 to 22, from 22 to 29, and in the latest rankings, 29 to 30. So it's almost like those rankings are nonsense. You're not having them then. I mean, there are there are some interesting anomalies. I think David Gower is ranked on the all-time ODI peaks of like as like fifth. And it's like, I'm not saying he didn't play a couple of good games in a row at one stage, but I think he averaged low 30s with a, you know, a strike rate in the 70s or something like that. A decent one-day player, but it's like, there's some random... I, 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 don't, I don't like the way it's done, no. I don't think it's very, very... Uh, I don't think it's good. And I think, especially with batters, batters seem to jump around it a little bit more. With I think with the, uh, with the bowlers, you have to earn it over time. Um, it's not my favourite algorithm. I'll... At lunch, we're doing, I think, 40 minutes of my favourite algorithms. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's what I call algorithms. And I apologise, Deborah, that's not happening. Uh, Ashwin, to start a new over, is over the wicket to crawl. He turns through mid-wicket <laughs> for a single. It's he goes to 53. 553, you've woken up at the board, and you're like, oh, I'll get to listen to a bit of cricket, and then I'll you know, I'll get Gareth Batty talking about his career. So I know, Jared's favourite algorithms. <laughs> It is bats at lunch, by the way, in conversation with, uh, with Manners. Um, something that we started in the last Test match. Five cricketers who, who made you what you were, if you like. We did Tudes in the last Test did, match. Tudes did 25, I think. Yeah, yeah. Tudes There's subverted There's a lot of people it. that have moulded me, I have to say. Yeah, Tudes, sub Tudes subverted it very much. So, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, going to be bats in conversation with Manners doing that one today. Just going back to the, to the world rankings, it's interesting. Um, the all-rounders one is the one that strikes me. It never seems to change. So Ben Stokes, I mean, hasn't bowled for since the old king died. You, th that's the problem with the all-rounders one is it doesn't factor usage in at all. So so Stuart Broad will be on it because he's played two innings where he's made 40 in a row. Ashwin goes in and bowls a loopy one that drops to Pope and he clips to uh, deep mid wickets and they'll uh, take a single 92 for one. You know my all-rounder debate, I, I, have, I have this debate with people, my, my definition of all-rounder is if you're injured as a bowler, you are still getting the team as a batter. Yeah. And vice, you know, and if you're not bowling very well, can, you know what I mean? And if you're bowling very well, can you, you know what I mean? It's just, like, so Sir Gary Sobers, uh, that ilk, he, you know, regardless of whatever, he would have played as a bowler if he weren't scoring any runs and vice versa I, I, you know we throw it around a little bit too much for me Ashwin in over the wicket outside half a crawl is back to a point no run yeah. do you know how many players in test cricket have averaged over 40 with a bat and under 30 with the ball but I think it's 50 wickets and 500 runs Crawley waits for Ashwin, uses his feet, puts him back over his head. That's a huge shot, plenty of hang time on that. That's a massive six from Zach Crawley. England go to 98 for one. Crawley has 59 with the first maximum of the match. Yeah, that's a fantastic shot. Great use of his feet, Zach Crawley. Comes down early and extends those arms. Got good leverage and you just watch and admire as it sells. I reckon that's gone at least 90, 100 metres back. Ashwin goes in again. It's that one slightly short in length. Gives Crawley time to stay deep in the crease and play it to mid-wicket and take a single. Takes the score to 99 for him. And of course, the air is thinner here, which is one of the reasons why they say that the bowling is, is, feels that little bit quicker because there's not quite the resistance on the ball. It was well caught in the crowd. But of course, the air being thinner would mean it travels in the air further as well. I don't think he called it. Ah. <laughs> he looked so. Ashwin in, and Pope is uh, deep in the crease, hitting to points. No single there to bring up the 100. End of the over. 25 gone. It's England 99 for one as we approach 6 o'clock in the morning in the UK on TalkSport, TalkSport 2, and the TalkSport Cricket YouTube channel. Uh, so true, the only player to have done it is a guy called Aubrey Faulkner from South Africa who averaged over 40 with the bat and under 30 with the ball. So technically, there's only been one player who would be automatic. And he was quite an interesting cricketer because he was a batter um, who was still young and developing as a batter. And he was taught the wrong and um, when no one basically knew how to bowl it. 
and completely dominated. But against England, he was a bowler. Against Australia, he was a batter. He had a really, really interesting career. But the point being is, there's almost been no players who've been good enough. You, you've got players like both them and Keith Miller and Capital Dev and Callis and, and Sobers, who maybe had the talent to play on both sides of the ball. But generally, it's very rare for you to be that good in both, um, both parts of the game. Imran Khan in the 90s. I'm not sure if they would have picked him to bat at number six, though, with a strike rate of negative three. Curl deep to start the uh, new over. Left arm over the wicket. Crawley pushes into the offside and gets a hundred. Uh, gets a single that brings up the England hundred. Crawley's got 61 from 71. Pope's got 11. England 100 for one after 25 overs and one ball. Like, like as good a bat as both of them was. He, if he averaged 37, 36, and was a Cavalier batter, how long in the 80s would he have lasted if he couldn't bowl? He might have played some games, but he probably would have been dropped as well. Ollie Pope waits for uh, Coldy, brings him forward. Off the inside half of the bat goes down to Ashwin at short fine leg, no run. Uh, it's coming up six o'clock, which means TalkSport will be leaving us shortly. If you do want to stay and listen, well, obviously, the TalkSport app is uh, easy to uh, swipe between TalkSport and TalkSport 2. Your DAB radio, or if you're listening online or you've got your smart speaker, all easy ways to stay in touch with the cricket. And... Uh, Keep some live sport in your life at this time of a Thursday morning. Yeah. Kuldeep is in. Ollie Pope's run past one and is stumped by two metres. He was playing for turn. It didn't. And Pope just runs past it. And Jarrell takes the stumping. England are 100 for two. Well, if you're watching on YouTube, you'd have seen the reaction of Jihad and, my, and myself. England have gifted two wickets to India. They were batting nicely. And Oli Pope just run past one, try to play it on the onside, trying to play for the turn. It's gone the other way. He's not picked it. Jarrell, the keeper, was not going to miss this. He's a long way down. There's nothing about that that looks good when he looks back and plays that. And even though England have got 100, in that first session, they've gifted India two wickets. Two wickets were, which were their downfall. And that's the way I, you always felt that they were going to get out, was gifting India the wickets, but not being bowled by bowled out. First 40 minutes, India were all over them. And they worked through that England. A bit of luck, of course. And, and also, you know, the aggressive nature bought them some time and everything else. But in this particular case, this isn't a baseball wicket. This is just Pope trying to get down the wicket desperately, but he's nowhere near the length of that. As you said, doesn't pick the wrong end. I'm talking about Aubrey Faulkner. Um, and, and, and in the end, he's beaten outside off stump. But it's an ugly, ugly way to go out. And England completely on top at times in that session, considering how well, especially Boomer, but Siraj bowled early on. And now they've just let India back into the game with those two wickets. But all credit goes to Cool Deep. Uh, he could have had three wickets as well, but some um, good balls to Crawley. Uh, really brought this one back for India, but England going to be upset there. They could have had a very, very big session. Well, in the early part of it, when it was hooping around all sorts and Crawley and Duckett were getting unplayable deliveries, you felt that England could be four or five down at lunch. The fact that the score says 100 for two after 25 and a half overs is therefore an improvement, but the two wickets that they've gone, as, as Jarrett's just saying, two wickets that they'll feel pretty pretty bad about, really. Duckett was caught by Shubman Gill off the bowling of Kuldeep for uh, 27 to make it 64 for one. But the point of that one is Duckett had already hit two boundaries in the over and probably didn't need to play the big shot that he played. And Shubman Gill took a fabulous catch running out towards the boundary, takes it over his shoulder and it didn't go in the finger ends. It was right in the middle of the palms. He took it absolutely beautifully. And then Ollie Pope has just been done all ends up by Kuldeep. So duck it for 27 from 58. Ollie Pope goes for 11 from 24. So it's 100 for two in the uh, morning session. Zach Crawley is still there. 61 from 71 balls. Nine fours and a six. And he himself had plenty of problems in the early stages. One ball from Bumra. Looked like it was going a foot down leg side. It gripped on the, uh, the seam of the ball and went over the top of middle stump. And Zach Crawley will probably not appreciate that ball till he actually sees it on the laptop later, just how incredible a delivery it was. 
Um, there have been some near squeaks, as I say, but England have pretty much survived. The bowling figures from that morning session, Bummer has got 0 for 24 from seven overs. I venture to suggest he'll bowl worse than that and get three or four in a session uh, normally. Siraj, eight overs, naught for 24. Ravi Chandra and Ashwin, six overs, naught for 29. And the wicket taker, Kuldeep Yadav, two for 22 in four and a half overs. Alex Tudor, sum up that uh, two hours for me then. Yeah, it had, it had everything. As you say, uh, Bumrah and Siraj bowled a beautiful opening spell. Uh, and... You, you know, on any normal day, England possibly could have been three down, but he's, they got over that, weathered that storm. And the only way I felt that England were going to get out is by getting himself out. And that seems to have been the case so far. Ben Duckett playing a shot that doesn't need to be played, as you said. Mac, you know, they had got two boundaries and that over didn't really need to do that. But with that positive intent, he still went, but he went against the spin. And it sliced and it was a fantastic catch by Shubman Gill. And then Ollie Pope. No need. Just before lunch, you just got 100 runs in a session. See it through. One down. Your captain's won the toss. And you've just run past one. He's not picked it. It's the wrong one from Yadev. He's bowled beautifully. And he's done him all ends up. And he's a, he was annoyed with himself, and rightly so. Not a really smart shot. And that's the frustration that you get from, you know, the the fans on social media etc just like not playing sensible cricket at the crucial times and and you know games are won and lost by little errors like that and when you're playing against a fantastic team uh, team in India in India can't really allow for those those slight mistakes and you know going in at one down India is scratching their heads thinking how are we going to get the, the nine wickets you've now not say opened up an opportunity, but there's one now where Yadav's going to be feeling good about himself. Bumrah's going to be refreshed. Siraj, they're going to come out and go at England. And all of a sudden, that fantastic start, you add two to it, all of a sudden, it doesn't look great on day one. Work to do then for both sides. It's uh, been an entertaining uh, couple of hours as we uh, describe this action to you in the uh, shadow of the Himalayas. It's a very, very different cricket ground. It's a different feel. It's uh, a different style of cricket as seam is most definitely dominating uh, more than spin, or at least that's what you think. But it's Kuldeep Yadav who's taken the two wickets in the morning session. During this lunch break, Neil Manthoff is going to be getting to know more about Gareth Batty as uh, they discuss his early life in cricket, his favourite players growing up and who he thanks most for his cricket development. That's the lunch break. Live and exclusive coverage of India against England on TalkSport 2. Exclusive ball-by-ball -ball commentary of the fifth and final test match live from Dharmshala. Past the umpire, now he's straight. See you later. Only on TalkSport 2. Hawksby and Jacobs on TalkSport with Toolstation. Unfiltered football debate. Done right. Vatican City football team. Pep Swiss Guardiola. Big hitting cricket comment. Done right. No, Ricky no, Pontiff. No, yeah, Ricky. <laughs> you can't have cricket. No, you can't have cricket. <laughs> Knockout boxing opinion. Done right. That was a classic. It's legendary. Entertaining afternoon radio. Done right. Well, some would say it's absolute news. Hawksby and Jacobs. This afternoon from one on TalkSport with Toolstation. For a job done right. I can be yours, radiant. I'm waiting for you to feel me in every room you so desire. I would love to spend time with you in a steamy, hot shower. And if you take good care of me, I'll stay as hot as the day we first met. <coughs> feel the love with a high-efficiency heat pump from My Dear. Now available with a government grant of £7,500 and 10-year warranty. Terms of property suitability apply. Visit mydearuk.co.uk. Make yourself at home. If you leave your customers happier than Larry. If you always take your boots off at the door. If you tend to get given the good biscuits, you might have what it takes to join the Trust a Trader professionals. Millions of people use trustatrader.com to find reputable, recommended tradespeople like you. So if you're looking for more business and even more good biscuits, apply to join us at Trust a Trader. With now, you can stream all the drama from the Premier League instantly and without a contract. The stuff the dreams are made of! This Sunday, title rivals collide as Liverpool take on Manchester City at Anfield. Can you believe it? 
Get all Sky Sports channels for a day or a whole month with a Now Sports membership. Stream Liverpool versus Manchester City live this Sunday from 3.45 with Now. 18 plus Sky Sports content streamed via internet. Full terms apply. At Honda, we've been engineering cars for over 70... Four. 75 years, actually. We know that excellence takes time. So you can rely on the Honda engineering in the all-new ENY1. With a range of up to 250 miles on a single charge and up to five years warranty, servicing and roadside assistance. Our first electric SUV, the ENY1. Oh, a hole-in-one. Yes! Honda, the power of dreams. Range based on test conditions and may vary. Let me go straight to the point. When you lay in a patio or driveway, you need Seeker Fast Fix. It's ready mixed, easy to use and quick to apply. Plus, it comes in five colours and you can use it in any weather. Transform your next project with confidence. Transform it with Seeker Fast Fix. Ah. And you'll finish a quality job in no time at all. Seeker stock is now at seeker.co.uk slash landscaping. On DAB Plus, online, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. Exclusive ball-by-ball -ball commentary of the fifth and final test match. Live from Dharmshala. Fielded all the to be a run out. Only on TalkSport 2. Tony Bolden, he's taken a hat trick. Would you believe it? And Gareth Batty with a hat trick. Oh, lovely shot by Stewart. No need to run for that. Shot of the day. A nice, juicy full half volley, which Alex Stewart very crisply put away. Michael James Stewart, or Mickey as he's known throughout the cricketing world, is rightly a Surrey legend. Oh, well, I think this is going straight to long off. Simple catch and another wicket for Gareth Batty. Absolutely. And bowls him. Well bowled. Very well bowled. Well, this is a nice wicket for Ian Salisbury. Nice bit of turn. That's a big one. That's way over. Magnificent six by Tom Neal. Stewart and it's out. Brilliant. You won't see anything more brilliant. The club has quite simply been his life as player, captain, manager, and most recently as president. Moody drives. It'll be four. That's what you like to see from Tom Moody. He's a big man. He's a good timer of the ball, but he really went after that half volley and punched the way for four. Bad ball. And there it goes. Well played, Alex Stewart. Wonderful for England and particularly Captain Stewart. And the crowd appreciated. Surrey are promoted. And it's the captain who's done it. Gareth Badley it is. Welcome back to uh, our series here on TalkSport 2. Five cricketers who have shaped my life and career become the man that uh, I am, the cricketer that I am. Today's guest is Gareth Batty. We've already spoken to Darren Goff, Steve Harmison and Alex Tudor. Um, so when you've had a 20 year playing career and then coached uh, Surrey to uh, two championship titles in your first two seasons as a coach, Gareth said that it was impossible to uh, pick five players who's, uh, who have influenced him. So you've um, wisely, I think, kept it to five coaches. Uh, the, the men who uh, had the, the biggest influence on you from your earliest years and unsurprisingly you started with your dad. Thank you for your time by the way. <laughs> yeah I think um, I look it's <laughs> you do any list of, of anybody that's influenced shaped you as a human being as a, as a cricketer um, always think about dad. This is where I get a bit emotional. Um, but as a youngster all starts club cricket like everybody out there. Um, you go watch your dad, he's your hero. Uh, you see him getting a few people out. You're playing on your tractor, you're playing in the trees. Then you go watch your dad again. He might be whacking a few. In between lunch and tea, he's throwing balls to you and catching balls with you. Just a, a wonderful place to start from. But also being through the, the whole journey, I suppose. Well, come back to that because that's a good place to, to, to finish the chat, which goes very, very quickly, by the way. We ran out of time with uh, all of your three uh, predecessors. Let's move on to a man who's still going strong, I believe, Mickey Stewart. Um, he is, well, we heard Charles Colby there in that package there, by the way, which uh, you chose the music for, Rick Astley, give him a mention. Uh, Mickey Stewart, um, gosh, he, he must have been a very early influence as well. 
Yeah, it was. Uh, as a young man, he was running um, and, and changed how English cricket was set up from a, a sort of pathway, we call it now, but sort of age group stuff. He was um, running sort of England under 19s and what have you. And it was at that point in my life and, and career that I needed a change. Uh, it was very much a north v south uh, from a spin point of view um, and, and batting. And he sort of made a, uh, a suggestion that maybe Surrey might not be a bad thing and learn something off Sackley Mushtaq and Ian Salisbury back in the day and uh, yeah I mean throughout then sort of throughout um, my career within you know blocks here and there he wouldn't have been around but certainly the last 10 years uh, you always see him around at the ground and it's little things that Mickey does he's, he's even now he'll, he'll say something and do something where you kind of go, oh wow that's taken me back a bit I wasn't expecting that uh, understands the game understands one the club that I'm so passionate about and uh, thankfully I've, I've still got a job there. was he the first cricket manager do you think? I mean, I, I think he, I think he was. He's, he's credited with that title. Yeah, I think he was. He sort of revolu revolutionised the generation of professional cricket, didn't he? Him and Graham Gooch. Graham Gooch was the captain. He was the coach, and it's it sort of gone on. And each generation's taken a bit further. But he was the the visionary that went from, okay, lads, it's not two pints a mile and run up and bowl <laughs> your overs and whack a few balls. He was kind of, we need to be physically fit here. We need to do some fielding. Um, it sounds very simple now, but back then it was uh, revolutionary. Let's move on to Tom Moody, because I'll always wheel back. I want to make sure everybody gets a, a decent mention first up, and then we can always uh, rewind uh, back to Mickey Stewart, and, and uh, people will have heard the package there. You've got Alec, his son, in there as well. But let's go on to move on to Tom Moody, who was, I always find, uh, uh, astonishingly underrated cricketer. Um, not by those who played against him, because they no <laughs> normally weren't in danger of underrating him, but... You know, over 21,000 runs and about an average of 46, and he also took almost 400 wickets. But it was as a coach that uh, you um, would have first encountered him. And uh, um, obviously, that's why he's on your list. Yeah, it was um, obviously the move um, from the north down to the south, and I had sort of four years, um, and things had not done much for three, and then all of a sudden things started to click, and I moved better as a player, and realised that that was the great Surrey team of the late 90s and early 2000s, that Tudes was heavily involved in, and so on and so forth, we played all our age group stuff, um, it was kind of, look, I need to be playing, I need to, act, I need to move on from this, uh, kind of just playing the odd game, I need to see how good I can be, and, and Tom Moody was one of the people that I spoke to, um, in fact, there was, I was very lucky, there were numerous options to, to move club, um, and I remember putting the phone down after speaking with Tom Moody for two minutes saying, in fact, as I put it down, I, th I, I didn't even know what the contract was. I didn't care. I loved how he spoke and I wanted to play for the man. He just made cricket sound amazing. And I just went, right, I'm going to go. Done. That's it. Mine made up. And I never questioned it, talked about it again. And I was true to my word. I don't even know what the contract was, but I know it was less than what Surrey would have paid me. Um, and I didn't care. It wasn't about the finance. It was about trying to be as good as I could be. And Tom at Worcester at that time was trying to be innovative with young players. So Vikram Solanke was not young, but uh, he was coming through and he was learning his game. Kabir Ali, uh, myself, um, and there's so many other names. And that's why I didn't want to go for players because it's wrong because everybody has a huge influence, particularly me when I immerse myself in a team. And yeah, I would have crossed the line and people would have seen certain things, but I pride myself on being very team orientated. Tom was, a, Tom was just great for opening that door initially into, into being a professional for me. Um, and even now we sort of we, we see him a little bit around the oval because he does, uh, does 100 and, and bits and bats. But um, now Tom was amazing. His insight into what was going to be required, his ability to let me make some mistakes but then pick me up when I was down. Uh, as a young man, um, he was very much um, a mentor in that, uh, in that first sort of two, two and a half, three years before he went to take on Sri Lanka coach. Do you think that's one of the reasons that he, um, I don't, he played eight test matches and he played 300 first class games, but we don't often include him in the conversation of great all-rounders. Do you think the reason is because he was so team orientated? He wasn't about Tom Moody, he was about, and also, is that what's made him a successful franchise coach? Yeah, I, I don't know about Tom as a player. Um, I would have never played against him. Um, he used to tell me in the nets he would have whacked me out of the ground often enough, but... Um, <laughs> I think the way he spoke about team being a very important, in fact, the most important um, part of playing and the different personalities you require within a team to be a successful team, I think possibly would have been the case for him as a player. 
Um, but make no mistake, that's why he's, I think he's won every competition he's been a, a coach in in franchise cricket. And there are so many people that you would know their names that have done franchise stuff and not even got close to winning. Uh, so the fact he has uh, a cupboard full of trophies in wherever it's been in the world suggests he understands how to set up a team and, and understands what a team looks like and what skill sets you require. I know lots of people who would not forgive me for not asking you this question, but when he comes and does the Oval Invincibles, does he take your locker? Does he, does he move into your office? <laughs> he's six foot seven. He's not that tough. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's move on to coach number three, uh, Damien, or number four, actually. Damien Dolivero is sadly no longer with us. Can you believe it? It was ten years ago that he passed away. Um, but, uh, yeah, again, your Worcester days. Yeah, and again, it's because I was a very young man. Um, he, he had this wonderful ability to just stroll into a net, hands in pocket, stride round, just sort of go back, so you're not doing this. I'd be like, what? what? You've not watched me bowl a ball. And he watched one ball and he'd say, you're not using your front arm. You're not following through. Um, you're, you're getting stuck on the front foot with the bat. You're not doing this. And he'd just say one thing, bang. I'd think about it. I'd try and put it into place. And all of a sudden, I felt a million dollars again. It's an incredible understanding of movement uh, that you require to be successful within your discipline. Um, and what a fella. You know, it, it, sit listening to his stories and talk about cricket was um, second to none, obviously, his father and the, the history and everything that goes with. But uh, Dolly's a human being. What a wonderful man. Um, yeah, very sad he's not here now. Did you... Um, uh, yeah, I mean, his father was famous for that. I mean, I think Damien was very much a chip off the old block. His father was ver very, very famous for, for saying little, but uh, it had great impact when he did open his mouth. Yeah, his impact came in other ways as well. He'd either get you a drink that you probably didn't want or he'd smack you on the back of the head because you played a rubbish shot. You, you didn't need to tell you you played a rubbish shot or you bowled badly. Uh, the cuff around the back of the head was uh, all you required at that point. Um, Ian Salisbury is an interesting choice as well. Um, he, again, um, we came into, like so many England spinners over the years uh, and, you know, from over many decades, actually, came into the... England team with uh, a fanfare of trumpets which he probably didn't want and, and didn't appreciate and there was enormous expectation placed on him and my earliest memories are, are of him being used even I in my uneducated way knew that he was being used at the wrong time and, and the expectations were just enormous and I'm delighted that he has actually you know stayed involved in cricket and, and ha he played 15 test matches let's not forget that I mean and he's took a lot of wickets played a lot of first class games but it's a, as a coach he's really making a mark yeah he's at uh, Middlesex now um, but it, it was almost the, the middle point in my career um, I'd got stale I hadn't particularly enjoyed playing for a period of time I was quite happy to hang my boots up and not play anymore if I'm honest around about that year, uh, 30 years of age when I came back to Surrey uh, Souls had had a conversation with me during that season and just sort of said look this isn't the time to be chucking in and this is the time to be using that knowledge you've learned over so long and putting it into output putting it into uh, performances that win games of cricket and see where you can get see how good you can be um, obviously the move back to Surrey uh, was a wonderful thing and it was something I wanted to do from a personal point of view because I felt like I had unfinished business but uh, certainly Souls um, was able to unlock all the stuff that was in there but I didn't know how or what and had I have known that knowledge maybe as a 23, 24 year old would I have had a different career who knows and who really cares if I'm brutally honest because the career's done um, but um, Ian Salisbury incredible from a spin department how he made me understood the power positions the nuances that were probably in there but I'd never really thought about enough and given enough attention to detail to understand that right I'm going to bowl six balls here this one I'm going to drift it out and spin it back in there or at least try and spin it back in and spin it very much or this one I'm going to do this and this one I'm going to do this and it gave me incredible satisfaction towards the end of my career that I could bowl balls that I wanted on will on demand and that for me was the biggest highlight of my career that I could walk away and say well actually I could I wasn't very good and I didn't uh, have the accolades that other players would have done but actually for me I was able to do some things that I probably set my stall out as a kid wanting to be able to do and I could do it on on will and on tap and that was souls that that opened that up and even then at, at the age of 30 it took probably a year for it all to fully sink in so it was ne nearly 31 32 that uh, I was starting to feel as though okay I can I can play this game a little bit uh, but then, obviously, um, I think it's Ancelotti who talks about it, football. 
you just crack it from a playing point of view and then your body starts to fail you and you're, you're too old and you're done. So um, it's amazing. And I, and I take that now into the job that I do now, trying to sort of upskill earlier so you have a longer time in that sweet spot of, of your skill set. Do you think the fact that he was promoted so early, I mean, I, I remember the, uh, leg spinners were, were the rarest commodity in cricket in England. You know, they, they just weren't any. And then Ian Salisbury came along and, and it just seemed to me that the, the selectors were, he's a leg spinner. I don't care how old he is, he's a leg spinner. We haven't had one of those for decades. And he was shoehorned into the team and, and it was a tough ride and he was sort of um, left out, wasn't he? He was, you know, he, he'd have a, a couple of bad test matches and because he didn't take a hat full of wickets and live up to these absurd expectations, he was dropped. And then he'd go back and take wickets for, for Surrey or Sussex and uh, and then he was recalled and and dropped again <laughs> does that did that help make him uh, as empathetic and and indeed sympathetic as he as he became yeah I, I mean those are the obvious things that people talk about they say well look you know um himself or graham hick from that era and the two are very good friends um you know most drop player hickey and and Saul's not treated properly it makes him very empathetic yes it does of course and they understand where you're at but also it also makes you very tough because you know that you've got to come through those things. If you're going to have any sort of a career, you're going to have a lot of failures. You're going to stumble a lot. And it's how you pick yourself up and how you move forward. So I, I think the people that have maybe not had it all their own way or, or had it less their own way potentially can almost m map something out uh, for somebody to go, look, uh, this might happen here, this might happen there, this might happen there. And if it doesn't, that's absolutely fine because they're flying. But at some point, somebody gets a sat on the backside and it, there's a bump back down to earth pretty quickly and it's how you can help people from that and how quickly you can transition from the bump back into where you were and beyond there's no point going back to where you were you've got to go back to where you were and beyond so you've got to make those significant minor adjustments sometimes it's a personal thing on how you prepare how you look at things but also it's how you train and how you add to your skill set there's no point just getting in the England team and that was a failure for so many people well my ambition is to play for England oh brilliant well done now what do you do? <laughs> Actually, it's about, I want to play for England and I want to make a difference because this is what I'm going to do. 10 test matches in, right, I want 20 test matches in this. It's always recalibrating, it's always moving forward, it's always trying to uh, be as good as you can be. And I think sometimes some of us just have to accept, and this is where the empathy comes in. Okay, I just wasn't quite as good as that person. It wasn't for their lack of trying, and I'm cool with that. I still sleep at night. Um, but you can help the ones who do have that extreme talent to keep pushing and pushing and set the records because, let's be honest, that's what we all want to see and that's why we all love the game. I want to see somebody do something that's not been done before um, and it keeps you on the edge of your seat, it keeps you engaged, it keeps you wanting to do things. Um, and uh, it solves us quite incredible for that. I'm sure that you'll be able to come up with a list to, to prove... Um to, to prove th th this isn't the case but there is a perception that the greatest players don't make the greatest coaches and in fact there's a, there's a somebody produced a graph which showed that uh, those players who had to work hardest and longest in their playing careers routinely do make the best coaches which kind of tells you all you need to know about the importance of, of being able to empathise and also the modern trend now of not being instructional as a coach but but being cooperative and <laughs> allowing players to find their own ways rather than you telling them the way yeah because no one person has a book that says if you do not do it this way it is it is, it is not going to work the human body does not work that way human beings do not work that way so there has to be a moment of, of strength from a non-player now so management side you have to have some strength to go, look, the greater good is this, and I'm doing it for the greater good reason. So you t I always take it back to parenting. I take it back to the mealtime. Little one doesn't want to have a main course, but she's straight in for dessert, and she'll have three of those. <laughs> you're kind of going, look, you're not going to like me for this next two minutes, but you are going to eat some of that, and you are going to get your greens in. You're going to have this, and then you can have some of that, of course. Um, whereas the other one, it's kind of, oh, I want all this, and I don't want a bit of that. And you, you manage your, sorry, you look after your children with the greatest care and attention to give them the best chance in life I think the best coaches the best teachers have that intention you are never going to get it right but players don't get it right and I think if you're open and, and brave enough to be 
open to go, look, yeah, I might get it wrong. But it's not with the wrong intention. It's always with the right intention. It becomes a collaboration. It becomes a partnership, which then becomes even more powerful than the dictatorship of do, 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 which was certainly most of my playing career. Um, and it can be restrictive, that. But there is always a place, always, 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 somewhere where you go, look, I genuinely believe for the greater good of you, you're going to have to do this bit that you don't want to do. And I'm not going to apologise for it because you'll thank me in the long run. Which brings us on to uh, the last man on your list. And as I said, we'll, we'll cycle back. But uh, they do say that it's uh, very hard to fill the uh, footsteps or fill, fill the shoes of a, of a famous father. But uh, Mickey Stewart, for most of his life, was Mr Surrey Cricket. And now Alec is Mr Surrey Cricket. I mean, he... He, he, re he has filled the shoes of a legend and he's, there's not much he hasn't done in his career. He's just turned 60, the great man, Alex Stewart. He's uh, coaching, uh, p perhaps, probably isn't top of most people's lists when they think of Alex Stewart. Yeah, he's, he's director of cricket, which is uh, a different animal to just being a coach, I think. Um, so you bang on that everything to do with cricket goes through Alex Stewart at the Keir Oval, uh, at Surrey Cricket. Uh, from grassroots understanding what, and you'd be amazed. He could tell you what the next three or four superstar 12-year-olds could be and what their names are and what they do and where they're from and what school they're at and so on and so forth. For a man that's achieved everything in the game. And he will also know what underpants Gus Atkinson's got on in Dar es Salaam today as 12th man for England. He just knows everything that's going on. Everything comes through him. Um, he's very methodical in his thought process. He's very planned in everything that he does. Um, and the best thing about it all, the best thing about it all, all the nonsense that goes around sport and uh, the finance and the, uh, the fame, the adulation, whatever it might be, it's always, always comes back to cricket and what is definitely right for the individuals but also for the club and cricket reasons and cricket reasons and cricket reasons. The other stuff does not come into play. The other stuff is there and it needs managing and looking after, which it does brilliantly. But it always, always is done for the right reasons, which gives us a better grounding. That is the reason why there's a conveyor belt of a very uh, talented young players coming through, and that's only going to get better. We produce a few, but we should be doubling that, and that is our job. Uh, we do very well on revenue, right, but we've got to get better at it. We've got to get more. We've got to just keep pushing the barrier and pushing the bar. Um, and Stewie has been there, seen it, done it in everything that is to be offered in cricket. And he's still not done. And he's 60 and he wants more. And he, he, will, he will get more. Um, the stories about him, you know, ironing his own shirt before a test match because it got crumpled in his, uh, in his coffin on the way to the ground. Um, and he was always immaculately turned out, uh, always um, a great believer in discipline, which may, to the modern generation, make him sound like a bit of a fuddy-duddy. But he seems also to be incredibly in tune and in touch with the new generation. You hear him talking about franchise cricket around the world um, and, and players' mental well-being and whatever. You know, you, you would think he was a doctor of psychology. So he's got those old-style disciplines, which I think have served him in great stead. And evidently, Surrey are benefiting from those as well. Is that, um, that's a question. Yeah, the, the one thing I would question, I'm not sure about ironing your socks, is, is what you're required <laughs> no, no, to do. No, his shirt, <laughs> not his socks. No, he does his socks. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it really? puts me to shame when I walk in the, uh, <laughs> when I walk in the office. Um, sorry, that's a bit of a, a poor joke, badly told. Um, no, I, I, I think to, to excel in sport, you have to have some discipline, you have to have some sacrifice somewhere. And I think that's the bit that you're talking about in Vivian, where very well presented. It's his, it's his discipline piece. It's his bit of, of why he was the best at what he did for England and what he, why he's the best director of cricket now in the country. And every time a job comes up with England, they try and get him um, because he's the best and he would make that England setup better. And I have no qualms in saying that. That's not to say that the people who are doing it now don't do a great job. They do. They do a wonderful job. But I know I work with the best from that being able to transfer from being in the, in the office to speaking to people about, right, well, there's this franchise going on here and how does that affect us to how that affects England players to all this sort of a thing to then also having the ability to go on the bowling machine and do some work with some keepers. It is an incredible skill set to be able to do that and you have to have a broad understanding of everything. Um, and I, I think the, the thing that made Stewie, and I'm not qualified to talk about Stewie as a player, but to make his, and, and this word is also banded around too much, the greatness. Alex Stewart is a great England cricketer. There's no mistaking that. But he's transferring that and able 
to put that into what is now a new role from his playing days um, as director of cricket. And I think being able to use the knowledge there and to be able to then pass it on. And if there's a bit that he doesn't, he'll pass it on to somebody else and they deliver it. But the message is still constant and it's cricket and it's for the greater good of cricket, which is technically the individual and the kids that are involved in it or the older blokes like me is all for growth of individuals. And finally, you've got 30 seconds. Uh, from your dad to Mickey Stewart, Tom Moody, Damien Dolivera, Ian Salisbury and Alex Stewart, are there ever moments where, in, during your coaching career where you think, what would one of them do? All the time. Um, more often than not, I think about what dad would do. Um, add some energy, add some fun, but also back it up with that little bit of uh, skill that somebody can take forward. Um, but there's also an apology to everybody I've ever played with and everybody that's not on that list. There are hundreds and that's why I wanted it to go for more management because I could structure through my career. Um, but the number of players that have helped me out, because I've been a village idiot for half my life, <laughs> if not still now. Um, so, no, I, it's, a, it's a thankless task. And actually, incredibly emotional. I was properly emotional there. The first, I've had to really work hard not to be in tears now. It's an emotional thing. Darren Goff and Steve Harmson both shed a tear, by the way. This is a strange process, isn't it? <laughs> it's phenomenal. You're dissecting. And I never look back. I always look forward. I'll, I'll take some information from the past, but uh, yeah, I don't believe in all that stuff. Yeah, that, it, very emotional. Wow. Gareth Batty, thank you very much indeed for your time. Um, it's uh, five coaches who shaped his career and uh, as a player and a coach. It's lunchtime at the Himachal Pradesh Cricket Association Stadium in Dharamshala. England won the toss on the first morning of the fifth test match and they've reached lunch at 100 for two with Zach Crawley on 61. Live ball by ball commentary here on TalkSport 2 resumes in a couple of minutes. Exclusive ball by ball commentary of the fifth and final test match live from Dharmshala. Past the umpire now, he's straight. See you later. Only on TalkSport 2. It's all about guts. Oh, what a save by Marriott. Goals. Knocks it past her and gets it in. And glory. And Ella Toon has just etched her name in the Hall of Fame. The FA Women's Continental Tyres League Cup on TalkSport with Continental Tyres. Listen to TalkSport Drive all this week as Andy Goldstein and Darren Bent retread the action after every fixture. FA Women's Continental Tyres League Cup reviews on TalkSport. Continental Tyres, driving safety and performance. For car insurance, you can rely on NFU Mutual. We pay out on 99% of car insurance claims with no quibble. And if you're hit by an at-fault, uninsured driver, your no-claims discount is protected. Conditions apply. We do this so you can enjoy the more important things. No wonder we're a which recommended car insurance provider, February 2024. For quality car insurance you can rely on, join NFU Mutual today. Did you know that Sky Mobile has 99% network coverage? That means... Dads, like me. <laughs> Commuters like me. And farmers like... <laughs> yep, they all get 99% network coverage on Sky Mobile. Hello, possible. 4G outdoor network available to 99% of UK population. At Honda, we've been engineering cars for over 70... Four! 75 years, actually. We know that excellence takes time. So you can rely on the Honda engineering in the all-new ENY1. With a range of up to 250 miles on a single charge and up to five years warranty, servicing and roadside assistance. Our first electric SUV, the ENY1. Oh, a hole-in-one. Yes. Honda, the power of dreams. Range based on test conditions and may vary. Sometimes running a business can feel like swimming upstream in Siberia. Welcome. With a bear clinging onto your leg. <laughs> But Zero Online accounting software can help you manage the ins and outs of your finances in real time. So you can keep them running smoothly. Soon it will feel more like you're going down a water slide. Your turn. In a rubber ring. Or being serenaded by a string quartet. Search Zero with an X. Because healthy business is beautiful business. Let me go straight to the point. When you lay in a patio or driveway, you need Seeker Fast Fix. It's ready mixed, easy to use and quick to apply. Plus, it comes in five colours and you can use it in any weather. Transform your next project with confidence. Transform it with Seeker Fast Fix. 
and you'll finish a quality job in no time at all. Seeker Stockist now at seeker.co.uk slash landscaping. On DAB Plus, online, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. Exclusive ball-by-ball -ball commentary of the fifth and final test match, live from Dharmshala. Field it all the time. Only on Talk Sport 2. Welcome, you're listening to Talk Sport 2 and Talk Sport and via the Talk Sport Cricket YouTube channel. This is the afternoon session on day one of the fifth test match between India and England. India with an unassailable 3 1 lead, but uh, plenty to play for. And uh, just watching on as Joe Root, England's at number four is just marking his guard. The reason the route is in is because the last ball of that morning session, a really interesting one, uh, ended with the wicket of Ollie Pope coming down the track to Koldip Yadav. Uh, he didn't read uh, the delivery, which uh, he expected to go straight or into the pads. Uh, instead, it went past the outside edge of the bat and uh, Jarrell behind the stumps was never going to make a mistake so two wickets in the session both going the way of Koldi Yadav who earlier on had picked up the wicket of Ben Duckett for 27 uh, caught via a quite brilliant piece of fielding from Shubman Gill and it just means that the pressure back on England first ball of the afternoon session there on uh, TalkSport 2 and uh, Jeru is off the mark first ball as he takes uh, a ball that's on the fifth stump line and eclipses through square leg for a single uh, so a disappointing end to the session, if you are just joining us. It was uh, action-packed, really. England winning the toss, deciding to bat first. No can, uh, real surprise there. Crawley and Duckett putting on 64 for the first wicket. Going past 50 again. Uh, they've been uh, proficient at the top of the order for England, and they were so again today, although not without uh, a little bit of luck going their way. How Jasper Brummer didn't pick up a wicket, I'll never know, as Yadav as uh, this is caught by Safrez Khan at short leg. It's not been given out by Joel Wilson, but uh, Safrez Khan is absolutely adamant that Zach Crawley has got a little inside edge onto the pads. The ball has ballooned up and he's made some good, uh, good yardage. But Rohit Sharma is not convinced, I don't think. Your reading of that, Steve Harmison? Yeah, he, I think Rohit Sharma's gone off Jurel. He's not gone off Sarfraz. I think Sarfraz emotion catching it is obviously getting a little bit excited. Jarrell was not adamant. This is not this has not happened. No touch. And I would have gone with I think I'd have gone with Sarfraz because I'm not sure Jarrell could see as well because the um Zach Crawley's body's in the way. But um I'm not so sure he has hit it. It didn't look as any deviation, didn't look as though there was any noise, but I'm not sure. Rohit Sharma's gone with a witty keeper and not gone with short leg. Well, we'll, uh, we'll wait and see. Good morning to TalkSport listeners, by the way, who have joined us for this uh, first over after the lunch break on day one of the fifth test matches. Koldik Yadav is in again, and Crawley defends. Jared Kimber alongside myself, John Norman, Steve Harmison. You're reading on that, uh, Jared? Well, ha Harmy said that uh, Jarrell uh, didn't read it. He was looking in the air still when, when Safraz was taking the ball on the ground. He had no idea where the ball was. Um, it wasn't near anything else, it wasn't near anything pad. So if, if there was a noise or a flick, uh, it would have had to have been battle glove, wouldn't it? Yeah, I thought uh, it was very, very close to the, the, the bottom of the glove, under part of the glove, which would suggest it would go then go down. I'm not so sure it went it went down. So I think I think in the end, I think Rohit Sharma might have got it right, but he's gone off the wiggy keeper because when the conflab came together, so right, I mean, Safraz is still adamant. He's still animated. He is still convinced. He's that an adamant man. He, well, he is. He's excitable, isn't he? And I think he's excitable because he took a very, very good catch low down. But Jarrell straight away said to Rohit Sharma, no, shaking his head, I don't think so. And I think the Indian captain's gone with the wiggy keeper rather than... You know, Safraz, who took a very, very good catch. OK, well, look, if you want to continue listening to the cricket on TalkSport 2, just download the TalkSport app and swipe left or right. So check us out there, along with the likes of Virgin Radio, Times Radio, and, of course, Talk Sports. Um, otherwise, uh, the, uh, the sports breakfast will take you throughout the morning with updates from Sam Ellard. Either way, England do have 100 on the board. They're 101 for two. We've had 26 overs and no surprise whatsoever that Jasper Bumrah has been brought back into the attack 
His seven overs went for 24 earlier today and he's going to bowl his first delivery to Joe Root, who defends. I also think if their review that they had earlier uh, was clipping and they hadn't have lost it, they might have taken it. The, th the problem with the court behinds, as we see here, there's nowhere near the glove, and there's a little tickle on the bat, a tiny, tiny tickle on the bat. It's, that is a tickle and a half. I mean, it's, it's a enough. tickle. Yeah. It's, it's enough. enough. Is, yeah. The question is, is that... So we're watching a replay <laughs> as uh, Jared Kimber tickles me. I'm not sure why he needs to... Uh, perform such a demonstration but either way it's a really my it's, it's such a small murmur as the ball goes past the bat the on-field call was not out as Boomer is in again and Joe Root as we have seen him play the shot so many times just guides the ball he plays so late and with soft hands and there's a little bit of a misfield at Gully Shubman Gill I think either way uh, he can't feel co completely so uh, he'll take a run but the question is, would there have been enough to have overturned the on-field call? Yeah. Yeah, I think there was. I think there's enough of a spike there to, to overturn the uh, the on-field call. And I'm, I'm with Jared. I think if the decision first thing this morning had been umpire's call, which you know, I've, I've berated and hammered um, the umpires and DRS in the last couple of test matches. Boomer again, Crawley lets this alone no run but if that one this morning is missing by the distance is missing and i'm sorry this game's gone i mean yeah they've sp they've, there's been a little bit of spin but the spin this morning which was given not out missed by a yard and a half you'd have thought that was a fifth day pitch and not a first day pitch and i think if that was what they were expecting umpires call because i think they went for the referral first thing this morning and that would have stayed on field and that would have stayed with three in there, India's favour, I think there's more chance of Rohit Sharma going with Safraz, being excitable as he was, and then that might have been Crawley out. There is one other thing as well, of course, as Crawley gets onto the front foot, pushes us up to mid on. Would Rohit Sharma have listened to a more experienced short leg if it had been another fielder there? I think if one other person would backed him up, I think Sharma would have gone with it as well. It was literally him on his own. It was Jarrell who was adamant. Yeah. Jarrell just Jar said, Jar Jarrell shaking his head. He's he is shaking his head as to say no. And he was he was as I think he was as convinced it wasn't out as Sofraz was convinced it was out. And I think Rowett's gone with the wiggy keeper as opposed to going with short leg. It yeah, looked, you're it, right. It looked like Shiv McGill was, was interested, but I think you're right. I think they read the they read the room, they saw that Jarrell wasn't interested, and that was it. Hit on the pad, high on the thigh pad, actually, by Crawley, um, who is, uh, who's had a life. Uh, so one other thing I would say about that, when you do look at that review, uh, uh, the footage, there's a little tickle, as we said, on, on the, uh, on the uh, ultra edge, but there is a gap at the exact same time between bat and ball that you can see umpire might have gone could be another noise yeah. uh, uh, you know because it, 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 it was such a small mark on the on the on the ultra edge could have gone either way i think that they, they could have said it was a little earthquake from the himalayas <laughs> just being picked up as the ball went past the bat it's probably not bat handle when you're facing a spinner and you're moving the bat that slow but it could have been a foot two slips are in place for crawley who plays this delivery from Brummer with the straightest of all straight bats almost exaggerated as uh, he sees out the end of the over. I'm not sure if you were watching the uh, T20 between Sri Lanka and uh, Bangladesh yesterday, but there was an extraordinary moment in oh, that yeah. match when uh, the, the batter, opening bat for Bangladesh, was given out, caught behind. He reviewed it. And despite there being a clear edge as the ball went past the bat, it was one frame delayed. So the umpire, the third umpire said, Oh, well, I can clearly see a gap between the bat and the ball, and that spike happens after the ball has gone past the bat, so I'm going to overturn the on-field call. And as you can imagine, Chris Silverwood and the team, the Sri Lanka team, didn't take that news particularly yeah, well. You can't be in two places at once. So it wasn't Joe Wilson or Kumar Dharmasena, was it? It wasn't. Uh, Joe Root uh, playing deep, and he really hits the, this ball the meat of the bat flies to short leg, bounces before it gets to Safra's car, and it kind of gets his hand in the way of the ball. There's no run. But this is, uh, this is going to be a bit of a stinger. Yeah, I mean, the, the frame, when, when you get the camera, because that last one we just saw, it again, I mean, we see the, the frame doesn't line up exactly with the edge again. 
you haven't it's so hard wider and beats at root past the inside edge Cody Yadav who picked up both wickets this morning should have got Zach Crawley um, just after the lunch break has got a ball to turn well that has absolutely ragged past Joe Root's inside edge could have taken the inside edge could have hit off stump uh, Root has just had a little bit of luck go his way as all batters need at the start of their innings. Yeah, beautiful ball again, just outside off stump, spinning back, bouncing. Here's Yadaf again. He's uh, got Joe Root playing deep in his crease. He's playing for the turn, and he'll take a single. The score moves along, 103 for two. Well, we know that Coldrick's taken wickets at, at Darren Rashala before. We also know that it's not particularly a spin-friendly wicket, but to me, um, Harmi, it's a little bit more like Adelaide day three, or even Gabba day four. It, the ball's coming through, so it's good for wrist spinners. There's a little bit of bounce and there's a little bit of spin at, at the same time. Uh, so I, it's a good good wicket for a wrist spinner. Here is Yadaf again and Crawley pushing off the back foot. There's a, a little bit of a, a dive from backward point and there's a shot at the stumps as well. But good running from England just for a minute as the ball was coming into the wicket keeper. It looked like Crawley might be struggling, but he gets home. And he moves to 63. The score here on TalkSport 2, England, winning the toss, deciding to bat 105 for two. And Cody Yadaf is, uh, is proving to be the difference. Do you think on another day, if he was available, England might have uh, brought in their own wrist spinner? Yeah, quite possibly. Um, quite possibly. I think, you know, it is, it is the bounce that one that went through Joe Root. Forward and defended this time by Crawley. No run. It was the bounce that was surprising that that beat Root. I think you know Joe's got uh, out towards the ball and you know the turn back through the gate and I think the little bit of bounce you know we've just seen a, a, another replay of it again. Joe Root's timing was off coming forward, but it's the bounce that's gone through back the gate, back through the gate, and it's bounced nearly over the top of the stumps. Crawley defends and sees off the over. Another good one from Cody Yadaf. He's picked up two wickets for 26. And England have moved on to 105 for two. But much as this series has uh, and how it has progressed, just when it looked like England were enjoying a little bit of dominance, they've lost a wicket out of Ollie Pope just before the uh, lunch break. And since the lunch break, it's just looked quite perilous to score all of a sudden. Yeah, definitely. Uh, other thing worth noting is Kuldeep's bowling a little bit slower than he has in the rest of this series. And I, I, my guess is it's because there's pace in this wicket, so he doesn't have to go through his action as much. He's letting the wicket do a little bit more for him. And again, that's why he's uh, causing some issues. Yeah, no, but I think that's also given England a chance to score because he's bowling a little bit slower. If he doesn't quite get it in the right area, England can get all the way back deep in the crease and play him from the crease and use their hands to get them into the gaps, which is on show. Ben Duckett did it very well. Joe Root used the depth of his crease to play him through the leg side, and so has Zach Crawley. So, yes, he, he is a point of difference, but if he doesn't quite get his lens right, England can still score off him. Jasper Brummer then to begin over number nine, and uh, this is pitched up, and it uh, comes into the pad of Joe Root, who comes across and clips his ball past Mohamed Siraj, who's quite deep at square leg but as soon as the ball has gone past the fielder no chance that that's going to be stopped before it hits the rope that's encouraging that's encouraging me from a bowler's point of view Joe Root's gone on to off stump he's changed his guard a little bit he's gone from what would be a conventional two guard middle and leg and he's now batting on off stump to to Jasper Bumrah trying to I think smother the movement, trying to get him in a position where if he does bowl it straight and it's coming into him, which I think which Joe Root has had a little bit of trouble and issue with, then he can score through the leg side and hopefully if it does stand up and it does nip away, then he obviously by that time he can play and miss it. Two sits in the gully. There's also a, a couple of fielders in at mid-wicket, a couple of catching cover fielders as well. This has dropped into the offside. No run from Root, who remains on seven. Just one fielder out on the boundary. Quite in from uh, deep square. I think the point you were making before, I think England might have made the change of Rish, um, Rian Ahmed in for, for Bashir. I think they might have looked at Kuldeep's figures on this ground, seeing that a wrist spinner is is effective and England might have changed Rian Ahmed for possibly for Shoah Bachir. I wonder if he would have played as the fourth, well I suppose with Root, 
depending on whether Root can bowl. But. And it is Root now who uh, dabs this ball into the offside. It flies to backward point, no run. I think England were always going to play two seamers at this venue. That's what I mean. Yeah, I'll and it's just that, that second spinner. I think England might have gone for the wrist spinner, gone for a little bit more protection on the batting as well. And I think Bashir might have made way for, for Rian Ahmed, who would have been, you know, like Kuldeep Yadav, uh, a point of difference with the ball bouncing um, and obviously turning both ways. 109 for two then. Root early in his innings, a little movement uh, towards the offside and he gets forward and plays this uh, delivery from Jasper Brummer on a good length to short extra, no run. 100 for one at the lunch break with uh, one over to go. Ollie Pope then comes down the track, he's stumped. And it's just another one of those moments that some of the critics will say, well, England don't know when they're ahead, do they? Yeah, but I get that. And there's, there's you know, hindsight and, you know, foresight. So it's a wonderful thing. Boomer again, and this is a help find down the leg side. I'm not sure if Root got any bat on uh, this delivery from uh, Boomer, who hasn't quite got his line right, but with Joe Root operating on that off stump line, it means that he is a little bit of a candidate for a leg before wicket. And uh, Boomer has tried to spear this in. Hasn't quite got it right this time. And that's four more runs to the score. I think because Bummer is trying to bowl it in, in and around that off stump, Joe getting across the off stump, he is being able to score freely through the leg side. It's the one that straightens that gets him in trouble. You've got a little inside edge there. It's four valuable runs to Joe Root score, which keeps building that scoreboard pressure. 113 for two, and uh, Root fortunate here again. We saw uh, Crawley do this on a couple of occasions against Bummer with the newer ball. It's essentially trying to play a delivery to the uh, to mid wicket, and the outside edge has flown to backward point. It's dropped short of Rarinda Jadeja, but. Uh, Bumrut causing problems once again. Yeah, he is, and that's the one that you worry about. They're just straightening a little bit. That one's straightened, and that's the one that gets Joe Root's outside edge. Joe Root will say he's got a plan. He's going to bat in and around that off stump line, and if it is coming in, he can score freely through the leg side. So he's not going to let Jasper Bumrut bowl to him and put him under pressure. You mentioned there before, England don't know when they're ahead. Some people would say that, an old school mentality would say yes. You know, when they get ahead, they've that's when they make mistakes, but I would say because of the mentality they have, you know, that gets them ahead of the game, and sometimes that's just a little bump in the road that this team has. Tossed up by uh, Yad, uh, Koldip Yadav. Almost full toss territory as Crawley takes a couple to Mohamed Siraj at deep mid wicket. 115 for two, England. So because they get themselves ahead of the game by playing this way the mentality that England have and being positive and aggressive and trying to put the opposition on the back foot you can't have it all ways that does come with an element of risk it does you know there, sometimes it could be a little bit more watchful but I'd sooner than be in this position forward is crawling he's gone past 54 times in the series he's a leading run scorer for England but yet to register a century 65 not out from 82 deliveries. England 115 for two. There were 100 for two at lunch. It's Crawley again. This is uh, swept by Crawley. He will not get a run for it. There's a, a shout for leg before as well. Rohit looks interested, but Kodi Yadav has already turned around. Yeah, Crawley, it's the second or third time I've seen him sweep when the ball's been just outside leg. He's waiting for it online. It's... A far, far smarter way of going about it than we've seen before from him. There is a fielder at short, fine leg. And a, a short leg as well. As uh, Yadaf, this time it's straight. So that's how Crawley plays with a straight blade. I think Crawley's play against the spin has really improved in this series. So um, when he comes down the wicket, he averages 15 runs to spin. And quite often what happens is he comes down the wicket and then tries to play a big shot and he loses his shape. Uh, and what he's managed to do a lot more in the back end of this series... Here's Yadaf again. This is straight again. 
As the ball squirts to backward point, no run. He's, he's used his feet, but he's not looking to necessarily hit a four or a six. And so he can hit mid off and mid on. And then and then any time that there's a problem with length, he's already, you know, twice the size of a normal batter. So he can get to those and capitalize on them. And he's much better when he's just on the front foot where he's averaging 30 against spin. And Here is Yadaf. This is pitched up. And uh, Zach Crawley shakes to come forward. The length is there to drive. He opens uh, the face of the bat and places this ball beautifully along the ground, pass extra cover, and away for four. Because he's so tall and, and so powerful, he's going to put those balls away. He doesn't need to dance down the wicket and create anything. And uh, again, he, he's put away about four half volleys that probably aren't half volleys if, if you're Ben Duckett. Like ben Duckett's probably nowhere near the length of those balls. And that's the, that's the case in point with Zach Crowley. The minute he tries to hit it too hard, he loses his shape. And the minute he loses his shape, it looks awful. Looks ordinary. Ollie Pope, similar. The minute Ollie Pope loses his shape, it looks frantic, especially at the start of an innings. And that's why a lot of people say he's a, he's a struggling starter. So that's the, the challenge for Zach Crowley, is not trying to overhit the ball. You know, if he does get himself in a good position, his balance is good, and he times it. It flies off the bat because he times it beautifully. But the problem for Zach is sometimes when he tries to hit it too hard, his right shoulder comes in. And when his right shoulder comes in, his head goes, his body goes, his balance goes, and more often than not, he goes. There seems to be a difference when he's trying to play to mid wicket as opposed to through the covers as well, as this is left alone. Boomer bowling. And uh, Root uh, just watches this one go through. 119 for two. He seems to get in, and he has done throughout his career. He gets caught from leading edges, or he's onto a shot too soon, and he's playing to mid wicket rather than straight. He's got a very strong bottom hand, and he's also got a back lift that comes a little bit from the offside. He sort of plays across balls sometimes. He's just shown a good replay, and I'll come on to it in a second. There's just a really good replay of his footwork there. Sometimes that gets him into trouble. But he did something there that he doesn't normally, doesn't, he hadn't been doing leading up, for me, leading up into this series. Pitched up and Joe Root is beaten past the outside edge. What a delicious ball this is by Jasper Boomer, not for the first time today. Now, the ball's reversing. We saw that last um, ball of the last over. Um, just moving oh. around a little bit, although that might have hit the seam, did that's it? It's hit the seam. Yeah. Yeah, that's gone off the seam, I the, think. The yeah. other one, he got the outside edge yeah. of root reversed back that in. That reversed back in. Yeah, he's got it for, he's got it, you know, as a, you know, reverse swinging ball, and the ball is shipped a little bit, but I think that one has just hit the seam. <laughs> good luck. And nipped away, so, so good luck playing that one. He reversed swung one earlier that hit the seam and moved away, and now he's hit the seam and moved away. <sighs> might want to put another slip in there, row hit is uh, Brumra again. He's uh, pushing this a touch fuller, but he's drawing Root forward. He does get a, a good portion of the bat on this delivery, 119 for two. What is it about Root that brings the best out of guys like Rabada and, and Cummins and, and, and Boomer? Like, so against Boomer in India, he averages 17. He averages 40 against him in England. No problem in normal seeming conditions. Get him into India, and it's, it's all over for him. That's champions, isn't it? It's champion players, top players that identify who's the you know who's the target in the opposition team when you're in your own back garden you're the man that's got to get their best player out i'm the best bowler i've got to get their best player out and that's why this has been a brilliant contest so why does first slip and then a second slip as uh, root is playing um across his bat uh, across his pad he's clipping this ball to cold yadaf who's at, at long leg he'll take a single he moves to 12 and that brings zach crawley on strike 69 not out Shared in a, another good partnership with uh, Ben Duckett of 64. And England have added 20 runs to their lunchtime score. But the Indian bowlers have been in this throughout. Run scoring hasn't been a problem. But fortune has gone England's way so far. As uh, Jarrell dives it to his left and gets a hand to a delivery from Boomra, which again is just uh, straying in that line by his signals. And uh, England moved to 122 for two. Yeah, it's got a, it's swinging, it's reverse swinging. Boomra's getting it, getting it to go in. Um, but good running from Zach Crawley, identifying, keeping the scoreboard going. Yeah, excellent stop from Jarrell, who stopped a, a certain boundary. Diving down the leg side, but Crawley realising that 
ball's gone in between him and fine leg so he, he managed to scamper back for two to keep the pressure on keep the scoreboard going you know Brummer is bowling well but he's gone for 34 in 10 overs Brummer again and uh, Crawley shapes to play but then at the last moment, minute uh, realizes that he doesn't have to so doesn't go through with a shot and that is at uh, the end of the over 31 overs that we've had today in this uh, fifth test match and England uh, winning the toss are 122 for two but you just feel Steve Harvison that something could happen at any minute absolutely the you, England could find themselves 140 for five here because of you know, the other reverse swinging ball cold deep spinning it um, and you're obviously Bumrah's Bummer is reversing it, but just going to go back to Crawley of that last over and the last boundary he hit. Zach Crawley, in the past, he gets caught because you're talking about trying to hit it too hard. His shoulder's coming in, he's off balance, and his front foot plants. But not, what I've seen so far in these five test matches in India and why he's playing spin a lot better is because his initial movement is short and then he can readjust and go again, and that's what he did well in that last boundary. It's route facing though, and Cody Yadav bowling, this delivery turning into the right-handed route who gets his bat down and uh, clips it straight to short leg where it's fielded by Safraz Khan. Safraz Khan who was a lone voice on the field in the first over after the lunch break. Zach Crawley, finest of all fine inside edges onto the thigh of Jarrell. The ball looped up and was caught by Khan. Touch more flight this time, and uh, Root comes forward this time. He opens the face, a touch, but can't get the ball past backward point. And Khan uh, completed the catch, implored his captain to try and overturn the on-field not-out call. He wasn't successful. India would have been successful if they'd gone upstairs, though. As uh, Root playing deep in his crease again. There is a, a fielder out at deep square. It's Mohamed Siraj. And uh, Root finds him. Root moves to 13. We had uh, a leg before decision in the first session, which also went England's way. The ball shown to be clipping leg stump. I think it was a fair enough call by the uh, by the umpire not to give that one. But uh, two little moments going the way of England in this fifth test as Crawley dead bats this delivery, which is going across him from Cody Yadav. We've seen that uh, seam, we've seen some swing, we've seen turn, we've seen bounce. There's a crack or two on this wicket as well. So it looks like a good toss to win for England. It's Crawley uses uh, his height well to come forward and just wristily play this ball straight past the straight mid wicket. And he comes through for another single. He moves to 70. The score here on Talk Sport 2. England 124 for two. And Joe Root will face his final delivery from Yadav. Tossed up again. Defended by Root. And that brings us to the end of the over. And after a word from uh, either Jared or Harmy, it will be uh, Andrew McKenna to take us through the next 20 minutes or so. Again, it's been very, very good from... Root and Crawley. You know, Zach Crawley's last scoring shot down the ground, Jared. He's played that shot really well in this in this series. You know, that's he's been released, get out of you know, out of pressure shot, where in the past he's he's tend to come out of these crease or potentially thrashed at it and trying to hit it too hard and lost his ship. Where that shot there, total control, let the ball come to him, played it down the ground with complete you know, ease when it comes to hands and body movement as well as smothering the bounce using his long levers and I think because he's played that shot comfortably he can rotate and build a score and, 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 you know, and really alleviate pressure, uh, alleviate pressure from himself Jasper Bumra to start his 11th over then comes in right arm over it's down the leg side Crawley's had a little fence at that one India are really appealing Jurel is completely baffled the fact that Rod Tucker has not raised the finger. <laughs> <laughs> Safraz, the man who was so convinced a few moments ago, is, is now shrugging the shoulders. And we've got to one second, and it's not been reviewed. It would have been incredible if they reviewed that one. This time the wicketkeeper thought there was an edge down the leg side, and Safraz was the one telling them that there wasn't. 
Uh, so they've trusted uh, Safra as, uh, um, this time and they've not gone with it. But it could have been that they've got Crawley out twice down the leg side um, and they haven't gone for either review. We'll have to have a look in a moment. But uh, Jarrell was absolutely positive. Okay, so we're now getting the review. Pad. I think it's pad, I think. Yeah, there is a, there is a deflection. There is a deviation. Um, I think he's miles away from the from the bat. Yeah, miles away from the bat, and it's hit the pad. It's amazing if you catch it. In goes Jasper Brummer over the wicket. Crawley coming forward, opens the blade, guides it down towards third, and will get four. He goes to 74. England 128 for two. Harmy. Yeah, good shot from from Zach Crawley. He's playing away from his body, but he, I think he's in control. Just opens the face a little bit. Softer hands. Yeah, he's dropped his hands on it very, very nicely. But it just seems that if you catch it, you seem to get excitable in the uh, in the motion. You know, Sarfraz was adamant. Keeper wasn't happy with it. The last one, and this time, Sarfraz was adamant that he didn't hit it, shaking his head. Um, and and Jarrell thought it was thought it was out, which was quite strange because it was miles away from the bat. In goes Bumra once again. Now seems to keep, keep a little bit low to Crawley. Mm. He uh, is forward. It's off the inside half of the bat and goes towards square leg. No run. Uh, I understand what you're saying about the catching thing, but how about the fact that the Safra's review system is two from two? He, pick, he picked the He's catch, spot on, isn't he? and then and then he and then he said this one wasn't off, and he would have been. At what, first or second slip for this? I think he's at slip, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. Which is a surprise because he's actually got sh he's got shin pads on. Well, I think for the spinner he's in close, yeah. isn't he? And then, yeah, maybe he's the man that they need on the review committee. Safraz at first slip, watching Bumbra come in, and Crawley is from the crease, pushes it back down the pitch, no run. I know one thing: if I was a bowler and my my first slip has got shin pads on, I would not be very happy. Uh, I'm, I'm not, be, I'm not happy. He's got shin pads on. So, you know, why on earth would you stand at slip, standing back with shin pads on? Why can't Shubman Gill do it or Robert Sharma do it? If 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 one comes down low, I'm sorry. He's, if Safraz drops on here at slip, I'd be livid because he's he's restricting his movements. You know, why has Robert Sharma got him there? It's not it's not Safraz's fault. Jasper is in, a little bit leg side -ish. Crawley hits it straight to Shubman Gill at close in mid-wicket. He bounces in front of him, but there's an a awful lot of sucking in of air at the moment from the Indian fielders because that is not a million miles away from another wicket. No, we've seen so many balls uh, scooped up on this surface, which is interesting because it's got decent pace and carry at times as well. Um, Shubman Gill should be at slip, but he's got the finger injury. That's why he's not there. Uh, Rohit's fielded it slip before, though. I just, uh, I, uh, if a one goes low down, he drops it because he's restricted of movement. I would be a very, very unhappy fast bowler. Jasper Brummer goes in to complete the over. Just dropped into the offside by Zach Crawley. He'll take a single. Goes to 75. 33 overs gone here on TalkSport 2. England 129 for two. Unhappy fast bowlers. It's not the tradition, is uh, it? I mean, where has that come from? Um, well, of course, it has been a problem for India in this series. We've mentioned this before in the fact that with the, uh, the injury problems that they've had, they've not had a settled slip cordon. Obviously, Virat Kohli does uh, slip duties. He's not involved. He hasn't played a ball in this series. And we've had Kel Rahul getting out uh, the series because of the calf problem that he's picked up. He did his first slip at one point. So they have had a little bit of a revolving door policy on the, on the slip cord in India. But um, So, yes, Safra's doing first slip with his... Short leg kit on underneath. Harmy's gone away to have a chunter about that. He and Jared have uh, moved out the way as Gareth Batty and Alex Tudor come in. Morning, gentlemen. A very good morning. I tell you what, I want to know the DJ at the ground is. He's had some absolute bangers this morning. <laughs> what about this one just playing in the background? Free, <laughs> free falling by Tom Petty. Last time I heard this in a public setting, it was uh, being played at Newcastle Airport it, by the pub. Uh, Kuldeep oh, goes in and bowls to Zach Crawley lovely, lovely and he plays back down the pitch no run, which I have to say I thought was a pretty poor choice because there might be some nervous flyers who don't want to hear free falling. I'm going to on our, uh, test Bats' uh, movie. What movie was that song in? Really good one, make, famous. Make it a tough one, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Cull deep in, left arm oh, over the wicket. Yeah, Crawley know. comes forward, you know, pushes back down. I'm sure it's been in many movies, but which one am I going? You just wanted me to swear live on radio, didn't no, you? I, no. It's Jerry Maguire, my yeah, friend. Yeah, boy, show me the money. <laughs> 
Zach Crawley, 75, not out. Waits for Kuldeep, goes in, bolted with a bit of a grunt. Rolls out another left arm wrist spinner, and it's pushed out on the offside, no run. Yeah, we were just saying off air, um, out the back there, this is, this is kind of like the making or breaking for how England are going to keep moving forward. You feel like they've got a real stranglehold on what looks like a good surface, the best time of the day to be batting now. Can they extend on this position? Kuldi goes in, Zach Crawley is trying to play off the back foot, inside edge is onto his foot, and it rolls away from the stumps, and there's no run, 129 for two. Yeah, you think they've worked so hard, especially Crawley in this innings, he's 75 of 100 balls faced. Seen off Bumrah and Siraj in that opening spell when Bumrah had him in all sorts. Ball was talking, opening him up like a can of beans and all sorts. But he's got himself to 75 and now he's thinking, I've got to make that big 150 plus. Cool deep. In, bold, brings Crawley forward and he's playing defensively. No run. There's an awful lot more noise around the bat now, as is always the way. Kuldeep 2 for 34. It did all sorts off the seam earlier, and yet it's the, the man bowling Rispin who's got the wickets in the column. And he comes for the final time this over, and Crawley is forward. Trying to sort of punch to long on, but can't beat the bowler in his follow through. End of the over then on Talksport 2 England. 129 for two after winning the toss and batting. Crawley's got 75, route 30. Yeah, an interesting one because the first hour of the day, if not hour and 20 minutes probably, um, I was on commentary with Harmy and I just sort of said to, to Steve, this looks to me like it's more English conditions where we're seeing genuine swing, genuine movement. But I was interested to see what you thought, Tudes, about how India went about that sort of hour, hour and a bit play. It felt like we were saying, should it be three down? Yeah, like on any given day, I think Bumrah and Siraj, they, they've got a team three down. You're thinking for the life of me, how have I not got a wicket? I think there was a point where Bumrah said to Zach Rawley, how on earth are you still out here? But sometimes you need that luck. As I said, he's got himself to 75 and now he's got to make that big. Well, he's at the non-striker's end as Joe Root waits for uh, Bumra. Bumra bowls and Root from the crease just plays defensively no run. Two slips, a gully. So it is a very English kind of field. Yeah, it does feel, though, that Bumra, this spell, has almost gone into the holding pattern. He's prepared to just go middle of the crease, angle the ball back into Joe Root, just tap away, challenge away at that just outside off stump. The odd one might just fall into the stumps. Can't get too straight now because it's a good surface. I think that lateral music, uh, lateral movement that we saw through the air early on has gone. You're looking for a little bit off the surface and maybe start looking for a bit of reverse swing now. Bumra comes in, it's straighter and Root's trying to turn through square leg but can't beat the fielder there and there's no room. Be interested to see how much reverse we do actually get because obviously it's, it's a much damper atmosphere. The outfield is very lush, um, so it's not that sort of really dry abrasive surface. Yeah, I think the, the pitch looks to me, though, as a, a lot of moisture has started to go out of it. It's, it's almost like the grey footholes now, as opposed to uh, it, it looked that sort of damp and, and sort of uh, darker colour at the start of the day. Looks a lot lighter now. Bumrah walks those five, six, seven, eight paces before he then accelerates in for the final eight or nine paces, delivers the right arm over and Root turns on the onside, no run. Just need to say, Maka, my headmaster's listening, Mr. Tutor. The Tutor kids are around the breakfast table listening to my dulcet tones. That is. <laughs> so good morning. good morning, headmaster. Yes, good morning, headmaster. Good morning, headmaster. Uh, from listening to uh, Tudes backstage, I think you need to be uh, up in his salary. You've got an absolute jet on your hands there, sir. <laughs> Take the little brown envelope there, Bats. Cheers, buddy. <laughs> World Book Day today or tomorrow, isn't it? Most of the schools have, have got that one lined up. Yeah, I think it's International Ladies' Day, Women's Day today. Yep. Jasper Bumra then goes in and bowls. It's a short one that Root doesn't pull, just sort of helps round into the leg side. And Ashwin is the fielder at mid-wicket. There's no run. Yeah, I think it was the ball before. Joe Root just sort of, with his bottom hand, took it off the bat and just sort of... Fain to say the ball just staying in the surface and that one Bumrah banging in quite short but it didn't have that same zip off the surface so you've got to slow your swing down as the batter 
So Joe Root's having to almost pull out of the shot, but had enough presence of mind, had a good enough position to just be able to tap in on its head and, and bail out of any danger. Two slips, gully, and a closing, close in mid-wicket, sort of for that clip off the toes as Bummer goes in, and Root hits it to Shuvman Gill, who is that mid-wicket fielder, but all along the floor. And there is no run, 129 for two, it remains. This is the contest you want to see, isn't it? Test level, world-class batter. Well cast bowler going at it. Brummer's had the better of Joe Root of late. Can he see it through? But this is the contest you want to see. This is what people want to hear, listen to. Two world class, and I'm tell telling you, world class players in our game going at it. Five dot balls from the over so far then. Brummer to finish it off. Goes in and delivers. It goes full in towards the base of off stump. Joe Root is up to that particular task and pushes to mid on to complete the over 129 for two here on talks for two crawley 75 route 13. right world book day then so favorite book go on let's do it it's probably a cricket autobiography isn't it for, a, for well, well, any, anything for picture with pictures people would say for me no i mean uh, listen i've been i've been on the audibles and there's been there's been loads that i've listened to i mean i quite like the the Lee Charles books, you know, your, your Jack Reacher, people that have been watching that series. Um, his books are fantastic, uh, a lot of action. And you've got a big six foot five guy just going, causing mayhem. And, uh, you know, he doesn't, you know, looking after the little, the little person, something's not quite going right. You know, he's going to step in there, Mr. Reacher, and sort it out. Up until very recently, Roger Redhat was about my uh, portfolio of <laughs> books, but... Uh, I read recently the 5am club, which was an interesting read. Kuldeep to start the new over. It's a, a leg break that doesn't turn as much as Zach Crawley thinks. It takes the outside half of the bat and rolls down to third and they'll take a couple. Crawley goes to 77, 131 for two. I mean, some been some really good autobiographies as well, you know, that, uh, that I've gone through. You know, Roy Keane, I love Roy Keane and just listening to him as well, you know. I know he sort of maybe plays up to it a little bit now, but I do love Roy. He just tells it how it is. Cold deep. In. Bowls. Croy stays deep in the crease. Hits off the back foot. Oh, Jaiswal will pull that in in the covers. In fact, it's Depter Padakal who's uh, there. Crawley goes to 78, which is his high score in the series. Made 76 in the first innings in Vizak. Made 73 in the second innings there as well. So... We're hoping to uh, convert this one into a three-figure score and then go on to make plenty more as well. If you haven't been with us since the start, England won the toss. Elected to bat. And they are uh, watching Joe Root deep in his crease, just pushing out on the offside. And there is no run. England's team, as was announced yesterday, one change. Mark Wood in for Ollie Robinson. India making two changes. Jasper Bummer was back for uh, Akash Deep and Rajat Padidar has uh, been uh, ruled out after getting hit on the ankle in training yesterday so Devdut Padikal is in for him Kuldeep in Root is absolutely standing in front of all three but his hand-eye coordination is good enough he watches it onto the blade of the bat and turns it safely out on the onside no run it was interesting Bats and I at the back were just having a, a good conversation obviously me from with my coaching teachers head on Bats obviously dealing with elite sports people. Cold deep bowls. Root deep in the crease. Plays defensively. No run. And just having a conversation about you know how you how you deal with deal with these young people that you're trying to mould. And it's the same we were saying. Nothing is going to take over hard work. Putting in that time. Repetition. Are you covering all bases? And when you get your opportunity, can you take it? Final ball of the cool deep over is short and Joe Root is immediately onto that. Savagely pulling it all along the floor through square leg. And Siraj didn't really have that far to go out on the, uh, the leg side boundary but didn't get close to it. Root goes to 17. England after 36 overs are 136 for two. Oh, the craftsman at work, Joe Root. This is all about footwork. Gets deep in the crease, gets real deep just outside off stump but retains energy in his legs, so he's not upright on the pull shot. And it turns almost into a, a pull sweep in front of square. The deep fielder is at mid-wicket, it rattles into the fence. It's a wonderful piece of batting from Joe Root. 
People will watch this on a highlight and just think, oh, it's a rubbish ball and it's back of a lane. But he's had to work so hard on a surface where it's not bounced up into the blade. He's had to retain a good position and smack in front of square hard into the boundary ropes. You would just like to just have a little glimmer in the back of your mind now. You're going, oh, Joe Root looks on here. It's commentator's curse. But we saw him wonderfully in the last game. He just looks in. There's something about grit of any game but in our game it's Joe Root and the world is banded around far too much but he is a great of the game when you see him have that steely look in his eye you see his movement matching up with what his body language is telling you you just think Whoa, let's hope he's on Jadeja into the uh, bowling attack for the first time bowling left arm around the wicket brings Crawley forward pushing out on the offside no run so Bumrus bowled 12 Siraj 8 Ashwin 6 and Kuldeep 10 that's what's got us to 36 overs. So Judeja is uh, in from the uh, far end. And Judeja almost takes a brilliant court and bowled off of Crawley. Crawley was going to take him on down the ground back over the bowler's head, but didn't quite get the elevation he was wanting. Judeja threw up the left hand. It hit the palm. And it's one of those that either sticks or doesn't. And on this occasion, it doesn't. And it goes away for a single. And it takes Crawley to 79. Yeah, nearly batting error again. Nearly being England's downfall. The two wickets that have gone have been batting error. And Crawley's batted so well up until that point. Just giving Jadeja most probably the one man you don't want to give an opportunity. But not even the great man was able to take that catch. And he's got a life. Make the most of it. Root then to face Jadeja. Left arm around. Just turns gently on the onside. And they will uh, take no run. I mean, Jadeja is such a brilliant fielder, pretty much anywhere around the ground. That was travelling. That really was travelling. Jadeja in, left arm around. Root is pushing towards square leg. Jaiswal will uh, field, and there's no run. A bit like Ford and wasn't it, wasn't it, the other night? He got it in the uh, top left bag, just enough, just wide enough of his centre mass that it just parried over. Jadeja around the wicket. Root plays defensively. Just as, as a spin bowler, Gareth, you know, no court and bowl is easy. But when you're in your follow through and the guy is attacking you like that, how, how difficult are those? I wouldn't know. Most of mine ended up in Rose Ed. <laughs> Jadeja around the wicket, pushed into the offside uh, by uh, Root, and there is no run. End of the over. 137 for two here on TalkSport 2. 37 overs gone. Gareth, continue that. I'll make way for Neil Manthorpe. But, but it, it sounds stupid, but it's more about the thing that you do off the training ground. It's the it's the squats you do in the gym. It's the feeling of your, your centre mass. Because if you're rushed in thinking, I've got to stick a hand up, you don't move quite appropriately to take the catch. Because you're thinking about your bowling action and you let the ball go, it's all about being sort of uh, present in the moment and don't rush it. You've always got a bit more time than you think. As soon as you snap at it and just stick a hand out, often it goes down. You just give yourself a split second to set your balance you have a far better chance of uh, of taking the catch i suppose like when you see anybody stood at slip and the ball's nicked and it flies but the one that doesn't move a lot and takes the catch you go oh he's made it look easy if you're making it look easy it's incredibly hard but you've had the presence of mind to just hold your stable base to allow yourself to catch it Crawley 79, Joe Root 17, England 137 for two. Here's Kuldeep Yadav uh, once again, ripping leg spinner it is, turning quite nicely on the, for the first day. Crawley plays defensively and uh, there's no run. I've always thought, uh, not that I had personal experience of this, usually I was standing on the other side of the stumps, um, but it's the, it's, the, it's the vicious drive that is mistimed that loops back to the bowler that <laughs> often goes down. <laughs> Yadav is through, Crawley's drive was an ambitious and expansive one and it's ripped back between bat and pad and clipped the top of off stump and Crawley makes another 70, 79 this time, England are 137 for three. Yes, yeah, batting error again unfortunately, Cody Yadav, his third wicket entices him with a bit of flight but big turn. He's gone for expansive drive, it's gone in between bat and pad, clips leg stump. And Zach Crawley's innings of 79, he'll be disappointed, he got a great start, got England to a good score. 
But he departs for 79. England 137 for three. Paldy Yadav, the man again. It's a wonderful piece of bowling. Just held the ball back a fraction. Got it above Zach Crawley's eye line. He's shown in the last period of play that he's wanting to be a bit more expansive. He's not happy with just playing the defensive shots and taking the singles. And Yadav, brave enough to get it up above the eye line. Gets it a foot and a half outside off stump. The ball drops through the air. Crawley doesn't quite get his, pit, uh, his foot to the pitch of the ball. Creates a gap through bat and pad. Vicious spin. Has the ball bouncing a foothold from a few weeks a few weeks ago from the Rajasthan Trophy and cannons into leg, spin, a leg stump. Big spin, great skill, but also some bravery from Koldeep Yadav and a fraction of batsman error from Crawley. 137 for three. And this is now, I mean, every partnership's your biggest partnership, but this now with two very experienced players. Johnny Bairstow, 100th game. It is a brave man to bet against Johnny Bairstow having a very nice day out here. He loves to prove people wrong. He loves the big occasion. A few people saying some nice things today, obviously, with it being the 100, but there have been some question marks for periods in the series, and we know Johnny Bairstow, he likes to answer. Just going back to... Uh, it was interesting that uh, we had a... a a divergent opinion between the two of you there. It was initially described as a batting error. Forward comes Johnny Bairstow to his first ball. Alex Tudor immediately went batting error. And, and I thought, blimey, it's a heck of a ball. <laughs> yeah, I might have got that one slightly wrong. <laughs> it was a, it, at first sight, obviously, I just think he's, he's looked to, you know, get that big foot out and go for that drive that he's hit a couple of times through sort of extra cover region. But it did it. I just think it spun you, prodigiously, yeah. didn't it? Sort of out of the rough a little bit. There's yep. not much rough. The spin's the last bit of it. He'd made the mistake before that crawler. There is Batman, Batsman mm. error. Huge percentage of Batsman Frank's error. Bats. Frank's Bats. <laughs> 137 for three. Johnny Bairstow flicks his second delivery off his pads out towards uh, deep mid wicket. Comes charging in Mohamed Siraj to deep square leg, and they've uh, scuttled through for two. I just think that if you can spin the ball that much, you, <laughs> you deserve. To pick up a wicket or two. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say definitely batting arrow. If you see his batting arc when he tries to play this shot, he's looking to hit this sort of cover. Like, so not extra cover, he's looking cover. So the way that his bat's coming through and he leaves that gap in between bat and pad and that any spinner's bats would tell you that's what they want to see. So yes, it looks like a, it's a good ball because of the flight and the spin. Oh, back he goes now, Johnny Besto, playing on length and flicks it off his pads down towards fine leg and it's run all the way down to the boundary for four. Well, I tell you what, do you know what? That moments after I said it's turning quite nicely for the first day of a test match, suddenly thereafter it's turning sideways. Yeah, and it's always when you get a wicket, the bowler feels more confident, you do something in it. He's not trying to spin it anymore, he's not trying to do anymore, but something... And, and this is the bit that you talk about, particularly playing in the subcontinent. You basically talk about get through the first 15, 20 minutes, all of a sudden the ball looks like it's not doing anything. And that's why you need your guy that's in to extend on that period because it's always tough for the new guy. Punched away out towards uh, mid-wicket, fielded by Shubman Gill. I, I, I know that you know, lots of school coaches, Alex Tudor, generally tell batters that you know, if, if you're bowled between bat and pad, you've made an error is that is that is that still a thing bats choose uh, well listen i've got kids trying to re reverse ramps and all sorts for no apparent reason just because they purely see the top players playing it and and don't really know the process of why they're trying to play it because they're trying to maneuver the field but going back to the crawley dismissal i think i'm going to stick with my er um batting error because of the back path that he was he saw the flight of which enticed him he thought with his height he can play it sort of the shots that he hit to the boundary sort of extra cover this one he's gone for the bat art and he's trying to hit it sort of maybe to the left of cover which then leaves the art and then the spin and that's gone through bat and pad yes it's, it's, it looks like a fantastic delivery but definitely batting error Jadeja in again and uh, Joe Root drives it nicely just pushes it really out towards the cover boundary sweeper and they go through for a single I think it's the limiting of, of risk from a batting point of view. If you give both edges, which is basically getting done through the gate, you reap what you sow at times. So you don't give both edges. The, the best players of spin give you an edge because if it's spinning, that you can't cover both edges. But you generally, if it's Yadav bowling it over the wicket to a right-handed, you make sure you're not bowling LBW. And if he does you on the outside, absolutely fair enough, no problem. 
So I think what the simplest way to describe it is he gave up both edges and playing an expansive shot. Yes, it's a nice piece of bowling. Of course it is. It spun, it was nice, and the bowler very much like it, but the bowler's exposed a bit of a batting weakness. 144 for three. Jadeja in again, and uh, Bairstow pushes to the sweeper on the cover boundary, just as Root did, and uh, they go through for another single. Uh, I must say that uh, the crowd is filling up very nicely. There was no more than a smattering at the start of play. It was very cold as the day has warmed up. The crowd has uh, expanded. Here is uh, Jadeja. Forward comes uh, Joe Root, pushing... Oh, well, that one actually spun, hit the outside. It was a wrong one from, uh, Kuldi, uh, from uh, Jadeja. Well, who am I talking about? It's Jadeja's. <laughs> he doesn't have a wrong one. Uh, but it did it spun to hit the outside half of the bat, and uh, Root remains on 18. Slip and a silly point in. Jadeja in once again, and that one right up into the block, almost a Yorker. Root just blocks it out. I just wanted to say, Gareth's explanation of that was beautiful, and you can now see why Surrey are... Are they free from free? The championships? Going two. for four? Two, we're going two. for three. Going for free. Can yeah, see you're why. a bit premature there. Yeah, well, <laughs> to be far <laughs> you've given them the hat trick oh, I have given them the hat trick we, we went for two for two <laughs> today oh, in again and <laughs> forward comes Root playing defensively no run best 07 Root 18 Zach Crawley just gone moments ago for 79 Kuldeep Yadav the left arm wrist burner has all three wickets to fall so far 27 for Ben Duckett and uh, 11 for Ollie Pope forward comes Root again to complete the over with uh, dot ball as he pushes it to backward point 145 for three. I think to cover it off though, I, I, I think the modern way, modern life in front of us, you're not saying don't play the shot anymore, just do it better. So you look at the angles of a bowler bowling over the wicket, you're trying to then go into out like Chude said and hit it past extra covers left hand. Slog it, hit it straight back over his head or hit it through long on. Your back path is cleaner, it's straighter, you're taking out the gap that you're creating by trying to be expansive through the offside. So actually we're saying, a bit old school, a bit club cricket. Get it smacked over cow corner and you're a better chance of success if that makes... Sometimes cricket gets in the way of success on a cricket field, which sounds absolutely cryptic as you like, but he tried to play a proper off-drive through extra cover. Had he have slogged it, I would imagine his risk percentage would have gone lower. Or, or had he just played a lovely forward defensive... He wouldn't have had that massive gap in between back and pack. Slog it, slog it. Slog oh, right, sorry, 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 sorry. Hit it over long on four rows back. But I'm just saying, if he would have just gone, you know, just played it, it would have either hit his pad or it would have hit the middle of his back because most balls today have hit the most part of uh, Zach Crawley's middle of his back, apart from the first session when uh, Boomer had him in all sorts. I must say that uh, the stadium DJ's choice of uh, music isn't classically Indian, what? is it? Don't believe it, just right. <laughs> <laughs> Bruno Mars. He's playing all sorts. If I was there, I'd be trying <laughs> to cut some shapes, because when I hear music, it just makes me feel good and makes me want to move. I'll be, I'll be doing all sorts. If I leave you now, oh. you take the very honey bun and meat. They've all been on, haven't they? It's been so amazing. <laughs> it's been <laughs> and renditions from Gareth Patty now. <laughs> Takes me back to our under-15 trip in South Africa in 93. Well, uh, we unfortunately, um, Bumble hasn't, wasn't able to be with us for this test match. So it's quite right that we have somebody with a, a musical voice. Johnny Bairstow on seven, Joe Root on 18. Here is Kuldeep Yadav yes, yes, yes. and uh, Johnny Bairstow on the back foot punches it away through mid-wicket. And they go through for another single. Now then, Johnny Bairstow has got five scores between 20 and 40 in this series. Um, and it's uh, a very, very special day for him. By the way, um, Joe Root presented him with his uh, commemorative 100th cap. And uh, it was uh, emotional all round before the start of play, as it, as it would be with uh, Johnny B. A massive uh, bear hug for uh, Joe Root after he presented him with his cap and then from everybody else it seemed as well. <laughs> Pushed away defensively by Root on the onside, no run. Yeah, he's been a good player and I just think, you know, there's been a little bit of, I not say disrespect, but, you know, unappreciation for what he's done in an England shirt. And all the things he's been prepared to do. All 100%, the roles. 100%. Yeah. People have short memories sometimes. Tell you what, uh, the most remarkable stat for me is that of his 1200s, here is Kuldeep Yadav, and uh, this one turned away out towards short leg. Oh, half of his 1200s came in an eight test match period. 600s in, in eight tests. 
I think that was when he was averaging plus 40 and keeping and doing very, very nicely. And then it all got pulled away from him yeah. from, from an injury, I think. <laughs> Flicked away by Joe Root to, again, beautifully placed through square leg. And so a fielder out there, Mohamed Siraj, take go through for a single. I'll tell you, and his strike rate would have been uh, impressive as well because he didn't hang around in, those, in that time as well, man. As honestly, he was lashing balls all over the place. If everyone can remember that New Zealand series. Was yeah. it Trent Bridge? Do you remember Ooh. he scored 100 at, at the SCG in the last uh, test of the of the Ashes and then came for the home summer and scored another five in seven tests? I mean, just, I, I mean, he, he was, and he is, I think he'll always be remembered as uh, perhaps the flag bearer for Basball. Here's uh, Kuldeep Yadav again. Forward comes uh, Bairstow, pushes defensively, no run. I think this is the unfortunate thing though with this this word basketball that's been lobbed around like Johnny gets branded with that he's played all his career through different generations of cricket playing the way that he does it he's not playing basketball he's playing Johnny Johnny Bester 147 for three here's Kuldeep Yadav all three wickets to him so far Bester plays defensively for, for me the moment or the, the moment the the session where I realised that uh, something unprecedented was happening is... You, oh my goodness me! The oh, just, <laughs> oh, he's playing Mikey now! I mean, me and Baz love a little bit of Mikey. Woo! Who is this DJ? <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you expect in the foothills of the Himalayas, is it? Unbelievable. I feel like we're going to see the Dalai Lama de sort of dancing on top of the mountain in a minute. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Great choice. I know my friend Seymour, if he's listening, who's, who's probably the biggest Michael Jackson fan of all time, he'll be busting some moves, either in the gym or he's getting ready to go to the gym. He loves some Mikey. It's not at every test match you even get any music played, let alone between overs. And for so long. In fact, I think he's holding up play today, just waiting for for the music to stop 147 for three here is uh, Jadeja once again they've also turned the volume up after lunch by the way <laughs> in case you didn't weren't able to hear the music in the morning session it's like Chicky's disco isn't it isn't it in Grenade is it Guyana yeah yeah what or Antigua was Chickies? it was it was it Antigua Chicky's disco Chicky's Antigua Antigua wasn't yeah, it yeah yeah with gravy <laughs> Jadeja and again forward comes Root defensively again and there's uh, no run but do, do you remember England needed 170 after T on the fifth day at Trent Bridge against New Zealand that's when and I I, I, I well I, I went and did something else to be honest I thought this is a draw <laughs> I mean I did uh, only for the first maybe half an hour that's pushed into the covers uh, straight to the field and no run and then, and then somebody messaged me saying, England are going for it. <laughs> I thought, oh, really? What? I thought, well, I'll see how long it lasts then. And I turned over and then just couldn't take my eyes off it for the next uh, hour and a half. That's uh, pushed out towards extra cover and, uh, or deepish mid-off, I should say. Johnny Bairstow was 70-odd uh, at T, and he scored another 80 off 40 balls on the fifth day of a test match. I think we'll all have our favourite Johnny Bairstow uh, moments and memories, but it uh, is, again, it's like, like, like Mo and Ali, and as we were just referring to, he's been asked to fulfil a whole number of different roles, and when a job needed doing, forward comes uh, Bairstow again. This one hits the outside half of the bat, turns quite sharply again, out to backward point. So when a, when a hole developed at number four, or number six, or... And then Johnny Besto was often the man asked to fill it. Or number three, in fact. Here is uh, Tadeja once again. Besto goes airborne and just wide of mid on. He didn't get hold of that at all. R. Ashwin is uh, the fielder in that direction. But that was a miscue. Uh, that, uh, was that toe end? I think that was toe end. And it was in the air and it was at catchable height. Fortunately for him, it was just wide of uh, R. Ashwin at mid on. Root has 20. Besto now 12. And uh, the 150 up for England. 41 overs gone, 152 for three. Yeah. If there's ever a moment to be picking your fielders, Ashwin at mid-on was where you wanted him right then. Uh, Johnny Besto looking to be expansive straight down the ground. Just got a little bit too close to the ball and ended up just getting the inside half of the bat. So he chunked it, 
chunked it enough up and over long on but uh, just going back to what you were talking about Manus it's in my head so I'm going to say it we talked about Johnny Best on that wonderful performance at Trent Bridge at what point are we going to stop cannibalising our game because of 2020 cricket it's making test cricket better test cricket will make 2020 cricket better because of skill sets and ability to to get better and show innovation we, we're the luckiest sport in the world by having three games within one and I just think we need to be champing in it all and Johnny Bairstow for me is the epitome of it excelling at all three and long may it continue or just continue in fact 152 for three all change in uh, the commentary box we've got uh, Steve Harmson, John Norman and the great man you, s you speak now okay <laughs> Jared Kimber, did I put you off by giving by reaching over you before and mol molesting you a little bit in order to get our wet wipes? Uh, 152 for three here on Talk Sport Two. Interesting part in the game, and we know how well, or how much the ball is done for the Indian bowlers at times, and how well Cool Deep has bowled. And yet England still, you know, have some runs on the board. We've been saying off air that if. The wickets that we thought should have fallen early on had fallen. England might have already been mostly bowled out by this stage. So it's a, it's a really interesting one. E even if you think about it at lunch, you could make an argument India should have taken five wickets in that first session, but also that England would have been annoyed to give them two wickets. Yeah, England would be annoyed to give them two wickets, but I think that's the beauty about the way this England side and carrying on what Bats are saying now. We are the way and the positivity of Test cricket changing with, with this group that they always, even if they do look... You know, so they're vulnerable of losing wickets. They're always ahead of the game because of the run rate, the score rate, right, and the pressure they put onto the opposition bowlers. And, you know, again, we talk about their dismissals. I'm seeing replays of the dismissals now, the wickets from this morning. Every single one could be preventable. Every one was a, a poor shot or a poor execution. But the way this team plays and the, the, uh, the uh, offensive ma na nature they are, because of that's how comfortable the skill sets that they've got individually is why England are 152 for three as opposed to 80 for five. And that, I think, is more refreshing than anything else about this team is that they're always, even if they do get bowled out cheaply, they're getting that bowled out cheaply as 220, 240 off about 45, 50 overs. It certainly makes things interesting, doesn't it? Uh, but if you're the opposing captain, you always feel like you're, you're in the game. We have seen it go both ways, though. I think at times against Australia and at times at the start of the series, this method has been proven to work. It puts the opposition on the back foot. It makes opposition captains put defensive fields out, spread the field. They seem to be more interested in stemming the runs, uh, playing to the England batters' strengths at times as well, as Root is in this ball, keeps a fraction low from Koldik Yadav, who's picked up all three wickets. But the flip side of that is 152 for three, by the way, here on TalkSport 2, uh, with Johnny Bearstone, and Joe Root, those uh, two old Yorkshire colleagues and friends uh, at the crease together. England in need of a little bit of a rebuilding job. Uh, 12 not out Bearstone on the occasion of his 100th test match. And uh, Joe Root is 21. Joe, uh, or rather Johnny, has come out, and to my mind at least, he looks in the mood to score runs as he very, very close to uh, popping a ball back to Koldi Yadav, trying to play this ball to the leg side. There's a short leg, there's a leg slip and a regulation slip as Bairstow. As I say, he's playing with hard hands and he's wanted to get on with things. That seems to be uh, the way he's going about things. He said that yesterday he's going to go out there and try and enjoy himself. Shoulders back. As Besto clubs this full delivery from uh, Koldi Yadav over his head. One bounce at 456, actually. It's cleared the boundary. Well, I thought it bounced before hitting the ropes, but no, it's gone all the way. So six from the bat of Johnny Besto, who's 18 from 12. The score, England, 159 for three. Uh, ridiculous <laughs> the way that the cricket goes. The ball before, he doesn't pick the wrong and almost spoons it back to the bowler because of it. And this time, Cool Deep just over pitches and he just plays a, a one day shot, really, and just swats it back down over his head for six. Takes a divot. This time, he plays deep in his crease and back and cuts this delivery from Yadav by six, the field at backward point. 
and uh, at cover. And there's a good dive just inside the boundary, but uh, three more runs to the score. Bairstow joins Root. They're both 21 not out. I think Coldeep's recognising this as well, of Johnny Bairstow's mindset and the way he is. He's bowling a bit slower, and he's just thrown it above the eye line a little bit more. And, you know, basically saying to Johnny Bairstow, if you want to be aggressive and you want to be ultra-aggressive, we've seen what's happened on the, the last three wickets that have fallen. If you don't get quite to the pitch of the ball, you don't know nail your technique, then I've got you. And I think it's a you know, good little contest here between Kuldeep and Bester. It's been a good little contest throughout from both of these sides as Root will take a single to square leg. And so we've had uh, 11 runs from that Kuldeep Yadav over. It's been uh, relatively expensive. It's 13 overs have gone for 61, but all three wickets that have fallen have gone his way. Uh, the first of which, Ben Duckett. Great catch from Shubman Gill. 64 for one when Duckett went for 27. Last ball of the lunch uh, of the uh, morning session. Saw Ollie Pope advancing down the track and stumped by a mile. And then Zach Crawley. Big, big turn. Leg stump gone. Looped up again and Cody Biedef. I think has put down Johnny Bairstow. He has. I was just about to say, I thought that was a very bad single from Joe Root because Besto was absolutely pumping and I think the best thing to get him at the other end and straight away, I mean to be fair, the ball was there to be hit, it was over pitched again, stood in his crease and just tried to swat it but this time straight back to the ball, end of his fingers and dropped. It was a tough chance, it was coming at him but he, he certainly had a good view of it, Harmy. It was, it was a sim. It, it was a slightly, fractionally, fractionally fuller than the one he hit for six. The one he hit for six was just a fraction fuller and just a touch wider. This one cramped him for a little bit of room and he had to scoop it out and he scooped it straight back to Kuldeep. And, you know, all, you know, no matter whether you're a fast bowler or you're a spin bowler, a catch coming back to you is always very, very difficult. It's always a you know, the, the difficult catch to take. But uh, Kuldeep, you had to have a look at it and think, I should have caught that. And it's uh, Jadeja who's going to continue bowling. He hasn't gone for as many runs. And uh, this uh, first delivery is defended by Root. I'd like to know how they, whether they can show you just how quickly that reached Yadav, because he did get hold of that delivery, didn't he, Bairstow? Would have gone back to the bowler very, very quickly. I wonder how many milliseconds he had to react. Got two hands to it, did Yadav. But it went really, really high, uh, really, really fast. And it's a little bit awkward as uh, Root is defending. Uh, we've seen this from Sarfraz Khan a couple of times now, and I found it quite amusing at first, and it's now getting a little bit boring. But uh, we've had the no-look shy at the stumps. We've had the pretend shy at the non-striker's end. And now we just had the flick at the stumps, uh, despite the fact... And it wasn't even a flick, it was a full-blooded throw, really, at the stumps, even though the batter was behind the crease. Uh, no uh, run from Root on that occasion either, 163 for three. I don't think it's going to bother a, a, a man who's played 140 test matches. Bit more width cut from Root, and there's a chase on by uh, the debutant Padakal. But there's no one down at third. It was in the air for a second. Four more runs to the score, though. 167 for three. Just lent back a little bit here, did Joe Root? Ball was you know, and, uh, just outside off stump. He's tried to open the face. He's putting this purposely behind square. He's let the ball come as late as he possibly can. I'm not sure he's, you know, he is in control, but I think he's it's just going back a little bit, and that's why it was in the air. This is uh, a touch straighter from uh, Shadeja, and uh, this time Root is forward defending. Single here would be good for England. A single here, like Jared was saying before, get Root back on strike for Coldeep. You know, Besto is he's ticking, his beans are going a bit. Mid-wicket going a little bit square, and this is pushed to silly point. And uh, Root smiles. 167 for three. I mean, the game is just advancing. I tell you what, the DJ in this uh, this ground. Is well. I was thinking that too. He's. Um, <laughs> I don't feel like we've had this for the other four tests. We have. There's, yeah, there is a reason for that. Very good in that 80s and 90s classics. You can see bats getting. Oh, you know, definitely old, bats. Bats is dead getting his old, you know, Rick Astley head on, and you know, he's being the, uh, the the sort of diva that. You know, we were a group with bats and wasn't shy of being on the uh, on the dance floor after a after a few sherbets and your yeah, 80s and 90s classics. But you're right, it has been good. 
tell you what is going to be good. I think this over is going to be this over is going to be box office because Johnny's not going to die wondering. I think Kuldeep will throw it above the eye line. And one thing I will say is if Johnny Besto gets a big score in his hundredth Test match, it's going to be memorable. And it's going it, to come quickly. It's going to come quickly. <laughs> 21 from 14, he reached uh, the milestone of 100 ODI caps at this very ground. And he's playing a little bit of one day cricket today as he's forward. And he won't take a run from this delivery. There's, it's a very attacking field employed by uh, Rohit Sharma. So there's uh, plenty of space for Bairstow to capitalise on. We have seen him put down though. And uh, he only just evaded Ashwin as well. As he uh, goes on the slog sweep this time, does Bearstow clears his front leg and smashes this up over Cal Corner for six. Yeah, straight over a man's head in the deep. Again, Kuldeep Yadav is thrown it above the eye line. This one's wider. It doesn't matter how much it spins from there or which way it spins from there. That's Johnny, uh, Johnny Bairstow's wheelhouse and bang, straight over the field his head for six said it was going to be box office it's going to be exciting <laughs> Johnny gets a big score it is going to, going to not only is going to come quickly it's going to be entertaining yeah that's again straight to this time he's on the sweep Bairstow lofts this up there is a fielder running round on the boundary at square leg it's Siraj who does well to dive and fill the ball just as it's about to pop up over the rope another couple of runs to Johnny Bairstow he moves to 29 from just 17 deliveries so so the ball before i thought he picked the exact right ball to play that shot and then he yeah. picks this ball and you think it, it's a bit like the one he was dropped on you think he doesn't need to do that cool deep's bowling enough loose balls just wait for that ball and hit it for six um I, he, he's putting pressure on when he doesn't have to that could have easily been caught out um uh, for the sweeper six thousand runs in tests and has he been dismissed here besto coming down the track and the finger goes up besto has been caught behind for 29. Another expansive shot. He's saying and, he hit uh, the ground. he's decided that he's going to review. Joe Wilson has given this out on the field. Bairstow disagrees. And so we on shall field, see. Has there out. been an outside I edge or not? He's yeah, adamant he's hit the ground. The there was a noise. There was a piece. big noise. It did look... It, it, his body language straight away. I always go off clear reaction his body language straight away suggests for me he I hasn't hit no. this he's hit the ground okay ball is close to the bat would like to see the ultra edge doesn't look like he's hit the ground ready. doesn't look as though he has <laughs> doesn't look as though he is at the ground it no. doesn't look like he's anywhere near the ground he was so confident you could see him walking down go i hit the ground he was people weren't even we asking go. he's out yeah there's a spike that's bat. incredible. That just tells you that batters like have no right. idea. Yeah, but it also tells you that Giant, he's in such a mindset that he's been. He's been. Beans are going. They're going. Big time going. Bairstow's gone. You can almost uh, see the conversation between him and Root. It's, it's, nice. it's my hundredth test, yeah. not his. Yeah. His mentor, Jeffrey Boycott, I think that was a bit of boycott in him coming out. Uh, he's. In, in, in Joe knows as well. Joe knows. You can see, just seeing Joe Root's reaction, his face. Yeah, that is a man. You know, Johnny Best, though, I think that's a little bit of a panic when it comes to the uh, the the referral. His innings was a man who was coming out to try and prove a point. Frantic. But he was very, very frantic in a way which I felt he was frantic, but in, in, in a lot of it was uh, there was control in what he was trying to do. He was he's connecting the ball down the ground he's he had a few sweet sweet shots but i think i think uh, frantic he was scattergun from a brain decision making point of view but he, he the, looked like he was hitting the ball perfectly yeah, the, didn't the, he he was yeah. hitting the ball cleanly he hit two big sixes he, but there were so many there were so many decisions that he didn't need to make and he kept, you know kept doing that so that ball was a length ball it's a wrong and he hasn't picked it to be fair to him that's fine we, we saw him not pick one before but again he's punching through it whereas at that stage there's you know he could he could flat bat that and wait for the over pitch till the short one and that's when he hits the six or the four later on so it, it, look, it's a shame because I do think he was seeing the ball really, really well and he was getting himself into good positions. But it felt like he'd been sent out there on a mission and the boys had said to him, go, yeah, what, what was it? Put your, shot, it put was, your shoulders it back. It was frantic, but I think it was, it was a man who was potentially listening to the outside noise. 
you know, is his place under under uh, position under play, um, under scrutiny? And I think he was a little bit mindset of that. Stokes is in, and uh, Cody Biadaf, who's now picked up all four wickets to fall, draws the England skipper forward. Another guy who needs a few runs. Uh, does Stokes? There has been some talk. There's a call from Michael. I think it's Michael Vaughan. Maybe not. Either way, saying that maybe Stokes should go at bat at three and uh, move Pope to six. We can talk a little bit about that later on, possibly, as Stokes lets this ball go. I mean, it just seems so obvious that that was going to happen from Bairstow. It, yeah, it was either he was either going to score at you know 45, 400, or he was going to get out quite early on in, in his innings. It, it seemed to stamp. We, we knew how he was going to go about from the, from the moment he reached the crease. And, um, and it's, you know, he's lasted 18 deliveries. Is it two sixes? Is it two fours? Could have got out twice and then did get out. There are, I think there's some players in this dressing room, Stokes and Root, from an experience point of view, who have got no idea what external noise is all about. I think there's one person in that dressing room who has his finger across every bit of external noise and I think he's just played an innings that way that is you know the pressure's on listening to too much that's going on and I think that was a frantic innings because of that Jadeja is in beats the route past the outside edge Brendan McCullum has uh, spoke to Talk Sport following the third test uh, Bairstow had uh, posted two two low scores and he, dis he um, described Bairstow's dismissals in the series up to that point as mild. Well, I tell you what, this is close. Bairstow's been wrapped on the pads. He's been beaten past the inside edge. And Rod Tucker's finger has gone up. Root's going to have a little word with Stokes. He's going to implore his captain to say, mm, I think that might be going down the leg side. I'm not so sure. Well, he's left it too late as well as Root. He's run out of time. He's run out of time, or is Rod Tucker going to take it? I tell you what, this is going to be fascinating because if Root manages to overturn this decision, the on-field decision is out. To my mind, Root did not refer this decision in time, the allotted 15 seconds. Rod Tucker's accepted it, so maybe he got a verbal, uh, verbal command to do so. Either way... It looks like Joe Root's in a lot of trouble here. I think, I think it's irrelevant when he referred refer or he didn't refer it. I think this is cash, crashing nice into the slow. stumps. I tell you what, but saying that, I would have told him to refer it straight yeah, away for the simple fact is the way DRS ball, has been going. Like anything, anything can happen, but I can't see this missing the stumps. I really can't. Umpires call it best. He's got nowhere near. Yeah. He hasn't hit it. There's a massive nice gap between. Slow bat and pad whether he's done it on time or not I still think this is cashing into the, no the next one you can go to the ball tracking this is the bit that uh, all of India and England want to hear on field decision is out no bat on ball waiting for the ball tracking rod we're going up to the big screen this isn't missing, is it? Impact in line and wicket sitting, uh, Rod. Wicket sitting. Joe Root follows Johnny, follows Johnny Bairstow. Out. The slow it's walk the back to the dressing signal. room. Jadeja has struck. And in a blink of an eye, England have lost half of their wickets. Root goes for 26. And England find themselves now in real danger of throwing away another golden opportunity. They're 175 for five. Do you know, I was listening to Brad Haddon's podcast this week and he was talking about Ravi Jadeja and he said that Jadeja was one of his favourite cricketers because at the end of every series, the spinners would go up and go, this one you undercut and this one you did this. And, and Jadeja was like, no, no, no. I just try and bowl the ball at the stumps every time and sometimes they spin and sometimes they don't. Which is the opposite of Ashwin, who does undercut and over and overspin and everything else. And you watch that ball there. Root... Root, Root has played a bunch of good deliveries in that over. One that had sp pitched in almost exactly the same spot, Harmy, and ragged past his outside edge. And that one just goes straight on, just maybe straightened enough to hit, you know, uh, the, the, you know the stumps perfectly. It's, he's such a hard player to play, Jadeja, in these sort of conditions. He is, yeah. He's yeah, spot on. He's bowled the ball, pitched on the stumps. And 
Well, the ball, that's going to hit the stumps. Sometimes they're going to hit the stumps, sometimes they're going to miss. rocket science. People ask me about Jimmy Anderson, Stuart Broad, and why they are so good in the last sort of five, ten years. And it's largely down to the fact that they bowl a ball that goes either, bowls a ball in and around off stump, majority of the time in and around that off stump. And they basically say, with the modern game and the way you play, your technique will fall up, you know, fall down at one point and I will get you at that one point if I'm accurate and I'm on top of you. In the last 45 minutes, what we've seen is England's techniques not being up to standard and a you know, straight ball's being, not being missed. Folks, uh, defends uh, first ball. Again, this kept a, a fraction low, hurried with the shot. And uh, England in trouble. If you're just joining us here on Talk Sport 2, they were 137 for two when Zach Crawley was uh, bowled through the gate for 79. Quick fire partnership between Best and Root. Both batters now dismissed as folks is forward. And uh, the ball squirts off the inside portion of the bat to the leg side. 175 for five now. Root and Bairstow both gone and taking with them two reviews as well. England have only got one left and of course that brings its own problems. We'll see how that goes later in the innings. There's folks keen to get on the front foot again and won't get off the mark. And here we go again with folks under pressure individually and finding the team under pressure as well. England winning the toss, deciding to bat, losing two wickets in the first session, and they've now lost at three in the afternoon. Jadeja with his first wicket of the match. The other four all going the way of Kodik Yadaf as at this time. Jadeja does get one to turn past the outside edge of uh, Ben Folk's bat. And uh, that's the end of another successful over. Stokes and Folks at the crease, 45 overs into their innings. England 175 for five, and after word from Harmy, that will be Andrew McKenna. It's not been rocket science, though. I mean, it, it's not been you know, India bowling England down. All they've done is the basics well. All India have done is the basics well. They've seen and identified a passage of player where England are coming hard at the ball, where England are trying to assert themselves in the game. And whenever England do that, they either score a load of runs in no you know, short space of time or they lose their, their discipline, they lose their techniques and they make you know, the monumental mistake of letting the opposition in. And all India have done is kept the basics of bowling balls at the top of the stumps, put challenging pressure on and said to England, right, you actually go and make the mistake. England have got two players out in the mid-twenties, one player out in double figures and one player getting 50. 175 for five, criminal on a decent, and well, let's be fair, it's still a, it's a decent wicket. Well, if you're going to be 175 for five, it should have been because Boomer took four wickets when it was swooping around everywhere Absolutely. this morning. It shouldn't be now. Morning, everyone. Four for 68 for Kuldeep from his 14 overs. And here he comes to start the uh, new over. Left arm over, Stokes, the left hander, deep in his crease, defending out on the offside. Kuldeep's bowled three balls above the eye line. Three, he's got three wickets from bowling balls above the eye line saying, go on, hit me for six, right? He's been hit for six a couple of times in a couple of boundaries. He's got four for 68 yeah. of 14 overs. So he's not bothered about going for runs. He's got four wickets for bowling, basically, but not buying wickets because that's a disservice to him. Kuldeep is in, outside of Stokes' is off stump. Stokes raises the bat high, allows it through to the keeper, no run. Pops run past one. Crawley's, Crawley's lost his shape and got bowled. Bestos, again... You know, trying to hit that big shot. He's got four wickets from throwing, and, and, and obviously Duckett's slug one up in the air. Two slips in place. This one turns and bounces past the outside edge of Stokes' defensive bat. He's playing back to that one, and it turned and bounced through to the keeper. And then you see that ball, <laughs> and then you think to yourself, well, it's not going to get any easier to face him. No, it's not, but, Jared, if, if Kuldeep Yadav gets four wickets bowling that ball, You're okay I can defend that. I can say, well, there's nothing, he's been bowled out. But we haven't. He's basically bowling balls to say, hit me for six. And he's not bothered if he gets the odd one for six because he knows they're going to chip one up in the air or miss one. Kuldeep goes in. Stokes gets the googly, taking on the pad. Big appeal, Joe Wilson raises the finger. Stokes looks down the pitch and says to the non-striker, Ben Folks, is it worth the review? 
England have only got one left. They've got to review it. It's the captain, and this to stop them going six down. He's got to review it, first and foremost. And if there's one he's going to, there's a possibility of getting away with. This might be the one, but I've got a funny feeling this might be umpire's call. I think this is spun big and bounced, Jared, but I still think it might be just clipping the top of the stumps. I don't think it bounced as much as you think it did. I think, um, I, I look back, it's hard to tell because he stays in his crease, but I felt like it kept a little bit lower. Yeah, it's hit him on the knee roll, but he's so far back. I, I think I think that has to hit the stumps. I don't think it's even just clipping, but it'd be interesting. This for Kuldeep's fourth Fifer in Test Match Cricket. He certainly didn't pick the wrong one. No, so he didn't. It's the second wrong one in a row they've missed. Yeah, he didn't pick the wrong one. Uh, like I said, I think this is hitting the top of top of middle and middle and leg stump. So last over, he left the ball outside our stump, and it was a wrong one. And I afterwards, you saw him look and think to himself, "I haven't picked that." And Kuldeep no kept that in his memory as well, and just got it straighter this time, didn't he? Right. It was an excellent, an excellent ball. You know, two, two absolute beauties. One that's ragged away and then, you know, squared Ben Stokes up. He's got, Kuldeep's got him in a position he wants him in. You know, perfectly set him up and then he's jagged one back. Got the wrong in in the perfect place. Right, well, we've established that there's no edge. Now here's the ball tracking. Pitching outside off, impacting line and wicket sitting, wicket sitting. Joel, you can stay with your generation out. Yeah, it's an absolute Joel beauty spin. from Kuldip. Middle, middle stump, not quite middle in leg, it's middle stump. And his teammates lift him aloft. Shubman Gill lifts him aloft. He lifts the ball aloft. England lose their final review. And Ben Stokes, the England captain, goes. Kuldip Yadav, two arms in the air with an absolute beauty. A one that jags away, setting the England captain up, squares him up for the one that comes back. And it's ragged back perfectly. Pitching just on off stump, going on to hit middle stump. Three quarters of the way up. Four tests into this series. The England batters twice now have not picked that wrong one and gone out to it. Just shows you he's keeping his mystery. It's, you know, it's hard to face him. Um, and as uh, Hami was talking about before, a lot of these wickets have come from over attacking. That was just pure old fashioned, a leg spinner or a wrist spinner deceiving a top order player. Kuldeep took four for 22 in the uh, the second innings in Ranchi that was his best against England. Well, he can now replace that with five for 68. Or should I say, at the moment, I was gonna say, five for 68. Tom Hartley's come out and likes to swing the balls over wide <laughs> mid on. And if I'm a left arm wrist spinner, I'm thinking to myself, a little bit of bounce, a little bit of pace in this wicket, get the ball above his eyes, he'll hit me for a six, and then he'll hit one up in the air and I'll catch him a point. Well, do, do you know what? You've seen, you've seen this film before. <laughs> Jadeja might be the most unpopular man in India at the moment because Kuldeep was on for a tenfer. Jadeja's going to deny him that by removing Joe Root, but here we go then. Hartley, there's two balls left in the over. Kuldeep left arm over, and Hartley is playing solidly defensively, and there's no run. That was the wrong one. He hit the middle of the bat. I'm not 100% sure Hartley knew that. It almost felt like it spun back into the bat rather than the idiot, but he watched it very carefully. Well, the hills are alive with the sound of wickets at the moment. England needs to stem this flow. Kuldeep in. It's off the back foot is Hartley. That's a fabulous shot. There's a long on in place, sort of 10 off the boundary, who couldn't get across. It goes gun barrel straight, and Hartley's off the uh, mark with a four. 179 for six after 46 overs here on TalkSport 2 in the TalkSport Cricket YouTube channel. That's England. That's what England have done well to, to Kuldeep Yadav. When he's pierced or he's lame, length hasn't been quite right they've been on hand to punish it for four and sometimes that is sometimes that is a problem you know from a a, a, a player's point of view when you, you you go against the spinner when you are hitting boundaries and you are scoring runs against the spinner you actually make the spinner more dangerous because his good ball is going to get you out having said that i don't think the good ball is getting wickets here I think what he's done is, I think he's chanced his arm on the one that goes above the eye line. And England have decided to, to sort of keep being ultra positive and unfortunately their discipline and their ship and their execution has been really left wanting. Thank you, Harmy. Thank you, Jared, for the time being. They're moving out. As Jadeja moves in to start the new over, folks is solidly forward, pushing out onto the offside. No run. Well, the last 
nine overs have been an absolute disaster for England. There were 137 for two in the 37th over when Kuldeep bowled Crawley to make it three down. Inside half of Folks's bat turns this one past Safraz at short leg and they'll take a single, 180 for six. So yeah, 37.2 overs for the uh, third wicket and then 43.4. 44.2, 45.4, as it became 175 for four, 175 for five, 175 for six. England's middle order and engine room has been ripped out of this innings. Jadeja left arm around to the left-handed Hartley, turns it through square leg, and they will uh, take a single. Hartley goes to five. Gareth Bassey and Alex Tudor have moved back in alongside. Things are progressing, gentlemen. You cleaning up again, Mecca? <laughs> I'm not quite hoovering them up in the way I did in the last match, but... Um, Player of the series, Andrew McKenna. 20 wickets. <laughs> Jadeja in, left arm around. Played defensively as on the offside by folks. No run. Yeah, I, I did rather hog the last one. I apologise to, uh, to everyone else in the, in the broadcast. Sadly, I couldn't take enough on the final day, though, to get England over the line. Jadeja is in. Folks is playing defensively. No run. I say half an hour's passed bats, and uh, a lot has happened, my friend. Yeah, the game is uh, moving forward at a pace. Absolutely. Jadeja, left arm around. Folks plays defensively, no run. Our boss, Johnny Norman, early doors when we came in, bright and early, quarter past three. He just had this feeling, he said, England 2 6, the all out. India will be 90 for one at end of play. That is possibly a man that's seen too much cricket over the years, Bats. And it was possibly a stupid reaction from me going, nah, no chance, boss. These lads have got it nailed down. We'll be 400 for five at the end of the day's play. Yeah, it's not quite gone that way. And I, I look, it just shows that um, respecting an opposition, respecting the game, respect, respecting surfaces, situations, you win the toss, make sure you get those runs but you might have to work hard for those runs to allow yourself a bit of freedom every now and again. Um, there's been some nice bowling, but there has been some uh, human error as well. Um, it's just trying to balance that out, and I suppose that's the, that's the difficulty. It's all, I'm, I'm all for the positive side of, of, of taking uh, risks and so on and so forth, but you, you know, it's the gambler that keeps uh, making bad bets and ends up with no money. You've got to be. You've got to at some point arrest the initiative back and just go for a little bit of uh, stability. Well, Ashwin is going to uh, get a go. For only his seventh over, not for 29 so far. So uh, Kuldeep's fingers are going to get a bit of a rest. You suspect it might only be a fairly short rest, but you'll get a little bit of a break. And. Well, it's, it feels like a, a, a highly significant part of the day now. We're, what, just under half an hour away from tea. So there is plenty of time in today. And there's still 43 overs left. So uh, there's a big chunk of today that you feel could go some way to deciding how this game goes. Because if India roll England out, I mean, this... this Absolutely looks like 240. Could be interesting. Could be really significant. England, of course, the series is gone. 3-1 down. This is the final match. And Hartley will prepare to face the off-spinning Ashwin. Around the wicket, he goes in and bowls. And Hartley plays defensively, no run. And as you say, Batch, you know, we're, I'm one for, and I was. I've been on there defending them as in regards of, look, you know, this is the way this England team are going to play. Ashwin around the wicket, Hartley back to the bowler and his follow through, no run. But what you can't get is, you know, they've all had starts. Zach Crawley's got to 79-80 and I look at world-class players. You know, you look at the Indian side, Jan Jalswal. Hartley is coming down the pitch to Ashwin for the most agricultural of heaves and gets an under edge, inside edge down to short fine leg for a single that was that was going into the mountain said he got hold of that uh, as it was he just managed the inside half of the bat do you reckon he was just trying to nudge that to mid off for one <laughs> he's, just, he's just going long on when he's going long on for one when he i mean i can imagine the purest 
who were listening, watching this, pulling their hair out. Absolutely pulling their hair out. But there is a part of you that says, well, hang on, he's coming in at number eight against one of the best bowlers in the world. If the guys above him can't do it, why are we expecting the number eight to do it? Ashwin is in, bowls to Folks. Folks pushes out on the offside. Well, I just think the situation and, and, and period of the game, and as you say, England had it at the scruff of their neck. You know, they lost that wicket of Oli Pope just before lunch. Gives India the impetus to go on. Folks is waiting as Ashwin bowls over the wicket. He'll clip to Kuldeep, who is about 10 yards deeper at mid-on, and it allows the single to be taken. Folks goes to uh, 2, 183 for 6. You know, you've won the toss, you want to go big. 350, 400. Keep India out there. Give your bowlers a chance, just keep their feet up a little bit longer and then just go to work. Wicket gets slightly tired. Ashwin around the wicket, Hartley defence no run. More rough, footholds, etc. And then, you know, you say they've played a bit of brainless cricket, you know, that as bats is all for ultra being positive and taking a positive intent. But there's a period where you have to say, look, the situation, game scenario, you know, and as I was alluding to with Zach Crawley, you know, he's got to 79. You're thinking world-class players are turning that to 150, you know, to a big hundred, setting it up, and then everyone backs around, and you get to that 400 mark, which you want to get when winning the toss on a decent wicket in the first innings of a test match, and they haven't done it. Yeah, I think language is so powerful, and I think... Positive can be misconstrued with meaning it's got to end up in row Z. Pre Zach Crowley getting out, he was playing beautifully, positive, hitting the middle of the bat with his forward defence. And as soon as he got too full, knocked it up to mid on. The positive thing was, he's then found himself at the non strikers. If everybody does that and bats for a period of time, then Indy have to do something different. It's managing periods of play. Jadeja to start the new over. Folks playing defensively. Drops it out on the offside, no run. And what do good teams do? They sniff when they when the when the end opens or when they you know get hold of the game. And it's what this Indian side will do with two quality spinners at work at the moment. Jadeja, left arm around the wicket. Folks just plays out to Jai Swal, who's under the uh, the helmet at short leg. There's a silly point and a short leg and slip around. Folks, extra cover is fairly close on the drive. All looking for catches. Jadeja is in. Fox finds the man at uh, short extra cover and there is no run. This is the fascinating part for me from an Indian point of view. The guy that's just got five for is a spinner. He's only bowled 14, 15 ups and he's taken him out of the attack. Jadeja, left arm around. Fox defends back to the bowler. Uh, the culture, the thought process around English spin, it's kind of like, hang on a second, you take him out, I've got five for. I want seven and eight here. Why am I off? And, and I think it's the acceptance of there are three of us Jadeja bowls to uh, folks who defends into the offside. Operating over five days to dismantle this team, whereas I, I use that as an example because it's fresh in my mind, but the, you can transfer that into a batting side. Oh, I've got, I'm on top here, I've lost some catches. I'm going to extend on this period. I'm going to make this period mine. I'm going to extend, I'm going to make it harder for the opposition. Jadeja, in, now that one seems to keep a little bit low on folks. Jab down on that one, keeps it out onto the onside to end the 49th over here on TalkSport 2. England 183 for six. Hartley has six, folks has two. Alex Tudor and Gareth Batty alongside. And this is the thing, Bats, if England bat, you know, say they were 300 at the end of play, 330, whatever, and they're five down. And, you, and we can see how the wicket's behaving. It's not going to get any better. I still feel it's going to be good when India come to bat. But come second innings where it counts in test cricket, it's going to become harder. But you've just given the initiative to India now. They're going to bat when it's still good. And then when you come to your second innings, it's going to be harder. It's going to be so difficult. Ashwin starts the new over. Hartley stays weight on the back foot on this occasion, guides it out to Jaiswal at point no run. You, know, you can't keep getting 250 and then asking your bowlers to work miracles and to win a test match. Very seldom is that going to happen, that you're going to be able to chase 400 and, and win. Ashwin around the wicket. Hartley swinging this into the leg side. Clears the front leg and goes and is caught by Devdutt Padikal on the long arm boundary. He took on the leg side field, but didn't get it far enough from the man who was out on the deep straight. And England are now seven down. Hartley goes for six. Ashwin's got his first wicket. 1-8-3 for seven. Yeah, Ravi Ashwin around the wicket, bowling to the left-handed Hartley. 
holds the line of just about off stump cramps Hartley who's looking for a lap slog he's looking to get this outside into the vacant mid wicket Hartley gets a bit too far away from the ball which then as it lands it just straightens on the surface which changes the angle changes where Hartley can hit the ball and unfortunately for him drags that line straight back to where that waiting long on is and again it looks reckless you can see what he's trying to do Hartley is trying to hit the gap at mid wicket but the opposite number in Ravi Ashwin is allowed to be smart he's allowed to have skill he's allowed to change that angle and that is what's happened there to basically make that batsman which is Hartley on this instance hit it straight where he's got his fielder fine piece of bowling from Ashwin Hartley has gone for six so Mark Wood strides to the middle back inside after being rested for the fourth test 183 for seven well I said 240 was oh. That might be being a little bit optimistic at the moment. Just remind you, if you weren't with us at 3.30 this morning, England won the toss and elected to bat with that one change. Mark Wood coming in for Ollie Robinson. 64 without loss. So they're at 119 for seven at the moment. Crawley 79, Duckett 27, Pope 11, Root 26, Bairstow 29, Stokes, Nort, Hartley 6, the men dismissed. And Rohit Sharma is setting the field for Mark Wood with millimetre precision. I think in truth it doesn't really matter. Mark Wood's either going to see ball, hit ball, or block it. Ashwin over the wicket to Wood, and he blocks on this occasion out on the offside, no run. Yeah, I was just about to say, let's, uh, let's have a bit of a, a gamble on which ball it is that he takes a huge punt. It's not the first one, so we can take that out of it. I'm going fifth ball. There's a long on and deep mid-wicket in place. He's edged it and he's caught by Rohit. He doesn't get the big shot out, Mark Wood. He tried to play defensively and it's a two-ball duck. It's two wickets in the over and the over spells wow from Ashwin. It's 183 for eight. Oh, sweet piece of bowling from Ravi Ashwin. He gets a bit more mid crease here on Wood, and he's just got that nice overspin on it, which we know on a first day surface, overspin sometimes it will hit the seam, spend some time in it, and rip over leg stump. In this occasion, it just bounces, and it bounces big into the outside edge of a, a forward groping Wood, and a nice easy catch to the captain, Sharma at slip beautiful piece of bowling from the maestro Ravi Ashwin and it, this happens so on and so often in subcontinent conditions you give somebody a sniff you give the opposition you give a three spin attack a sniff a window wham they through you like a steamroller and you can't give a bloke like Ashwin any sort of a jink in the armour this is wonderful piece of bowling again from him he's now got two India are right on the front foot eight down England all eight wickets to spin it's happened 145 times in test matches that spinners have taken all 10 wickets 48 of those have happened in India and we'll just go back to the point if you weren't with us at four o'clock this morning Jasprit Brumrow was hoofing them around corners sending down deliveries that you just could barely get a bat on but he couldn't take the wickets and the spinners have come in and mocked up. Bashir is the new batter and he is defending that bat towards Ashwin. That was in the air for quite some time. It was up near the stickers on the bat, but safely from an England point of view, it doesn't carry back to the bowler or a short straight mid on. Ashwin to finish this devastating over goes in and bowls, beats the outside edge of Bashir. And it's taken by Jarrell to end the over. 50 overs gone for England. 183 for eight. You're listening to live, exclusive, international cricket. India against England here on TalkSport 2. Well, that's five for eight. That's five for eight. Since the fourth wicket has gone down, where it was 175 for four. And too often, England lose wickets in clusters and... It's a session of cricket that sort of spoils it because in many parts they play good cricket but they have a mad session and then you're always clutching you know when the captain wins a toss first day of a test match you're thinking as I said earlier you want to be 300 odd the way they bat five down or so 
and they got off to a good start 64 for none 100 for two obviously when Popey got out just before lunch on the stroke of lunch and then it gives a world-class team like India a sniff and they sniff blood and they just pounce and they've been brilliant England not so much I think you've got to look at the numbers both opening partnerships from both teams have had good Jiray just starts the new over is around the wicket to folks who defends no run I've had good numbers, but it's harder once you come in against quality spin. It's harder against quality reverse swing. It's not an easy thing. You can't just go bashful about how you're going to play. Today, you're into uh, Folks. There's a silly point in place. Jai Wall. Folks pushes it wide of him to uh, cover and no run. And it just shows. I mean, Ashwin's last two balls there to the young fella. One, he's gone over spin and drifted it in. The next one, he's gone. A left arm around the wicket, Jadeja pushed to uh, deep cover by Folks, and they will take a single. 184 for eight. Well, I hope Mark Wood's in the back of the England dressing room getting ready to bowl, because there still might be something in this for the seamers, you know, judging by what we saw earlier. Last year then. Takes his guard, settles in and waits for Jadeja. One for 15 for him so far. Right, they're just waiting for the field to settle in because they've set two slips. So they're doing away with one of the helmets. So it's two slips and a silly point as Jadeja goes in. Bashir plays defensively up the pitch, no run. Yep, you can pretty much see exactly what's going to happen here. He's going to try and drag Bashir across the crease and then try and smash him on the shin. Jadeja gives that one some air. Bashir does well to uh, keep it out. And there's one ball left of this particular over. Bashir, England's young off spinner, prepares to face the left hander and it goes through to the keeper. Now, was there a faint edge? It's dropped by Jurel. So it'll be all eyes on the replay. Gareth Batty and Alex Tudor will uh, take a look at that. And I'm moving out because Neil Manthorpe's coming in. Yeah, I think it's a bit more than a faint edge. I think it's a good, a good edge. And uh, as we see the replay now, it's in the webbing of the, the finger and, and index, uh, sorry, thumb and index finger that it rams into from Jarrell, it's a, it's a good healthy edge, one of those that the keepers every morning will practice for but uh, you try and do it just on instinct, I'm not sure that's something that you can you can track with your eyes and hands, you just hope hope that you've seen it enough times and you track where it's going to go and it sticks. It was a thick enough edge actually to, to speculate that the keeper needs a bit of luck for them to stick doesn't it, or, or, or bigger webbing. <laughs> yeah, or cheat with your webbing. <laughs> Actually, a lot of people don't know that that's a regulation. Because that, that before that regulation came in, the, the webbing, you sh some keepers had huge great flaps. Um, and the, 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 it should help edges like that to stick. But uh, now, like every other piece of cricketing equipment, uh, there are regulations that limit the size. Uh, here's Ashwin once again outside the off stump. Ben folks uh, leaves that one alone. Ashwin, literally master at work. He's mid-crease here, but still holds it on Ben Stokes' outside edge. It's a bit more square spin. It just stays on the outside edge from mid-crease. Ashwin uh, in once again. He's uh, bought a lot round the wicket, but he's over the wicket now, folks, and that's turned with the spin out on the onside, and uh, there's no run. I think it's fair to say that the majority, even of cricket players, club cricket players, but down the wicket comes Folks, using his feet very nicely, driving it down to long on, fielded by Kuldeep. I think it's fair to say that uh, such is the, the, the skill and the variety and the variations that he employs. Uh, a, a lot of the su uh, subtlety of Ashwin uh, would be lost on, uh, which, is, which is, I get as much pleasure commentating with you, Gareth Buddy, as uh, you do watching Ashwin, because you can explain it all. <laughs> <laughs> the plans and the, that's pushed away defensively, no run. So perfect timing. The first ball of the over to Fox, same place on the crease from Ashwin, and it just holds. It's a square spinner. It goes trying to get him caught at slip. 
This ball exactly the same place, but changes the wrist position. Hit him on the pad and a uh, big appeal for leg before wicket, but it's quickly curtailed. That was missing leg stump. So the ball and the revolutions is uh, the, the angle of the seam is going to leg slip. So it's coming up and into the blade. So it's challenging the inside edge. And from the same position, he's able to change his wrist position. And there's no real obvious change from a batting point of view. It's literally an angle of a seam. It's magnificent. Oh, and a slog sweep from Shai Bashir. And he's hit it pretty well out towards deep mid wicket. And uh, an excellent attempt to field by Mohamed Siraj, but he's unable to get there, diving away to his left. Good slog sweep, that, from Shahid Bashir. That's, that's a 20-year-old off-spinning batsman playing a 38-year-old off-spinner and playing it rather well. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if this was a thing, Tudes. Fast bowler to fast bowler, but spinner to spinner, he will feel 20 foot taller. He's, he's taller than the, the mountains in the background right now because he's smacked a legend spinner at the other end. Spinner to spinner, it was always the thing. I'm not going to let him get me out, but wow, I want to smack him for a few. Wonderful shot from the young Bashir. It's not going to help on radio, but uh, just it, wait, wait, there'll be people listening thinking, what, did, what, do you, what does Bats mean by he changed his wrist position? Can you, I mean, do. Yeah, so think of it dead simple. If, if you're facing somebody square on, square spin, you're almost showing them the whole of your palm. Then for overspin, you're just going to canter it towards the left and you're going to see almost the side of your hand. Here's uh, Jadeja, that's played defensively by Fox. So it would be a handoff in rugby flash on the face, broken nose, or a little cuff around the back of the head because you've done something wrong. Cuff around the back head, more over the top, flat in the face, square spin. Here is Jadeja again, forward comes Fox, pushing uh, defensively out on the onside. Four off 25 balls, Ben, folks. He's watched carnage at the other end. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, there's a great deal he can do. Uh, that one has driven out towards cover, a deepish cover, and they uh, go through for a single. No, they don't go through for a single. They could have, but uh, Ben, folks, has decided just to put his put apply the handbrake, put his put his foot on the on the orthodox break and just try and uh, calm things down a little bit try and eke out some runs with the tail he does take a single now towards cover this time Shubman Gill underarms it back to uh, the bowler they've taken a single off the fourth ball Shahid Bashir will now face uh, Ravi Jadeja one senses Jadeja cranking up the speed to uh, Bashir as he said earlier Gareth Batty try and hit him on the shin he's got an awful lot of wickets LBW as uh, Jadeja bowls it quicker than most spinners that is a quick one and it's pushed away past Safraz Khan at short leg. He got something on it, uh, did Safraz. I don't know whether it was a hand or a shin. There's plenty of him. Um, but uh, oh, it's hit him on the wrist. And now then, is that a chance? Yeah, yeah, I reckon so. Stager in all, oh, beats the outside edge. And uh, Jeriv Jarrell um, is, a, he's only in the infancy of his test career, but he's already one of the great appealers uh, uh, from behind the stumps. He is absolutely magnificent. 190 for eight, England, 53 overs gone. Yeah, steals somebody else's words. Um, one of the finest coaches I've ever come across. Uh, Peter Moss used to talk about your keepers and people around the back. Create some theater, make some noise destabilize the batter so he turns around and says what are you on about I missed that by a foot make the noise create the theatre you're on stage this is your moment Martin McCutcheon <laughs> this is my moment loves a song bats doesn't he well, as you said you're trying to make it uncomfortable as possible for the two batters mate they're playing some tunes aren't they <laughs> they're old village people now this takes me back uh, this is one of the first albums I ever had one in fact in, in the days when cassettes were thought to be quite quite a modern you're gonna, you're gonna have to explain that for our younger viewers our cassettes let me tell you for our listeners you have to excuse me I'm going to shave my moustache in the toilet <laughs> <laughs> village people absolutely sensational we're gonna have to do some uh, digging and find out who the stadium <laughs> DJ is he's absolutely brilliant what an e like eclectic mix of like we're in a nightclub in bushwhackers in Worcester <laughs> here's Ashwin oh hits the air leading edge I think Ben folks is looking to work that one down to towards mid on and either show Bashir and with all his experience has said to Ben folks just don't worry about trying to protect me let's just take all the runs we can or folks has made the decision which I think is more likely because having turned down a single off the third ball of the previous over he's taken one off the first ball of this 
So it's Bashir with the... Uh, oh, that's popped up into the air. I think it was off the pad. Well, maybe it's just that Bashir is happy facing the other, his fellow off-spinner. Yeah, the ball's spinning in. There's a theory nowadays, isn't there, that uh, it's easy to face off-spin if you're a right-hander. I'm not sure I'd fully buy into <laughs> this new uh, thing, but anyway, it seems to be a thing. There's off-spin and there's Ashwin's off-spin. <laughs> Down the wicket comes Bashir and he's uh, hoiked him out towards deep mid-wicket again. Not quite for the four that he got in the previous over. Siraj keeps him down to a single. I'll tell you, Bats, it's, it's interesting, obviously, with you being here watching Ashwin, you know, go about his artistry so beautifully. Even though he's sort of coming in, he's bowling mid-crease, like you say, but he's able to keep his control of line, isn't he? He's sort of threatening both sides of the bat because he has the mystery. That is it really is an exhibition that he's putting on here. Here's uh, Ashwin in once again, and uh, it's uh, punched away out towards deep mid-wicket. Shubman Gill does the fielding. And uh, they take another single. Folks, seven, Bashir, five, 193 for eight. So is this a thing? The line never changes when Ashwin's bowling. He's trying to hit the top of off stump, which we all know. But he's bowling it from different places. The release point is different to create so much doubt. But he's still trying to bowl you the top of off stump. Played away uh, back towards mid-wicket. And uh, there's no run. And I say that to Seamus as well. When the ball's not swinging or doing anything, just manu go manoeuvre around the crease. It's what Jimmy does extremely well, just to create that different angle. Here is uh, Ashwin in once again down the leg side. A rare, quicker delivery. Was that the carom ball? Yeah, it was. He, you know he's feeling confident if he starts lobbing that out. <laughs> Easy to pick where we are. <laughs> Don't know from being 22 yards away. He's got a couple of wickets with it in this series. Uh, the carom ball, the mystery ball. 193 for 8, 54 overs gone. Bashir 5, folks 7. Yeah, he was saying um, recently he's been working on a back spinner. So it's almost like uh, a finger spinner's equivalent of a, a leg spinner bowling a flipper out the front of the hand and it being seam up. He's almost saying he can, he can get a, a back spinner coming. I, I, I can't process it in my head. I would not skillful enough. But uh, it certainly originates from a front of the hand carom ball type thing and then you try and change the revolution of the ball. So it's almost like a, a knuckle ball from a seamer that there's no... There's no velocity to the, to the ball, so it never really arrives and it hovers at all. Yeah, yeah. so it, it hovers as opposed to travel, if that makes sense. Still travelling, but, uh, you yeah. Surely you must have got yourself into the nets and tried to, to bowl oh. a backspinner. I tried everything for years, and that's why I was rubbish. I never just concentrated on being able to do one thing well. <laughs> Tadeja continues now. Ben Folks is uh, pushing defensively into the offside. No run. It always makes me laugh when I listen to... Ex-players, you know, be it either when I hear Nasser, Affers, Wardy, and those talk about their playing career, and they sort of downplay. Actually, how good they were. Forward comes uh, folks again. No and, run. And Bats is now falling into. Let me tell you, listeners, Bats was a very good bowler. Worked extremely hard. I remember him just bowling balls against the wall, trying to learn the other one. Pushed away defensively by folks again. No run. And if you want to evolve in the game and you want to have a longevity, you have to work on these things. And Gareth Batty did that. So don't let him, don't listen to him saying, oh, I wasn't this good and I got hit into road K. Let me tell you, people that have watched him, fiery. He had that, that fast bowler mentality. He's like, he was sledging the batters as a spinner. As an Why is that a fast bowler mentality? Is it only exclusively for well, fast bowlers? See, again, it's I'm a perceived thing. It's just like you. Well, 100%. Well, and, was, you did, was. and you did. <laughs> and you did. <laughs> you don't play 20 years when you're not good enough. Flicked away for a single out towards uh, deep mid wicket. 20 year yeah, yeah, first class career. I know, my body just. We're, we're the same age. He's a couple of days older than me. And uh, the longevity he's had is a, a testament to him, his work ethic, the way he kept himself fit, and just evolving. Because, you know, he played in different eras where the game was a little bit more dead bat. And then he obviously had these young lads trying to hit him into Roque. And he kept going. That's why I started talking to Wall and bowling to the Wall. Cat E for six then. <laughs> Here's uh, Jadeja in again, and uh, this one is left alone by Bashir outside the off stump. I think the, the great thing, Bats, is that when you did have a young lad hitting you into Roque, you kind of knew that he was... <laughs> his end was nigh. <laughs> Pushed away out on the onside. No run. 194 for eight. I saw enough of you going, well done, lad. Yep, good. Let's see you hit the next one. <laughs> More often than not, they did. <laughs> 
But there's some fantastic clips, isn't there, of Bats, I'm sure, on YouTube with him uh, fired up and sending a few off. 194 for 8, England have suffered a disastrous session, I'm afraid. Uh, from 100 for 1, and uh, Ollie Pope is out just before lunch, so 100 for 2 at lunch, uh, they uh, slipped from 137 for 2 to uh, 175 for 5, 175 for 6, 183 for 7, and 183 for 8. So uh, it's drinks halfway through the second session. Hang on, is it tea? <laughs> it is yeah, tea. It's, tea yeah. it's gone very yeah. quickly, hasn't it? It's, it is tea, of course it is. And, uh, and well, um, it's been a disastrous session, uh, Gareth Buddy. I don't know what you're feeling now about a good total is, but uh, <laughs> um, Chudes was saying 350 um, at the start of this session. I'd be very happy to get 250 now. Yeah, I think, like, look, let's, uh, let's applaud the, the great work from Kuldeep Yadav. He's walking off to... You're a star by Coldplay. And actually in that session he was. He got the five wickets um, in the end and chipped in with the great Ravi Ashwin and Jadeja. But it really has been a, a bit of a master class from India to absorb some pressure. England having a wonderful start. But uh, I think we lost three wickets for no runs at one point. Um, and then it just got worse and worse uh, at, at, at that sort of um, sort of point in the game. But um, I, I, it's too easy to... To berate England, I, I, I'm going to go with Kuldeep Yadav, and I think what a wonderful thing for a left-arm wrist spinner to have done what he's done in the series, but also first day of, of the final test match. Uh, when it's cold as well, let's not forget it was cold start, a bit dank, a bit damp, um, and to him to be 5 for 72. So the runs say that, you know, England didn't give it all his own way. He's gone for 72 at 4.8, but uh, to get the five wickets uh, is quite a wonderful achievement from him. And 2 for 39 for R. Ashwin, taking him to a total of 509 test wickets. Extraordinary achievement, and he's as good as ever at the age of 38. So it is tea time on day one of the fifth test match. Coming to you from uh, Dharamshala, the Himachal Pradesh Cricket Association Stadium. And England uh, have slumped to 194 for eight, with uh, Ben Folks on eight and Shoei Bashir on five. There were 79 from Zach Crawley, his sixth score in the 70s for England. He batted beautifully, I must say, but uh, he was one of five wickets to fall to Kuldeep Yadav. Apart from his 79, 26 from Joe Root and 29 from Johnny Bairstow in his 100th Test match. Other than that, not much, I'm afraid, uh, to the good for England. Uh, 194 for eight. We'll take uh, a short break and then uh, to see you through the tea break. As usual, providing uh, feedback and answering comments where appropriate. It'll be uh, Jared Kimber and John Norman. Exclusive ball by ball commentary of the fifth and final test match live from Dharmshala. Past the umpire, now he's straight. See you later. On the on, Talk Sport 2. Kick off your Sunday morning with a weekend sports breakfast on Talk Sport with goals. The free football pullout with the Sun. Scores! Lace up your boots with the nation's brightest sports breakfast, featuring insider news, big match previews, and expert analysis from Tony Cascarino and Natalie Sawyer. Oh, it's absolutely magnificent! Get fully loaded for football with a weekend sports breakfast, Sunday morning from 6 on Talk Sport with goals. The essential free football pullout with the Sun every Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. When Magnus started out as a carpenter, he used a manual saw. First, he made tiny chairs, then dog kennels, and then a duplex treehouse. But when Magnus was asked to build a suspension bridge, he had to leave his manual saw behind and embrace something better suited for the job. Manual saws. They're kind of like the bank account you use for your business. Just because they were right once doesn't mean they'll be right forever. Maybe it's time to switch with the current account switch service. We've all been there. You start some DIY with great intentions, then 50 minutes later your face is red, the air is blue, and your hair's getting greyer by the minute. That's a job for the trust a trader professionals. Let them get that list ticked off while you relax with a cuppa, safe in the knowledge that every trade person's passed the trust a trader 15 point assessment. <sighs> Find the Trust a Trader professionals at TrustTrader.com Why do I race for life? For our very own stand-up comedian who's getting cheekier by the day, a bug lover and local celeb around the fire service, and the one who sits on my back whilst I do press-ups. 
When he shaved his head, I shaved mine, and so did all our friends. Such a loving wee son, whose resilience I'll never be able to understand. His name's Archie, and I'm racing for him. No matter how cancer affects us, life is worth racing for. Sign up to your local event at raceforlife.org in partnership with headline sponsor Standard Life. Let me go straight to the point. When you lay in a patio or driveway, you need Seeker Fast Fix. It's ready mixed, easy to use and quick to apply. Plus, it comes in five colours and you can use it in any weather. Transform your next project with confidence. Transform it with Seeker Fast Fix. <sighs> and you'll finish a quality job in no time at all. Seeker stock is now at seeker.co.uk slash landscaping. Sometimes running a business can feel like swimming upstream in Siberia. Welcome. With a bear clinging onto your leg. <laughs> but Zero Online accounting software can help you manage the ins and outs of your finances in real time. So you can keep them running smoothly. Soon it will feel more like you're going down a water slide. Your turn. In a rubber ring. Or being serenaded by a string quartet. Search Zero with an X. Because healthy business is beautiful business. Live Super League. This evening from 8 on Talk Sport 2. Has he got the ball down? You right. bet he has. Here hard tackling, full match commentary of Hull Kingston Rovers versus Warrington Wolves. And it's a flying finish in the corner. Warrington finally have their first try of the night. Live Super League. Hull Kingston Rovers versus Warrington Wolves. He's racing forward. Goes 90 metres. This evening from 8 on Talk Sport 2. On DAB Plus, online, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. Exclusive ball-by-ball -ball commentary of the fifth and final test match, live from Dharmshala. Field it all, there's going to be a run out! Only on TalkSport 2. Well, there you go. The news from the centre is that England have won the toss and they've decided to bat first. Here is Siraj in once again and uh, this time it is a glorious cover drive, off drive and it's the first boundary of the inning. Nice shot by Crawley, stride into the ball, plays the off drive and it's wide of mid off and again it's away for four. Duckett is uh, playing back and drills this down the ground. My goodness, what a shot this is. As uh, Ben Duckett could be in trouble here, he's tried to go down the ground, it's taken a leading edge and Shipman Gill running across from mid off has taken a fine two handed catch. But it looked as though all the energy was going one way. He's just gone for brute force, and unfortunately for Duckett, it's gone straight up in the air. And Crawley hits it back past the bowler. Mid off, not going to get there. And it's 50 for Zach Crawley. Uses his feet, puts him back over his head. That's a huge shot. Plenty of hang time on that. That's a massive six. Colby is in. Ollie Pope's run past one, and he's stumped by two metres. He was playing for turn, it didn't. And Pope just runs past it. And Jarrell takes the stumping. England are 100 for two. Final ball of the call deep over his short and Joe Root is immediately onto that. Savagely pulling it all along the floor through square leg. Boom him! Yadav is through! Crawley's drive was an ambitious and expansive one and it's ripped back between bat and pad and clip the top of off stump and Crawley makes another 70. Goes on the slog sweep this time, does Bearstow, clears his front leg and smashes this up over Cal Corner for six. Bang, straight over the fielder's head for six. Said it was going to be box office, it's going to be exciting. Six as it runs in Tess and has he been dismissed here, Bearstow coming down the track and the finger goes up. Bairstow's been caught behind for 29. 175 for five. Criminal. And well, let's be fair, it's still a, it's a decent wicket. Coldy goes in. Stokes gets the googly, taking on the pad. Big appeal, Joel Wilson raises the finger. A one that jags away, setting the England captain up, squares him up for the one that comes back. And it's ragged back perfectly. Ashwin around the wicket. Hartley swinging this into the leg side. Clears the front leg and goes and is caught. It's a long arm and deep mid wicket in place. He's edged it and he's caught by Rohit. He doesn't get the big shot out, Mark Woods. He tried to play defensively and it's a two ball duck. It's two wickets in the over and the over spells wow from Ashwin. It's 183 for eight. You give somebody a sniff, you give the opposition, you give a three-spin attack a sniff, a window, wow. 
They threw you like a steamroller. 194 for eight, England have suffered a disastrous session, I'm afraid. Tudes was saying 350 um, at the start of this session. I'd be very happy to get 250 now. Well, 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 yeah, that's uh, how it sounded here on Talk Sport 2, the fifth and final test match uh, between India and England. 3-1 uh, up, of course, India coming into this match. England winning the toss again on a pitch uh, which looked ripe for runs. Um, and at lunch, uh, that was still the case uh, to a point. England had been a, a little bit fortunate along the way. Uh, they lost Ollie Pope to the final wicket, or uh, right, the final ball of the uh, the first session. But 100 runs on the board. Zach Crawley um, uh, unbeaten, and uh, England looked to to, uh, to push on. But uh, that is not how it has gone. How has that affected the odds? Um, we shall see. Um, uh, you are listening to live and exclusive ball by ball commentary of uh, day one of the fifth test between India and England, and uh, we will have the resumption. Live commentary of the evening session in about 10 minutes' time. But for now, let's get those odds with William Hill. In the zone on TalkSport 2 with official betting partner William Hill. Get epic value all season with William Hill. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. OK, so the odds are India now 9-1 to one on to go on to win this fifth test match and take the series 4-1. Uh, for those of uh, you out there who may uh, factor in a little bit of rain, um, uh, when you consider the location and the uh, foothills of the Himalayas, you can get 33 to 1. England have been pushed out to 6 to 1 for the win. England to score under 216.5 runs. They are 194 for 8 at T, uh, 6 to 5 on. And uh, to score over that, uh, they're also 6 to 5 on. Uh, leading England wicket taker. Ah, we're, we're talking about this already. Um, Tom Hartley, 2 to 1. Uh, exactly the same odds as Shoa Bashir. Uh, so, uh, spin, it's felt, um, will uh, aid England's cause. Jimmy Anderson, two away from uh, 700 test wickets. He is at 4-1 to one to be leading England wicket-taker and Mark Wood. Uh, the one change for England, he's in for Ollie Robinson. He is also 4-1. to one. That was an odds update with William Hill. Get a £5 free bet on any race every day of the Cheltenham Festival, 18+. plus. Be gambleaware.org. In the zone on TalkSport 2 with official betting partner William Hill. Giving you the tools for positive play. Take time to think and know your limits. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. So, uh, Jerry Kimber's alongside me for the next uh, few minutes or so before the uh, evening session gets underway. Um, I just want to talk to you briefly, Jared, about 100 test men. Of course, Johnny Vesto and Ravi Chandran Ashwin. I think it's the fourth time in history that two players or more there was uh, one test match where three players reached that, that milestone um, we talked a lot about Bairstow we looked, talked a lot about Ashwin later tonight we're going to see the same thing happening for New Zealand Kane Williamson and Tim Southey will walk out uh, on the occasion of their 100th test match it used to be a huge huge deal and of course it's still a very important one but it's a little bit strange isn't it because kind of went through a period of test cricket where it was very rare only the real greats of the game would play a hundred tests then we've approached a, a part of the uh, of, a, of an era where it's become a little bit more frequent but are we uh, about to head towards a period where it's going to become much rarer again you would think that this is probably I, I can't imagine in the future of test cricket we're going to have too many occasions where four players on the same do we count this as the same day? We it do. is technically this. No, it's two different days, isn't it? Well, it's the same day here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think we're going to have too many occasions in the, in the future of Test Cricket where four players um, get 100 caps within two days of each other. <laughs> so, no, I do think, I do think with that, it's, you know, we're on the way out. I think Usman Semi didn't wrote something for Crick Info sort of suggesting that, you know, when it first happened, we couldn't believe anyone could play 100 Test matches and every single occasion was this huge moment. Then we had a bit where it felt like, you know, not role players, but sort of players down the pecking order, you know, would get 100 caps. So I suppose someone like Ishan Sharma, you know, Mark Boucher, those sorts of players that maybe are not 
household names, Ian Healy, those sorts of players. And now we're back to the point of like, if you can play 100 tests now with all the formats and all the different um, things that are put in front of you as a, a cricketer, it's kind of an amazing feat again, isn't it? Now, obviously, it's still going to be the English, Australian, and Indian cricketers are going to play a lot more of that. I mean, Tim Southey started when he was a fetus, and he's still only just getting to 100, right? Um, whereas Ishan Sharma hasn't played in a couple of years and, and has already finished here. So I do think there is, uh, you know, that there is that element of it. But yeah, I think it's, I think it's changed in importance over the years just because cricket keeps changing. Do you think we'll ever see a, another West Indies cricketer to reach the 100 cap mark? I suppose the only way it would happen with West Indies would be what we just saw with um, New Zealand. It would have to be someone who starts at 17 or 18 and then plays until they're 36, 37. And even then, the amount of tests that West Indies play is just probably you're going to struggle to get there. So... As, it, as cricket currently stands, no. I think there'll be some big changes with Test cricket into the future. And so things might change very, very um, sharply. So there's still a possibility. But yeah, Sri Lanka, West Indies, South Africa, those sort of nations. I don't think we're going to see a lot of players playing 100 Test matches from there. Our producer, Scott, has just whispered in my ear that uh, Craig Brathwaite is on test number 89, which is a yeah. surprise. I didn't realize he played quite as many as that. Well, he started quite early as well. So, you know, and... and He's what now, 34, 35? Well, he should reach 100 test mark in about, what, five years? <laughs> Are you talking about his strike rate as a batter? Oh, or he, yeah. Look, he's not going to get dropped, is he? He's uh, clearly that one of their best batters. But, yeah, after him, uh, I c it, it would take a very long time. But they, they could have another... I mean, the thing is, let's say they have another batting prodigy. Then it has to be a batting prodigy who gets picked at 19 or 20. And then they have to be a slow-scoring batting pro prodigy because if they score quickly, they'll go into the CPL and they'll go into the franchise system, right? Chandra Paul it is then, the younger. But the, the pro they didn't pick Chandra Paul young enough. He made his debut for Guyana when he was about 12, but it took him a while to play for the national team. But yeah, a cricketer like that, I suppose. But who knows what, the, what in 10 years' time what Test Cricket will be. Uh, quick word on the session that we've just seen, of all the sessions that we've seen and covered here on TalkSport 2, where does that one rank uh, for England? Rank's a good word. In, in <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it's difficult. I uh, Michael Vaughan wrote a piece saying he thought it was a little bit of an easy get, sticking the boot into Ollie Robinson after the, the fourth test match. And that's kind of what a lot of people do. They'll, they'll look at one dismissal or one moment or maybe the tempo of the team or I mean I don't know if you can really point to one specific moment Bats Gareth Batty head coach of Surrey pointing out just how well Cody Yadif bowled today which is absolutely true England could have lost a few wickets in that morning session Bumra bowled beautifully well um, you know but then on the flip side a lot of people felt that this was a, a good scoring pitch 350-400 so where do you think the, uh, the sword of Damocles is going to fall? <laughs> it, it, it's an interesting one because I think if you come in now and you say 194 for eight, you would say England have been absolutely terrible and, and haven't played very well. To survive that morning session two wickets down was a brilliant effort, right? And the bad ball stuff that has ruined them in the second session helped them in that first session, right? Getting boundaries from, from half mistakes from India, putting pressure back, spreading the slip fielders, not having as many catches in, comes from the way that they've batted all the way through the series. The two openers, I really mean. The, the rest of England's order. Let's be honest. You have to separate England's top order from the rest of England's order in this because England's top order have been spectacular. Well, the openers have been spectacular uh, and everyone else has been terrible. But you, you, you watch the shots that they've played we could see Bairstow's wicket coming off, uh, uh, you know, a mile. Um, uh, you know, in, in Crawley's case, I thought he batted beautifully, but then does what he always does. He doesn't, doesn't go on with that innings. Pope, Pope and Bairstow, uh, uh, sorry, Pope and um, Stokes have been facing cool deep all series and still not picking his wrong end. It's not all from over-attacking, is it? There's, there's many different elements to it. But the truth is that they did the hard part this morning. They got themselves into a really good position on what was a really tough wicket, and then they had an absolutely horrendous session. And it, it, how many times have we said, well, you know, they've set themselves up here and they just sort of fall apart. At a certain point, you have to go, the middle order has just not uh, backed them up in this tournament. And considering how we've seen um, the England top order batting over the last couple of years, it's quite a turnaround, right? Uh, the players are making their way back out onto the field. That was uh, Jarrah Kimber. He will be with us throughout uh, this evening's session. Uh, and uh, the End of this, uh, this test match, it looked like it might be a four-day, possibly even a five-day affair. 
uh, at times uh, this morning. Uh, now we're looking like it could be uh, over in a much quicker time than that. We've got Shoa Bashir, um, who has overcome a little bit of illness. He uh, didn't train yesterday. He's made his way out. It's going to be Ben Folks, uh, perennially under pressure, it seems, and battling with the tail, finding himself in a really difficult position, uh, who is going to uh, face the first delivery of this uh, evening session. Koldip Yadav uh, with five wickets set to fall um, in uh, the two sessions to come. He made his uh, debut here uh, back in 2016-17 against Australia. Well, he has bowled particularly well today. Uh, and uh, talking you through uh, the afternoon, uh, or rather the evening session, uh, will be uh, Steve Harmison and Gareth Batty, I think, and uh, also Andrew McKenna as... Uh, folks is down the track and he'll take four from the first ball of the evening session hopefully that is a sign of things to come as uh, folks moves to 12 the score 198 for eight and after a word from uh, alex tudor it will be andrew mckenna yeah i was just looking it's a good shot good shuffle of his feet down the wicket from ben folks they need to make this partnership go on when well advanced 200 and 198 at the minute. Ashwin then in oh! over the wickets. Folks is taking this from outside of off stump and gets it down to fine leg. And they will take one. So 199 for eight. Folks goes to 13. And the final session of the day is right. underway. Folks got one that dipped on him there. And just got. The under half of the bat on it as he's playing the horizontal sweep. Ashwin got excited because he thought he was going to get through his man, but he didn't. Right, Bashir has three around the bat and he's playing sort of defensively, <laughs> sort of pushing at the ball into the offside and he'll get a single. And that's what the cheer is from the England fans. The England 200 is up. 55 and a half overs, 200 for eight here on TalkSport 2. Six runs from the three balls of the over so far. And Fox is back on strike. There are three men out in the deep on the leg side and two men out on the deep on the off. Ashwin goes in and bolts to Fox and there's no run. And the reason I mention that is we were just having a joke outside. When was the last time Ben Folks played a big shot? And we reckoned about 2018, um, which it was a bit of a joke, but I'd bring them in to say, well, if you want to hit over the top, Ben, it's going against completely how you play your cricket. P please feel free. He's going to have to now because the fielders have come in. Four balls in the over, gone. Ashwin with folks on strike, desperate to get one. If he gets a dot ball here, he's possibly thinking, right, I've got a free hit after that because a free hit to the boundary. Ashwin then over the wicket to Folks, who uses his feet, actually advances, clips through square leg. They're going to take one, and they're going to take two. Siraj does the fielding, so Folks will retain strike with one ball left of the over. I also think this is the right thing to do. I really think, you know, dying in a hole, we've seen a couple of times in the last few test matches, not only does it not help England, it doesn't help Ben Folks either, so he's better off being proactive. Then the captain of the opposition has to work out whether to give in easy singles or not and he, you have to trust Bashir at some point so I think Ben, ben folks would be better off trying to rotate and then if the field does come in with the last two balls run over go for the big shot with a six or four well Ashwin was about to come in and bowl but Rohit is, is conducting as you can hear through the stump mark a very long range conversation with someone, so Folks backs away, Ashwin goes in, and Folks slogs this through up wide mid on for four. Got one that didn't bounce a huge amount, and he was able to beat the man at mid on, and it'll go away for a boundary. So that is 12 from the over. 206 for eight, England here on Talksport 2 after 56 overs. He's played this well, it's the caram ball, and it stayed low, it's at the bottom portion of his bat. He kept his uh, eyes on the ball. He most probably only wanted it to go for a long single, but uh, he got a good portion of it, and it's gone for four. And as Harvey makes a good point, you've got to take runs on offer. Can't mess around, get what you can. And then they're going to have to go about uh, trying
trying to restrict this very good Indian team. Yeah, take what's on. Take, if you take what's on offer and rotate the strike, you actually say to the, the opposition captain about either bringing the field up or, or setting it back. You know, then you've got you've got options. If he goes in outfield, you've got a chance to give the captain and the bowlers a run around. And then, but at the, also at the other end, you've got a chance of the last two balls of an over trying to hit a boundary. If it goes like that, and you just hope that Bashir can survive and pick it up like they did in the last over. If you get two or three overs where you get 12 off an over, then you're kicking the game forward still with a scoring rate and you're putting pressure from the scoreboard, you know, putting runs on the board, which builds that little bit of pressure on the opposition captain. It's a bit of a surprise. Bumrun's back into the attack, comes in and bowls outside of Bashir's off stump, and there is no run. I kind of expected, with the way that the spinners have been running through, that we just see spin all the way, but Bumrun back into the attack. No, he's... Well, he's just bowled a, a no ball, so he's got off another six balls at Bashir. Um, it was reverse swinging for Bumra earlier, so I expect it to be re reverse swinging again. He's obviously taken off somebody else's mark, whether he's taken off <laughs> Mohamed Siraj's mark or he's even taken off R. Ashwin's mark. But he was a long way over the line there. We'll give him a you know, free hit at his, uh, at his first ball of the session. In he comes then for uh, another go, and Bashir is turning this one through square leg. Keeps it all along the floor, and they... Oh, now he wanted to come back for a second, and folks have said no. Now again, that's just a little bit of clarity in thinking there about, well, are we taking the runs? Are we putting folks on strike? I think there was a second if they wanted it. Yeah, but I think that's a sensible thing. Look, you know, he just got his line wrong there, and uh, Bashir was able to clip that away. As you say, Ben Folks is the, the player that's going to score the bulk of the run, so he needs to face the bulk of the deliveries. And obviously, with five balls still left, it makes sense for him to face them. DJ Rio, by the way, is the man who we need to uh, to give some big ups to, because he is the man who's uh, spinning the tunes in Dharamshala. They actually flew him in from Mumbai, so he's not a local boy, so... Uh, He's the man who's uh, on PA duty, and he's done quite a good job so far. In goes Jasper Brumrun, and uh, Ben Folks plays defensively back down the pitch to the bowler in his follow-through. It's not quite as good a job as the Indian uh, bowlers have done today, but the, the DJ certainly certainly having a day. 208 for 8 England. They won the toss this morning and batted, and they got to 137 for 2, and then... A collapse. Five for eight in 37 balls. Wicket to wicket. Has ripped the heart out of this one. Bumra goes in. It's a shortish ball. Folks pulls into the leg side. Doesn't get all of it. Sort of sand wedges it. Oh no, and Ashwin, it went over his head. He was chasing it back. He's gone to get the slide in to try and pull it back and has made a mess of it. And it goes for four. So, folks, although he didn't get it off the complete meat of the bat, goes to 23 England to 12 for 8 no it's it's clothed but it's it's got enough on it to get over Ashwin's head it's got enough on it to get to the boundary but it's good it's a good man good mindset from from Ben folks batting with a tail is a little bit of a free hit but you've got to have you know the skill of your know, position when you you're trying to you know get a single or get back for two but also you need a boundary shot as well Bummer goes in folks is pushing into the offside he's gonna beat your danger at cover so it'll be Siraj coming off of the boundary. They take one. Again, Bashir is offering folks to come back. He's, he's run the first one hard, and he's turned, taken one or two paces, and said, I'm ready if you want. But folks says, no, no, no. You stay down that end. We'll take the single. In fact, we'll take another run, because it's another no ball. 214 for eight it becomes the second no ball of the over. And it's good. England have you know, put a little bit of pressure back on on India, though, who have taken wickets. Ooh, that's a tight one, that. That's a tight one, that. It's not as big as the first one, but still, it's, it's, it's runs on the board. All runs gratefully received at the moment from an England point of view. Bumra goes in. Bashir? Whoa, that's a stylish late back cut, if ever I saw one. It maybe wasn't meant to go between second slip and gully, but I tell you what, he's hit it pretty well. He goes to double figures. 11 not out after 218 for eight. He's played that with great composure, isn't he? Really, like a top order batsman. He's played it really late, as you say, taking it out of the keeper's gloves. Run it down to the vacant third. Again, it's runs, and England need all they can get at the minute. What's that? Two eighteen now for four. Yeah. For 
four. Four. Yeah, for eight. Well, sorry, eight. Not for four. They'd be happy for four. Yeah, it'd be that. Well, it should be. It should be for four. But never mind. That's another story again. But if England can get somewhere near 250, it gives them something to bowl at. There's something in this surface. There's movement through the air for the for the new ball. As Bumra goes in, he's down the leg side. Uh, Bashir can't get anything on it. Jurel takes it one-handed, going away to his left-hand side. And there's, of course, one other factor that we've not mentioned so far today. James Anderson's going to be coming in and bowling on 698 Test match wickets. He's got it in on 700. This is not the world's worst conditions to be bowling seam in India. No, it's not, but another 45 minutes would go down brilliantly for from England. Another 45 minutes to an hour. Bowling in that last hour, bowling in the first hour and the last hour in this test match. Bumrah in, goes full Yorker towards the uh, off stump. Kept out by Bashir, ends the over here on TalkSport 2. 57 overs completed, 218 for 8 England. Because Army, you know, when, it's, when you get sort of 8 down, the opposition batters are now starting to get their mind right about batting. But the longer they get, they're staying out there, the frustration, you know, England will take some momentum, whatever momentum they can take from this first innings, into that bowling stint when you've got Jimmy Anderson, the GOAT, bowling with that new ball, with Mark Wood bowling some rockets, anything can happen. You get two early wickets and one of them jars while all of a sudden that Indian batting lineup will be under a little bit of pressure in that middle order. Yeah, they will then. Got back at the the last Test match, Ben Folks, he batted 76 balls for 17. He he got he got stuck, didn't know whether to how to rotate the strike, didn't know how to marshal a tail. But this has been much better from Ben. Ashwin to start the new over. Folks has gone down to play the sweep from a foot outside of off stump, and it's ricocheted back onto his stumps down the leg side. Effectively, it goes down as bold. Folks is the ninth man out for 24, but he's taken a ball from outside of his off stump by about 30 centimetres and helped it around the corner onto the timbers. And it went flap of the pad onto gloves and that momentum of the shot takes the ball back towards the stumps and trickles into the timbers and the bales fall off and Folks cannot believe his luck there have been some batters today who've given it away folks certainly can't add his name to that list because that's a freakish dismissal but england are nine down for 218. yeah bad luck from ben folks he's trying to to keep the scoreboard ticking over batting with the tail it's a thankless task batting with the tail he's had to do that many many times in his career a lot of times in this series as well and Sometimes he's been criticised for it and sometimes he's he's getting it right and there he's getting it right. He had it right, Blatton with Bashir. The two of them were rotating it nicely, but unlucky from Ben Folks. It's just it literally has it's it's bounced up off the pad and his hands were you know, just to the you know the left of him and as he's coming round it's hit the bottom of the glove and it's barely knocked the bales off. Barely knocked the bales off. The zing orange bales. It yeah, took forever, and I mean it must have been forever watching it, Ben Folks, because he'll have been facing it. He was twisted all the way around, and as the ball was going you know, helplessly for him towards the stumps, he just cannoned into the stumps, rested against the bottom of the stumps, and the bales just dropped off. So unfortunately for Ben Stokes, for Ben Folks, but it brings in Jimmy Anderson. Here we go then, Anderson to Ashwin, who's taken on the pad. That looks really close first ball. Joel Wilson says no. And Ashwin is turning around, they're having a the conversation. Ashwin's thinking bat. And Rohit makes the signal. Well, Anderson looked like he was doing a little bit for pace on that Confirm. one. He's now looking at the inside edge of his bat as he wanders down TV to the middle. Director, we have a player yeah. for LBW, on-field decision is not out. It's like I have that, 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 straight away, they're, delivery. they're giving this they're out. I was giving this out, I think that was close. Place. Ashwin thinks it's bat, so that's why he wasn't 100% convinced. But Rohit Sharma, yeah, the nine down, he's got a couple in the bank, so why not have a go for nice it? But slow. this is, I think it's straight. Was there okay, a sound? He's hit it. I think he's bat. hit it, yeah. Can go to the ultra edge, please. It sounds like there might be an edge, inside edge on that. It misses the front pad and then cannons into the back leg. Yeah. Now we get the ultra edge. And the ball is frozen in time. Now it starts moving. Okay. And it does indeed take okay, the I inside edge. I have a spike edge. as the ball passed the bat. I'm satisfied. Uh, Joel, 
There's a bat involved. You can stay with the original edition. Not out. Give Joel, screen, Joel Wilson some stick in this series, but he got that one spot on. Good decision from Joel Wilson. He got a really, really thin, faint inside edge. Ashwin then to Anderson once again. Ashwin was thinking about playing the sweep there, Anderson, and then he held and held and held, and then eventually defensively blocked it out on the offside. It's a little bit like the hokey cokey when you're not sure whether it's your left foot or your right foot to go in first. That's what tail enders when they're trying to sweep, and it's not quite there. Ashwin with three for on his 100th test match. Anderson swings hard into the leg side, and he's caught by Panikal. And it's a four for, for Ashwin. In his 100th test, there's a big presentation before play started. His children and wife were out there. And he now will remember this test match for four wickets in the first innings. And he's taken two in and over again. Two in four balls on this occasion. James Anderson is the man dismissed. And very interestingly, Kuldeep Yadav has been thrown the ball for his Fifer, and he's turned around and lobbed it to Ashwin and said, no, 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 you take this. And Ashwin is not having any of it. He has just physically forced the ball back into Kuldeep's hands and said, no, it is for five wickets. It might be my 100th test match, but you have taken the Fifer. You get that ball and in fact they're still pushing each other now jokingly I have to say about who's going to lead the team off but in truth it doesn't matter which of them lead the team off and it is Kuldeep who now raises the ball to lead the side off India have done a job on England 137 for two in the 37th over to 218 all out in 57 overs and four balls. England blown away in the shadow of the Himalayas. Well, they've got a mountain to climb now because 218 ain't competitive in any form of Test match cricket. It might just about get you something in a T20 more often than not, but it ain't going to do you much in a Test match. England winning the toss. 218 all out, Steve Harmison. Yeah, 218 all out, and well bowled, cool deep Yadav, rightly so. Yeah, Siraj tries to give the ball to Ashwin, and Ashwin's taking none of it. So, and I'm not surprised either. Cool deep Yadav's got five wickets. He's got Crawley, Duckett, Pope, Bairstow, and Stokes. All five. He's got five of the top six, and he was the one that got the you know lit the blue touch paper just before lunch. And England never recovered. Ollie Pope ran down the wicket. He was he's classed as stumped by Jurel, but for me he was run out. Yeah, he was run out. He was miles out of his crease, and from that moment, England have never really recovered. A brilliant, brilliant bowling performance by India, who you know cast the net, uh, cast the line into the water, stuck a little sinker on it, put a few worms, and said to the fish, "Come and get me." And England bit like you'd not believe. Shark-infested waters. And England's batters just dived straight out of the water into the boat. <sighs> Do you know what, Macca? I still think England are marginally in this game because I think there's a bit, bit still a bit in it. But from 100 for 1, you know, all the goodwill going in that first session and largely down to what's happened in this series so far is possibly getting eked away with... You know, 25, 30 overs later, and in England, a complete capitulation of poor decision making, poor shot execution, and I don't think they can get away from this. You know, this is a really, really poor performance on a wicket where you go, you've batted first, you should do a hell of a lot better. Hook, line, sinker, rod, and copy of Angling Times, I think. Uh, well, there we go. 218 all out. Let's take you through the scorecard. Zach Crawley, 78, Ben Duckett, 27, Ollie Pope, 11, Joe Root, 26, Johnny Besto, 29, Ben Stokes, a six-ball duck, Folks, 24, Hartley, 6, Mark Wood, a two-ball duck, Bashir, 11, not out, James Anderson, naught from three, the final man out, the bowling figures, Bumrah, 13 overs, naught for 51, Siraj, eight overs, naught for 24, Ravi Chandran Ashwin, 11.4 overs, four for 51, Kuldeep Yadav, 5 for 72. And Jadeja, 10 overs, 1 for 17. England, 
bowled out in the small matter of 57.4 overs. So there's going to be 30 overs of the day. And we mentioned it. We've now got to get a head round bowling. James Anderson and Mark Wood. It is, it's a nice day. If you were just to look at a photo of this, you'd see blue sky, high clouds. When play started at 9.30 Indian time, at 4 o'clock UK time this morning, the temperature was 6 degrees. So although it's warmed up during the day, it's certainly not warm. Um, it, it's not, you know, sort of 30 degrees in Chennai kind of warm, one of those. It's a nice day to be bowling seam, you would think. So that's how England have got to approach this. Bumrow sent down some unplayable deliveries earlier, and he's ended up with an offer. What England have got to say to James Anderson and Mark Wood is, you send some of those down, they will nick them off, and we will take those catches for you, and we will get ourselves back in the game. Or am I just living halfway up that mountain? <laughs> you might be mucker. But no, listen, you, you, you make a good point. Listen, there was movement from Siraj and from Bumrah. They bowled beautifully in that morning session. But England saw that through and you're thinking you've done the hard work now just go on and bat and they haven't they flattered to deceive really and you know you can't really defense that but, you know defend that the way they, they went about on a good wicket you know you win the toss the captain wins the toss you bat first first ever test match there's no way that you should be batting for only 57 overs even with the positive intent that's all good and we will back you with that positive intent but Let's not play brainless cricket. You still need to respect the game. And, and that's the frustration from supporters, you know, on social media, whatever. They just feel like, yes, we're all behind Ben and, and Baz with the way that they're playing. But please, let's not take liberties. And at the moment, you just feel that there's a, not a carefree way that they're going about it. But you just feel like, listen, you know, just respect the game a little bit more. Make the spinners have to bowl more overs and Boomer have to come back and bowl more of a spell. You can't, you can't on the first day of a test match, only bowl 57 overs and feel that you're in this game. You're now asking your bowlers, you're now asking someone who's 41 years old, you're asking now Mark Wood to come in and try and do something and two young spinners who have been a positive in this series to come in and work wonders, you know. India are going to put their, their foot down. Um, you know, good teams, when they smell blood, they do not take their, their foot off the neck. And uh, I'll be very surprised now, unless we see some absolutely fantastic bowling from Jimmy Anderson and, and Mark Wood to start off with this new ball. That India, you know, don't make England pay. You know, if they get 400 plus, and, you know, the deficit's 180, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're asking your batters in the second innings to work wonders. There's a fine line. There's a fine line of, of goodwill. Um, and then there's a fine line of being questioned about, are we learning? And, yeah, the mentality. I've been quite positive of their mentality and why England are in a position that over here, they've been through a 3-1 down, but they've been in every single test match in every single game. There's a fine line. I, mean, I still think England are still you know, still got something to play with here because 218 is a score on the board. Yes, it's not a very big one, but I still think there's there's elements and passages of later on tonight and first thing tomorrow morning where the ball might do that a little bit more, especially if, if Anderson is, is is on top form. But there's also a fine line of absolute brainless decision making. And when I look at this this here Macker and you go through the the scorecard. You go duck it, that's a poor shot. Ollie Pope is nearly run out, running past one. On the cusp of lunch. Zach Crawley, he yeah, goes for the big, massive shot. Loses his, loses his ship and gives his wicket away and gets himself out. Johnny Bairstow, again, yeah, it was a frantic innings. I thought Joe Root was a decent bit of setup and a decent bit of bowling. Ben Stokes just didn't pick the googly. That was a fantastic bit of bowling. Yeah, but you, then you get into the bowlers. Hartley played a big shot. Wood pushed with one forward. So, but one of them in the middle have got to go. Hold on, we've got to take some responsibility here. We've got to stem the tide. You know, for, put behind them what a couple of poor executions, and we're going to have to rebuild, start again, and then you know put our put the emphasis back on the bowler 
to then put the pressure back on the bowler at this minute in time England you just sense that if one big shot if a player gets out from a big shot the next person comes in has got to play an even bigger shot and it's like the mentality of well we just go harder well in this series every time England have gone harder and harder again 45 minutes has cost them a test match and that for me is why the 3-1 down and that for me if the if India do come and bat well for this 30 overs, Jaiswal gets in and gets going, and do get England in, a, in India do get in the lead and beyond and push away, then all of a sudden all that goodwill in them first four Test matches could go out the window very very quickly in the mountains of the Himalayas. So 218 on the board for England. Don't want to worry anyone, but a bloke walking out to the wicket. He's made 209 and 214 on his own so far this uh, series. Uh, I'm going to get out of the way for some more thoughts from you as Neil Manthorpe takes over the ball by ball. It's interesting, Harmy. I was just, I was just looking. John Etheridge, who's been around a while, he just put on a stat here where England's collapses in the last four Test matches: seven for 43, seven for 35, ten for 107, nine for 139. And you can't win Test series with those type of collapses. And, and as you said, England have been in all these games, but you can't have madness sessions like that and expect to win. Well, Jimmy Anderson is going to bowl the first ball of India's uh, reply. And uh, it's driven by Yashasvi Jaiswal straight up to Tom Hartley, I think that is, fielding it uh, mid-on with uh, the sleeveless sweater on. And we hear Jerusalem for the second time today, shortly after tea. There's a lot of cricket still to be played today, never mind on the remaining four days. There's an awful lot spoken about recognising the big moments and how you play the big moments. First of all, you have to recognize this, this moment or this half an hour now is, it could be critical or will be critical. That's outside the off stump and uh, there's no run. And those big moments aren't always obvious and they're not necessarily scoreboard related. You need to be able to read the game, don't you? And play those big moments. That's what I've been trying to say is that somebody needs to identify them in the middle you know, put the you know, put the tape on where the water's coming in. Try and you know, stop it from gushing out, and then start rebuilding, chucking the water out the boat to then get it back bobbing above the top of the water to then go again. And that's something that this team is not very good at. Here's uh, Jimmy Anderson again. Jaiswell pushes one into the covers, sets off for a single. Ben Stokes runs in, picks up right-handed, but doesn't bother throwing at the stumps. They've gone through for a very comfortable single and and that's it again it's the value of experience because once you've played a certain number of games test matches or, or even first class games and and as i said it's not necessarily scoreboard related but you should be able to read if i get out now these bowlers are still fresh this if if i'm out in the next half an hour if i do something rash in the next 45 minutes we that could we could be a hundred for five and you know and, and so perhaps that's not the time to counter-attack or it, it is the time to play with a little bit of prudence Jaiswal one Rohit naught Rohit plays defensively one without loss India <laughs> but you know there's a clue in the title test cricket there is a clue in the title it does exactly what it says in the tin it's test match cricket it's not meant to be easy you know, the, the ones that are playing the easy ones are playing the white ball whacking it for four overs bowling it for four overs and whacking it for 120 balls they're getting paid good money to go and play franchise cricket that's that's easier cricket this is test cricket where you have to think you have to be challenged you have to work out from a technical point of view you have to be worked out from a technical point of view Anderson in once again oh good delivery that was heading towards leg stump and maybe just straightened enough to hit the outside half of the bat in front of uh, Rohit's pads and what you're saying there is about experience and understanding I'd understand if England were going at eight and over with their bowling attack take Jimmy Anderson out because you've got two or three young spinners Zach Crowley's played 43 test matches Oli Pope's played 42 test matches. Joe Root, 100 and this is the 140th. Johnny Bairstow went to his 100th. Ben Stokes went to his 100th. This is an experienced batting unit who keeps getting, like Tudor mentioned, collapsing. Here is uh, Jimmy Anderson again, and uh, Rohit Sharma very, very solidly behind this one. Makes a big point of maintaining his defensive posture. One over gone, India replying to England's 218 all out. One without loss. 
and it is possible to define what experience means and I don't mean well uh, you are experienced if you have played 30 test matches experience is reading the game isn't it absolutely reading the game you could be in your second test match you know you could be playing your first test match walking out the middle and you go hold on if I've got 40 balls here it man if I get 20 yeah. runs 10 runs 15 runs but I've just witnessed three or four players walk out there who look as though they're under massive pressure and they're not you know Zach Crawley's got runs but the shot he played you know Ollie Pope shot he played Johnny Besto arguably you can say the innings he played you know they were so frantic and you just can't understand why they played that they, they play that way and be in such you know such mindset of you know the it is beg it, it does beg a belief sometimes when you see that but it puts pressure on everybody else here's Mark Wood and uh, that's pushed away defensively by Yashaz Vijaswal who by the way that single just made him the leading run scorer for India in any series against England with 656 runs passing Virat Kohli's 650, uh, 655 so he's one run to the good so uh, like a guy like Tom Hartley for example uh, I think that he could be easily defended yes he's caught on the boundary but he's he's got a plan he's hitting with the spin he's and he's he's looking to hit the ball for six and he's just caught on the boundary but that's pushed away uh, down uh, towards mid-wicket by Jaiswal and uh, he wants to come back for the second. Rohit says no. But then uh, you look at a top-order player like Ollie Pope and you think, what was he trying to do? What, what was the plan of running? I've just seen a still shot of it and, I, and honestly I try hard not to keep having a go and I'm sounding like an old man and you know, this long run-up I keep being you know, called upon that I keep coming off. <laughs> But I've seen a still shot of as Durrell is taking the ball onto the stumps. If I pitched a ball where Ollie's feet, Ollie Pope's feet were, the batter would have been playing. You, didn't you as well, Tudes, tall bowler. The batter would have been playing off the back foot. He was that far down a wicket. Here is Mark Wood again to Rohit Sharma. Wood goes tumbling. It's pushed away defensively by Rohit. So that's not stumped. That's run out. You talk about that Tom Hartley dismissal. And you're saying, all right, he had a game plan. I know the modern way is if the a fielder's out there, you take it on. But remember what Harmy says, this is test cricket. You need to bat, score your runs. Do that when the fielder's in. Can't just keep saying, I'm going to back myself to... Because then you're saying, I'm going to hit it in the middle of the bat all the time. Bat. Just bat. And this is the frustration that fans and people that love test cricket... Pushed away by uh, Rohit once again, straight back to Wood. See, I wasn't saying... I wasn't saying uh, that was a good shot from Hartley. I'm saying you could understand what he was trying to do. Yeah, he's trying to hit a six. He's yeah. trying to so hit a six. What, he's trying what to was Ollie Pope trying to do? I have no idea. He weren't trying to hit a boundary. He's just trying to hit one, but he's not picked it. And he and that's happened before. I think that happened in the last test match. He's I'm not, not sure picked he was his trying running. to hit it. I think he's just trying to nerdle it down to long on for one. But it's just before lunch. But again, just see him off. But again, looking at that still picture again, his right foot's in front of his left foot. His right foot's in front of his left foot. Wood in again, and oh, Rohit plays a beautiful back foot cover drive. Goodness me, what a shot for four. Just so Rohit Sharma. Just just what the Indian captain does. That probably his trademark shot. Yeah, and it'd be shot of the day. And uh, they're only 1.5 overs into the day, and already Rohit's played the shot of the day. Mark Wood just a touch under 149 in pace. And he's just used the pace, back foot punch, not overhit it, caressed it as he does right, Sharma, through the covers, beautiful shot. Yeah, it's fantastic. He is pleasing on the eye, isn't he, Row it? Beautifully. Slow motion, innit? Good balance. And good players, Harmy. They have time, don't they? Here's uh, Rohit Sharma once again, playing defensively off the back foot. Two overs gone, India six without loss. Jaiswal two, Rohit Sharma has four and I yet I, even as both of you speak I can hear Ben Stokes' voice in my head saying well we want them to score runs we want everyone to be positive we want to hit boundaries I want everybody to hit boundaries I want everybody to be positive but you identify moments Kuldeep Yadav has bowled th four balls above the eye line he's thrown it up three or four times being belted for six and even now teams around the world are going to go well 
I'll give you 12 runs. Go on, there you go. There you go, Zach Crawley. Go on, hit that one for six. Go on, hit it again for six. Bangs through the gear. I'm, I'm going to get you out if you're going to keep doing like that. He's bowled four balls above the island and took four wickets. We love the positivity. Listen, we're not going to... And what he's... They've put bums on seats. The kids are talking about it. Jimmy Anson in uh, Jaiswell defends no run. They enjoy watching this England side, but at times you just think just a little bit more common sense. And that's all, that's all we ask, you know, we're all for the positivity, but common sense, read the situation, the bowler, the situation, your captain's won the toss, first day of a test match, and you're, you're playing like a 2020. Technique, that, that technique, technique, that's it, that technique, decision making is one thing, the execution is another thing, but they've been let down by their techniques here, and a lot of them have been let down by their techniques. Jimmy Anderson in again, really good lead from uh, Yeshaz Vijayswal, it's uh, Sounds like a strange thing to say, but uh, that's, that's pitching fractionally on off, outside off stump and angling away and he's left it well. But it's just respect, isn't it? Jimmy Anderson's bowled a good ball. He just leaves it. It's, it's fine. That's okay. You can do that. You can play test cricket that way. Uh, yeah, like, I, and I, and I don't shot, want man. it that like me and Harmy, you, you know, old pros and we're just going on. This is no, we're all for the game's moved on and, and fantastic that it has. But sometimes you've got to think about it, boys. Jimmy Anderson in and uh, Jaiswell is forward. <laughs> Technically, they've not been good enough in that innings. And that is down to, uh, for me, that's, that's the scatter of the brain and the mind. That's mentally, they're, you know, they're, they've not been in this position for four test matches. They've been a lot better than what they have been in this test match, mentally, than what they have, sorry, in the first four test matches. And a lot of goodwill that they're going to have for the first four test matches is going to go out the window if, if they go you know, behind, the, uh, behind the game in these next 30 overs. But for me, a lot of that was scrambled mind, scrambled brain, and poor technique when it comes to their decision making. Three slips in the gully for Jimmy Anderson. Jai Swell is forward again, playing uh, defensively up to uh, mid off Ben Stokes Fields. So, so Jaiswal really is uh, the embodiment, uh, the epitome of what you're talking about. Because, you know, in his second unbeaten double hundred, <laughs> his second one, uh, well, there's a lot of talk about the fact that he equaled the world record for 12 sixes, the most sixes in a test innings. Yet, for the thing that I would probably remember longest is that, uh, is that he only scored 18 off his first 53 balls. I mean... If you, if you give yourself yourself time manage you can always catch up it's like in 2020 when um the universal boss jimmy anderson in jaiswell defends india six for none in reply to in england's 218 when chris gale at the start of a t20 innings he would always give himself time because he backed himself at the back end that just, he was going to play catch up just butler butler's the same you know these quality world-class players will give themselves time and that's what he's done he's thinking i'm in I know the wicket, I know the bowler, I know what it's going to do, I'm now going to punish you. You just can't keep going and say, I'm going to take you, I'm going to take you, I'm going to take you, I'm going to take names. That's well and good. Assess the wicket. Certain wickets you can bully bowlers, but not all the time. Here is uh, Jimmy Anderson in once again, and uh, that is driven straight back to the bowler, and uh, there's no run. Just before you go, if it, actually, uh, I think, I don't know, if it, I think we've got another over. Um, there are there is there is a lot that has changed about test cricket over 150 years in fact there's more that has changed than hasn't changed but some things haven't changed one is the hardness of the ball one is the dampness in the wicket uh, the freshness of bowlers they don't change they don't change and also the, the added you know pressure of we put the ball in the right place for long enough and then it's up to you to withstand pressure and unfortunately for me in the first half of this game England just couldn't handle the pressure of you know, the, the situation of a bowler bowling you know, some decent balls. Go hard. If it doesn't work, go harder, unfortunately. Well, they'll be going hard and going home if they, if they don't win this session. Not quite yet. Wood is in to Rohit Sharma again and pushes that out towards uh, mid-wicket. Straight to the fielder and there's no run. 4,950 feet above sea level. This stadium. It's, uh, it's quite a long way. Up, isn't it? Yeah. So if you hit it, it's going to stay here, isn't it? But at the moment, England didn't show that with a bat. As you say, you always got to see when both teams bat on it how the pitch is, and we just have to see how India go about it. That was 152 kilometres an hour. I think that's the quickest ball of the series. 
from Markwood. And uh, it's, uh, Rohit Sharma, they always say about him, is that he's got ec more time than, than most. Even he looked momentarily uh, not discomforted, but, uh, well, just moving a little quicker than otherwise required. Six for naught, another defensive shot from Rohit. He remains on four. It's just his movement, his movement, you know, his trigger, which gets him ready for the ball, just gives himself time, you know. Mark Wood is bowling extremely quick. That last ball, 147. The ball before 152. He's bowling with express pace. But as I said, I remember Mark Worry saying this pace doesn't always get you wickets. You've got to be able to do something with the ball. It's got to be able to move off the straight. If it's going gun barrel straight now to these guys. They'll just hit through the line and you'll be cadden fodder. Fourth over of India's reply to England's 218 all out. And uh, so far. Rohit Sharma and uh, Yashasvi Jaiswal largely untroubled. Wood in once again and uh, Rohit's feet are moving nicely. Indian captain now when he's not playing well like many batsmen his feet don't move very very well but he's got stepped into the line there played defensively. Uh, he, he's very very simple in technique. Yeah, he goes forward or, or he goes all the way back and his hands very much away from his body. I think that's why he's susceptible for the ball coming back onto off stump but when he's on and when he's in in motion Mark Wood's bowling both 150 mile an hour you'd think he was bowling 120 mile you were thinking 120 kilometers an hour and you know Woody's bowling quickly here and the two of the last three have just hit the middle of the bat no real movement forward playing from the crease but in absolute total control six for none here is uh, Mark Wood once again short ball hooked away by Rohit Sharma for six over backward square leg well it is a profitable shot for him, but he does get out to it more often than many other openers. But he, he keeps playing it, and so Wood was right to try him to take him on. And uh, well, Rohit Sharma has replied emphatically. Yeah, good bouncer, good bouncer, well directed. Could it have been a touch higher if you want to be critical? Possibly not. Right area, but Rohit Sharma is not thinking of anything other than hitting this into the stand. Was it five five thousand feet above sea level? Ball goes a bit higher. <laughs> ball goes a bit further when it goes higher Robert Sharma's not trying to keep that down he's trying to put that in the Barmy army so Mark Wood can bowl 151 kilometers an hour if he wants oh what a back foot cover drive from Robert Sharma that's even better than the one he played in Mark Wood's previous over that has raced away for four but he's somehow he's played that like Tom Moody like he's six foot eight not six foot yeah he got on the top of his toes here he ride the bounce it had a little bit of bounce it's a beautiful back, back drive, back cut. It opens up the blade. Races to the boundary as quick as it came onto the bat. It went quicker to the boundary. Ten off the last two balls. And he's shown his intent. Two magnificent shots from Rohit Sharma. Followed by another, which is a absolutely orthodox perfect forward defensive push get past that <laughs> that's exactly right India four overs gone 16 without loss in reply to England's disappointing 218 all out Zach Crawley made 79 and uh, there were three lots of 20 odd from uh, Ben Duckett Joe Root and Ben Folks but otherwise very disappointing brilliant bowling Kuldeep Yadav, left arm wrist spinner, 5 for 72, and Bravi Ashwin in his 100th test, 4 for 51. It's all changed in the commentary box. The next 20 minutes, John Norman will uh, talk you through the ball by ball alongside Jared Kimber and Gareth Batty. Thought Neil Manthorpe's going to stay on for the rest of the day. He's so fired up following in from Big Tudes. He's like the, the captain at mid on, just poking the fast bowler. Go again! Go again! <laughs> you got one more in you. Get it up! Make him smell it! <laughs> It was like watching a kids under eight football match, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Parents were going more bonkers than the kids out there. Shout out to Penge FC, who'll be playing this weekend. Franklin in the under sevens. As uh, Jimmy Anderson is back for uh, his third over. And uh, Jai Swal, what a series he has had. Two from 11, just pops this out to, to the offside. No run. 16 without loss in India. And it's been a bit of a torturous day for England. Looked at so bright, didn't it, earlier this morning when they won the toss, decided to bat. 60 on the board with uh, Duckett and Crawley together again. 
100 runs before lunch, just two wickets falling. But it all went horribly wrong after that. Anderson again draws the uh, forward defensive from Jaiswal, who is watchful against Anderson. I heard Neil Manthorpe uh, picking out a stat in terms of uh, how he went about things at the start of his, I think the first of his two double centuries, or was it the second? Either way, he was watchful at the start and then became more expansive as the innings progressed. So the second one, wasn't he? Wasn't he 17 or 50 balls or something in, in, in the second one, I think? Yeah, and I think the first one he was, I think he hit 17 from Jimmy Anderson's 67 deliveries that came his way. It was fuller and uh, no timing as Chase Wall can't beat mid off on the drive. I think what I've liked about him is he's been watchable in different ways. So the first time he, Anderson was troubling him, so he just went, I'm not going to score off Anderson. The next time he was playing, he thought the spinners were giving him some trouble, so he went completely after Anderson. So he's, yeah, he's got multiple methods within his batting already, which is, you know, for someone so young, that's, that's one of the things you try and teach, isn't it? Bat. Not you, but, you know, batting coaches. He's batting outside of his crease is uh, Jay Swal as Anderson is in and on the back foot he's punching this ball square of the wicket and there's a chase on for Tom Hartley running around from points and Jay Swal will come back for a couple the score 20 without loss India all of this after England were bowled out inside 58 overs for just 218 subsiding alarmingly a bit like those cliff faces that you see with the house perched on the edge of it uh, England were at one stage 137 for two, they were 175 for three. They were bowled out for 218. They lost three wickets with the score on 175. They lost two wickets with the score on 183. And they lost two wickets with the score on 218. And if you have a look through those uh, dismissals, Ben Folks can feel his uh, dismissal was unfortunate as Jay Swile is forward and defending against Anderson. And apart from that, I'm not sure anybody else can. Gareth Batty, how are you doing? Very good. Sorry, I was mulling over the comment that uh, Gerard just put through. I, uh, to sum up Jairus Wall and how he goes about Anderson here, or he might go against Wood, he's got a skill set, he's got his base, and then he's giving himself time to make decisions on how he marries up his skill set to beat his opponent as opposed to going I'm a one trick pony this is how I did it last time this is how I'm going to do it again uh, he can trust his defence he can trust his technique and then he'll play a situation there is situational play which is the next uh, involvement of this England team last ball of Anderson's third over and uh, Chase Wild again comes onto the front foot and plays this pleasantly enough up to mid off no run he remains four not out in the score in the 18 without loss they trail by exactly 200 Rohit Sharma is the 10th Indian batter to score 1,000 runs as captain. It's incredible. We were talking about off air how few tests he's actually played, right? 59th is, is uh, you know, and part of it is because he was a middle order player and they used to have some pretty good handy middle order players. Yeah, it's a wonderful and it, it, it was, he got Sorry, pigeonholed in white ball, didn't it? Sorry, historic moment here where the theme tune from Friends appears to be being played at a cricket ground for the first time in the history of test cricket. No, that can't be. What a, surely in New Zealand. Shall we get Gary Morgan on that? <laughs> I want to jump out the window and get in that fountain down there. I don't know about you boys. <laughs> <laughs> you do what you want to do. <laughs> Sorry, anyway, you were saying. The DJ has been amazing today. Amazing um, is one way of describing it. Go on, anyway, what are you saying, Bats? Uh, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> Where were <laughs> what were we talking about? What were you talking Rohit about? Rohit Sharma. Oh, Rohit Sharma. Yeah, the, the, cricket, the lack of test matches he's played in, in comparable to where we thought he would be at. But it is that glut of wonderful players they had in the middle order. And he did get pigeonholed into a white ball player. Um, and, he, you know, he, because he was so good and he got, and he got like three double hundreds in ODI cricket or white ball cricket before really he got a run in the test side. He'd been in and out a little bit. I mean, he had a run. He just didn't make any runs. You know, uh, pardon the pun. But So I, I, think, I think you're right. He came in and it was probably... If he comes into a weaker batting lineup, he probably plays a little bit more. Have you seen these averages for each England batter? They go down as the order. No, they don't. Oh, no, Roots. Yeah, no, they do. No, That's Stokes, how they bat. Stokes and Folks are level. OK, well, apart Ooh. from Stokes and Folks, who are exactly the same. I'll, I'll explain what I'm talking about in a second for, uh, for listeners on TalkSport 2. As uh, Mark Wood is in to Rohit Sharma, who uh, pushes this ball to... Uh, 
extra cover. No run. He's 14. It's just showing a list of the uh, averages for the series for each England player. And essentially, it starts with Crawley at number one and then essentially goes down the order, in the order, that England back. Before you go there, you could almost say that the, the numbers from a batting point of view actually do get lower because it's harder to come into first spin on, a, on turning surfaces or even a reverse swing ball. It's tough to get in on these surfaces at times. It is, but I think Joe Root and Vera Coley probably well, certainly top scored uh, and they didn't open in tours gone by as uh, Sharma again is forward defensive, no run. Against Australia, the two of the best batters were Jadeja and Aksha coming in at seven and eight against right. that softball. I think that I think England's biggest problem is they haven't had anyone scoring against the softball. And I'm not saying it's not difficult because it is, yeah. especially if you're going hard the way that they do. But I, I think that's the biggest issue because, I, I mean, have a look at these averages. So look at the India one and Jay Wild is opening up. He is the... Uh, does have the highest average just like Zach Crawley or almost double he's averaging at 94 but you see 48 for Gill he's at three 48 for Khan small sample size of course pitched up and driven straight down the ground by Sharma it's a, a slow jog by the fielder at mid on no chasing that beautiful shot from Sharma India move to 22 without loss oh, beautiful Rohit Sharma balance class but time to burn and just leans on a on a quickish ball from Mark Wood full of length on the stumps and just leans and pushes it through mid on classical effortless almost a bit nonchalant from Rohit Sharma beautiful beautiful shot through long off. Mark Wood is in again he's uh, right arm over the wicket with two slips in place a fraction more width and Rohit's on his toes doesn't quite time this but he'll certainly pick up two um, with uh, Ben Stokes Having to uh, turn and chase uh, to cover. 24 without loss, India. And Rohit is 20 from 17. I'd be slightly concerned, England, as things stand. Yeah, certainly England's new ball, totally different story to the India new ball this morning. And quite happy to go on record. And I don't think India bowled particularly well with it. I don't think they made the most use of it when the ball was swinging around. And it was genuine swing that we saw for a good... 14, 15 overs, there is no lateral movement really from an England perspective because the sun has come out, that dankness, that little bit of dew has gone. The pitch has lost all its sort of damp coloration. It's now just a flat, good cricket surface. The kind of conditions where you'd hope to have more than 218 on the board. Still do have quite a lot of time in the day. England bowled out inside 58 overs. England already trying to get the ball changed. That might have been after Rohit slammed it into row X before. I remember playing in a club game once in the first ball of the game. It was a, a full toss on, on the leg stump and the guy I was opening with hit it for four and it smashed into a concrete and just took a big chunk out of the ball. And the bowling team went to the umpire and said, what are you going to do about this? And, and the umpire said, stop bowling rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> End of discussion. <laughs> There's been a few instances of uh, the ball getting hit somewhere near concrete. I think, I think it was uh, the Zimbabwe bowling coach now, Steve Kirby, that got uh, himself in a bit of trouble, went to the guttering to pick the ball out and accidentally scraped the ball on, uh, on some tarmac as he was picking it up, trying to get the ball to do something. Mick Lewis did that, the uh, former Australian player, and was caught on camera doing it and missed a couple of games. Got, got a little bit of trouble. Famous mm. for the... Uh, it was expensive spell in ODI cricket, wasn't it, Mick Lewis? It, 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 Mick Until Lu recently. Did yeah. somebody... Oh, a few yeah, people have gone did, past yeah. him now, haven't they? But M Mick Lewis had an incredible career because he played about eight games and in one he had to defend six in the last over against New Zealand and did it. And then the other one <laughs> was the most expensive uh, figures that anyone had ever had. I think he's bowling coach at Essex now, is that right? Is he? I know I he, he was with Victoria for a while. I, I wasn't sure if he was over here. He was, he was a great bowler, late late developer. I think he started professional cricket, 26. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's at Essex. I'm pretty sure. We do still have 24 overs remaining today. Yet to see any spin from England. And uh, all 10 wickets went the way of spin when India were bowling. So it's just a matter of time as this length delivery, which is too wide for Rohit to get involved in, lets it go through. 24 without loss. They did, but the new ball was when India was at its absolute best as a bowling side, despite what the, the scoreboard may, may show. 
And also, I think looking at this England bowling attack, they, the seam is going to have to take one or two to help out the spinners. I think that's the misconception sometimes going from England, from traditional conditions we know that all of a sudden we just throw the ball to the spinners. Historical wins, England have always done very well with their seam attack. It would have been Goffey Craig right back in the day and then it, it went through and <coughs> Harmy and Fred would have had their moments and so on and so forth. The seamers have to make it easier for the spinners because whether we like it or not, they're not quite as good as the Indian spinners. Stokes has put another slip in place and a row hit trying to get on the front foot pushes this out to backward point at no run. Um, Australia with, uh, and South Africa have shown that at times as well and I think sometimes when Australia's gone all in on, on under quality spin you're like well with all due respect to Gavin Robertson how many tests is he going to out bowl you know Harbhajan Singh like he might get one good test in him but it's very very hard and you know I, I think I like the idea of England picking the kinds of spinners they were looking for um, rather than just picking, you know, regular spinners who are playing in county cricket. Like, I get that. But also, you have to understand, you have to have good plans for your seamers and you have to keep backing them. And you have to have a number eight that's going to get you a few more runs than Hartley. I'm not having Hartley's badge, but he's not a test number eight. I think he's a really nice cricketer, I really do, and I'm not having his badge at all, but he's a nine at best. He's, he's a nine at the moment, isn't he's he? But he's quite young, yeah. You expect runs at eight. He's, he's, he's one of those guys who makes runs, but it's the same shot over and over again. International cricket, they're just going to put that fielder out all the time, aren't they? He's going to hit everything wide of long on. Jay Swell facing up the start of Anderson's fourth over and lets this ball go through to folks. And uh, the score remains in near 24 without loss. You know what it's like in county cricket. You, you come across him twice in county cricket, and the first time he slaps a couple wide of mid on, you go, oh, he's just slogging a few today. And then you don't play him for 10 weeks, and he comes back and does it again. You go, oh, now we remember. As in, in test cricket, like everyone in the world now knows exactly where Tom Hartley's going to hit the ball. I think you've also got to look at it. If you average, say, 20 in first class cricket, you're going to struggle to average 25, 30, which number eight needs to average in test cricket. Yeah, and generally, if you if you bat seven or lower in first class cricket, those numbers don't hold up as well. Top order numbers do. Anderson again, straighter on the pads. This is clipped away, and uh, India will take a single through Jay Swale. It moves to five. The score, 24 without loss. Do you remember when South Africa tried to replace uh, Callis with Ryan McLaren and Robin Peterson? Both of those guys are good number seven, number eights in first class cricket, but they're really number eight, number nine in, in test cricket. And, you know, we see that all the time. You know, you get someone like Ashton Agar makes some runs in first class cricket, and everyone wants him to play for Australia. Well, and he's not going to be a number seven when he plays for Australia. He's going to have to go down a little bit. It's just a little bit tougher um, in, in, in those environments. And, and it's worth remembering. And I think Hartley still shows some, some promise, but he's a long way from a developed number eight anyway. Sharma readies himself, this is down the leg side, there's a, a shout for court behind and given! Umpire Joe Wilson raises the finger, Rohit Sharma shakes his head and has he reviewed? I think he has, he feels the Indian skipper that he hasn't touched the ball, so we'll go upstairs to find out. He might have reviewed that before it was given. <laughs> 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 because Doc Rowe took so long to give it and, and yeah, Rowe was always coming down and going well, what are you talking about it's not out the England the English reaction says they, they have no doubt here I thought it sounded really good originally but it doesn't look like he's anywhere near it and it looks like he's just flicked the pad yeah. I, I think as he's coming down to strike the ball he hits his bat on the pad a long, bef long way before the ball and then the pad then the ball hits the thigh pad and deviates after. So there's almost yeah. two noises, if that makes sense. Well, that cheer will tell you. Flat line as the ball passes the bat. The noise came as the ball hit the uh, flap of the pad. And Joe Wilson has to overturn this decision. You know, they say the bat, the batter always knows. But of course, we had Bairstow about an hour ago, who was absolutely adamant walking down the wicket going, I hit the ground, I hit the ground. He missed the ground by a mile. Yeah. I think he might have hit the ground and hit the ball. That's two things, isn't it? Best though. Yeah. No, he didn't no, hit the ground. We saw the... Hit the ground. <laughs> he no. said that's what had happened. But in that case, uh, Rohit was right. He was never worried. You, you could actually say wait. He, he was waiting to do the review for Billy Doctor to eventually give that out. And this is again pitched up on the pads of Rohit Sharma, who clips the ball to Tom Hartley in mid-wicket. No run. 25 without loss. India. Either way, we talk about moral victories in sport. 
particularly in cricket. James Anderson now is into his fourth over. He's only gone for four runs. It's doing the hard yards. You might get lucky with that one. It's not your ball that you wanted to bowl, but because of the pressure you've built up, you might get lucky with a little feather down the leg side. That is what we see from England from a bowling attack more often than not. And that's what we want to see from our batters. Just be prepared to do the hard work a bit longer. Rohit still going at a runner ball is forward and playing it defensively straight down the track fielded at straight mid wicket no run 25 without loss at India after bowling England out for 218 we've been talking a lot about there did you have you read out that stat about average first innings no I need to you're right um, because we've spoken about this throughout the series Jemison and I think it was essentially England's first innings average length of 72 overs coming into the last test match I think either way they obviously that's gone down on an average because they were bowled out for 57.4 but when you list it alongside the average length of every other test playing nation fraction fuller from Anderson draws Rohit forward pushed out to cover no run I think is it only Afghanistan who are averaging less. Yeah, um, so yeah, Gemma from Crickford sent this through. So Sri Lanka's at 110 overs. They're, they bat the longest in the last two years. And you've got Pakistan, Australia, just over 100, and India is 98. All the way down to England at 73, Afghanistan at 52. Uh, having watched them bat against um, Ireland the other day, I'm surprised it's that high at times. Um, and South Africa's 74, and if you consider it, South Africa's batting lineup has been horrendous. And they're still averaging an extra over out in the field than England, which just tells you how many runs England is scoring in that short period of time. Uh, but this is, um, this is the first innings. Most of England's good batting in basketball has been in their second innings, not in their first innings. Which is, uh, I suppose, if you, if you put it into words, you're almost saying it's reactionary, not uh, actionary, if that makes sense. You get the score on the board was always the old school way, and then you control the game. They're almost kind of saying, let's get the game going to last innings and we'll see where it is that we're going to win it. Well, it's a one day style, isn't it? Of, of wanting to know what the total is. Change of bowling for uh, England, and Tom Hartley's going to bowl left arm around the wicket to the left handed Jaiswal, who reaches forward and plays it out into the uh, offside, and there's no run. So, yeah, change of bowling, change of commentator. Andrew McKenna in the box now alongside Gareth Batty and Jared Kimber. Yeah, I like this uh, around the wicket, Tom Hartley with a new ball, so there's a bit of lack. It might just skid and bring the outside edge into play for Jaiswal. Jaiswal's got five from 20, he waits. And it's across him by Hartley from the crease he plays to uh, mid-off and Anderson, there's no run. I think also Jaiswal, if you bowl it outside or stump, will just punish you from point to, uh, to cover, which not all left-handers would, would, would be attacking in that way, a lot would be looking to go to the leg side. Hartley, left arm around, grips in the surface, takes Jaiswal on the pad, threatens to ricochet up off the gloves, doesn't. And it's a stifled appeal, no run. Also, th don't think left hand, left arm spinners do this enough to left handers. Brings tram lines, brings LBW stumps in play. You a you're asking a question just from doing this straight away. This whole misconception get over the wicket, chuck it right outside of stump. No, no not buying it. In goes Hartley then, left arm around. It's almost French cricket from Giles Hall, both toes pointing down the pitch as he plays it back to the bowler. It's all, there's also a technical element of it. If you're a left-arm finger spinner, you probably spend about 75% of your time bowling around the wicket anyway. So you should be better at that than you would be over the wicket. And, it, and then you can explain hips and rotations and everything, but there's a reason why finger spinners like coming around the wicket. Hartley's doing so for the fifth time in the over, and Jaiswal is coming forward, clips it into the onside. Stokes will do the fielding, no run. Keep it very simple. From where you are on the crease, which is in the box in the corner of the return, if you get off stump, naturally your wrist position is square and you're going to take the outside edge. As soon as you ball straighter and leg uh, stump, you get more over the ball, so you get more overspin, which brings you short legging. So naturally you're attacking more by just bowling around the wicket because you're getting positions. In goes Hartley and Jaisal clips this down to the long on fielder who is Ben Duckett. And it will be a single, so one run from the over. 26 of that loss, India, replying to England's 218 all out. India 26 without loss after 8, Rohit's got 20 from 23, Jaisal 6 from 25, it is TalkSport 2 exclusive Test Match Cricket. Don't forget of course there is um, live football coming up this evening, it's the Europa League round of 16, early kickoff for you Liverpool fans. Away to Sparta Prague, that's on TalkSport 2, 
5.45 and Freiburg West Ham is on TalkSport at 8 o'clock. So one early, one late. So get the app and the DAB radio fired up for later on. Also, a happy World Book Day to all the uh, parents out there who had to come up with last-minute um, <laughs> costumes. costumes and everything. I think uh, Bats has got a couple of witches. Room on the broom. Uh, oh, room on the broom, great. Julia Donaldson. Absolutely. <laughs> cool. Blimey, how many of her books have I read down the years? I'm I've still memorial. I've still got half of them in my head. I Do you just remember them? Are you, you're too old for World Book Day oh, costumes? No, no, no. no they're, they're still doing it. Um, it was... It was kind of option. It was uniform or World Book Day dress up. So I think I'm pretty sure our two would have gone uniform. <laughs> uh, it's going to be double spin from England, by the way. As Bashir is going to uh, bowl his off spin now, comes in and bowls, and it's nicely flighted up. Jaisal hits down towards Anderson at mid on, and there's no run. Yeah, again, I. I I don't, I don't want to say Jaisal has a weakness against finger spin because I think he averages 100 against off spin and, and left arm finger spin in first class at Test cricket so far. But I like it when you're bowling it at the stumps. Bashir accelerates, bowls around the wicket, brings Jaisal forward, backs the ball and no run. The minute it's outside off stump, he looks incredible. But if you can just get it under his eye around that knee roll a little bit more, I'm not saying that there's a weakness, but I think he can control him a little bit better. And he'll have to play the other big shots on the leg side then. Bashir is in, Joshua comes down the pitch and launches him over long off for six. Lands that ten rows back in the stands. Joshua was just waiting and waiting, then sounded the bugle, doubles his score in one shot. He goes to 12 out of India's 32 without loss. Two balls on the stumps, the first ball he sees outside off stump, he doesn't even wait to get to the pitch of it, he just runs down it and frees his hands up and swings through it. Not sure he hit it the way he wanted to as well as, as far as it went. But again, the minute it's outside of his eye line, he looks like a completely di different player against the spin. They've got to keep the ball sort of middle, middle and leg against him. Don't give him that free swing. Right. Bashir just has a conference with captain. And now settles back in, comes again. He's on the stumps. Jaisal is immediately defending, pushing out on the offside. No run. Yeah, you can tell that he's, he's assessing the risk. As soon as it's bringing stumps into play, he's worried about front pad, he's worried about getting bowled. You can see how he places his front foot, his toes pointing down the wicket, not to sort of mid off an extra cover. Bashir gives him some width, this time he lashes it over extra cover again, and it's six more landing in the netting between the advertising screen and the stands. And he's almost, it's almost like he's batting to your commentary at the moment, <laughs> boys, because Jared's right, the ones on the stumps are straight. As soon as there's any whip, they get lashed. 6.6 six the last three balls. I mean, that's, that's a poor delivery, really. Uh, there's, I don't think there's any reason at this stage for the off spinner to be that wide. It's length, but the shot is ridiculous. He's down on one knee, and he's slog cover driven this uh, for six. It, it's just miraculous. Bashir is in. This one's on the stumps, and this one's disappeared as well. Back over the bowler's head. 6-0, six, 6-6. Six, six. And Bashir's first over goes for 18. India of 44 without loss, replying to England's 218 all out. Jaiswal's got 24 from 31. Rohit's got 20 from 23. Yeah, tough start for Bashir. It's that old thing. If you've got an advantage, and his advantage is he's six foot plenty, he's a very tall man. It's very difficult for him to get it up out of his hand to make it drop before. Uh, or to make it drop enough to deceive the batter. He's got to be a little bit more direct and then use your body bow against your body to, to bring that ball back on length, to get the drop, to get that extra bit of fizz on it. As everybody, you first over, you feel your way, and this is where Indian are dynamite. The Indian players, they don't care who it is. If you miss, they're going to take you and they're going to put you under pressure, which is what England have done for large parts of the series, but in the last three or four innings with the bat, they've not been able to consistently do it and they've not been able to put the bowlers under pressure. This is really tough times for Bashir. He's not done a huge amount wrong, but it's not quite where he wants it. And this is where it becomes difficult in the subcontinent. Well, England have got the ball back, um, but clearly has picked up what's some, left of it. <laughs> some muck on it or whatever, because Anderson is currently um, talking to both umpires and saying, we've got this problem, I need to clean it. This is what I'm doing. So he's showing it. This, this is a, a replaced ball already. And the fourth umpire is loitering around saying, well, do we need to change it again? Jimmy with his Wolverine fingernail. Yes. 
<laughs> We've got some mud in the seam. May I clean it, sir? Of course you may. He kind of wrapped his trousers around that. Did you see what he was doing? He, he had about three different movements going on. The umpires didn't even know. It, it was like the three-card Monty. Yeah, they weren't looked, sure what they were looking at. Looked like it had got wet, didn't it? Yeah. Right, Hartley to start his second over. He's bolt a ball that's slightly short of a length that sits up the row. It's able to work into the leg side and they will take a single 45 without loss, India. As it is World Book Day and he's not in the room and therefore I'm not soliciting it uh, f for um, friendship or whatever. If you haven't read Harmy's book, please do. It's a really good one. Um, Hartley goes in and it will be Jaiswalt pushing back to the bowler. Fields well in his follow through, diving away to his left hand side. Obviously, um, Hummy had a lot of issues earlier in his career with touring and being away from home. It's a fabulous, fabulous book. It's quite heartbreaking at times. Opens up in Port Elizabeth in the winter of 2004 2005, which was a tour that I was on. We were commentating on on Talk Sport and it. It gets you every time. Hartley is in, left arm around, bringing Jaiswell forward, just dropping it into the offside. And uh, they take a single, 46 without loss. So the big fellow would have been number one in the world at that point. 2000, end of end of the West Indies tour, three stroke four, wasn't it? Yes. So, yeah. So he would have been number one in the world, yeah. Pretty much. Uh, the opening line of the book, and I won't give it all away, because seriously, go and read it, is, I'm standing at the end of my mark, what on earth am I doing here? And what, what gets me is that I was in a commentary box about 20 yards away from him and I had no idea how bad he was really feeling about the whole thing. It just breaks your heart. I got one better than you. I was mixing his drinks in the chain room. <laughs> I didn't have a scuba. Well, there you go. Hartley left arm around to uh, row it. My goodness, that bat looks a million miles wide as he comes forward and plays it defensively out on the offside. No run. And some good cricket books, actually. As it's World Book Day, go and find yourself a cricket book. Rohit waits for Hartley, and he's now on his way in. Bowls left arm around the wicket. Again, big stride forward from Rohit, just playing defensively, no run. What's your favourite cricket book, Maka? Test Cricket by Jared Kimber. Well, it, it, <laughs> available in all good bookshops and some nice bad ones. Nice plug, nice plug. <laughs> um... Yeah, Manners has got a few too. I've got a couple of Manners at home. Manners has got a book about drinking beer to get fit. Has he? Hang on a minute. Hartley is uh, in around the wickets and it's clipped onto the leg side by uh, Rohit and they will take a single. End of 10 overs here on TalkSport 247 with us. No, 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 you're not going anywhere <laughs> until you've and explained I that. I was halfway through. I think it's called The Beer Drinker's Guide to Losing Weight. And I've tried to get him to explain it to me three or four times. I'm not buying it. But that's only because I'm friends with Steve Harvinson. I was going to say, Harmy's just walked in to take over the co-coms and immediately turned around and walked out again to go and find manners to try and explain that. Well, that's, that's sensational news, Harmy. I don't think I've read the index on that book. I've read the first, I think I've read the first part, but then the, the losing weight part just it didn't... Uh, or the losing weight chapter. I think I was quite good at the drinking part, but I wasn't very good at the losing weight part. Well, here we go. Bashir's first over went for 18. India 47 without loss after 10 overs. Replying to England's 218 all out. Bashir's got the mountains behind him. And runs away from the commentary box end. Past umpire Joel Wilson comes in at this quite a cute angle. And Rohit Sharma just covers it up and plays it quietly out on the leg side and there is no run. Steve Harmson has moved in as has Alex Tudor. The boys watch Bashir as he comes in once again. Tex Rohit on the pad, loops up on the leg side. Ollie Pope claims the catch but it's pad all the way gentlemen. Yeah good turn from Bashir. Savage in that first over. Some good shots. The second one especially from Jaiswell but there at Rohit. It was a good turn there. A little bit of bounce. Nowhere near the bat though. Bashir is in. Rohit's using his feet. Gets in a tangle. No, Ollie Pope's caught that before it's hit the deck. Joel Wilson immediately shakes his head. There was a lot of moving parts there. It came off the body, looped up. And England aren't going to have a conversation with regards to a review, so they're obviously fairly happy with things, but the re replay of that in a moment will be interesting. Fourth ball of the over is from Bashir. Oh, no. 
Rohit waits and then turns it around the corner to Hartley at deep backward square leg. No run. Yeah, that looked. It, I thought that might have been close because the ball uh, went up in the air. Uh, I thought it might have gone off the glove, but it's just clipped. I think the the thigh pad and gone at the top of the thigh pad, pointy bit, which has made it go up in the air. I thought straight away when it looped up like that, that must have come off the glove, but it looked as if it hit the top point part of the uh, of the thigh guard. Nice grab by Pope, if nothing else. Bashir is in once again. Rohit turns on the leg side. Stokes will field at mid-wicket, no run. We've seen some good catching, actually, in this series under the helmet. Pope himself's had a couple of good ones. Safraz has done a decent job in there as well for India in the last couple of matches. Of course, if you weren't with us much earlier in the day, um, Safraz took cut one off of uh, Crawley, off the keeper's gloves. It was given not out, India didn't review it, and it was touched by Crawley. Bashir goes into bowl the final ball of his second over, and it's just played out quietly by Rohit, and he'll be hoping to bowl at Rohit a bit more often. First over against Jaiswal, went for 18, second over against Bashir, a maiden. It's a good job that wasn't referred and got out, because it would have been a hell of a lot worse for England. If it was out, is that Crawley the only batter to go past 30? I think it was, yeah, only batter to go past 30, and he's 79. So, you know, it was, that was a little bit of luck that England England had. 100 for one, turned into 218 all out, and that was with burning all three reviews as well. So it was eventful first half of today. And it looks like Jaiswal's come out and continue where he's left off at this last three test, four test matches. Hartley in, Jaiswal is running at him. <laughs> Takes him all along the floor, down to duck it at deep long on for a single 48 without loss, Jude. Well, when he's playing his shots, and obviously he's playing in the form of his life, but when he's playing his ag aggressive shot, he's just doing it with control. And that's the, been the difference. You, you know, when they play their positive shots, India, they play it, but they play it with control. Sometimes, with the England batting lineup, can't say the same. Hartley. Left arm around to uh, Rohit, who has a big swing across the line. Now England are appealing for a court behind. Folks is saying, hit that, hit that. He definitely wants England to review. Joe Root's agreeing. And Ben Stokes, having consulted with Zach Crawley as well, is going to review this. So, England think there is a feather on this from Rohit. Rohit's walking down to meet Jaiswal. Doesn't look overly concerned, but Rohit very rarely does. No, he's, he's not exactly... He's never really looking flustered, but you know, he had a smile on his face. There was a noise. I wasn't sure if there was a bat in the ground. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Harmy. we we'll see it here. All right, first free play. It's not bat on ground, he's missed the ground. Yeah. It can only be bat on ball. Mm. And the picture is so blurred on the replay, we're not going to see anything there. So we're going to need the technology of Ultra Edge and the waveform. This will determine whether England have got a breakthrough or not. England need this. England desperately need this. Here we go. No spike. Flat line has to no. Go past the bed. It's wind. So Must be the... The Himalayan breeze. Must, must be the bat handle that made the click noise there, Army. Yeah, it did seem. It did. I did hear a noise. I just wonder if his front foot is scratched on the on the on the mm. ground where it's, it's put Ben folks off. Because I, I thought I heard a noise. Sometimes when it's that close, you do you know, feel as though you hear something and there's nothing there. But England have lost another review. Not been a great day for England reviews, to be fair. Keeper and slip were adamant that there was something there. Nothing as far as the officials are concerned. Here's Hartley then. It's uh, Rohit coming forward, playing back to the bowler defensively. No run. Good bowling though. It's something happening, which is good. Yeah, it is. It's something happening, which is good for England. Rohit's playing some shots. Jaiswal's not going to die wondering. This is good for England. England need the breakthrough. 40 DRSs for England this series. 23 lost. Hartley in. Rohit turns round the corner off of the back foot out towards mid-wicket and Zach Crawley can't get there. It was really well timed, there was no, no massive power in the shot, it was all timing. He whips it away onto the leg side and the Indian 50 is up, it's second of 11 overs and four balls, 52 without loss, chasing England's 218 all out. The one thing you'll get when Rohit Sharma's batting is timing and he's timing the absolute pants off that. Fantastic shot, just rocking back on the back foot. Hitting it on the leg side, Zach Crawley, T 
tearing after it, but no chance. Hartley in once again, bringing Rohit forward, just plays it gently into the offside. And there is no run. Hartley continuing with the left arm around angle. I don't know if it's the broadcaster in me, but my mind's already turning to who are England putting up at the end of the day. It may need a Jeet and Patel spell of positivity. Hartley in. Oh, Rowett's taking him into the leg side on this occasion. It'll land 15 metres inside the road, bounce a couple of times, and it's four more to Rohit, four more to India. Rohit's got 30, India 56 without loss after 12 overs here on TalkSport 2 and the TalkSport Cricket YouTube channel. Now, this is, this is good cricket for me. You know, this is what I was talking about, you know, when, when we was on just before the break, Army, with Manners, and I was just saying, you know, I'm all for the positivity in that, but when you've got fielders out there and you're still backing yourself to, to go after it, row it there, he knows mid-offs up, mid, I mean mid-ons up, just going to get to the pitch of it and they're just going to elevate it and lift it. And it's going to go for, that's good cricket shot. Then you're putting the bowler under pressure, then Ben Stokes is like, ooh, do I put a man back? No, I want him to go again. That's fine, I may go again, and that's how you get your runs, and that's how you eke away at this uh, low England total of 218. But Jude, you've just seen Tom Hartley throw the ball above the eye line, and Robert Sharma is within his ship, and still being positive, has comfortably hit the ball over the top for four. Bashir to stop the new over, is around the wicket to Jaisal, tries to turn it, through uh, square leg, can't beat Mark Wood, no run. Kuldeep Yadav threw four balls above the eye line, and I think two or three of our batters were facing the opposite way by the time they were dismissed, losing their ship. That's our problem. Bashir around the wicket, leg side is. Jaiswal gets a touch on this to turn it to uh, deep square. They will take a single 57 without loss, Jaiswal 27. Yeah, difference in uh, a balance and poise at the crease. And you say, you know, um, Ben Duckett, you know, just lost his shape and it slid off the back. No no base when he was hitting that to give himself the conviction. And as you say, yeah, you know, the execution was poor. Bashir in over the wicket. Rohit deep in the crease, trying to turn it past Pope at uh, short leg. Can't do so, no run. Oli Pope and... Zach Crawley both had roller skates on when they went for theirs. You know, Robert Sharma there, just one foot down the wicket, solid base. He elevated over the top, comfortable boundary. Bashir is in. It's taking Rohit on the pad as he's down on one knee trying to uh, sweep this. That must surely be bouncing down the leg side. And Bashir is making the, the signal saying it's too high. Yeah, maybe he's a bit high, but I would have said he's, he's got to be hitting him outside the line of off stump. Not a lot going for it, then. No. Yeah. yeah. Miles outside of of Opstum. Good appeal, though. Yeah. If you're going to sell it, sell it hard. Bashir in once again. Oh, yeah. A little bit of air on that one, bringing Rohit forward. Plays defensively, no run. There's still 17 overs after the completion of this, so even with the spinners bowling in tandem at the moment, there'll be... A little bit of overtime work, but I'm thinking more in terms of 17 overs. How many are India going to score? In goes Bashir, turned quietly by Rohit to uh, short leg. And uh, that completes the over. Some more thoughts from Harmi and Chudes and Neil Manthorpe's turn to come in and describe the action for you. Yeah, you look 57 for none off the 13. If you look at 17 overs, you know, we'll, there'll be a passage of, of playing for the, the, the close of play if depending if Chaiswal and Rohit are still in but you'd think India would be about 100 behind on first innings at the end of the day and if, if England don't get a wicket or if England have one wicket you, you really you really struggle to, to work out where England get back into this game because I, I just don't see I know India you know, give a, the first test match away from a hugely winning position not sure they're going to fall for that one twice Good crowd in, uh, kept pouring in or trickling in throughout the day. It was uh, only a smattering of people at the start of play when it was uh, pretty chilly, but uh, there's a good support now and they're understandably vocal. Driven down the ground here by Jaiswal, down towards Long On. 
and uh, Duckett Fields are going through for another single. Now, I know this is a question to two fast bowlers, albeit one of you is an all-rounder, but um, that show of Bashir first over, which Jaiswal helped himself to 18, hit three sixes. So, you know, there's a, there's a thing about Yashasvi Jaiswal, who, of course, has had a record-breaking series for India, two double hundreds and a hundred, the record that's uh, defended. It's that it appears that he has moments of extreme attack for no apparent reason. I mean, I find it quite hard to, to say that those three balls that he hit for six were, were poor. They weren't long hops. They, they may be a bit, a bit full. That's short from Hartley. That is not a good delivery. And that's been hit for six as well. And that one deserved it. That was a poor delivery and it got what it deserved. Yeah, that was a poor ball and that was a long hop. But you're right, it wasn't it. The, you know, but I think he, I, the, the beauty about, for me, about Jaiswal, he identifies passages in play. And he identifies passages in games and also passages where bowlers are fresh or bowlers are tired or bowlers are maybe not as confident and he heaps pressure back on them by taking the risk but his technique and he's in such a great place Hartley now too short again outside the off stump and it's cut away behind square on the offside nice fielding from Johnny Bairstow diving and tumbling away to his left and uh, they'll go through for a couple so, did you, but it's been throughout the series, you know, and he'll then uh, go through periods where he absorbs a lot of pressure and where it doesn't necessarily look like he's under great pressure. But is that not bat batsmanship? Is that not reading a, a situation and, and thinking, right, this young man's going to be under pressure, they've only got 218? Forward comes Sharma playing defensively. The captain from the ball quite early. I'm going to put him under pressure. I'm going to put him under pressure. When he hit those three sixes against... Jimmy Anderson, <laughs> he had a score behind him and he just yeah. went, all right, <laughs> exactly. I know what you're going to try and do. Okay, see you later. The calculated risk. Um, you know, I don't think he's just sort of jumping out of the box thinking, oh, I'm just going to smash it. There's, there's a reason why and a method why he's done it. And he, that's why he's, he's accumulated the runs he has in the series so far. Slipping a short leg and Hartley is in with a good ball, which is respected by Rohit Sharma, playing away defensively on the offside well that's, that was exactly my question i mean it's so so what i'm saying is that he's he's proactive rather than reactive he doesn't wait for the bowling to deteriorate before he attacks he he decides that now is the moment to attack you, you know do you know what i mean he doesn't he's he doesn't react to the bowling no he dictates and I, and I just think and i always say this to the youngsters you've got to earn the right to be out there and score your runs and he's earned the right through the few the bare amount of balls that he's faced in the series and the runs that he scored, he's earned the right to go out there and jump on a bowler if he feels that, you know, I'm going to put him under pressure. Show Bashir in again and uh, forward comes Jaiswal playing defensively out to extra cover. The temperature is dropping rapidly as uh, we come towards the end of uh, the day in Dharamshala. And uh, those who are, whose job it is to sit still and watch the game are really beginning to wrap up. Jaiswal again plays defensively and there's no run. Next in, Shubman Gill, is, uh, he's got his pads on and his whites, obviously, and all of his equipment and a black puffer jacket. <laughs> and he's running around in the players' changing room area trying to keep warm. Sweep shot from Jaiswal, hit it hard, power sweep, rather than a lap sweep or a tickle sweep. And he's got four runs for it. Gosh, he hit that hard. Again, the execution. He knows where the fielder is, and he's hitting the ball where the fielders are not. That is how you score runs. It's a great shot. He's gone up there. He's reached it. He knows that the, the square fielder is in front, so he's hit it extremely hard behind. And now ben, folks has to say, ben Stokes has to decide whether he manoeuvres that fielder. And that is your job as a batsman. Manoeuvre the field and hit the ball where the gaps are. It's great batsmanship. Here's Bashir once again, and uh, Jaiswal stands up tall in the crease and punches it to short mid-off. He's also getting the bowler in a position where he wants him. You know, Bashir's bowling the ball a little bit fuller outside off stump. So he's rocking forward, playing defence, knowing that if you just drop it that little bit shorter on that line, going with the angle, that's into my sweep shot, and I'm ready to play it. Forward comes, oh sorry, forward then back goes uh, Jaiswal here, playing the length beautifully. Again, just drops it down into the offside and uh, he rotates the strike very well. He hits boundaries beautifully, but he also rotates the strike really well. 
rarely plays a, a dead bat shot. If he can just drop it into a gap and take a single, he does. A little bit like Ben Duckett. You know, he has that open fist of the bat that hits it through, sort of cover point into the gap for one. So he's always putting pressure back on the bowler by getting down the other end. Nudged away behind square on the leg side by uh, Rohit Sharma. And, uh, they go through for a single and Rohit keeps the strike after 15 overs. You know, but, but what, it, it almost looks like you, they're looking to play with the batsmen's minds. And, you know, Bashoe Bashi is only 20 years old. But so he's bowled his first over and Jaiswal's hit him for three sixes. He's got one over for 18. And then Rohit Sharma faced his second over and played out a maiden. It's almost like you, the, you're... I'm imagining this, obviously, but you're sort of playing with the bowler's mind. Yeah, I'm toying with you. I'm toying. We're not both going to go at you. He feels that he's got the the mark, the calling of you, so I'm just going to allow that. I'm just going to sit on you. I'll get my runs off, maybe Tom Hartley. And that's what batting in a pair is about. That's what communication's about. And all those things when you're batting as a two out there in the middle against the other 11, you've got to think of ways how you're going to get your partnership and score your runs. You know, it's old school thinking in a modern game. But it can still be very effective if you do it in the right way. And that is the key word. Do it in the right way. You can't just go out there and just be ultra aggressive all the time. You just can't. You will get bitten on the back side. <laughs> More often than not, you will have good days, but you're going to have bad days. And I just think if you want to evolve as a team, you want to have better more better days than you do have bad days. And at the moment, this England team are having sessions not days, but having sessions where they're losing games because of the amount of wickets that they're losing, especially when they're back. They have had days. They've had they've had days. They've had, you know, not not sort of three in a row. Um, I mean, they lost the first two days in Hyderabad <laughs> and won, won it on the fourth. Um, but they've had very, very good days. It's drinks, by the way, um, here on the first day of the fifth and final test match in Dharamshala. Uh, India are 72 without loss. I don't know what they're having for drinks, but uh, they didn't look cold. I honestly think that um, they might be having some tea, some chai, some, some hot, chai, hot drink. Yes, some chai. You know, I think it would go down well. I think the bowlers might just be holding the cup than, than anything else. Uh, you see, I've told the story like, during the first test when we signed Javagal Srinath in the f 2003, I think it was. He came for first four games of the season he stood at fine leg waving at the you know the dressing room asking for his drink at the end of the end of each over having bowled i think i think he must have bowled about 100 overs for durham and he bowled every single one in a long sleeve sweater and he bowled beautifully he was he's one of my favorite fast oh, bowlers what a I, man. when he was at gloucester when he came over and he was at gloucester early 90 not early 90s sort of mid 90s when i was playing i used to love watching bowl he was fantastic and he was quicker than you think I remember he went to Australia and he, he, he shook them up a little bit. He bowled extremely well. He was a great bowler. I, you know, I'm, I think it was him and Venkatesh Prasad were the sort of seamers for the India right then, weren't they? And uh, they were a great pairing, but Javagal Shanaf was a what serious a bowler. I was just about just to say that Javagal always gives credit to, to Venkatesh Prasad yeah. and the work that he did at the other end. What a man. Really, really nice fella. Taught me a hell of a lot. He's only at Durham for three or four games. But oh. taught me a hell of a lot when it comes to oh, bowling at the other end, standing mid off, you know, just little things, bowling at new batters, you know, tacking their pads and all, everything that, that goes with it. But he stood at fine leg nearly every over with a hot cup of water. Didn't no tea bag in it, just a hot cup of water. And he didn't even drink it. Physio a great physio, Nigel Kemp, what a man. He would he would go around with a flask with some hot water in it in, in Jav, poor you know, poor soul just stood there with a two hands long sleeve jumper cap on trying to get it over his ears in Durham there was one game in Stockton I'll never ever forget this Sanas Jayasuri was playing for Somerset we were playing in an outground and I mean I think Sanas Jayasuri had two long sleeve jumpers on a woolly hat underneath his helmet and Mark Davis kept nipping it away from him and it was torture and I'm going he is one of the you know, all-time, you know, Senna Terrace are one of the all-time greats, especially in a white ball game. We had we had Java Gals for enough. And the two of them, you know, Sanath was standing at slip. Him and Trez are standing at slip. I think Trez is trying to hide Sanath Jure because it was that cold, thinking, if this edges towards him, it's going to break him. It was that cold. It was about, I think, I think the whole, the whole four-day game, I think a cumulative temperature got about four degrees between the four days. Oh, it was it was cold. It was damp. It was oh, it was bleak in the in early May, uh, early April. 
here is Tom Hartley. Drinks have been taken, and uh, I have to say that uh, if you happen to catch a glimpse of uh, the Test match in Dharamshala, unless the camera's panned over to the Himalayas and you'll see lots of snow, uh, at least it's not grey. Blue skies, and uh, it looks bright and sunny, but it's chilly. Very chilly. Rohit Sharma in again to Hartley, plays defensively. Rahul Dravid, the Indian captain, has got uh, a beanie on, which is pulled right down to his eyebrows and uh, is covered, <laughs> completely covers both ears. Really does look like uh, a tea cosy. <laughs> He's had it on all day. Here's Hartley again. Rohit Sharma plays defensively. No run. India 72 for none. It's 19 degrees. <laughs> it's 19 degrees. They've got beanies on. We'll be in we'll be in shorts and t-shirt over at nine degrees. Let me tell you, it's one of those situations actually where if you're in the sun and out of the breeze, it is it will we'll, might feel like 19, but there's a very chilly breeze coming down off the Himalayas, and uh, that's driven down the ground again by Rohit Sharma to uh, duck it at mid off. So you've got to find the right corner. Out of the breeze, in the sunshine, and you'll be all right. Then it might feel like 19. Yeah, but then you've got Shubman Gill standing behind him. He's trying to shadow bat while having the big, got the biggest puffer jacket and woolly hat on that you see. That he's, he's not wanting these two batters to go well and stay at it and get a 100 partnership because he wants them to get runs. He just doesn't want to take his hat and coat off. <laughs> Hartley in again to Jaiswell, who uh, pushes uh, towards extra cover, and uh, they go through for an, an, another easy single. Do you get the impression, both of you, that we're seeing the beginning of greatness from Yeshazvi Jaiswell? Yes. As I said, the biggest compliment I give him, I, I love watching him back as I did Brian Lara back in the day. He just uh, he excites me when he goes out there, just his batsmanship, the way he goes about it, the attacking prowess when he decides, the defensive element of it, you know, the way he's stable at the crease, love it all. Here's Tom Hartley and forward comes uh, Virat, uh, plays def uh, Rohit, Virat, Rohit Sharma. 16 overs gone, 74 without loss. Now he's got almost 700 runs in the series, Harmy. So, uh, um, but, but then, you know, the last Indian batsman to score two double hundreds, back-to-back -back double hundreds, was Vinod Kambli. Yeah. And, and he didn't last the distance so yeah I think he had a lifestyle he had a lifestyle which was uh, which is a, a bit like what mine is now enjoying the enjoying the pub and uh, wasn't as exactly um, as disciplined as what they are now this modern generation since Virat Kohli really took charge of of India and you know MS Dhoni before that and the professional manner of fitness and the way the field now and the way the outlook is I think it's a different world now my in mine, I think a lot of uh, only people's con not concerns is, but I'd like to see him play in you know, in England, in Australia, in somewhere like South Africa with a ball bouncing. Shoaib Bashir into Jaiswal, who flicks this uh, away out into another gap. Jimmy Anderson will do the fielding. Nothing what? ages me more than than remembering that uh, to think that I was commentating in the days when Indian fielders generally didn't dive be because they grew up playing on the medan and uh, you know and they would lose the skin on half their body if they dived. Yeah, their field in in the late eighties, nineties was uh, not great. Manners was talking about fifties and sixties. No, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> no. He said that manners, not me, mate. <laughs> no, late eighties, early nineties. Yeah, turned away with the spin nicely by Rohit Sharma for a single. <laughs> size, big size 12 would try and stop the ball, and if it did, it was like, oh, fair enough, and just throw it back. Well, the great man Javagos Srinath, he was one of the last great foot fielders. Yeah. Him and Courtney Walsh. Yeah, Courtney, Courtney Walsh, massively, yeah. yeah. Big time. And then the big underarm, wasn't it? David Gower when he lost his shoulder. Bashir in again. It's uh, punched off the back foot down towards uh, long off. The weird thing is that Courtney Walsh could underarm it 70 yards hard into the keeper's gloves. You've not seen that wingspan. <laughs> the wingspan, it's like an albatross. He's got levers, let me tell you. David Boone could do that. He could underarm it from slip all the way across the other side of the field at pace, like an absolute exocet. But the, the thing on Jaiswal, I think, the way of runs he's going to have, the word around the traps... Uh, he goes to Australia, India and England. Bashir, a little bit of uh, height and width on this. Steered to backward point, no run. With a, not a target on his back, but with, I think, people wondering how he would go. But the confidence I'm sure he goes there with and his ability to be aggressive and forceful 
on and then and posing on the bowlers mm. i think that will tells me that he could he can he will play well in them conditions and then it'll be a, a it'll be a watch of when somebody when bowlers start working him out and there will be somebody works him out and then how he comes back from that because he's still in the infancy of his career a bowler will work him out there will become a, a technical flaw and then he has to then evolve and go again if he gets that part of his second part of his career right this boy's got a great great future Bashir in again and Dorit Sharma back and across and clips it away for a single to mid wicket 78 without loss in reply to England's disappointing 218 all out yeah, there's nothing in my in his technique that tells me that he won't be successful. It's always the education, isn't it? Can he get runs in Australia? Can he get runs in South Africa? Can he get runs in England when it's seeming all over the place? Driven by Jaiswell out towards cover, half a diving stop from Ben Duckett. Johnny Bairstow uh, tidies up and they go through for another single. It's interesting, in that test match, actually, I think we've got a... We do have a tall change in the commentary box, but just a final thought. In South Africa, this, the last test match, the second test match in, that finished before tea on the second day, India needed 80 in the fourth innings to win, and Jaiswal came out and lashed six fours, scored 28 from from 21 balls, and because I hadn't seen him on a on a good pitch, I thought, and he was backing away, giving himself room, and I thought, oh gee, he doesn't fancy it. But you know what? In retrospect, he read the game superbly and just thought, we need to get this job done because this could be awkward, even chasing 80. And I think that's the beauty about what he's been like in this series. Young bowlers, you know, putting pressure back onto the opposition and he's done it brilliantly well. And you know, I think he's got a bright, bright future in the game. And I think when he comes to England, moving bold, yes, there will be a, a question mark. But I think, he, um, I think he will answer them perfectly well. Hartley is in, and this is uh, neatly clipped away by Jay Swell, but he won't add to his 37. Fielded it backwards square. Rohit Sharma, 42 from 46. He's actually slowed down a touch. He was going at a runner ball for the first half of his innings as a straight um, mid-wicket. And this ball is defended by Jay Swell. Always thinking, he's that kind of... In some batters, you wonder whether they're actually awake at the crease. And at the other end from Rohit Sharma is uh, Jay Swal, who just appears to be crunching the numbers in his head, working out the field positions and the time to go as Hartley is in. And this is driven past that straight mid-wicket to Ben Duckett at long on for a single. This has uh, been a chastening day for uh, England fans and there's quite a number of them that have made their way out to India just for this test match. Somebody who has uh, travelled all the way to, uh, to Brisbane to watch England have a bad day or two. You do start to, to question your life choices at times. There's enough time in the day to do that as Sharma just plays this uh, to Ollie Pope at mid-wicket for no run. Yeah, but then you're in Brisbane. That's the problem. <laughs> At least here you're in Dharamashala. You, can, you walk up to the mountain and sleep overnight. You can have some Momos. You ever had a Momo, Bats? I have quite a few Momos, but I don't know what Momo you're on about. How can there be more than one kind of Momo? Touch Fuller and on the pads of uh, Rohit Sharma, who tries to place this past Ollie Pope on the leg side, but fails. Well, there's chicken and mutton. Is there a pork Momo as well? Can you get pork Momo? Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, different fillings. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what Bats was on about. On, yeah. no. I thought you were talking about moments in life. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Fuller from Hartley and driven back to the bowler. It must be a wild ride when Bats has to give a speech to the Surrey team. <laughs> when suddenly he goes on to one of his tangents and then it's like, I, I think what? what? I think all Bats does is he just goes to the back of the room, slaps Land of Hope and Glory in the old... Uh, the boom box hits play, turns it up to 11, and then just tubs a th tubs a chest. I think you're giving me too much credit, both <laughs> of you. Come on, lads, get your beans going. No, no, no. This is where everybody gets it wrong. That's not, that's not what coaching's about. It's about the players. It's about the players, not the village idiot giving the speech. <laughs> 80 without loss, then India. Here on Talk Sports 2.
And uh, Shea Bashir, who's been expensive in his five overs so far, is back for uh, another over. This is uh, defended by Jay Swal, who momentarily seemed a little surprised by the lack of bounce from this delivery, but comfortably dealt with. 38 from 50. He's gone past a thousand uh, test runs in this innings. He's only been playing test cricket for a little over a year, or maybe just under a year actually, as this is defended away to the offside. And uh, he has impressed us all. It was the West Indies series made his debut, wasn't it? Yep. And he scored a century on debut. Joint second quickest in terms of matches to 1,000 test runs. At the top of the list, Don Bradman, heard of him? <laughs> I don't know if you saw one, one of the articles I wrote the other day um, uh, mentioning this kind of stuff. Round the wicket from Bashir and down the track is Jay Swell and he drives handsomely past mid on and away for four. And that's what I mean about this guy. He's just watching and he's watching and then he just goes. More often than not, it pays off. He's drawn level with his skipper. Both are on 42. Bashir might be uh, wondering about the meaning of life right now. And India moving on. Yeah, I think he just saw that one go up out of the hand a little bit and just decided straight away, I'm just going to come down. And he's so quick that he can get to it. Touch Fuller on the leg side. Clipped away. This could be another boundary. It is. Big expanse at mid-wicket. And uh, Jay Swell goes past his skipper. He's 46 now. And India in absolute control. 3-1 up. This is the final of five tests at matches. They trail by just 130. They're 88 without loss. Yeah, same again. It's gone up out of the hand. This time a little bit fuller, a little bit straighter. And Jai Swall manipulates the field through straight mid-wicket this time. One through mid-on, one through mid-wicket. Still a slip in place. And he goes again to mid-wicket. Anderson running across from mid-on. Hauls this one in. It's just a single. So every time we look at a stat at the moment for Jai Swall, Bradman's name comes up. It's so obvious, and so there's a thing in the NBA that, uh, especially with, and Nikola Jokic, uh, Jokic, sorry, the Joker, is um, does something good. The statisticians always have to say, "Not since Wilt Chamberlain," and it's become such a meme that "Not since Wilt" is now what we say. It's exactly the same for Jaiswell. It's not since it's not since Don, because every time you look up a Jaiswell stat, it's him and Bradman neck and neck, and sometimes he's ahead of Bradman, and sometimes he's just behind him. It's Remarkable what he's managed to do in first-class cricket and test cricket so far in his career. Plenty of flight and a loop. It's a bit wide, though, and Rohit Sharma, who hasn't seen that a lot of strike, just pushes this wide of Jimmy Anderson at mid-off for a single. He moves to 43. That's the end of uh, over number six for Bashir and India 90 without loss. What does the NBA have to do with an English Prime Minister? Wilt. Chamberlain, you said, didn't you? <laughs> And these, see, see, I think this is how he starts well, the speeches to the Are Surrey right? team. <laughs> Are we and he just waits for the reaction <laughs> of everyone in the room. And then he pe presses play on hope and glory. And then they go out and perform. Back-to-back -back titles. It may not be the speeches that it's getting it done. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, as comparisons... For a young opener or a young batter to be mentioned in the same breath as uh, as the Don. It's kind of where you want to be. Oh, Hartley is in and uh, defended by uh, Rohit. I'd, I'd be happy if my batting was at Tom Topley's level. Yeah, we've got well, some... Well, I've got good news for you. <laughs> <laughs> we've got some numbers coming up with the great Sonil Gaff Gavaskar as well, which... Uh, Sony are, uh, are putting up on the screens that we're, we're watching. I mean, it, it's frightening the company that he's in for, for a man so young. Fuller and driven, clubbed rather, by uh, Rohit, but no timing. And Anderson fields at mid on, running around. This is the highest first wicket partnership for India in the series. I check myself, it's not frightening. It's incredibly exciting for a young man with the world at his feet. Touch flatter from Hartley and uh, no turn. So Rohit plays this at straight. Can't get it past at mid wicket. Did you ever get c compared to someone that kind of freaked you out a little bit? Someone came up and said, Oh, there's a bit of Underwood in this young guy. 
It's a young go-getter. Down the track is Rohit, and he just uh, evades Anderson at uh, a deepish at mid on. Anderson uh, for a second there turned and then half heartedly jumped to try and uh, catch the ball. He knew it was sailing too high over his head. Hartley was interested, but at the end result is another four to the score. 94 without loss, India. Both Rohit Sharma and uh, Jaiswal. 47 not out and they trail by just 124 runs now 10 wickets in hand as Hartley once again comes forward and Rohit plays this out into the offside without adding to his score it's a great effort by Anderson here because he clearly was never going to get to it but you don't want to be seen not jumping <laughs> <laughs> and so he did the kind of jump that you probably do at his age to look like you're jumping but no one he was nowhere near it when they got there with Chris Tremler tight Last ball of the over, and defended again by Sharma. And this has been, uh, this is a, a, an England coach kind of day, isn't it? Assistant coach. Assistant coach kind of day. Which is now the 13th and 14th men, isn't it? In well, yeah, we've got uh, the uh, Trescothic and uh, Collingwood are substitute down as substitute fielders today. I think if India continue batting, we might see them at some point tomorrow. Yeah, Co Collingwood, yes, but not Trez, surely. I was going to say, like, I thought Trez, obviously, a very good fielder in close and, and these sorts of things. Yeah, if you don't have to move, good catcher, but he's not mobile anymore. But at his age, surely Collingwood is the better option as the backup fielder. Oh, yeah, and, and Collie's come back off some kind of operation on his, was it his ankle or his knee? He did a bear stone, fell off a tee box somewhere, and he, he's, he was out for the best part of six months. Um, with, you know, serious, serious structural work. Or was it his shoulder? It could have been his shoulder. I don't know, it's something really structural there. I've been told it's, it was his Achilles. Touch of width from uh, Bashir. And uh, Jaiswal could be adding another 50 to his score. No, Bairstow runs around from uh, deep point. It'll just be the two runs. 49 to Jaiswal. As he... Uh, heads towards another half century and we all know once he gets going he very often uh, continues away as he does reach 50 Bashir once again has just fired this in a little bit wide a touch short and it's allowed Jay Swell just to rock back and cut this through point another 50 another raise of the bat and it's a hundred up for India as well and it's coming good time the start of the 21st over England only lasted 57 of them bowled out for 218 and India in reply on TalkSport 2 a hundred without loss on the sweep this time is Jay Swal tucking in again to uh, young Bashir He'll take another four runs, this time to the leg side. And he moves to 57, and he's going at a runner ball. Yeah, not only skillful bat batting, it's smart batting. Three balls in a row now. Bashir back short, he gets a two. Same ball, gets his 50, but finds the gap for four. Knows full well he can't bowl the same ball again. It's got to come near the stumps, so he sweeps him off the stumps for four. Brilliant batting. Down the track and stumped! Bashir gets his man. He's gone for a little bit of flight. Possibly watching Cody Gadaf earlier today, tossing it up above the eye line. And Jace Wall, who went back to back at boundaries, going for a third successive big shot. He's down the track, he misses the ball. Folks does the rest. And he's got to go for 57. Well done, show of Bashir. Yeah, a bit premeditated, I reckon, this from Jai Swall. He's, he's, he feels like he's playing a video game, I reckon, at one point there. He's gone cut, cut, big sweep. Oh, he's got to come full and straight. I'm going to run down the pitch and smack him straight back over his head. Bashir up to the challenge. Brave piece of bowling, offered the bit of width, and the width was what did for Jai Swall, but held his nerve, pulled it back, so the length does for him, but also the width. If that's down the, the channel of the stumps, he probably gets bat on it, but the fact he just held it, that fourth off stump, just creating a bit of danger for himself 
but also for Jace Wally comes out on top. Fine piece of bowling. Uh, I mean, we've been quite harsh on the England batters today and what they did. That's the same kind of shot. He's completely on top there. He, he got his boundaries. I reckon if he stays back in his crease then, um, uh, whether Shoaib saw him or not, I don't know. I, let's give him the, the credit and say maybe he did. But if he didn't, that's a, that's a ball he could have easily punched through the offside for a couple more runs or you know cut away again if he wanted to. The point being is the balls are there to hit and he would created them running down the wicket at a ball like that. It's, one, it's actually probably one of the, the worst shots we've seen today. i got a better one. Run down the pitch, but it's not there to hit. Defend it. Do I have to yeah. hit it for four just because you've run down the wicket? I think you do have to hit it for four now in modern cricket. I think, that's the, if you're, <laughs> I think if you're out of the crease, you have to try and hit a four or a six. I could be wrong. They change your regulations all the time. Oli Pope didn't try. Oh. He wasn't trying to hit it for four. He was, was trying it? to flick it for that two. That was what he did wrong. Yeah. So, look, you, no, you're right. I, you and I have talked about this before. Zach Crawley, that's one of his big issues, is he comes down the wicket, and when he's not there, he's just got to, just got to block it. He's already created the problem for the spinner, because the spinner's like, oh, he's, he's going to come down at me. You don't have to hit the four or the six. If it's a positive attacking position, it's also your best, pos best defensive position. If it's a reckless attacking position, it is not a good positive decision to defend either. That was more reckless than positive. There's a very distinct line. And it was just crossed there, hence why he's in the changing room now. Has it just granted England just the slightest oh, opening yeah, as uh, nice Shiv McGill obviously hasn't read the memo. He's down the track <laughs> and uh, he doesn't try and hit a boundary shot. He just defends Bashir uh, back down the track. Field has been brought in for Shiv McGill, who we know, last innings actually aside, is a little bit of a nervy starter. Aye. This time... Uh, Gill is forward and defending and uh, that uh, brings it to the end uh, a successful over 10 runs coming from it but also a wicket that of the opener uh, Jay Swal who has uh, departed for 57 should McGill the new batter Rohit Sharma is 47 not out India trail by 114 after England were bowled out earlier today for just 218 they were 137 for two when Zach Crawley, who top scored with 79, was bowled through the gate. A third wicket for Koldik Yadav. He'd taken all three at that stage. He went on to take uh, Johnny Bairstow's wicket as well. He'd taken all four. Uh, and he ended with uh, brilliant figures of five for 72. Bairstow won the occasion of his 100th test match. An 18 ball 29. Uh, just on show Bashir as well. I, just, I don't know if you saw his celebrations when he took that wicket. I think there's going to be some people on Indian uh, social media. A little bit wide of Rohit Sharma, and it's fielded by Bashir at backward point. Might be screenshotting some of those those facial expressions, perhaps some of the words that were mouthed in the way of, of Jaiswal. I think he, he felt disrespected is the word I would use, bats, and uh, that emotion came out of him. I think England were trying to push him away from Jaiswal a little bit. He was competing, and he was just showing, look, I'm here to keep competing. We We've got to be careful. There's a line that you don't want to cross, but you also want to keep those competitive juices. Let's, you know, he's a young man finding his way. Let's uh, no, exactly. Let's, uh, you know, allow some bits and somebody somewhere just have a real quiet word and just say, look, come on, we just got to, just got to be a little bit careful. Um, but whoa, we want him to play with some passion. He's Nothing got wrong with that. Forward short leg and a slip and a short fine leg as uh, Rohit Sharma's forward and defending against Tom Hartley. I was thinking that uh, that's the sort of thing that the old pro, when he gets back in the change room, just says to him, you realise you've got bowl of this bloke for the next 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> and he's pretty good. Don't wind him up now. <laughs> Rohit forward again, defending. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe they're bowl and bat against each other next year. That's the question, isn't it? Who, who will... Who will be leading the attack from a spinning perspective when England are playing at home? It's uh, Sri Lanka and West Indies this summer after the T20 World Cup. But India will be back. Five test series next year, 2025. As once again, Sharma, who has uh, slowed a touch, is at forward, watchful, defending. He uh, tucked into Mark Woods earlier in the innings but it's uh, been a, a touch more Come touch on. slower as Rohit tries to whip this ball from Hartley which is on off stump through mid wicket just gets a little bit more flight on it than he expected but there's no fielder close to the wicket at mid wicket so uh, no real danger there Just 
just a couple of overs which have gone England's way. Can hardly see this over out. Yet to concede a run. Rohit will uh, prevent that from happening as he'll take a comfortable single to square leg. He will face at Shah Bashir's at first ball and India move on to 105 for one. I mean, this is, this is, take that wicket out of the equation. I suppose this game situation right now, and it's credit to Stokes and it's credit to the bowlers that have been brought, but this is kind of where we thought the games would have gone way quicker than they have done. I mean, with a, a bowling attack, if you bring in Ray and Ahmed of, as well, between uh, Hartley, Bashir and Ahmed, they'd play one test coming in come to India two tests you ran and play, played one definitely yeah. yeah so with such a callow and inexperienced bowling lineup you really thought coming up against this India track uh, India batting lineup in home conditions the golf between the two would at times be uh, would be vast and it hasn't hasn't quite worked out like that has it not to the levels that we expected anyway touch flatter and he push, pushes through on Sharma, who will take one. It's whether he wants to come back for a quick two. No, he'll stay at uh, the non-striker's end. So that brings Shubman Gill on strike, and he's the guy that England want to be bowling at right now. I think that first test, India gave up a chance of making a massive total and, and kind of exploiting the younger bowlers. Uh, and then in the second test and the fourth test, you know, there was enough mistakes by the Indians at times to keep England interested and a lot of that is the inexperience of the Indian lineup. we've just seen you know Jaiswal come down the wicket let's let's be honest uh, since Sehwag they haven't had many players who would have played that particular shot um, and so they have you know they've got a couple of players who, who want to get on top and have given wickets away and just some I mean, just some bad luck at times too like Pat <laughs> Patatar has gone out to two half trackers and punched one back onto his stumps um, you know so England have probably gotten away with a few and kept themselves in games at times. Is a straight mid-wicket, short leg, and also a catching mid-wicket. So three fielders in and around the leg side for Shubman Gill, who first ball can't clip this ball past short leg, and he'll uh, stay on strike and yet to get off the mark. Just been sent through a stat, but down the leg side, that's a poor ball from uh, Bashir, and he'll get punished as Gill just carries on with the shot on the sweep really and at four runs that added to the score so he gets off the mark with the boundary 110 for one England a stat coming through that 46 runs of uh, Jay Swell's 57 came from the bowling of Show Bashir so just another reason why you know his celebrations when he got rid of Jay Swell weren't quite so marked 110 for one then India and this is uh, on off stump and Gill deep in his crease rides the bounce and helps it around the corner for a single row hit to on strike 49 not out I think I'd almost go a step further with the field that Bashir is bowling to he's got a short leg a, sh a very very straight mid wicket um, a mid on that's a little bit wider almost on the straight mid wicket shoulder deep mid wicket and a deep square I'd almost get deep square in front Forward again is Sharma. Two, one ball left of uh, Bashir's over. 111 for one. Bring him in front of the wicket and get slip to leg slip. So he can get that shape. He's into him, but he's tall. So the bounce is always coming in to leg slip. So in one breath, he's got an easy boundary, Gill. But also, it could be a catching position. Last ball of the over. And defended again by Rohit, who stays on at 49. India trail by 107 runs. And uh, Bashir... Bowls another over with just one poor ball in it. His eight overs have gone for 56, but he's picked up the one wicket to fall. India, 111 for one. Yeah, I don't think that was a bad over at all, but that one poor ball was short and down the leg side. No, I don't think it was short. I think it was the line. You think it was just down the leg side? I think it's still top of the stumps. I think because he's into in shape, the batters get offside of him. That's why I'm saying get slipped to legs. He's never going to slip. Yeah. And you're actually saying to him, if you miss, miss there. And actually, we're going to make your deficit your strength. I actually you have a man-saving one and a leg slip. Because we had the spider cam moving around at one stage. I actually thought they'd taken slip out. But yeah, I, I haven't. 
That, that, at the start, that's what I thought. And I thought, oh, I quite like this plan. It, it looks negative, but it's actually playing to his strength. He's able to get lots of dot balls on, and the bounce and the angle of the ball is going towards short leg and leg slip. Hartley uh, to bowl, and uh, this is a cut to show Bashir at backward point. Uh, Gill remains on five. Rohit is 49, 111 for one India, trailing by 107 here on Talk Sport 2. Uh, Neil Manthorpe's about to come in. But Gill is very, very. just pulls this away for four. He's so. Still at the crease is Shubman Gill. And Tom Hartley has delivered this ball on off stump. And Gill has just swatted it away over mid wicket. A couple of bounces at four. And it's like he's been at uh, half tracker, actually. It's like he's been at the crease uh, for the best part of an hour or so. Yeah, as a purist player, is Gill. Love to watch him play. I wouldn't say it's the front, front foot press that he uses, but. He certainly gets a, front, a, a ready position, able to go backward and forward equally. And there, he's not even really transferred his work, he, weight. He's just put a fraction more on his right foot and pulled it over into that open mid-wicket area. Just a bit too short from Hartley. Yeah, it's been a poor ball. Touch fuller and uh, Gill comes forward, pushes this to mid-wicket, no run. And modern players call it the hovering foot, don't they? When, when your front foot doesn't plant, it's just sort of semi... Uh, it's forward. And there's a little bit of your balance is forward, but you're not really on it. And so it allows you then to rock back again. Full again and no run again as Gill just places this to short mid wicket. No run. Or even move it forward again. Yeah, I think it was a period of time, wasn't it, where Duncan Fletcher's era talked about the front foot press. But I think it was evolved in a bad way for a period of time where people put all the weight onto the front foot and couldn't move again. Oh. Defended by uh, Shubman Gill. Nine not out. It's really what a lot of players work on now is the ability to go a little bit forward but then go further forward if they need to or rock back. And, and I think Gill's almost the, the best in the world at that particular movement. I mean, Joe Root wouldn't be far off as well. There's a couple of guys who were brilliant at that. 115 for one then, India. Last ball of Hartley's ninth over. And once again, Gill happy to just uh, prop forwards, push this out to the offside and it's no run. Uh, India trailing by 103 then here on uh, Talk Sport 2 and via the Talk Sport Cricket YouTube channel. Uh, Rohit Sharma is still 49 not out, should McGill 9 not out. They're 115 for one and after a word from Gareth Batty, it'll be Neil Mantle. Yeah, I think a really good way of explaining in a different sport will be to put boxing into the picture. If you have your big sluggers who are going to fight at the weekend, big Anto Joshua's back in the ring, you watch his right foot. He's always got weight on his right foot so he can move forward and back. Now he's leading with his left foot, of course he is. And you'll just see, he does what you said, it's almost like a de-weighted front foot, so you can go front or back to attack or just be on the retreat, but you're easy to go back in. Whereas and if you plant it, you're stuck, aren't you? You're stuck, you're a sitting duck. You've got one option and nothing else. So fencing's another good one. You're up and down, you're up and down. Show Bashir continues, and there's a big appeal for leg before wicket. That turned quite sharply, but... I think Rohit Sharma had uh, taken a half step down the wicket. Gareth Batty's given this out. He's a long way out of his ground, but that doesn't matter with DRS like it used to. I thought I might have just hit him outside the line of off would be my, my question. It spun quite a lot, but it, something looked nice about it. I'd like to see it. It was a beautiful delivery. Folks has a said no delivery. to Stokes. There is no way I'd be reviewing it. I wouldn't have the... Uh, that's Ooh. close. Oh, it is in the it's line of off stump. Close, that. I think it's spinning too much. We'll, I'm sure we'll see the, the, the Hawkeye decision. Oh, Sharma, right, Sharma turns this one away through mid wicket and completes his 50. 50 for the India captain. 77 balls. India going well. Just 102 runs behind now at 116 for one. Yeah, and it looks like he's just gone almost into defensive mode for a period of time and he's still. Striking at 64. Uh, Roy Sharma's going up and down the gears. He, he tucked into a bit of wood. He's had his moments against the spin, but he's just an elegant, beautiful player who trusts his defence, but also he's got a wonderful attacking ability. The Indian captain leading from the front. Yeah, Shazvi Jaiswal uh, increased his record for the most runs by an Indian in this series, again, in a series against England. Here's Shoa Bashir once again, and this time Shubman Gill takes half a step out of his crease and is struck on the pads. Uh, there's a yelp rather than an appeal. Yashasvi Jaiswal stumped by Ben Fikes off uh, Bashir for 57. But uh, Rohit Sharma going well, 50 not out. Bashir in once again, turned away behind square on the leg side. 
Tom Hartley feels at backward square leg. It just feels like with Bashir, where he's bowling, he's sort of not quite mid crease, he's inside that, but the angle of the ball is always going over off stump. It's always funneling into where the ball's just gone there. Can we somehow get a catcher? Can England get a catch there? Even short leg go there. Here's uh, Shoaib Bashir again. Slog sweep! Beautifully played by Shubman Gill. Half an hour to go before the close of play. 20 minutes, actually, and he's slog swept him for six. Doesn't matter what time of day it is. If it's in the slot, it's on its way. Yeah, this is beautiful batting, Shubman Gill. This is where I don't think Bashir needs to be. He's outside off stump, not probably hitting off stump. It's width. Shubman Gill gets down on the lap slog. He's down in a sweet position and hits it expansively up and over mid-wicket. The modern-day player, it's just too much width. Bashir just needs to use that strength that he has and being able to cramp the arms, which he's done for so many balls. And just sitting there for a while, like that. He is, and uh, again, Shub McGill uses his feet, but then plays defensively. 25 overs gone, 122 for one. Please feel free not to commit to this. Just a gut Ho feel. Hovering front a, foot. It's a gut, <laughs> gut feel. Um, will show Bashir play 50 tests for England? Well, he's not going to play them for anyone Ooh. else. <laughs> um, wow. I, 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 I'd be surprised if he played this summer. I'm prepared to commit to that. Um, will he play 50 test matches? I, I'm not in the business of predicting any young man. I like his skill. Um, I liked it a few years ago when I saw it on the academy at Surrey. It's a nice skill. I, I think you can look at it both ways. And you say, well, I'm sitting on the fence by saying he's not going to play 50. If I say he's going to play 50 and he plays 100, I look silly either way. If he only <laughs> plays these, I look silly. So I'm basically saying I think he has a wonderful skill set. We've seen enough to know that there is something there. The one thing that goes against him, he's not a jet fielder and he doesn't bat. You have to be an exceptional spin bowler to get in the team as a spinner in English conditions. Yes, you will play away from home from time to time, but if you have a poor season in English conditions, you're not going to get on that away trip because they're not always going to pick just on height and how this selection process was for this tour. So in other words, I'll have to tour the subcontinent a lot. But also perform in the summer. Yeah. Yeah, he can't just be a winter cricketer, can he? Tom Hartley in now once again, and uh, Rohit Sharma, it's a thick outside edge, and it uh, squirts off into the covers for a single. But, but I mean, the, the question about why uh, Surrey didn't retain him after a very brief stint there is, is based purely on the talent that you already had, I'm, I'm assuming. No, 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 it was, um, uh, from what I, I wasn't part of the process. Uh, it was whether he's returned on the academy or there becomes an age thing and he was too old to be on the academy and we couldn't take him on on the pro staff. Um, so it, it, it became an issue as to how you retain somebody. But we have uh, a young bowler called Yusuf Najib. Flicked away, straight to backward square leg, no run. He was a very fine left arm spinner and in the same mould. He's just behind uh, Will Jacks and uh, a few other possibly Dan Lawrence now and we had um, uh, overseas spinner for T20 so you guys he, he will come at some Dan point Lawrence. yeah here's uh, Tom Hartley pushed away defensively by Shubman Gill straight back to the bowler India 123 for one don't be a smarty pants Jared <laughs> India trail no. by 95 runs no wonder he says his uh, team talks don't matter too much it's just who's the latest good player where's he let's get him in yeah. Here's uh, Hartley again, and so uh, Shubman Gill plays defensively. I think we'll expand on this com conversation. <laughs> I think Chelsea spent a billion pounds, didn't they? Doesn't mean to say they're going to win anything. Jog on, Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kevin, what Kevin, is that? Kevin Peterson will be uh, interested in that. Here's Hartley. Short and wide and cut shot. Uh, didn't have a great deal of room, Shubman Gill, but he made best use of what room he had outside the off stump. Johnny Bairstow sweeps up on the cover boundary. 124 for one, England bowled out for a very disappointing 218. Sixth time that Zach Crawley's been out in the 70s for England. 79 he made today, and there were 20s from Ben Duckett, Joe Root, and Ben Folks. But a disappointing collapse, shocking collapse in many ways in the afternoon session from England, who lost eight wickets in that session. Six wickets, I beg your pardon, and then two straight after T to be dismissed for 218. Last ball is played defensively. Rohit Sharma on 51, Shubman Gill on 16, India 124 for one. It's going to take a lot of coming back from day one in this fifth test match, but that's the beauty of this format. They can come back. There's time. It's been an incredible passage of play. It feels like India have soaked up some pressure that England's good balls, but they've still scored at four and a half, five runs and over. 
Um, I think that stems from the, the stability that Rohit Sharma, the captain, has given at the top of the order. Jaiswal played beautifully before. Uh, you know, we've, uh, at times we would question some shot selection from, from England in the first innings. We, you, you've got to put Jaiswal in that category. But uh, the stability that Rohit Sharma is giving right now, he needs to extend on this. This needs to be transferred into three figures to, to give stability throughout the order um, and to keep putting England under pressure. And I think this is the, the, the bit that the, the lads were talking about about an hour ago. It's extending on a good period of play. It's extending on a solid position in the game and making it longer and actually snubbing out your opposite number. India have a foothold in this game. They need to snub England out. Sher Bashir has one for 63 from nine overs, so he's going at uh, over sixes as Shubman Gill plays his first ball of his next over defensively out to uh, short mid wicket where Zach Crawley will short mid on, catching mid on, should say. That's Zach Crawley. So uh, Ben Stokes uh, giving plenty of uh, support oh, and, uh, to uh, Shai Bashir, showing a lot of confidence in him. Next one again is defended by Shubman Gill. One for 63 in nine overs, but his first over went for 18. Nishasvi Jaiswal hit him for three sixes in his first over to Ben Stokes as he has done throughout the series and throughout his captaincy career, backing his bowlers to come back, keeping them on, not trying to hide them. Next one again defended by Shubman Gill, back up the wicket on the offside. Have you ever thought about at any stage of your career, go back as far as you like, did you ever think, I wish the captain would take me off? Bashir in once again pushed away out towards mid wicket not that you wanted to hide but just like maybe give me half an hour yeah for two and a half days in Antigua <laughs> <laughs> I was written on that one yeah that was after I got tactically warned off <laughs> <laughs> running on the wicket here is uh, Bashir once again <laughs> Pushed out to Zach Crawley at short mid. I got done for the third time. I forgot I'd do I got done on day one. This was day three. I got done. At, <laughs> at, at least you had the good courtesy of turning up to play the game. Jilo <laughs> fell off a Lilo or whatever. Oh, no, no. I can't play this one. I know it's going to be a flatty. Oh, thanks, mate. Oh, uh, that's turned away out to short leg fielded by Ollie Pope. India 124 for one. Yeah, Brian, Brian didn't look like scoring a run for six innings and then he got past 20 on the seventh innings and he never looked like getting, never thinking we could a timeless test he could get a thousand do you remember you nicked him off first nicked ball. him off first ball and we've all gone up and said, got to be out I think it was Darrell Hare I think didn't give him out and we were like uh oh and he looked and this is the joke I was making he was thinking he looked in trouble every time you know we, we had the new ball so that was like for six overs so for 18 overs, three brand new balls, he looked half in trouble. But what an innings that was. It was just, he just teased us. You talked earlier before when you say a, a spin ball all would want like 12 fielders. I think Vaughan wanted 14 fielders that day and still wouldn't, he still would have got 400. And some in the stands. That's uh, punched off the back foot nicely by Rohit Sharma to cover. 14? I was thinking nearer 20. <laughs> And like you said, two in the stands, one a sniper with a gun trying to shoot him, try and get that was the only way we were getting him off the field. It's unbelievable. Here is uh, Tom Hartley and uh, that one is swept away behind square on the leg side for the a single for the younger listeners who might not be um, aware of what the innings were talking about. Brian Lara's four hundred in Antigua in the pre DRS days. Pre DRS days, yeah. See I've gone. Uh, I'll share a room, Andrew Flintoff, from two th from 1996. That first year, that first pack under 19 tour in Pakistan. Bats, bats was me and bats were on. Tudes is on that trip as well, all the way through to 2009. Hartley again, Rohit Sharma, a uh, Shubman Gill defence. It's the only thing he's. It's the only thing he's never forgiven me for, Antigua, because I had two for 98, 38 overs, and I've run on the wicket for the third time in three days. I, I can't remember running on time before. And he had to come on and finish me over. And his first ball, he got hit for four, and he went for 100. A <laughs> low full toss from Hartley. And it's slap driven by Shubman Gill straight to halfway back, mid on. No run. And as a bowler, getting the gallon up, getting the 100 up off your bowling figures is just, it's so embarrassing, um, especially as a seamer. Um, it happens to spin bowlers because they bowl a lot more overs. But I had two for 98 when I got warned off. Can't bowl anymore. Fred, you come on. But he, he had two for 96 at the time. His first ball went for four, 100. 
Hartley again forward comes Gill defending and there's no run play will end by the way at 11:30, uh, so in 10 minutes time UK time and Bats knows how much we've all gone through with the big fella and we, you know, we've pulled a few capers towards one another forward comes uh, Shubman Gill pushing this one wide of uh, mid on and fielded by Jimmy Anderson but they go through for a single but it's the only thing he's never forgiven me for you know, even to the uh, to the you know, the the darkest extremes of some of our tour and days, the one he does not forgive is the one where he, he in Antigua when he went for that when he went for that gallon as I was standing mid off with my shoulders going up and down and crease of laughter. It just shows what strange creatures cricketers are. Because <laughs> you could have done all sorts far worse than that. <laughs> I am. But that's the one thing. Well, that's me, yeah. I didn't want to go into that. I won't lead you down that path. But uh, yeah. Blimey. Did either of you play with or against anybody who went for the double gallon? No, I don't think so. I don't think it has so. happened very seldom. Do you remember Steve O'Keefe played a test match for Australia and he played three test matches, but he took 14 wickets for about 400. Oh, went for a he went for 200 in one innings in that test match, which is quite extraordinary. Jason Crazier went for a few in, oh, in his is debut. That who was yeah, Jason so. Crazier also? Oh, yeah, spinner. he went. For, he got. Did he not get seven for like 190? Yeah, it's very, it happens very, very seldom, yeah, 200, bowling for analysis of 200. Here comes Shoy Bashir once again, Shubman Gill defends, and uh, no run, it looks like India, oh, I shouldn't say this, they, they've played a, a couple of quiet overs now since Shubman Gill's slog sweep for six over deep mid-wicket, they've uh, looked like they'd be happy just to, to go into uh, the close of play in nine wickets in hand trailing by just 92 the next one again is turned with the spin out on the onside are you both thinking about the most expensive analysis you can you can recall experiencing i'm panicking now that i might have gone for 200 i can't remember i don't think i have i don't think How, what, what, that, what were you? your antigua figures you i think you would that. are you you surely would well oh, in fact that's uh, nudged away again with the spin past short leg and out to deep mid wicket for a single in fact given the uh, human uh, nature is to erase the worst and most painful of memories from our from our consciousness. Perhaps you did, and, and that's why you can't remember. No, no, no. No, I'm not that intelligent to do stuff like that. Me neither. So no, I don't think I've gone for 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 200. I've gone for 100 you plenty of times. Haven't. No, I've gone for 100 plenty of times, but not for 200. I don't think I've played with anybody that's gone for 200. It happens very oh, seldom, nice and boy. you know it used to happen in the in the olden days a lot more. Um, here comes uh, <coughs> Rohit Sharma, so Shoaib Bashir, Rohit Sharma pushes defensively out on the onside. Uh, I, a test match I covered in which uh, Sri Lanka made 700 and some plenty for four. <laughs> Jim Mela Jayawardena scored 300, Gumar Sangakara 200, they added 600 for the second wicket, which is the highest partnership of all time. Um, that's uh, Rohit Sharma defending the last ball out on the onside, and uh, Nikki Boyer. Uh, and and uh, I, uh, fast forward to the post-match press conference, Mahela Jayawardena said, I thought Nikki Boyer bowled really, really well, and uh, was unlucky, and, and could naught for 225. Ouch. I think played in Sri Lanka when Monty dropped him. Ja Mahel are on not very many single figures, and he got 190. And then at lunch, just before, just after lunch, this next Test match in Goal, Goal, I think it was. Kumar top edge one straight up in the air, and Monty stand underneath it, and I'm standing on If he drops this, I'm going home. I really am <laughs> going home. I mean, it was the hottest day in the world. I was seeing pink elephants. Tom Hartley into Gill defends no run, 127 for one. I think who the second spinner was in that game. I don't think it was Swanee, but Monty Monty would have went for a few in that in that in the second Test match in in Sri Lanka, and that they got a massive score there, 600 there. I know Pakistan got a lot of runs in Multan. I went for massive. Like that was my biggest. Hardly again. Shubman Gill defends. Well, 46 overs in Multan, and I think that was that was a hundred and plenty. But I don't think it was anywhere near 150. So yeah, that's probably the biggest that I've come for. And Yusuf, Mohammed Yusuf got a double hundred. The wizard. What a glorious batsman he was. Yusuf Yohana he started off with, didn't he? Here's Hartley again, and that's uh, driven down the ground. Bottom hand beats uh, the diving Hartley. 
but it will be cut off by Jimmy Anderson who's still chasing around enthusiastically at the end of what has been an arduous and disappointing day for England 129 for one India now in reply to India's 218 and it sounded you know when Mahala Jayawardena said that Nicky Boyer bowled very well and uh, was unlucky and could have could have taken a lot more wickets <laughs> it sounded patronizing and condescending but he meant it genuinely pushed out on the onside I think he was just being sympathetic as well the fact that he bowled 68 overs in the innings 625 they put on those two Jaya Wardner and uh, Sangakara it remains the highest test match partnership for any wicket it's fun commentating on it 129 for one and slog sweep uh, they haven't uh, decided that they'll come back tomorrow intact they're going to score some more runs Shubman Gill just waits and so he he knows exactly doesn't he he, he just picks the slot ball so early and and slog sweep six second time in two overs yeah just went up out the hand from Hartley just quietly going about his business up until that ball Hartley just bowled nicely good muscle memory good repeatable action over and over again and this one because the field is changing only a couple of balls left in the day faffs around goes up out the hand bang gone Rosehead beautiful batting from Shubman Gill just amazing how he picks uh, the I mean oh he's beaten him past the outside edge what a beauty suddenly and that's been actually the story of Tom Hartley's series uh, of his tour he's he's bowled bad balls consistently but he's also bowled wicket-taking balls consistently and that in fact is the last ball of the day so we're uh, an over ahead of where I thought we were and uh, the uh, end of play has been reached with uh, India so he's actually slog swept the penultimate delivery of the day for six and then being beaten by the final ball of the day. Remarkable stuff. Shubman Gill and Rohit Sharma have uh, enjoyed a massively productive day for India who uh, are looking at a lead well before lunch on day one. Having bowled England out for 218, they've uh, reached 120, 131 for one with uh, Rohit Sharma and uh, Shubman Gill going beautifully and another half century, another half century from Yashasvi Jaiswal who's the only man to fall running down the wicket to uh, Shoaib Bashir and uh, missing it being stumped by Ben Folkes to depart for 57. Earlier England bowled out for 218 uh, after a really promising start. They reached 100 for one and they bowled out for 218. Ollie Pope uh, was dismissed shortly before lunch, on the stroke of lunch actually, uh, stumped off the bowling of Kuldeep Yadav who took five wickets, he went uh, for 11, England took lunch at 100 for two and looked well placed on a pitch that is offering generous turn but otherwise has been extremely fair and uh, you'd have to say um, if anything, an above par pitch uh, for a test match in India, not absolutely flat, yes it is turning but no lavish sea movement. There was some swing early on, but that was at atmospheric conditions. And a day, Gareth Buddy, in which uh, England will have to doff their caps to the hosts and say, you've outplayed us. Yeah, I think, uh, I think the day started pretty well from an England point of view. Yes, you win your toss, which is good. Um, we saw a bit of swing, like you say, and I felt like the openers... Um, played quite nicely and uh, had that little bit of luck, but that's the way they play. They're, you know, they're, they're not frightened to, to try and put the bowlers under pressure. But to get to 64 for the first wicket, you would say that's, uh, that's a nice place to be, expecting probably with the moisture around that it might just have something for the bowlers. But unfortunately, after that, it, it, it just seemed to be wickets at regular intervals. You know, 25th over, we lost a wicket, 37th, 43rd, and then we lost the cluster cluster of wickets which uh, three wickets for, for no runs just absolutely broke the back of the innings and you're never dragging that back whether you, whether you like it or not um, and it doesn't matter if you have a little flutter at the end or, or whatever folks a nice 24 at the back end but it, it's, n it's never enough to, to change that um, I suppose psyche that is, is brought in the game and then I, I think the way that India started um, with the bat they were calm composed they were prepared to play the shots when it was there 100 for the first wicket uh, and you would say it's a fraction more batsman error rather than wonderful bowling it was a nice piece of bowling but more batsman error but uh, I think the way that India have played and the way they've been able to 
trust their defence but also score relatively freely has just suggested that this is a pretty good pitch and tomorrow is going to be incredibly difficult for England and they need some seriously hard work. It is going to be very difficult. If you've missed any of the action, then uh, don't worry, uh, because you'll be able to catch up, as always, in the following on podcast. A reminder that we'll be back uh, with ball-by-ball -ball commentary from just before four o'clock uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, but for now, Andrew McKenna is your host for the following on podcast. On D8, online, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. Exclusive ball-by-ball -ball commentary of the fifth and final test match. Live from Dharmshala. Fielded all the to be a run out. On the on Talk Sport 2. Well, you are listening to the following on daily podcast. I'm Andrew McKenna and I'm alongside the former England bowlers Gareth Batty and Alex Tudor to look back at the First day of the fifth test match between India and England in Dharamshala. Despite winning the toss, England collapsed from 175 for three to 218 all out, with Kuldeep Yadav taking five wickets before half centuries from Rohit Sharma and Yashasvi Jaiswal guided India to 125 for one at the close, a trailing by just 93 runs. We'll discuss another poor performance with the bat for uh, England how they can salvage anything from the test, and we'll also be getting reaction from the England camp as assistant coach Marcus Truscothic will be joining us. So plenty to come over the next 20 minutes or so. You are listening to Following On. Well, what a day that was. First day of the final test match. England win the toss and bat. So everything you think is moving in the right direction. And then 57 and a half overs later, England are bowled out for 218. Zach Crawley top scoring with 79. No one else getting above 30, although Duckett, Roots, Bairstow and folks all got to 20s. But the problem was another collapse as England were 137 for two. And then suddenly the wicket started falling and when three went down with the score on 175, England had a world of problems. Uh, Alex Tudor and Gareth Batty are alongside me. Um, gents, let's, let's be blunt about this. Was there anything positive to, uh, to take out of today from England? They won the toss. They won the toss and, <laughs> and they opted to bat first and you thought, yeah, that was the right decision. Rohit Sharma at the toss as well. Said he would have done exactly the same thing. Got off to a decent start. 64 for none off 17 overs. And then all of a sudden, you know, um, Popey comes in. They get to 100. You think, yep, just see, get yourself to lunch one down. Yep, you would take that as a captain. Winning the toss. He runs past one. Looked like he was running for lunch. Uh, and missed it. It didn't look great. And then all of a sudden, what England have done in this series, there's been four occasions where they've just lost far too many wickets in a session where in a series where they've been very much in this series it's a mad session that just gives it away for them and again they've just lost what they lose in that second session they 94 runs for six wickets you you just can't do that it was five for eight at one stage in 30 odd balls or so Maka. you know you just can't do that against a very good indian team against a world-class bowler in uh, Ravi Ashwin and Jadeja, they're just going to punish you. As I say Jadeja, it was Koldeep Yadav who, who got the wickets. He got five from the last test. He's bowling with confidence. He's coming again. He's done a lot of guys with the wrong and they've not picked it. Ben Stokes and as I said, Popey, they've not picked it. He's bowled beautifully well. Nine wickets between them. They bowled extremely well. And as a good team do, when you're showing uh, fragility, they punish you and they do that and they're not going to let up. And again, England only bat for 57 overs. You cannot win the toss day one in a test match and only bat for 57 overs and think, OK, we're still in this game. There's no chance. Um, you mentioned the fact that Ashwin and Kuldeep got nine between them. It was 10 to spin because Judeja got the other one, which was all rather crazy because in the early stages of the day, Jasprit Brummer and Mohamed Siraj were actually sending down some borderline unplayable deliveries and we thought it was going to be the seamers doing all the damage it turned out not to be the case not for 51 for Bumrah, not for 24 for Siraj 4 for 51 for Ashwin in 11 overs and 4 balls Kuldeep's 15 overs 5 for 72 Jadeja 10 overs 1 for 17 
any team can collapse. The, these things can happen. It, it is a part of cricket. Are England collapsing too regularly? Um, in the last four tests, seven for 43, seven for 35, all 10 for 107, and nine for 139. Uh, as you mentioned, Tudes, today was five for eight in 37 balls. That became eight for 81 in 21 overs. Gareth, with your coach's hat on, is that too often? And does that show an issue here? Or is it just, as I've just said, collapses can happen and we just happen to have a few in a row? Well, I, I think the one thing that um, the statisticians, the people that look at more the numbers of the game would say you can't lose wickets in clusters mm. because it kills you. It, you know, it, it saps all the momentum you built up bowlers all of a sudden get more energy that they wouldn't have the ball for, for whatever reason you watch somebody uh, new to the crease all of a sudden the ball spins more it swings more it seems more bowlers seem faster things happen more when you take wickets hence why everybody wants to take them so the whole premise of don't lose wickets in clusters is to stem that to stem that um, momentum shift that when you take a wicket you gain and, and I think that's something that um, we can't sit here and say, oh, yeah, it's been a great day. Yes, there are positives, of course, right? And you will always find positives. But there also needs to be an element of realism. There's been 350 runs scored today, and England have only scored 218 of them, and India has still got nine wickets left. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out that India should and probably will go past England. So the advantage that you gain from winning the toss, you've given back straight away. Now, the one thing about this team, this English team, is they're very resilient. They come back and, they're, they're, you know, they, they keep scrapping, they keep fighting. But against quality, and we're talking about test cricket, so we're talking about the best of the best, and we're talking about India World Test Champi uh, Championship, the whole shebang. It's a very fine team. They haven't lost at home for however many years, plus 10. You are not constantly going to come from behind and expect to be in a position to win a game. And that is the thing to address, not anything else. You have to be at the front of the game. You have to set the pace at some point. It's a wonderful quality to come from behind, but you can't keep coming from behind against quality teams. Gee, do you want to come in? No, I was going to say exactly the same thing. You know, the one thing that under Ben Stokes, the one thing these, this team will not do, they will not quit and they will keep fighting. But as Gareth rightly says, there's only so many times you can go to the well and ask you to in last innings to go and score 300 plus or, you know, you've got 150 to defend. We need 10 wickets. You know, billion, brilliant bits of play was only going to happen maybe once in a series. And so, and we saw that, didn't we, with um, Popey when he got up 196 and we were behind and then we ended up winning that game. I reckon that's going to happen once in a series, possibly, with the way that we play. So, yes, there is a, there is a bit of a problem. We collapse far too often. It's like no one really says, right, I'm going to sit in now. I'm going to see off a bit of pressure. I'm going to make sure that these bowlers have to come back and bowl spells. These bowlers are not having to come back and bowl spells at the minute. They're still fresh. So you're going to be under pressure. The ball's still going to be hard. It's still going to do stuff. Let's wear that ball down and then pick them off. And it's about, you know, calculation and, and, and the right time. And yes, I'm all for be, being positive. They still went at a very good strike rate, a run rate, sorry. But it's, it's, you just need to do that for longer. And by doing that, you have to earn the right, spend some time at the crease, ball's face, bowlers bowling spells. And as you say, that's what upsets the purists. That's what upsets, you know, the older generation of fan that listen and watch this England side. And as I said, I will back this England side to the hilt because it's been fantastic to watch you. You want to watch it. But there is a frustration. And then I said when Ben took over and he had that interview, as I said, time and time again, strap yourself in. It's going to be a hell of a ride. You're going to have some highs and you're going to have some lows. But when you have them, some lows, it's going to be heavy lows because of the way that the boys are playing. We, we say that they've had four collapses, um, in the, but I suppose we also remember, have to remember they are playing India in India. Uh, and as Gareth's touched on the fact that they're quite useful. Now, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were after winning in Hyderabad and, OK, he went 1-1 in Vishakapatnam. And then we're, we're saying, well, look, there's no Carol Rahul. There was no Jadeja for a test. Obviously, no Virat Kohli for the series. And, and we're all then starting to go, oh, is this the best chance ever? Did we get a bit giddy? Did we, did we maybe start to fool ourselves? And, uh, and almost were we maybe kind of partly responsible for putting out a narrative that potentially wasn't there? Because 
this is still India and India. Yes, they might be missing some of the great names, but we've seen the emergence of Jaiswal. Yes, he played before, but he's come on. He's now passed a thousand runs in in Test cricket in in next to no time at all. Well, we may be getting a wee bit carried away. No, it was the time to get India. They haven't lost at home. I think it's 14 years or mm. something. No shammy. So nobody to lead the attack. Nobody to start the day's proceedings. Bumra started nicely today, but he didn't. He wasn't quite as backed up like he would have been with Shami at the other end because Siraj is more of a first-change bowler, shall we say, or an impact bowler, or a different skill set to what was required with the ball swinging around. It's, it, you know, it's an art to, b to bowl with a new ball. So they were just a little bit down there. We've had previous games in the series where uh, Jadej has not played or Ashwin has to go home and, and you know, hope everything's okay family-wise, but he wasn't around for periods. There have been windows that fall in your lap and if you are in the best possible place the door is just fractionally ajar. You have to earn the right, of course, and you have to play very good cricket, but there have been windows. So, no, I think this was a wonderful time to play India. I think this pitch here is as good as good a surface as you're going to get to bat on. We've, played, we've seen some disgusting wickets. I think if we choose our words very carefully, particularly this previous series where it literally, with, with all due respect, you could have picked anybody to ball spin on them and they would have done okay. Because they were that difficult. And I, and I feel like uh, this, was our, this was our time just to go, OK, we're going to show some improvement. We're going to show that we're learning and not just uh, foot down and let's go and, and the wind brushes through your hair. There, there has to be a moment of clarity to understand how we are building, how we are getting better, how we are moving on. And, and I feel like, are, are we, aren't we? We don't know because we're sat thousands of miles away. Um, and we don't know because we're not in that change room. So we don't know what's been said and we don't know what's going on. You can only judge on what's been said today. Yes, there are positives. Crawley getting a score. But could it have been more? Yes. Some nice 20s. Could it have been more? Yes. India. Are they going to have two guys that go on and get hundreds tomorrow? Who knows? But that's for them now to make that. I think England have missed opportunities in this series. And I think that is the final gambit. Yes, they play some wonderful stuff. And I, I don't watch a lot of cricket at home sometimes. But I'll switch on and watch this team. But you still want to see that team getting better, evolving and controlling games a bit more. Uh, actually, touching on the opening partnership, once again, Duckett and Crawley got pa England past 50. Uh, it's now, what, nine opening uh, partnerships I in the series. And off the top of my head, I think only twice, maybe three times, have they been less than 40. So, you know, you don't want to turn this into, well, we're doing our job. But actually, from, from looking from the outside, 64 without loss um, <laughs> becomes 64 for one, 100 for two. So, you know, in baseball, they use the phrase a lot about some, some hitters are table setters. Their job is to get on base, to set it up for the big home run boys to come in and clear it up with two, three and four run homers. You could argue at the moment, Crawley and Duckett, yes, OK, we're disappointed that, that Crawley didn't go on and make a very big one at himself. But they're kind of doing their job, aren't they, Chews? Yeah, they are. And to be fair to Ben Duckett, you know, he's gone 27 off 58 balls. Normally, he's going a lot quicker than that. So, you know, he did give himself a little bit of time. His execution of his shot, you know, wasn't great. And then you're thinking, you know, did you need to do it? I suppose he wanted to take the positive option, but his, his shape was all wrong. And then it slid off and a great catch from Shubman Gill. But again, you know, there's been times in this series, as Gareth Wright said, we've had India on the back foot. They've had to think. I remember Sanjay Mandrake at the end of the last game in, in Test Match in Ranchi, you know, when Ben was speaking with, he said, you know, I want to congratulate you with because you've had Rohit Sharma in India having to think. But again, we just go back that there's times within the game when you feel like Indian have got England have got them and they just let up through whatever sense that they've got within that change room at the minute and they just lose too many wickets in clusters. And, and you can't do that against good sides, especially India in India. Um, it's hard enough as it is. So you're just making it hard for yourself and it's just... Assessing the situation at that time, do you need to do what you're doing? Yes, you know, you want to take the positive option, but also you've got to read the situation. As, as Bat says, you know, they're missing some key players. Ravi uh, Ashwin had to disappear for family reasons, so he was missing for two days, came back on the last day. You're thinking that was a the time there where you can get their bowlers to bowl a, a few more spells, but because we're bat batting ultra positively and we're not batting a lot of balls, I think on average we bat 71 overs. It's test cricket. You know, it's 120. Not even getting to the new ball. It's not even getting to the new ball. 
as you said, yes, we might have 300 odd, but you know, we're getting it very, very quickly. Just do that for a little bit longer. And if you do that for a little bit longer, you're going to have more runs. Your bowlers have got more of a chance. Ben can be ultra positive again with the way he's um, setting the field for these young spinners. I mean, how many captains, and that's in our time, how many captains with the way that Tom Hartley started the series, he would have said, right, just, just, just come off for a while. You might not have seen him until maybe the next day or later on in the day. Ben gave him a nine over spell. That was tremendous backing, and, and, and that's what I love about Ben. That's what he does, and that confidence, the way he sets the field. Sometimes when it's a dead wicket, he's saying, no, I'm going to leave cover open. I want the, the batter to think or he can um, hit it through there because now he's going to, if a little bit of shape for Jimmy and, and Brody when he was playing before he retired, and that's when we're going to get the catchers behind and slip and, uh, and the keeper. So I love that positivity. I just think with the batting, we just need to be a little bit smart with the way we execute our shots. I think we're looking at the wrong thing. We're looking at 71 overs. We should be looking at the runs that we've scored. If we're getting 400 and 71 overs, keep doing it, lads. Yeah. But we've not got 400. That's what we need to be looking at. It's the numbers. Batting's about scoring runs. Yeah. Bowling's about taking wickets and how you go about that whole process. So if England could have extended to 90 overs to bat or even 85, they'd probably, and numbers tell you, that they're over the 400. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Take that every single day of the week. Yeah. And we will take the ups and downs of the odd dismissal here and there. No problem because we're still getting to our end goal. If we are not reaching the end goal, we're just making it very difficult for ourselves and you're always on the back foot. Um, Marcus Strascothic is doing media duties today. I'm delighted to say he's now speaking with Cameron Ponsonby. Marcus, your thoughts on day one? Um, yeah, a disappointing day. I think we're you know, winning the task. We were hopeful for you know, the pitch to be a bit better than potentially what it was. It, it swung around a little bit with a new ball and I thought you know, we did well to get in up to lunchtime and then... Um, you know, it was challenging then after that. Cool, he got more spin than we expected going into day one. Um, and he, he sort of blew us away, really, so it made it pretty hard for us. And, um, you know, it wasn't our ideal day, but it is what it is. It's another batting collapse. Is that a cause for concern in general, or is it more a symptom of the conditions? Well, I think we've got to give a bit of credit to their guys. I think Cool Deep spun the ball well, and, um, you know, there were some good balls bowled in the middle of that. Um, and I thought we played some, we played okay at times, but. Um, you know, just not consistent enough, really. We didn't, we didn't get the bigger scores that we need. Obviously, Zach, what does Zach get? 79, I think. Um, and then we needed a few other people to chip in and get bigger scores to, you know, to sort of build it up from that point in. So, but, um, you know, batting collapses happen, especially over here. You know, you see them a lot. Uh, when the ball spins in particular, it makes it pretty tricky. Does that credit to the opposition continuing to the final session? It was also a, well, pretty, yeah, it was a difficult final session with the ball for England. Yeah, well, I think you could see the difference of the morning session to the evening session in terms of what the new ball did. It, it swung around and sort of nipped a little bit more than in the morning session. We got, I don't know whether we'll get the same sort of uh, conditions um, with the ball being slightly older now and obviously being 30 overs into a, an innings. So um, it was no surprise almost it was, it was like that. But, uh, you know, we got something to work on and hopefully we can you know, be better tomorrow than potentially what we've been today and, and come back strong. Ben and Zach were phenomenal at the start of the day. It was an amazing opening spell by Boomer and Siraj as well. Despite that, as you said, it was very difficult conditions. Was there at all any buyer's remorse over choosing to bat? Well, I think hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? I and mean, you know, you see it in that sort of conditions. I don't think anybody expected it to do as much as what it did. Um, and going in, and we were you know, still 100 for two at, at lunchtime. So, you know, we managed to sort of play and miss a few times, get a little bit of luck here and there, and um, put ourselves in that position. So. Um, yeah, great. You know, if we'd have lost a toss, it might have been completely different. A disappointing day for the team, but another excellent innings from Zach Crawley. Mm -hmm. He's had a phenomenal series. Kind of, how much pride and how have you taken in seeing his career progress over the last two years? He's had this is his second very impressive series in a row yeah. against top quality opposition. Yeah, back to back series, which is really important for him. I think um, you know I've seen him grow, and you can see the player that he's now becoming. Um, just the way he's talking about his game and understanding his game is a really important part um, and it's nice to see when you, you, know, you have longevity working with players and you can see them progress and um, you know, their, their standards really rise and uh, be more consistent in what they have. It, it, this is what we've seen, it's what the sort of group of us sort of saw in Zach, that we knew that we could be, he could be this type of player and you know, you're starting to get the, you know, the reward for that um, is really encouraging for him but also for the team. Before play, there was the presentation for Johnny Bairstow's 100th cap. It looked very special. Oh, it was amazing. Ruti's speech was superb. And, 
we knew Johnny was going to be a little bit of emotional and obviously with his family being around and stuff like that but a real special moment for everyone for to be involved with and not, not more so for Johnny and his family so all delighted when we get those opportunities that we can really pay tribute to the players that have done some great things for the for England. And just finally what was it like on a personal note to have the England Whites on again? It's strange yeah hopefully I'll never get on to the field to actually feel, uh, do any fielding but uh, I've got the team sheet printed off, so it's got my name written on there, so that's always nice to see. Have you and Collie got a little frame it together? Who's going who's to go first if, if Collie, someone has to go? Collie, 100% Collie. <laughs> is. He moves a lot better than I do, yeah. If I have to stand at slip at short leg, then I might have a chance, but Collie can do the outfielding for sure. Marcus Truscothic in conversation with Cameron Ponsomey. Interesting there, early on. Didn't expect the, uh, the, the pitch to do what it did. Um, yeah, that was, that was an interesting one. Um, Alex Tudor and, and Gareth Batty still with myself, Andrew McKenna. Um, so is this a, a terror pitch? Was this a 218 all-out pitch for you, Tudes? No, it certainly weren't. No, it weren't. Um, and yes, the ball spun, but it didn't spin prodigiously where you're thinking, oh, it's 218 and they've blown through you. I think once you look back and you see the shots that were played, you know, England got themselves out rather than being bowled out. Yes, there were a few that, you know, got good deliveries and you think, OK, yes. But generally, you know, they got themselves out and they can only fault themselves, you know. Um, India bowled well, yes, and you would expect them to with the experience that they have and Coldeep coming off a of Fifer in the in Ranchi, he's come and he's bowled with a lot of confidence, he's control of the ball, bowling wrist spin, but they still he still went at four point eight. But he got Fifer. And as a, a Gareth will tell you, he don't care about his run rate as long as at the end of the day at that end column it's five wickets or whatever wickets it will be and you've bowled the team out and you can sit back, feet up, have as many drinks and sandwiches or whatever it is that they're going to eat and just watch your boys go to work and bat and that's what they've done. Yeah, I think England, I'm just looking at the scorecard now, England were 100 for two. That's not a minefield surface. And then you're looking at 137 for three, 175 for four. That's not a minefield. Um, I, I, I think there needs to be an amount of realism about it. Um, England's opening partnership, yes, it was nice, 64, but India's opening partnership was 100. We lost. Second partnership, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? What's it going to be? It's all well and good saying the positives if we are not beating the opposition within those periods and those numbers that we're talking about. Or else it all counts for nothing. There's no point getting the runs and the wickets and being on losing teams the whole time. Um, sorry, that's not the whole time, but do you know what I mean? Yeah, we're yeah, we're yeah. sort of saying, yes, there are some positives and it's wonderful. But at some point, somebody has to put their hand up and say, this is how our team is evolving and this is how we are moving forward. There are some wonderful things going on and you see it but there has to be substance to it. It can't be flash in the pan stuff. Um, so, India closed the day at 135 for one. Jaiswal, the, the man out for 57, uh, as he went through his innings, he went past 1,000 runs in Test match cricket in nine Test matches to get there. The fastest of all time was the Don. It took him seven. Uh, Jaiswal is now equal second quickest. There's some names here. <laughs> Everton Weeks, Herbert Sutcliffe, George Headley, and Jashashvi Jaiswal on nine test matches. And in terms of uh, innings, um, 16th innings for uh, Jaiswal, the uh, quickest, Vinod Kambli in 14 innings. Jaiswal is second on 16 innings. Pajara, 18. Agawal, 19. Gavaskar, 21. So for all of that, he still played the worst shot of the day. <laughs> so it just goes to prove that even, even the very best can have a moment, can't they? Because let's be honest about it. He was playing Bashir. He, he scored 46 of his 57 runs in his innings today off of Bashir. He, he took a, a personal liking or disliking, whichever way you want to, to term it. He was going after him and he just ran down after one that there was no need to. Had a huge Yahoo and missed. So even the best can do it. Yeah, he's got after him all series, though, hasn't he? I think there were some numbers that he's uh, he scored however many runs off uh, of Bashir. Um, it, it was a rush of blood, wasn't it? He got out of that, um, what's that sweet spot that people talk about, in your bubble and all this. He went outside of his bubble and he tried something, just one thing, too, too outrageous, and paid the price. And I suppose that's a lesson for, for everybody. Sport will get you. If you start <laughs> taking it for granted, it will get you, even, no matter how good you are. Boys, thank you very much. Uh, so, that is today done and dusted. Tomorrow, well, what's to come? Well, the possibility of James Anderson's 700th Test match wicket, and England will uh, need 
Well, it'd like to go about to 7.05, 7.06 come the end of the day, if to be perfectly honest. Uh, find out if you can by joining us from 4 o'clock tomorrow morning uh, on TalkSport 2, the TalkSport Cricket YouTube channel. And the first session is live on TalkSport as well as we bring you India against England exclusively live here on TalkSport 2. Well, there you go. The news from the centre is that England have won the toss and they've decided to bat first. Here is Siraj in once again and uh, this time it is a glorious cover drive, off drive and it's the first boundary of the inning. Nice shot by Crawley, stride into the ball, plays the off drive and it's wide of mid-off and again it's away for four. My goodness, what a shot this is. Uh, 